spike ahead of the 2024 elections. That's right, Mission Patna for the opposition today. 17 opposition parties coming together and claiming that they will form a Maha Gadbandan ahead of the 2024 elections. That's going to be a big talking point. Will the opposition Maha Gadbandan actually work? Will they rise above their political differences? That's the big story coming from Patna today. But first, as always, it's time for the nine headlines at nine. 16 opposition parties attend a mega Gadbandan meeting in Patna, vow to fight the 2024 elections together against the Modi-led BJP. After Patna's second opposition meeting now to be held in Shimla, opposition says it will prepare a common minimum program at this meeting. But the Delhi ordinance fight casts a shadow over the opposition meet. Aam Aadmi Party fumes at the Congress. Kejriwal skips the joint opposition press conference, says the opposition, particularly the Congress, must act as a team player. Power pack scheduled for Prime Minister in Washington, set to meet tech CEOs like Satya Nadella, Sundar Pichai, OpenAI, Sam Altman. Mega diaspora address also later on the agenda. After a five-day intensive hunt in the Atlantic Ocean, all five civilians on board Ocean Gate's Titanic submersible are declared dead. But a, but a big story comes from Patna, where all 16 or 16 major and smaller opposition parties came together claiming that they will fight the 2024 elections together to fight and defeat, they say, a Modi-led BJP. There was, though, a bit of a twist in the tail. The Aam Aadmi Party, at the very end of that meeting, boycotted a joint press conference saying the Congress was not acting like a team player by supporting AAP on its stand against the ordinance moved by the Modi government limiting the Delhi government's powers. Yet, the opposition parties say they are on track. They will meet again next month in Shimla. The BJP says this is an alliance of the corrupt and of desperados with one single objective, defeat Mr. Modi. What really has the opposition really got to offer? That's going to be the big talking point. But first, our top story. The first of its kind before the 2024 Lok Sabha elections. More than 30 leaders from the spectrum of opposition parties huddled together. From the west to the east the north to the south. 17 opposition parties came together at a common venue in Patna. Their maiden meeting followed months of efforts by the Bihar chief minister and his deputy to build a grand alliance against the ruling BJP. The host announced that everybody was on board to fight elections together and that their next meeting will be held next month under the leadership of the Congress President. And Congress vowed to take the process of opposition unity ahead. Party Chief Malakarjun Kharge said modalities will be discussed at the next meeting in Shimla. Sabi Neta Ek Hooker Hum Aage Chunao Ladneki Ek Common Agenda Tayar Karrahe A Simla Me Hum Wapir Milrahe Thodi Thodi Differences Hongi Magar Hamne Nirnelia Hai कि हम एक साथ काम करेंगे जो हमारी विचार धारा है जिसको हम शेयर करते हैं उसकी हम रक्षा करेंगे 
West Bengal Chief Minister described the Patna meeting a milestone. Patna se jo shuru hota hai, usko ek janu andaran roop hota hai ki hamara ladai humko opposition mat bolo. हम लोग भी देश का सिटीजन है हम लोग भी पेट्रियोटिक है मोस्ट लीडर्स एकोर्ड देयर कमिटमेंट टू पुट अप अ यूनाइटेड फाइट अगेंस्ट द बीजेपी इन 2024। मैं तो हमें अपने आप को विपक्ष से तो मानता ही नहीं हूं हाँ विपक्ष जरूर जो भी देशद्रोही है और जो भी देश में तानाशाही लाना चाहते हैं उसके विरोध में हम रहेंगे जरूर रहेंगे जम्मू कश्मीर से लेकर कन्याकुमारी तक مختلف سیاسی پارٹیوں نے اس میٹنگ میں حصہ لیا مقصد ہمارا طاقت حاصل کرنا نہیں ہے اقدار اقتدار ہماری منزل نہیں ہے بٹ آم آدمی پارٹی لیڈر اروین کے جیوال بکین کانسپیکوز بائی ہز اپسنس ایڈ دی جوائنٹ میڈیا بریفنگ آفٹر دی میٹنگ ہز پارٹی تھرو ایڈ سپینر ان دی اپوزیشن رنگ The Ahmadmi Party set a condition that Congress oppose the Centre's Delhi Services Ordinance in and outside Parliament. If it doesn't, Ahmadmi Party would not like to attend future meetings with Congress in attendance. Now, Congress has not supported the support of Ahmadmi Party on this issue. And if the Congress has been stopped, तो हमारे हिसाब से ऐसे कोई भी गठबंधन जिसमें कांग्रेस हिस्सा होगी हमारे लिए पार्टिसिपेट करना मुश्किल हो जाएगा अकॉर्डिंग टू पार्टी इन साइडर्स कांग्रेस एटलीस्ट फॉर नाउ स्टेज नॉन कमिटल ऑन द ऑर्डिनेंस इश्यू द बीजेपी टर्म द ऑपोजिशन मीटिंग अ पॉलिटिकल शैम अ पॉलिटिकल पैक मेट इन पटना देर प्रे is the future of India. For now, it's the start of a marathon exercise, a political conversation within the opposition ranks with a common goal to unseat the BJP from power at the centre. Bureau Report, India Today. So let's raise the big questions tonight. Can the opposition really challenge the BJP in 2024, even if it comes together? Will the opposition be able to rise above their differences? Is this only about defeating Mr. Modi at all costs? Or is there a common shared ideology that these parties have? These are some of the questions we will raise tonight. I'm joined by special guests. Joining me now, Priyanka Chaturvedi, Member of Parliament, Rajya Sabha of the Shiv Sena, its Deputy Leader. By Priyanka Kakkar, Spokesperson, Amarbi Party, Rohan Gupta, National Spokesperson, Congress, Saket Gokhale, National Spokesperson, Trinamool Congress, Fawad Halim, Leader of the CPIM, and Satya Prakash Mishra, National Convener, Mission 2024, Nitish Vichar Manch from the JDU. I appreciate all my guests joining us. Let's turn to you, Priyanka Kakkar, first, because the Amarbi Party is creating all the buzz at the moment. It appears that Arvind Kejriwal not happy with the Congress, claiming the Congress was not playing the role of a team player, boycotting a joint press briefing. Now, does Arvind Kejriwal want to be part of a Congress alliance or an alliance in which the Congress is a part or not? Is he simply looking for an excuse not to be part of this alliance? Rajdeep Ji, good evening to everyone. Rajdeep Ji, it is a very clear case that there is a black ordinance which trampled upon the constitution, which overruled the Supreme Court's constitutional bench judgment, which snatched the rights of the people of Delhi, which we got after a very prolonged battle. If the fight is about saving the constitution, which is, so this is a clear case where uh, Congress should by now would have should have supported us. You know, even today there were 15 opposition parties which met. Out of them, 12 of them have a standing in the Rajya Sabha. Out of them, 11 have already given us, uh, supported us openly. So it's a little questionable why the Congress no, has. But, but why did you, why did Mr. Kejriwal, Mr. Kejriwal attended the meeting, attended the lunch, and then chooses to skip the press conference at the last moment? That is not What's the question, Rajdeep Ji. Rajdeep Ji, even during the press conference, the 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 question on ordinance came up, and who sh 
Congress should be questioned which side are they standing on? Are they standing with the with the government which tramples upon the constitution, which snatches the rights of the people of Delhi? And you know, you can't get a clearer case here. It's not a small thing. A Supreme Court judge bench, a Supreme Court be judge judgment of a constitutional bench which laid down the principles of constitution a constitutional bench will lay down the principles of constitution you can you can amend an act by an ordinance you cannot amend a constitution by the ordinance so here is a clear case and the 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 silence of the congress is questionable and they seem to be siding with the bjp in this case okay you know, I, I also have uh, the BJP Shehzad Pudawala. It almost seems Shehzad is going to be you versus all, but that will happen in a moment. Uh, I just want to bring in Rohan Gupta on this. Rohan Gupta, the Congress, many believe, is the elephant in the room for any alliance. After your victory in Karnataka, the belief is the Congress thinks it has the momentum that any alliance will be only on the terms of the Congress. Rahul Gandhi was there at, the pre at this joint meeting, so was Malika Arjun Kharge. We're now told that there will be another meeting in Congress ruled Himachal. Is the Congress committed to being part of an alliance that it could include parties like the Aam Army Party, the Trinamool Congress? Is there a firm commitment of the Congress to this alliance? Will you stand by the AAP when it's in trouble? Or do you really not trust Arvind K. Jiwan? Can you hear me, Rajdi? Yes, I can. Okay, so Rajdeep, basically when you enter into alliance, it's a larger alliance and it is for the macro issues. You cannot stop alliance or hinder alliance just because of the bilateral issues on certain issues. You cannot agree also. Whenever different parties come together, there is something called common minimum program. So if there are issues, obviously, Aam Admi Party and Congress Party, they are opposite parties in, in uh, Delhi, in Gujarat, in many other states. So there can be difference of opinion on certain issues. But you cannot stall the overall movement because of certain party to party issues. Congress is always ready for macro issues and Congress as it is our responsibility as a bigger party to take all the parties together and we'll always do that. But at the end of the day, Rajdeep, there will be certain issues. There do, do you trust Arvind Kejriwal? Mr. Yeah. Mr. Rohan Gupta, Mr. Rohan Gupta, do you trust Arvind Kejriwal who six months ago when he contested against you in Gujarat, you said he's the B team of the BJP. Do you Trust Arvind Kejriwal or not? Absolutely. See, this is what I'm saying, Rajdeep. If you go by that logic, by fighting Gujarat elections, they have had BJP. They have always, they, they passed the ordinances also. So there are many issues where we, do, we don't agree with Aam Admi Party. But when it comes to the larger issue of opposition unity, obviously it is not that Congress Party is adamant. But you cannot use bilateral issues or party-to-party -party issues to stall the Grand Alliance. When Rahul Gandhi ji was questioned by ED for so many hours, we never expected Aam Admi Party to join us. When his membership in parliament was cancelled, we never expected Aam Admi Party to join the agitation also. So we understand we have to fight our own fight at the same time. We, know we have to come together for the larger issues. I don't see a maturity in any party taking a single issue to take out to, to take away from the overall opposition unity. So I think it's upon Aam Admi Party to understand that there will be issues where we won't agree on each other's viewpoint. But that doesn't mean that we cannot come together on common minimum program. Okay, so you're saying you can agree to disagree, but you must come together on a common minimum program. What is that common minimum program, Priyanka Chaturvedi? Because it was very interesting, your leader, Uddhav Thakre, was seated at that press conference which I was at, next to Mehbooba Mufti. This is the same Mehbooba Mufti. When the B Shiv Sena was in alliance with the BJP, you would describe her as someone not to be trusted, almost as an anti-national. Suddenly, the PDP is uh, sitting next to Uddhav Thakre. Is this the politics of convenience? The BJP says all of you have come together only with a single purpose, to save yourself from the enforcement directorate and to defeat Mr. Modi at all costs. So, uh, firstly, our agenda is very clear that enough of Man Ki Baat, now it is time for Jan Ki Baat. Unfortunately, the people of this country aren't being heard, whether it's with regards to price rise, whether it's about uh, the growing joblessness, women's safety, you're seeing the women wrestlers protesting still haven't got justice. And these are women wrestlers who brought, uh, you know, accolades for the nation. Then you talk about uh, uh, the farmers, you talk on various issues. So the, our agenda is very clear, Shiv Sena has been very clear, that for the sake of India's democracy, for its constitutional values, because we have been suffering 
Maharashtra has faced the consequences of how constitutional norms were bypassed and how a uh, elected government with an alliance was pulled down. Where the Supreme Court itself has called the entire flow test illegal, immoral and unconstitutional. So we will take all steps possible to ensure that we fight for India's democracy and constitution and do the Jan Ki Baat. And if for that we are sitting next to Bhuva Mufti uh, uh, just because we are in an no, but you're not know, answering my question. Alliance, the micro issues versus ma macro issues, I think the larger picture, no, no, what, how does it become an issue of compromise? How is it an issue of compromise when our common minimum idea is that we are fighting for the people of this country? You tell me in the government how many of these uh, ministers or My only uh, BJP point, spokespersons Pam, is that till the other day, till the other day, day you saw Mehbooba Mufti as a person or non grata. Ma'am, Ma'am, we you saw continue. Mehbooba Mufti as a person or non grata I'm sorry, we will continue to have a difference with her. I am sorry. Mr. Sardesai, Mr. Sardesai, we will continue to have our difference with mm -hmm. Me Mehbooba Mufti. Right? We ha also have our differences with Congress Party on various issues. I don't think you're understanding the larger p picture. The larger mm -hmm. picture being that the people of this country deserve a better government. They deserve a government which is not only talking about their own monkey ki baat, is speaking for the people of this country, the jan ki baat. The various issues that are impacting my nation is something that everyone should worry about. And let me tell you, this is not a gathering of opposition. This is a gathering of those people who love their nation, who love its unity and diversity, who love the idea of the democratic principles and constitutional norms that were set by Baba Sahib Ambedkar and the Constituent Assembly. And we very well fight for it. We are the ones fighting for upholding mm. these very norms. So you I know, don't know how do you find it as a uh, politics of compromise. You know, I look at it as a as a fight to safeguard okay. our constitutional so morality and democratic principles. Okay. It's interesting the way you're putting it because Shahzad Punawala, this has been a running theme. The opposition today, almost all their speakers said, we are fighting to save the constitution of the country. The BJP is betraying constitutional values. Whether it is in Manipur, whether it's in wrestlers' protest, whether it's a allegedly misuse of central agencies, the BJP is turning India, according to the opposition, into an elected autocracy, a one-man show, where the opposition dissenting voices are not listened to. How do you respond? Is the BJP at all worried? The fact that now growing opposition, uh, opposition parties are actually coming together on one table. Rajdeep, in fact, I want to use your platform and say I congratulate the Congress and all of these parties who are against me on, the, on this show as well, that today they have admitted that despite the fact that they say that the issues are prime, they themselves, by themselves, can't contest against the BJP and Prime Minister Modi. So they all need to come together with those elements whom they never saw eye to eye. For instance, the TMC has accused the left of the most brutal suppression for 34 years in Bengal. But today the TMC is hand in glove with the left. As you are speaking about the intimidation by agencies, let me just update you, Rajdeep, it's a breaking news for your channel also, that the Kerala Congress Chief, Mr. Sudhakaran, has been arrested not by ED, not by CBI, by Kerala Crime Branch. And the Congress has just now tweeted intimidation and autocracy. Imagine Bengal mein dosti, Kerala, I mean Bengal mein dosti and Kerala mein kushti. This is the way, and this is the same Congress, by the way, Rohan Gupta is representing, which says Manish Sisodia pe karvai bilkul sahi hai, par Sonia Gandhi par karvai sahi nahi hai. Now, Madam uh, MP Priyanka Chaturvedi ji is there. She said that we are raising the people's issues. We can ignore one or two issues, but Bara Sahib Thakre, who I know because he comes from our state, Rajdeep, is the one who said I will rather shut my shop but never go with. Congress NCP and the same Bala Sahib Thakre ji had an unstinting view about Savarkar ji. Congress abuses Savarkar on a daily basis. Forget that, sir. I will show you one statement published by India Today. Rajdeep, India Today is a credible organization. You are the uh, consulting editor of it. Sanjay Raut says, and I quote, unquote, Muslims voting rights should be revoked. Now, please tell me, because we have S uh, JDU sitting here, we have TMC and Congress and Fuad Halim sitting here, and Aam Aadmi Party is also sitting here, which of these parties considers this statement to be pro-constitution and acceptable for the larger interest? Are aapka allegation yehi hai na, the BJP is unfair to Muslims, it is killing secularism, killing democracy, it is misusing agencies. All of these things when done by Kerala right. left party, it's kosher. When Sanjay Raut says, revoke Muslim rights of voting, it's 
kosher same sanjay raut said i kicked babri down in 17 minutes that is kosher but now they are all coming together and let, therefore let i say priyanka chaturvedi respond rajdeep rajdeep may i just complete I because i don't know how much opportunity i will get bjp versus all you made your point no 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 just no, last no, one last let, sentence let her respond that's the one last sentence and ma'am can respond just given by mr punawala well no no one minute okay examples were given by mr punawala about how a political party when it was with the bjp says one thing now you are coming closer to the congress now you claim to be fighting for constitutional <coughs> values is this about <coughs> constitutional values or is this at the end of the day about opportunism the so, fact that you now recognize okay, the okay. only way to survive okay. is to stick together okay so let me give you two examples since he says he also comes from the state of maharashtra we were in alliance with the bjp shiv sena under bala saheb thakre ji in alliance with the bjp had supported the candidates of the congress for the presidential elections is that not a fact uh, maybe he has forgotten that he may have forgotten that also that bala saheb thakre ji had a meeting with indira gandhi ji and he had shown total support to indira gandhi ji maybe forgotten but that is uh, you know they are politics of convenience now now he brought about statements of what sanjay rao ji said yes we have transitioned from what a party we were and what party we are now just like bjp under uh, narendra modi versus the bjp under atal bihari vajpayee are two different identities they have moved from what they were positioned as in in uh, in uh, you know when mr vajpayee was the prime minister we saw what they stand for now would you have ever thought that vajpayee ji could make such kind of hateful you know, it, uh, uh, insidious comments about uh, uh, any other minority in this country he wouldn't do that he 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 his conduct as a prime minister was that he would work you know, for all so there's a lot of difference so, you know some statement he will pull out and he will keep it in know, front of the screen proves okay. nothing Rajdeep may come in very quickly yes a uh, very quickly okay Rajdeep. let me uh, you know uh, before i come to the other panel shehzad you deserve yeah. a word because you are uh, you are as as i said shehzad versus all the fact is look at what your own chief minister assam chief minister yes, hemant biswa sharma said today virtually sort of uh, you know focusing on the religious profiling of uh, obama calling him hussein obama because mr obama made certain critical comments in an interview yesterday to cnn international about uh, 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 prime minister modi's handling of minorities so the prime minister speaks of democracy in washington and his own chief minister seems to almost target uh, uh, barack and call him hussein obama the point is do you fear in some way shehzad punawala that the bjp is boxing itself into a corner where these opposition parties like it or not for their own survival are going to come together because Mo under mr modi the bjp seems out to finish the opposition using the enforcement agencies using uh, uh, it, it the power it has to somehow crush any form of dissent uh, rajdeep since you added a lot of addendums let me answer one by one starting with hemanta biswa sharma ji's tweet uh, mr biswa sharma is absolutely fact, right on fact he is barack hussein obama but yes those who are making barack hussein obama the barometer of treatment of minorities in this country should remember that he bombed seven muslim countries that he did not shut down guantanamo bay that he promised a lot but the race relations actually deproved under him and if he has to hand out certificates then they must accept that track record of barack hussein obama as well and we must also accept the statement of joseph biden also but that we won't do we will selectively no, pick up one thing rajdeep now let me answer one by one because if you keep adding questions then it will become difficult. fickle others will be impatient for their turn now let me answer the second part of this you said we are boxing ourselves rajdeep how are we boxing ourselves today i am most happiest rajdeep you should have been in the studio i am smiling end to end because this is not modi hatao this is congress ghatao look at the conditions one says bangal matao the other one says up matao third one says tamil nadu matao then fourth one says ki idhar matao delhi aur punjab mat jao left ko chhod do this kind of terms and conditions are being applied and rajdeep just two more sentences one omar abdullah has applied new condition now i don't know madam priyanka ji will answer he said that we must clarify our stand on 370 which aam aadmi party by the way supported us on uh, removal of 370 are they going to go back on that stand and last and foremost you have said we are misusing agencies my dear friend rohan gupta is here are rohan ji wo sisodia ji ke khilaf istemal hua agency ya wahan par karwai theek tha main jawab de do Rajdeep, Rajdeep, I would like Rajdeep. to answer. Okay, Rajdeep. let me let me. Okay, okay. That you know, yeah. I I will give everyone equal time. There are three of my panelists who have not been heard. Remember, we had lots of opposition Shazad parties here together. Uh, Sakhe Dotre of the TMC on on two occasions. Just a minute, 
Saket Gokhale on two occasions today, already the BJP is saying, look at the TMC. You're fighting the panchayat polls against the Congress and left, which take place next month in Bengal. But you have Mamta Banerjee on the same platform today as Sitaram Yechuri. Does Mamta Banerjee really believe it's possible to do business, to be part of an alliance with uh, 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 the left? Is that really possible? Hi, Mr. Sardis. I mean, first of all, why should it not be possible? We were a part of... Mamta Di was a minister in uh, Prime Minister Vajpayee's cabinet. She was also a minister in Dr. Manmohan Singh's cabinet. So this whole thing about, you know, your perpetual enemies, your fighting panchayat elections means you can't come together for Lok Sabha. That's a myth. Number two, I take great umbrage at the suggestion earlier that opposition parties are coming together because they're afraid or because, you know, they don't want agencies to investigate their people. Let me tell you straight up, everyone who was a coward, be it in the Shiv Sena, be it in the Congress, be it in the TMC, the cowards have already left and joined the BJP. So none of the cowards are left in our parties anymore. So no one's afraid of the BJP. I can say that from my personal experience. Second thing, which I would like to clearly state here, is that so you... we are not worried about agencies. We don't need to sell out to the BJP to protect ourselves from agencies. If we're scared about agencies, the ones who are scared have already gone and joined the BJP. Number three, you know, we had the BJP today talk about, oh, this is just a photo op, this is just, uh, you know, an unholy alliance, etc. My question is, Mr. Amit Shah on his visit to Jammu today was so scared about this opposition meeting that he couldn't resist but talk about it. If the BJP is so unworried about this, why didn't they have JP Nadda, Amit Shah, Smriti Rani, all of them come out together and speak about this? And the last and final point I want to add here, because, I mean, we also do deserve time which is that in today's opposition meeting, which went on for 240 <coughs> minutes, the Aam Admi Party and Congress discussion on the ordinance was only for 10 minutes. A consensus was reached. Even Mamta Di intervened at that point. The parties found consensus. And let me tell you, all the opposition parties that are on your panel here today, we are together. Now, whether we contest, you know, we put one consensus candidate in our states, or whether we decide to make an alliance, that is to be left up to us to decide in the meeting. But this entire rubbish about Congress ko kaho UP mat jao, Congress ko kaho Bengal mat jao, that is not the case. Our only stand is that we will have one joint opposition okay. leader on maximum seats possible. That leader could be from the strongest possible party in that region. I'll, I'll come to that, whether it's possible to have one opposition candidate against the BJP across 300, 400 seats, as is being suggested by the likes of Sharad Pawar. But, Paud Halim, are you okay to do business with Mamta Banerjee? You and Mamta Banerjee have had a bloody feud, which is still going on in Bengal, even as we speak during the Panchayat elections. Are you okay to be on the same side as the Congress in, uh, in Kerala? a state where, as was just pointed out, you've arrested a Kerala Congress leader. Let's be very clear. Is the left in agreement with these other parties or not? Well, uh, uh, you know, if you see the experience of the past uh, governments that have been formed in India since 1987, the 89 experiment, the subsequent what you call a uh, government that was formed in HD Devi Gauda, the UPA one itself, the NDA itself, all these governments have been formed by parties basically who have fought against each other in the preceding elections and have come to an understanding when the government has been formed. I uh, uh, remind you, uh, Rajdeep, that in Calcutta, when V.P. Singh in 1989, as the leader of the Jantadal had called for a mass meeting and he had invited Jyoti Basu and Atal Bihari Bajpai and uh, on the stage that iconic photo of Jyoti Babu on one side and Atal Bihari Bajpai on one side and uh, V.P. Singh in the middle, despite that meeting in the elections that followed subsequently, as the left, our opposition at that point of time to change the government had not lost itself from the idea that the BJP needs to be defeated. And in that election, we had fought the election. We had put up 100 candidates against the BJP also in that election. So one has to keep in mind that as far as the left is concerned, we are so completely so no, no, guided question, by, our, by no, no, our ideological Mr. Halim, positions. Our Mr. slogans Halim, are very 19, clear. No, no, Mr. Halim, the 1990s was a very different India. Mr. Halim, the 1990s was a very different India. This is an India where India has now seen two single-party majority governments. 
and maybe the opposition coming together only gives Mr. Modi the opportunity to say, I am the strong leader. On the other side against me is a coalition of political parties who don't agree with each other on most issues. It actually might give Mr. Modi the advantage. Does that not worry you? The arithmetic may well be with you. The chemistry may be with, the, uh, uh, may be with Mr. Modi. How is that possible? Well, if you just let me finish, Raji, <laughs> you know, this is a very, very uh, difficult, what you call, uh, situation that uh, India is prevailing at this point of time, especially the single party, majoritarian the understanding that uh, Narendra Modi and the Bharati Janta Party is leading. But as the opposition, we need to come together, we need to come together on principles. And hence, our proposal at the table today was that we need to focus on issues and create a people's movement in India, whereby the opposition parties have to be led from the pressure from below especially on the question of unemployment and the question of how to get the people uh, what you call together in protecting the constitution <coughs> and its secular values now how does it play itself out to service one party and the other let me be very clear with you Rajdi. i'm not beating around the bush in the ensuing what you call looks up election the congress and the left will be contesting against each other in kerala because the bjp is not a force of there so the question doesn't arise the bjp doesn't have that space to play any what you call effective role they're not even third or Will you cede, will you cede space so to Mamta Banerjee? You, uh, will you, you accept to? Mamta Banerjee as Neta number one in Bengal? Well, I'm coming a to that. A direct question and a straight answer. Will you, will you accept Mamta Banerjee as Neta number one in Bengal? <laughs> no, no, I'm asking I, a direct I question. I am answering your question. I'm, I'm not waiting for your question. I am not waiting for your question. I am answering a question if you allow me to complete. Coming to West Bengal, we will be fighting against the Trinamool Congress and the Bharati Janta Party at the Panchayat level. We will be fighting the Trinamool Congress at the Lok Sabha level. And we will be fighting the Trinamool Congress and the Bharati Janta Party, not only at the Lok Sabha level, but also at the ensuring state assembly elections. Let's be very clear. I'm not beating around the bush on this question. And we've done it, as I said, in 89, when we okay, were the me... sole agenda to okay, ensure so, that so the your, your government budget... Okay. centers be removed. I, I we get did your not point. lose so our ideology saying, and, and compromise with the BJP. The BJP. Is your that is okay. our historical experience and that is the way we will go ahead. Okay. We are not like the okay. Bharatiya Janta Party who calls okay. Mehmua Mukti your point. a terrorist, let, a separatist me, and then form the government with Let me come to Satya Prakash her, you know. Mishra. Yeah. Let me come to Mr. Mishra of the JDU. Mr. Mishra of the JDU, Nitish Kumar brought all these parties together in Patna. But look at the number of opposition parties who are not present. Chandra Babu Naidu not invited, uh, KCR not invited, Mayavati not invited, uh, Jagan Mohan Reddy not invited, Naveen Patnaik possible invitation but it didn't appear that he was very keen, Nitish uh, Kumar met him. Fact is political opposition parties with as many as 80 opposition MPs in the Lok Sabha were not there. So the opposition is not able to create a pan-Indian uh, coalition. Many of these parties don't want to be part of your uh, alliance because they have local differences, particularly with the Congress. Do you, in a way, concede that this is still not a full-blown coalition? Razdeep, there was never intention of Honorable Leader Nitish Kumar not to invite them. Nitish Kumar, when he started contacting every political outfit of the opposition party, and he went to and approached Biju Janta Dal, he approached KCR, he met all political opposition party and argued that they should unite together. But there are certain kind of differences and there are certain kind of political situation in their state. But hopefully they will definitely come together when the 2024 election will be announced. Now what has happened in the Patna? The masses has gone are you to the. Are you telling I, I, me that I'm you still expect point. the, the masses is very Patai strong. KCR to join this alliance. The message is very strong. The message is strong to the Amit Shah event. Six months back, mm -hmm. Amit Shah ji claimed that the BJP will be winning 350 seats altogether. Now he reduced that seat by 50. And what the CSDS data suggests, if all opposition party unite and one percent vote <coughs> percent vote switch over, the BJP is not gonna form the government. We mm. all political party kept aside every kind of differences on the basis of just saving the democracy and constitutional <coughs> framework for the India. That was the message and definitely in July meeting some modality, modalities okay. will come out. And regarding KCR, Biju Jantadel and other political outfit who has not, not joined this meeting, definitely we are hopeful they will join tomorrow. The political situation may change. 
ओके यू नो इट्स इंटरेस्टिंग ओके उम्मीद पर दुनिया कायम है बट शहजाद पूना वाला वन यू हियर दिस वन सेकेंड दी अरिथमति Yes, the chemistry of a strong leader on one side versus an opposition that doesn't seem to have uh, that kind of uh, 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 a broader agreement may work to your advantage. But the arithmetic, when the Shiv Sena, NCP, Congress come together in Maharashtra, when the JDU, uh, uh, RJD, and Congress come together in Bihar, they all put you under some kind of uh, you know uh, under the scanner, under the cosh. You're then going to have to push to get 51 percent of the vote. and these are states where you did very well in 2019 for the bjp therefore you cannot now uh, be complacent if this alliance comes together the arithmetic in some key states works against you uh, first of all rajdeep when are we ever complacent and you would remember that the strongest alliance on paper the sp bsp alliance was made in uttar pradesh what was the result In 2018, all of these people, like Bhain Mayawati has described, hand me hand, dal kar ye kade the, dil to nahi mile. 2019 me kya hua? But I am not saying in this in a spirit of arrogance. I am saying that zero plus zero equals to zero. What can Mamta Didi, with all her efforts, add to anything in Maharashtra? Or what can NCP, with all its efforts, add to anything in Uttar Pradesh? So all of them coming together are only coming for one purpose. Look, Rajdeep, today vision and mission of Prime Minister Modi. Has taken the economy from 10 to 5. 11 crore toilets. 11 crore Kisan getting Kisan Samman Nidhi. Fastest growing economy. Bright spot hailed by United States. We have seen the kind of reception he is receiving. This is the model of vision and mission. And the other end, you have corruption, commission, family ka profession, obsession, division, television. Par ek hona. This is their entire ambition for position. They are coming together. Rajdeep, I'll just quote one shayari and I'll end my statement. That jisko samjha tha janmo ka rishta, wo निकला लम्हा जवानी का लम्हा जवानी का जिसको सोचा था बर्फ की जमी गहराई वो निकला बुलबुला पानी का लुक एट वॉट है अरे ब्रिज बनने से पहले जितेंद्र राम मांझी निकल गए कांग्रेस का प्रवक्ता बिहार में नीतीश जी को गालियां दे रहा है आम आदमी पार्टी पुटअप पोस्टर इन बिहार से नीतीश का भरोसा मत कीजिए फगेट एवरीथिंग एल्स साकेत गोखले पार्टी मिस्टर यशवंत सिन्हा यू मस्ट है ट्वीट यू मस्ट है ट्वीट अगेंस्ट मिस्टर नीतीश कुमार बाई यशवंत सिन्हा One second, Rajdeep, 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 Rajdeep. Okay, you make your point. You know, I am not interrupted. Let's not have cross talk because it makes it difficult for me to anchor. Just a minute, Shahzad, Shahzad Pudawala, you made your point. No, no, Shahzad Pudawala, you made your point. I want to move on. Uh, Rohan Gupta, the elephant in the room is the Congress. You see, the Congress has to decide: is it willing to cede space in Bengal to a TMC? to in delhi and punjab to aam aadmi party in uh, uttar pradesh to the samajwadi party possibly in the future in telangana to kcr or in uh, odisha to a biju janata dal is the congress willing to cede space there's a belief that the congress still is not fully committed to this alliance because it wants to wait for the winter elections is the congress the believe that it is the driver of this alliance led by a rahul gandhi is that what the congress would want to see is the congress clear that whoever if this alliance wins an election the prime minister will be a congress person possibly rahul gandhi see rajdeep first of all uh, shahzad has habit and passion of showing the screen let me show his own video of 2017 where he was criticizing bjp and mr modi so can i ask mr shahzad's question what changed in 7 uh, years so let us not go into past rajdeep i have got 10 Sir, Shaidi is and things. Rajdeep, let me answer that question. Rajdeep, let me answer that question. Don't talk in between. So, no, 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 Shaidi, one minute. Is Rajdeep, no, 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 no. Shaidi, 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 Shaidi,
in the interest speak. of a fair debate, give me 20 seconds. In the interest of no, a fair I debate. Will, we have enough fairness. We no, have no, I will let you speak later, later Shahzad. But, but I want to come, please, just a minute. I want to come to Priyanka. I want to come to Priyanka Chaturvedi. Priyanka Chaturvedi, the Shiv Sena is an example. No, no, just a minute. I will let you, I will let you give you a final word, Mr. Punawala, at the end, also to defend yourself. But Priyanka Chaturvedi, do you see this? What is this common minimum program that will bring all these parties together? Tell me what is it? Is it to, you know, save the constitution as you are saying it? Is it at the end of the day, plain and simple anti-Modiism? That you all believe that so long as Mr. Modi is there, you will have very little political space. You need to take him down. You believe he is running a one-man show. Is that what it's all about? Anti-Modiism. No. <laughs> No, no, uh, this entire idea of anti-Modiism is only a media-created hype of someone who has just spectacularly lost an election in Karnataka. He was out there. There was no phase in Karnataka of the BJP. He was leading from the front and he lost so massively. So, to continue to assume oh, this is anti-Modiism, I think that's actually disregarding what a large chunk of India's population feels about the governing party right now. And it's also ignoring the fact that there are many regional parties who are governing their states respectively. And there are very few uh, states which are under the government of uh, the BJP. So don't, don't, don't just make this about anti-Modi. This is about, I said this in the opening comments, no, but this is, is it monkey more difficult, versus is it more difficult? Is it and more difficult to ally for a... Ma'am, ma'am, is it more difficult... No, no, Priyanka Chaturvedi, is it more difficult though to ally for a Lok Sabha election than it is in a state election? In a state election, you have a clear target. In a Lok Sabha election, the compromises that will have to be made nationally are enormous if you are to have 350 or 400 one-on-one -on -one fights. Firstly... No, no, firstly, firstly, this entire thing of, you know, calling it a compromise, I think that's another ridiculous word to use because these are strategic choices that we are making. There's a strategy in place that this is the way we have to ensure okay. that we will, uh, you know, let this government, which is only doing its monkey bath, go, go out. So these are strategic choices. Now, for, for, for you to say the Congress is not doing this, the Ahmadi Party is not playing ball, uh, Congress wants to lead it, no one has spoken any of it. And these are teething issues. This was the very first meeting coming together of 11, uh, 16 political parties, which constitute 25% of Lok Sabha, 38% of Rajya Sabha. And they have over 1100 MLAs in their respective states. Are we just making this about anti Modi? No, we are making it as a strong opposition, not just okay. a strong opposition, a strong idea of India, which believes it's an inclusive uh, idea of what India has stood for, for its democracy, for its constitution. So that is what we are talking about. Okay. This is a monkey bath versus junkie bath. We are going okay. to be doing the junkie uh, bath. I, and for I, that, I, we have I, to make strategic okay. choices. I, 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 I one one strong, alliance partner has to take a step back. Numbers we'll you give. Okay. Okay. Uh, Saket Gokhale, if one alliance partner has to take a step back, we will do it. Does Mamta Banerjee have faith in the Congress, in, in Rahul Gandhi's leadership? In the past, the indications has been that she's never been fully on the same page as Mr. Gandhi and the Congress party. She's got an Adir Chaudhary in Bengal targeting her every day. Does Mamta Banerjee trust Rahul Gandhi and the Congress? And will she work under their leadership? Mr. Sardesai, again, as, as, as Ms. Chaturvedi rightly said, who are you to insinuate that every party will have to work under the Congress's leadership or somebody else's leadership? Where is this coming from? We have not yet said we are going to work under X's leadership or Y's leadership. Number one. Number two. Yes, whoever leads the Congress is their issue. That is their internal decision. As far as Mamta Banerjee is concerned, as far as the Trinamool Congress is concerned, we are extremely comfortable and happy to work with the Congress, with the Aadmi Party, with the Shiv Sena UBT, with the JDU, with the RJD, with the CPM. That is precisely what, I mean, if after today's meeting, if we are asking such basic questions about whether we can work together, then I don't know. I mean, maybe there has been some confusion here. These parties got together for four hours today. We met. Okay. We said they are going to, we are going to meet again in Shimla. I think by now that should be very clear that yes, these parties have agreed to work together. And number two, please again stop this thing about saying, will you work under XYZ party's leadership? Please allow us as the opposition to decide who is going to lead what and who is going to be facing which election where. We have not delegated that task to the media or to the BJP to decide who will lead the alliance. Okay.
Okay, we, you know, I, I'm not deciding for you. It's for you to decide how you want to forge your alliance. But Mr. Exactly. Punawala, you were yeah. targeted, and yeah. uh, Rohan Gupta said, "Who? No, no, one minute, Mr. Punawala, you were targeted because uh, uh, Rohan Gupta said, who are you to tell us what uh, what we said about whom five right. or seven years ago? Right. Five or seven years ago, you were with the Congress Party right. attacking Mr. Modi night and day. Right. Today, you are seen as a Modi cheerleader." So Absolutely. our political parties yeah. or individuals not entitled to change their opinion. Circumstances As change. You change. They are also entitled to change. How can you take the moral high ground on this debate at all? I am entitled to change as much as Priyanka Chaturvedi is entitled to change her opinion about the BMC and Shiv Sena. Of course, we all are entitled to do that. But let me tell you that what is fundamental to their politics. Let me bring that issue up because it's not about anti-Modism according to Priyanka ji. But for them, an issue core to Bala Sahib's Vichardhara was Article 370. I challenge you, Rajdeep, if this is not about anti-Modism, ask all of them to take the position on Article 370's abrogation. Ask each one of them, starting from TMC to Shiv Sena, Uddhav Thakre faction, to Congress, what do they think about the abrogation of Article 370? Forget that. Here, let me show you another statement from India Today. I feel, believe India Today is a very credible organization. Here's Should the GMK leadership. Rajdeep, no, I did not interrupt. Rajdeep, I request you, I beseech you. No, you didn't I answer did not my interrupt. question, Shazad. Yeah. Yes, what do you I didn't need to answer, answer my Please question. I am you answering didn't all your answer questions my question. At, at my... You didn't answer my question. What, if what you shift your answer? stand, Please if answer. you Please shift your stand, they are entitled right. to shift their stand too. Rajdeep, let me explain to you the fundamental difference. My opinion, allegedly five years ago about a personality and their political issue of existence, are two different things. Unless Rajdeep, your journalism thinks that what Shahzad Punawala thought about Rajdeep five years ago and Rajdeep today is as fundamental as Uddhav Thakre Sena's political philosophy on which it is existing. If you equate the two, then it's your uh, sense of judgment. But let me make a larger point, Rajdeep, and I hope you won't interrupt me. Rajdeep, okay. here is the DMK, which was invited to 30 today. seconds. Yes. Rajdeep, the DMK statements. Biharis are less brainy. You know, One second, sir. Rajdeep, this is not this fair. Is very old Rajdeep, this is not fair. Stand Rajdeep, what is happening? Rajdeep, this is your very recently I, is that I seek your he, immunity, he was Rajdeep. Rajdeep, labor, I seek your immunity. Of the Rajdeep, Bihar they are sitting in a studio. This is not fair, Rajdeep. This is very old Rajdeep, article. This is not fair. Thing. This is Rajdeep, very old. Why are you making this out, Rajdeep? It is no, my no, no, turn this to is speak. very old. This is a gimmick. Rajdeep, what are you allowing? This is the gimmick. This is my turn to speak, Rajdeep. They can't lie. No, I am not speaking in order today. I am in Patna today. I cannot hear noise. I am on a rainy day in Patna. I cannot hear today. I didn't want personal charges to be made of this guy. No, no. Cross talk doesn't help us in any way. I have to close the debate because I have run completely of time. We, no, no. We will raise these issues. We will raise these issues on another day, not today. Uh, Priyanka Chaturvedi, though, I must ask you since a direct question was posed. Article 370. Where does the Shiv Sena stand? Can you be with a Mehbooba Mufti and an Omar Abdullah on the same platform? This is not fair. Very quickly. I request you do I have also this. told you Why that we have, we have a very different happen. opinion from Mehbooba Mufti. And we will continue to do that. We stand by Article 370. Uh, but our question, please okay. allow me to complete. I, Mr. Poonawala, it was a fight between you and the Congress spokesperson and you unnecessarily dragged me into your personal attacks. I don't, I don't appreciate those. All right, so secondly, I just want to say one thing. We stand by our stance on 370. We will continue to stand by our stance. But our question is very simple. When are you going to hold an election in Jammu and Kashmir if peace is prevailing? When are you going to bring the Kashmiri Pandits back home? And that is a fight Bala Sahib Thakre Ji has been fighting, had been fighting ever since Kashmiri Pandits were thrown out of their homes. What is BJP doing about it? So before okay. they come and try and show this, you know, this okay. uh, uh, mirror to somebody, okay. remember they are the biggest hypocrites who are governing the country right now. Talking about ideology. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. There's a lot, you know, before it gets far, far too personal, I'm sorry that I couldn't get enough of each and every one of you. I think I've given a sense, though, through this debate of what the challenges are lying ahead towards 2024. The BJP will target the opposition saying it's a gathering of compromised individuals who've got serious charges against them. The opposition is going to say the BJP has compromised constitutional values of the country. You decide because you will be the voters. Let's take a break. When we return, a little bit of good news. You're watching the news today. This special from Patna.
software engineer meets the gifted content writer, meets the cool UI UX designer, meets the talented photographer to create the big dream. The world comes together at Sharda University. So where are you? forecast now. Delhi, maximum 42 and minimum 27 degrees. Mumbai, maximum 30 and minimum 28 degrees. Kolkata, maximum 35 and minimum 26 degrees. Bangalore, maximum 30 and minimum 21 degrees. Chennai, maximum 32 and minimum 27 degrees. Hyderabad, maximum 28 and minimum 24 degrees. Why does this happen? Let me tell you the science behind it. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today News Mo. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at Sales at Arjtag.com Welcome back, you're with the news today. Let's turn to our good news today story, which is about a green warrior. Only in this instance, the green warrior is actually a minister. The Karnataka minister, M.B. Patil, in his constituency of Vijaypura, has clocked a rather unique distinction, planting one crore trees. Take a look at tonight's good news story. Karnataka is aiming to plant one crore trees in Vijaypura district under its ambitious Koti Vriksha Abhyan. A brainchild of Minister M.B. Patil, the forestation push had started in 2016. The drive is crucial for Vijaypura with an abysmal 0.17% green cover instead of the ideal 33% forest cover. The first sapling was planted by Shant Malikarjun Swamiji of Gyan Yogashram. He also took an oath to protect the green cover, which includes native species like banyan, neem, peepal, amla, etc. Raitarge sasigalanu vitarne mardu ser kondu. Yalla sangha samsthegalge shala college galge no sasigalanu vitarne mard lagide. Idalde nau ilaka vati intra. The Koti Vriksha Abhyan project is supported by State Forest Department, over 50 NGOs and societies. Many organizations and educational institutions have pledged to contribute, adopt or plant the saplings. Karnataka Raja Sarkara Vandu Yabhyana Dolaga Raitarage one the Walla Yojana Haiku got to Raitara one the Punar Jivanaka one the Dari di Pagaranta Helikan and Yotin Bestene Sarkar the Yojane, you the Walla one the Yojane, either Ali Siguanta, Sashigal and Yuga, all the way Kantira, Sashigal and Kortaro. 
with a mega effort to plant trees and revive its green lungs. It may not be long before Vijaypura breathes easy. With Nagar Jundwarkanath in Vijaypura, Bureau Report, India Today. Okay, that's it on the show tonight, but I want to leave you with our image of the day or our quote of the day. Now, one of the uh, features of the opposition meeting today was the return of Lalu Prasad. He's been unwell for months, in fact, for a very long time, and was finally there, and he spoke at the very end of the press conference, and he had a message for Rahul Gandhi. Get married. Listen in to Lalu Prasad. You stay well, stay safe. Good night. Shubhratri. Jai Hind. Namaskar, one and only Lal Prasad. Bye for now. बात तो हम लोग आप सलाह माने नहीं भी आ नहीं कि आप शादी कर लेना चाहिए था और अभी भी समय गया अभी तक नहीं है शादी करिए और हम लोग बराती चले और शादी करिए बात मानिए आपके मम्मी मम्मी हमको मारते कैसे तो उधर हाँ अब एकदम पक्का करना पड़ेगा मम्मी आपके बोलते थे कि आप हमारा बात नहीं मानता शादी करवाइए आप changing for the sector as a whole uh, no i think that's uh, that's quite true right uh, these stocks corrected in 2021 because of the valuation worries right we were entering a bear market a volatile time and these stocks corrected because they were highly valued but what has happened right now is that all these stocks have started delivering in terms of revenue growth in terms of you know improving their margins and you know the path to profitability remains uh, you know visible in the you know near term in the next few years right so i think this is an extremely exciting team right if these stocks can turn around their uh, valuations right so they become favorites of brokerage houses that they are already becoming so i think it's a very exciting team and you know i would be uh, quite positive about it uh, this sector especially because the fii's are also coming in and buying and uh, mutual funds are supporting it and there seems to be a very very positive uh, you know secular story about this so sonam which will be your topics from this basket from the new age space so i think there are uh, quite a few exciting stocks obviously you know paytm is doing extremely well and you know zomato is a favorite among i think a lot of fund houses obviously they, we also received a news that softbank is selling uh, shares in paytm and zomato around right in the open market so that might uh, bring on some correction for these stocks but i think you know in the near to long term this uh, now this is a lot of potential for these stocks so do you think zomato at 74 if somebody buys right now can actually aim for a target of 100 rupees or so i think uh, i think that is achievable but uh, that would totally depend on the earnings coming out of zomato in the next mm. quarter sure right? Sure, absolutely. Even for Paytm, you know, we've seen a surge of about 90 odd percent from its all-time right. low levels as well. Uh, how much more potential would this stock have? Uh, can it really reach the IPO levels and then beyond it as well? I think definitely. And again, like similar to Zomato, the numbers would govern its future. Right? Like uh, the totally everybody on the street is just watching for the profitability numbers. and i think they are delivering on it and if they can do that then we can see you know massive massive growth from it
पावर्ड बाय बजाज आलियांस लाइफ डायबेटिक टर्म प्लान टाटा मोटर्स न्यू फॉर एवर निपॉन इंडिया म्यूचुअल फंड वेल्थ सेट्स यू फ्री एक्स्ट्रा सेफ पॉली कैब ग्रीन वायर डिप्लोमेसी दोस्ती एंड डिनर प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी एंड बाइडन टोस्ट टू टू ग्रेट पावर्स टेक एंड इंडस्ट्री हॉन्चोज लाइन अप ऑल आईज नाउ ऑन द बिग डायस पोरा एड्रेस transforming india us ties our top focus on india first technology cooperation from defense to space from semiconductors to cyber security dominate the visit of prime minister narendra modi to the united states the relationship between india and the us is being hailed as transformation after the state dinner dinner all eyes now on the state lunch being hosted by the us vice president kamala harris and the secretary of state antony blinken at the state department and there of course there is the diaspora event a trademark now of prime minister narendra modi's overseas visits we get you the best ground reports we get you the best analysis union minister of state science and technology Dr Jitendra Singh joins me on India First we shall talk in greater detail about what this cooperation means sir welcome on the show i am gorav savant as always let's get started with the headlines at 10 16 opposition parties attend the mega gathbandhan meet in patna promise to fight 2024 elections together against the bjp after patna the second opposition meeting is to be held in shimla opposition likely to prepare a common minimum program in the second meeting but the delhi ordinance fight casts its shadow of the opposition meet aam aadmi party hits out at the congress arvind kejriwal skips the joint opposition press conference says must act like a team player after a five day intensive hunt in the atlantic ocean all five civilians on board ocean gates submersible declared dead the india us partnership is a lot is a lot to do with the latest technologies being shared between india and the united states and we are getting you this first meeting that's taking place at the white house the tech partnership extremely important top ceos of india and the united states are there at this tech meeting there is a round table discussion uh, which is India US trade relationship uh, this round table has Satya Nadella uh, CEO of Microsoft and Anand Mahindra chairman of the Mahindra group there's also Sundar Pichai CEO of Google and Sam Altman CEO of Open AI then there is one on manufacturing and semiconductors uh, Re- Revathi Advanti is the CEO of Flex Lisa Su is the CEO of AMD uh, there's Tim Cook CEO of Apple and mukesh ambani chairman and managing director of reliance industries extremely extremely critical partnership uh, expected even here uh, between india and the united states of america uh, act, there's of course uh, cooperation in agriculture cooperation in space uh, also startup ecosystem and financing uh, 
eight key elements of the technology partnership. I want to cut across to India today's Abhishek Bhalla for more on this as we wait for our news director Rahul Kamal to join us uh, from Washington DC. This is an extremely, extremely critical aspect of India-US relationship, not a buyer-seller relationship, Abhishek. This is all about high-end technology being made available to India and co-development of high-end technology for the two countries and for the world. Bring us details. What's the conversation, Abhishek? Gaurav, uh, the big thrust uh, of uh, this visit is in fact uh, critical technologies and sharing of uh, uh, information and uh, technology uh, with each other. And uh, this particular roundtable that is happening, it has a mix of uh, Indian uh, industry honchos as well as uh, American uh, uh, big industry captains, also some of them uh, fr uh, who are present uh, in this uh, round table are part of the Indian diaspora and they are all representing uh, those uh, important industries, sectors uh, where cooperation has been discussed, uh, be it uh, the semiconductor industry, be it uh, space cooperation, uh, be it agriculture. So it's uh, very clear that uh, Prime Minister Modi is taking time out uh, to make sure he spends enough time uh, with uh, the industry honchos uh, and, 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 and try to convince them and get a sense of uh, what's the way forward and uh, draw up a sort of a blueprint uh, to make sure that all these things that have been discussed in the bilaterals can actually be implemented on the ground. Absolutely right and this is huge, this is huge, uh, the technology cooperation that India and the United States are talking about, not just technology uh, cooperation but jointly developing new technology, investments in technology, investment in education, both in India and in the United States of America. So the effort is to have an entire ecosystem uh, take this forward. If I could just read, um, you know, Strengthening the semiconductor supply chain. What do we know? So Micron Technology with support from the India Semiconductor Mission will invest more than $800 million towards a new $2.75 billion semiconductor assembly and test facility to be set up in India. And the applied material will build a semiconductor sector for commercialization and innovation in India to strengthen the two nations' semiconductor supply chain diversification. This supply chain diversification becomes extremely critical also from the strategic point of view given China's expansionism, Abhishek. Precisely, Gaurav, and that's why, uh, you know, the focus uh, of uh, this visit is uh, not just uh, trade cooperation and uh, doing business with each other, uh, but uh, both the leaders, uh, be it uh, President Biden or uh, Prime Minister Modi, on more than one instance uh, have uh, mentioned that uh, this is a global strategic partnership and uh, not just uh, defence cooperation, even if you look at other sectors, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's quite clear uh, that there is a larger goal of uh, being strategic partners. How this pans out uh, in time to come is uh, something that needs to be seen because this means a big shift from uh, India's foreign policy on several other uh, critical aspects. Uh, but being a strategic partner with the United States of America, which both leaders have said, is definitely uh, the way forward considering some of the geopolitical events that have taken place. Uh, perhaps no, the this US, is uh, truly, truly transformative, Abhishek. I mean, just hear this out. Applied material will build a semiconductor center for commercialization and innovation in India to strengthen the two nations' semiconductor supply chain. LAM research is to train 60,000 60, Indian engineers to accelerate India's semiconductor education and workforce development goal. Uh, point one, critical min uh, minerals partnership, advanced telecommunication. India and the United States have launched public-private joint task force on the development uh, and deployment of open RAN systems on advanced telecom research and development. So you have India's Bharat 6G and the US Next Generation G Alliance uh, will co-lead this public-private research and the work will reduce cost, increase security and improve resilience in telecommunications. Again, Abhishek, effort is as quickly as possible eliminate China from telecommunication for security. India took that bold decision in 5G, now 6G. Gaurav, uh, the entire paradigm shift definitely, uh, you know, has uh, China 
uh, as as a focal point because uh, remember whatever has been happening uh, 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 as far as geopolitics is concerned uh, be it vis-a-vis uh, -vis India or the kind of interest that uh, the Americans have uh, in uh, in, uh, in areas uh, where China is being okay give me a moment give me a moment I want to cut across and listen in to what's happening at the White House स्टेट will go a long way in my view to define what the 21st century looks like and our technology technological cooperation will be a big part of defining our partnership our partnership so, so look forward to continuing working with all of you and on our voyage of discovery as was referenced and uh, to building a better future and I want to thank all the CEOs again for being here and uh, with that I'm going to turn it over to the prime minister to say nice things about me <laughs> President Biden and uh, all friends here in a way uh, saying Sometimes it's a little difficult to say too much in front of all the press uh, present here. But first of all, I would like to thank uh, President Biden for participating in this event. And uh, you have seen that from agriculture to space, uh, there are all the sectors represented here that touch our lives in every way. And uh, technology uh, is uh, something that touches our lives. And all technology sectors are represented here. And uh, there are well established firms here and startups here as well and both of them uh, can uh, work to, are working together to create a new world and I'm very pleased that under the leadership of President Biden technology uh, understanding the importance of uh, technology the progress that America has made in the area of technology and uh, the youth in India thanks to its talent has created an identity for itself in the world so this uh, coming together of uh, talent and technology ये सुबह कुछ ही मित्रों के बीच की है लेकिन ये सुबह उज्जवल भविष्य की गारंटी लेकर के आई और मैं राष्ट्रपति बायरन का इस महत्वपूर्ण भले ही छोटी लेकिन मैं कहता हूं ये होनहार है ये शानदार है और ये धारदार भी है और ये आने वाले भविष्य को बनाने वाली है और इसलिए ये उज्जवल भविष्य की आशा अपेक्षा के संकल्प के साथ हम सब लोग राष्ट्रपति बाइडन का जो विजन है भारत के जो एस्पिरेशन है राष्ट्रपति बाइडन के पास जो ताकत है और भारत के पास जो संभावना है उन सबको लेकर के आगे चलने का एक मक्कम निर्धार का ये अवसर है और इसके लिए मैं सचमुच में मेरे मित्र रहमन को बहुत अभिनंदन करता हूं कि उन्होंने भारत की यात्रा की काफी समय निकाला और उन्होंने खुद ने जो अनुभव किया और उन्होंने आकर के यहाँ इसको आगे बढ़ाया मैं आपका भी आभारी हूँ राष्ट्रपति वायरन जी का जितना आभार करूँ उतना कम है मैं फिर एक बार आप सबका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करता हूँ बहुत धन्यवाद और यहाँ आने के लिए आपका भी धन्यवाद अब प्रेस के लिए लगभग समाप्त हो गया है 
So this is a very, very critical meeting uh, that was taking place. This is called the Tech Handshake. All top CEOs of India, um, major CEOs, uh, uh, tech company CEOs of the United States and India in one room with the Prime Minister of India and the President of the United States of America at the White House. The signal is very clear. The best technology that's available to be harnessed, to be used together. Uh, are all the sectors represented here that touch our lives in every way. And uh, technology uh, is uh, something that touches our lives and all technology sectors are represented here. And uh, there are well established firms here and startups here as well. And both of them uh, can uh, work to, are working together to create a new world. And I'm very pleased that under the leadership of President Biden, technology, uh, understanding the importance of uh, technology, the progress that America has made in the area of technology, and uh, the youth in India, thanks to its talent, has created an identity for itself in the world. So this uh, coming together of uh, talent and technology, I believe this uh, is definitely a guarantee for a कुछ ही मित्रों के बीच की है, लेकिन ये शुभ है उज्जवल भविष्य की गारंटी लेकर के आए और मराठों की आयता इस महत्वपूर्ण भले छोटी हो, लेकिन मैं कहता हूँ ये होनहार है, ये शानदार है और ये धारदार भी है और ये आने वाले भविष्य को बनाने वाली है और इसलिए ये उज्जवल भविष्य की आशा अपेक्षा के संकल्प के साथ हम सब लोग राष्ट्रपति बाइडेन का जो विजन है भारत के जो एस्पिरेशन है राष्ट्रपति बाइडेन के पास जो ताकत है और भारत के पास जो संभावना है उन सब को लेकर के आगे चलने का एक मक्कम निर्धार का ये अवसर है so there have been many agreements between India and the United States of America uh, from the production of the G414 fighter jet engines in India to tech transfer to drone deals to space cooperation and a manned mission to the International Space Station. Cooperation in healthcare, cooperation in agriculture, cooperation in computer chip manufacturing in India. Joining me for more on this big story on the Prime, Minister, uh, Prime Minister's ongoing U.S. trip and the initiative is Dr. Jitendra Singh, Minister of State, Independent Charge, Science and Technology in the Narendra Modi government. Uh, Dr. Jitendra Singh, welcome on India First. Which one of these many agreements, and I believe there are 20 to 25 areas of cooperation in technology, according to you, which one do you truly find transformational and not just a transaction between India and the U.S.? I think uh, many of them, most of them, and most importantly, perhaps the space-related uh, uh, ones. And uh, to put it in a single sentence, I would say that if uh, they, there is a, uh, the world is celebrating the Indo-US relationship uh, during the Prime Minister Modi's visit, uh, the ongoing visit today, the celebration was seen in even happening in the space. So, and uh, what gives a lot of gratification, vindication, and also a lot of satisfaction is the fact that. We in India started our space journey much, much after the U.S. did. Yes. In fact, when we started our space journey, U.S. was already on the verge of landing a human being on the surface of the moon, which they finally did in 1969 in the form of Neil Armstrong, whereas we were still singing nursery rhymes, Chanda Mama Durke, etc., etc. And we were so deficient with our resources that you would see the uh, earlier pictures in the archives of Vikram Sarabhai carrying a launcher on the carrier of his bicycle. But in the last eight, nine years, it's been a quantum jump. And quantum jump has not happened for nothing. It's happened because a lot of out-of-box decisions were taken by Prime Minister Modi to, you know, um, to, to enable us to become a global player. For example, the space sector was open to the private players. We have more than 150 startups working in collaboration with ISRO today. Okay. And today, 
what has happened or the agreements that you have arrived at are also an indication of the fact that India today is an equal partner as far as our space missions are concerned. It's no longer as we look up to America as was being done by most of the countries till a few years ago, even including India. Now the Americans also look up to us uh, they, to share our inputs, to share our expertise. For example, if Neil Armstrong was the first American to land on the surface of the moon, it was our mission called Chandrayaan which brought home the pictures of the presence of water on the surface of moon. So we are now equally sharing partnership. Okay, but Minister on space cooperation, while well, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said even sky is not the limit, but bring give us details, sir, of the agreement between uh, the Indian Space Research Organization between ISRO and NASA uh, and plans to send an Indian astronaut to the International Space Station. Uh, is are we are we keeping the 2024 uh, uh, you know timeline on this? And then what would this then mean? for the Gaganyaan project uh, or the cooperation that we are having with the Russian cosmonauts? Yes, uh, yeah, to uh, avoid any confusion happening, I'm glad that you put up that question. See, Gaganyaan is already uh, in the pipeline. It's, been, it's followed a timeline which was expected, of course, we got delayed on account of uh, uh, COVID. We missed the timeline. We had initially planned it to be 2022 or so. Now we will have first two unmanned missions followed by the final manned mission. The, our astronauts have already been trained uh, in the Gregory Training Center, Russia. On the other hand, the, the International Space Station is something which uh, Americans had already been uh, operating. It's located somewhere about uh, three, uh, uh, 250 uh, miles uh, away from the surface of uh, Earth because uh, Americans follow the metric system of miles unlike us as we follow kilometers. Yes. And therefore from there it becomes easier for them to access the uh, various uh, nuances and uh, discover the s smaller details uh, uh, in relation to Moon and thereafter subsequently with the other planets like Mars etc. And the next mission which is I think planned to be 2024, uh, they hope to have an Indian along with them. Now, how it's worked out is something that will uh, be shown in the course of time, will be worked out in the course of time. But okay. yes, in principle, we have agreed to be part of that. And, uh, and I think the, the, the most important part is that uh, it's not only we who look forward, is the, the Americans also look forward to us. And that is also evident from Artemis Accord, because uh, US had been for quite some time keen uh, to engage India in this, it's uh, on our part that we were still trying to deliberate on uh, certain nuances and finally it has happened. Okay. Dr. Jitendra Singh, if we were to look at some of the MOUs that have been uh, signed and some of the announcements that have been made, uh, if we were to specifically talk of the GEF 414 uh, fighter jet engine deal, uh, you know, that's being seen as uh, a big transformation that America is giving India the jet engine technology or, or at least manufacture that aircraft uh, engine in India. Do we have a timeline? Do we have a timeline? Okay, I quickly want to cut across... Uh, to the state, to the state uh, lunch. And it will be lasting. And it underscores that these aspirations for a better future are ones that we share and ones that we depend upon each other to help realize. That's why when President Eisenhower became the first American president to visit India, he told your parliament that the welfare of America is bound up with the welfare of India. Over the past several decades, the United States and India have been advancing the vision of greater interdependence, brought closer by administrations of different parties in both of our countries. Having worked for President Biden for over 20 years, I know that his belief in this partnership is longstanding and his commitment to delivering on its promise is unwavering. And during the last two and a half years, we've transformed the relationship between our countries. We are working closer together on more issues than ever before. From semiconductors to space, from education to food security, the energy, ambition, and potential of our cooperation is boundless. The United States and India have become, as the Prime Minister has put it, indispensable partners. And that partnership, President Biden has said, is a defining relationship of the 21st century. Together. We're promoting greater peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific and around the globe. Combating disease, responding to natural disasters, strengthening the maritime security, 
standing up for the principles at the heart of the United Nations Charter. We're working to safeguard our planet for future generations, developing affordable solar panels and sustainable aviation fuels. We're driving opportunity and innovation from the entrepreneurs powering our economies to the U.S. companies investing in India and vice versa. And the cutting edge research that we're jointly advancing from quantum to artificial intelligence is helping to sustain our technological edge and shaping a digital future that safeguards democratic values. Here in the United States, India is part of our daily lives. We enjoy uh, Jhumpa Lahiri's novels over samosas. <laughs> we laugh at the comedies of Mindy Kaling. We dance to the beats of Diljit at Coachella. And yes, Mr. Prime Minister, and I can say this from personal experience, we keep ourselves more or less fit and healthy doing yoga. <laughs> the United States is endlessly enriched by our thriving Indian diaspora. Doctors, teachers, engineers, business leaders, public servants, almost all of whom, it seemed, were on the White House lawn yesterday to greet you. And so many of whom are here with us today. Leaders, of course, like Vice President Harris, whose mother came from <laughs> coming here to help unlock the secrets of cancer. Or diplomats right here at the State Department, where a man whose father came to America with just a bus ticket and $14 in his pocket, rose to become the first United States Indian American ambassador to India. And today, Richard Rahul Verma serves as the Deputy Secretary of State. The highest ranking Indian American official in the department's history. And, Mr. Prime Minister, that ultimately is maybe the strongest bond that unites us. As you glimpsed in your earliest travels here, uh, whether we call it the American dream, whether we call it the Indian dream, whether it's the son of an immigrant from Jalandhar rising through the State Department, or a tea seller becoming Prime Minister, our people believe profoundly in opportunity, that no matter who we are or where we come from, we can make something more of ourselves. So, please join me in raising a glass to our shared hopes for the future and to the U.S.-India partnership that will help make those hopes a reality. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you the Vice President of the United States. Thank you. Mr. Secretary. Madam Ryan, thank you for hosting us here yet again. It is the honor of Doug and mine to be with you, uh, honoring the friendship and the importance of the relationship between India and the United States. Prime Minister Modi, we are honored to welcome you. We also welcome the members of the President's Cabinet who are here and all of the members of Congress who are here, including Speaker Emerita Pelosi, Chairman McCall, And welcome to all of our distinguished guests. As I look around this room, I am struck by the extraordinary impact Indian Americans have had on our country in every facet of life. Take, for example, the historic number of members of the United States Congress with Indian heritage. Representatives Ami Bera, if you're here, please stand. Jayapal, Rokana, Raja 
Krishnamurti and Sri Tanda. And uh, they're known as the Samosa Caucus for those of you who did not know. <laughs> And around our country, we see the impact of Indian Americans from the C-suites of American companies to neighborhood businesses, from the studios of Hollywood to university research labs across our country. So as many of you know, India is a very important part of my life. When my sister Maya and I were growing up, our mother would take us from the Bay Area to India pretty much every other year. And the purpose of those trips were many, including that we would well understand where she came from, what produced her, so that we could spend time with our grandparents, with my uncle and our titties, and um, to really understand the love of good idli. <laughs> and we traveled to visit my grandparents in what was then called Madras. And I will tell you, my grandfather was one of the most favorite people in my life, truly. We were pen pals, in fact, throughout my childhood. And I was the eldest grandchild. And so, as I'm sure many of you know, culturally, to be the eldest has a certain significance. And so I took full advantage of that status in our family. <laughs> And my grandfather, of course, convinced me, as he did, I think, every one of his grandchildren, that we were his favorite. <laughs> Yet, on those visits, I was the only member of our family that my grandfather allowed to join him for his morning routine. You see, by the time that we were going there as children, my grandfather was retired from his career as a civil servant. And his morning routine, every morning, consisted of taking long walks on the beach with his retired buddies. And they, as retired civil servants, would debate the issues of the day. So I would hold my grandfather's hand on these walks and listen intently to him and his friends. And I will tell you, as a young girl, I don't think I fully appreciated the essence and the import of the debates that they would have. But I did clearly understand and do recall stories about the freedom fighters and the nation's founding heroes and about the independence of India. I remember them talking about the importance of fighting corruption and fighting for equality regardless of one's belief or caste. Throughout these walks, I recall my grandfather teaching me lessons about not just what it means to have a democracy, but to keep a democracy. And I do believe it is these lessons that I learned at a very young age that first inspired my interest in public service. And I look back now and I do fully realize how much these conversations influenced me and my thinking and how they have guided me ever since. In fact, it is a large part of who I am today. These lessons I learned from my grandfather, P. V. Gopalan, and from the dedication, determination, and courage of his daughter, my mother, Shamala. And it is that being the reason that I stand before you today as Vice President of the United States. teachings in India and of India have not only influenced me, they of course have shaped the entire globe, as Secretary Lincoln just described. Throughout history, India has inspired millions of people around the world, whether through philosophy and theology, the power of civil disobedience, or the commitment to democracy. Indeed, as I travel the world as Vice President, I have seen India's global impact firsthand. In Southeast Asia, Indian-made vaccines have saved lives and livelihoods. On the continent of Africa, India's long-standing partnerships support prosperity and security. And throughout the Indo-Pacific, 
India helps promote a free and open region. I also know of India's extraordinary impact with regard to innovation, medicine, and science. I know this as a daughter of California. I know this as a former district attorney, attorney general, and senator who has worked on technology with leaders in Silicon Valley. And I know this, of course, as a daughter of a scientist. My mother, at the age of 19, arrived in the United States by herself as part of the first wave of Indian students to travel here. She chose UC Berkeley because it was known as being one of the best universities in the world. And growing up, I remember my mother, our mother, spending day and night and weekends in the lab. She always asked the big questions and searched for the answers that would be a clue to improving the condition of life. She understood what was possible, unburdened by what has been. And since then, I think about it in the context of the work she did and her studies that have led to advances in breast cancer research, and I think about it in the context of the millions of Indian students who have come to the United States since to collaborate with American researchers, to solve the challenges of our time, and to reach new frontiers. Indian innovators have made great strides in engineering and computer programming. They've sent a mission to Mars, and they have launched and led technology companies that are global leaders in the areas of autonomous vehicles, robotics, cybersecurity, climate data, and digital finance all of which can serve to improve the human condition and uplift the people. The point here being, India's global engagement has not only been to the benefit of the people of India, but also to the benefit of the people of the United States and people around the world. So Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for your role of leadership to help India emerge as a global power in the 21st century. You have helped to reinvigorate the Quad. Your leadership of the G20 is making new strides on climate finance. And you have been a proponent of international institutions and global solutions to global challenges. And as a point of personal privilege, as chair of the National Space Council, I thank you for your leadership in space and for our joint work on an Earth science satellite, which will help us address the climate crisis. And I will also thank you, because when you and I first met at the White House, I asked you to join the Artemis Accords, a commitment to the safe and transparent use of space. And today, I am happy to report, as you have, that you have joined the Artemis Accords. So, Prime Minister Modi, President Joe Biden and I are grateful for your commitment to strengthen the ties and the relationships between the United States and India. And we share that commitment. Under your leadership and that of President Biden, our partnership has become more expansive than it has ever been. Over the past two and a half years, you and I have advanced cooperation on climate, on clean energy, terrorism, cybercrime, public health, and vaccine production. And during this trip, our countries have launched new areas of cooperation from artificial intelligence to semiconductors. As we look toward the future, the United States and India, the world's oldest and largest democracies, instinctively turn to each other and are increasingly aligned. So I will close with this, which is a memory, again, of my grandfather and what he taught me on those long walks. And in particular, what he taught me about the nobility of public service. Prime Minister Modi, you and I have both dedicated our careers to the noble work of public service. And so to everyone here today, I say, it is incumbent on each of us, inside of government and outside of government, to continue the fight for progress and to serve the greater good. So I raise a glass.
to the enduring bonds between our nations and our people, and to our continued work together, all in the service of the greater good. Prime Minister. Cheers. Vice President Kamala Harris, Second Gentleman Douglas M. Hawk, Secretary of State, my friend Anthony Blinken, White House Community Secretary Evan Ryan, Sabhi Sammanit Pratinidiga. फ्रेंड्स सबसे पहले तो मैं उपराष्ट्रपति कमला हैरिस और सेक्रेटरी ब्लिंकन का इस भव्य स्वागत के लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करता हूं आप दोनों ने जो गर्मजोशी भरे शब्द कहे इसके लिए भी मैं हृदय से आपका आभार व्यक्त करता हूं आज एक बार फिर स्टेट डिपार्टमेंट में आप सभी के बीच उपस्थित होना मेरे लिए खुशी की बात है पिछले तीन दिनों में मैंने अनेक बैठकों में हिस्सा लिया कई विषयों पर चर्चा की इन सभी बैठकों में एक चीज कॉमन थी सब एक मत थे कि भारत और अमेरिका के लोगों के बीच मित्रता एवं सहयोग और गहरा होना चाहिए भारत और अमेरिका के संबंधों की मधुर गीतमाला पीपल टू पीपल टाइज के सुरों से पिरोई गई है इन संबंधों का उदाहरण हमें कदम कदम पर देखने को मिलता है उपराष्ट्रपति कमला हैरिस की माताजी डॉक्टर श्यामला गोपालन 1958 में भारत से अमेरिका आई थी उस समय अधिकांश लोगों के पास फोन नहीं होता था और इसलिए उनकी माताजी हाथ से लिखकर अपने परिवारजनों को पत्र भेजा करती थी और उन्होंने कभी भी भारत से रत्ती भर नाता टूटने नहीं दिया था एक जीवंतता बनाए रखी थी जो भी उपलब्ध माध्यम था उसका सर्वाधिक उपयोग भारत को उनके अमेरिका के जीवन को निरंतर जोड़ने में लगा रहा था हजारों मीलों की दूरी के बावजूद भी भारत हमेशा उनके करीबी था मैडम वाइस प्रेसिडेंट उनकी इस प्रेरणा को आपने आज नई बुलंदियों तक पहुंचाया है आपकी उपलब्धियां केवल अमेरिका के ही नहीं भारत और पूरे विश्व की महिलाओं के लिए बहुत बड़ी प्रेरणा है बहुत प्रेरित करती है सेक्रेटरी ब्लिंकन 
जब मैंने प्रारंभ में सूर और गीतमाला जैसे शब्दों का प्रयोग किया तो मेरा एक इशारा आपकी तरफ भी था पूरा विश्व आपकी डिप्लोमेटिक स्किल्स को तो जानता ही है और मैं तो भली भांति जानने लगा हूं आपके म्यूजिकल टैलेंट के चर्चे भी बहुत है हजारों मीलों का सफर तय करते हुए गंभीर से गंभीर मसलों के बीच संगीत को आपने जगह दी है यह हम सभी के लिए बहुत प्रेरक है हमारी स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनरशिप को मजबूत करने में आपका बहुत महत्वपूर्ण योगदान है इसके लिए मैं आपको हृदय से बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देता हूं फ्रेंड्स 2014 में मेरी यात्रा के समय मेरे प्रिय मित्र राष्ट्रपति बाइडेन भी यहां स्टेट डिपार्टमेंट में मेरे साथ थे उस समय उन्होंने भारत और अमेरिका की साझेदारी को अ प्रॉमिस ओवर द होराइजन बताया था नौ वर्षों के इस अंतराल में हमने बहुत ही लंबी और खूबसूरत यात्रा की है हमने डिफेंस और स्ट्रेटेजिक क्षेत्रों में आपसी सहयोग के नए आयाम जोड़े हैं हम नई और उभरती टेक्नोलॉजी के क्षेत्र में नए विश्वास के साथ काम कर रहे हैं हम ट्रेड के लंबित और मुश्किल मुद्दों का समाधान कर रहे हैं क्वाड और आई टू यू टू जैसे नए फ्रेमवर्क के साथ हम मिलकर के बहुत कुछ प्रगति कर रहे हैं धरती हो या आकाश समुद्र की गहराइयां हो या अंतरिक्ष की ऊंचाइयां भारत अमेरिका एक साथ काम करते दिख रहे हैं सही महीने में प्रॉमिस ओवर द होराइजन आज द तो प्रॉमिस तक सीमित है और न ही होराइजन तक सीमित है आज हम जिस मुकाम पर पहुंचे हैं जिन उपलब्धियों पर हम गर्व कर रहे हैं आप सबके सपनों और अथक मेहनत का परिणाम है इसके लिए मैं आप सभी का हृदय से बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करता हूं फ्रेंड्स On this note, I would like to raise a toast to your good health and well-being, to our friendship, and to the peace and prosperity of all our citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is the lunch hosted by Vice President uh, Kamala Harris. and the secretary of state antony blinken but um, look at that comfort factor when it comes to the relationship between the leaders 
of India and the United States of America, whether it's uh, President Joe Biden and Prime Minister Narendra Modi, or the interaction between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the Secretary of State Antony Blinken, um, and the I for detail, uh, the fact that Vice President Kamala Harris uh, spoke of her Indian roots, and Prime Minister Narendra Modi also referred to the, the Indian roots of Vice President Kamala Harris the knowledge, the information, and the energy, ambition, and the, the aspects that strengthen the bonds between the two countries. As the Prime Minister said, uh, even sky is not the limit. That aspect about promise over the horizon, not restricted either to the promise or the horizon. I want to quickly bring in Sushant Sareen, uh, who's, uh, who watches india america relations very closely joining me on the broadcast are reporters uh, from the state department we have rahul kawal and geeta mohan in the united states of america joining us uh, with the latest but from the conversations in the past three days a relationship that's actually being taken all together to a new level the united states investing heavily in india and india investing heavily uh, in this relationship Let's once again cut across and listen in to Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the State Department lunch. Vice President Kamala Harris, Second Gentleman Douglas M. Hawk, Secretary of State, my friend. Anthony Blinken, White House Community Secretary Evan Ryan, Sabhi Sammanit Pratinidiga, friends, Sabse Pahle to my Uprashpati Kamala Harris or Secretary Blinken ka is Bhabha Swagat ke liye Bahad Bahad Bhanavad Karta. आप दोनों ने जो गर्मजोशी भरे शब्द कहे इसके लिए भी मैं हृदय से आपका आभार व्यक्त करता हूं आज एक बार फिर स्टेट डिपार्टमेंट में आप सभी के बीच उपस्थित होना मेरे लिए खुशी की बात है पिछले तीन दिनों में मैंने अनेक बैठकों में हिस्सा लिया कई विषयों पर चर्चा की इन सभी बैठकों में एक चीज कॉमन थी सब एक मत थे कि भारत और अमेरिका के लोगों के बीच मित्रता एवं सहयोग और गहरा होना चाहिए भारत और अमेरिका के संबंधों की मधुर गीत माला पीपल टू पीपल टाइज के सुरों से पिरोई गई है इन संबंधों का उदाहरण हमें कदम कदम पर देखने को मिलता है उपराष्ट्रपति कमला हैरिस की माताजी डॉक्टर श्यामला गोपालन 1958 में भारत से अमेरिका आई थी उस समय अधिकांश लोगों के पास फोन नहीं होता था और इसलिए उनकी माताजी हाथ से लिखकर अपने परिवार जनों को पत्र भेजा करती थी और उन्होंने कभी भी भारत से रत्ती भर नाता टूटने नहीं दिया था एक जीवंतता बनाए रखी थी जो भी उपलब्ध माध्यम था उसका सर्वाधिक उपयोग भारत को 
उनके अमेरिका के जीवन को निरंतर जोड़ने में लगा रहा था हजारों मीलों की दूरी के बावजूद भी भारत हमेशा उनके करीबी था मैडम वाइस प्रेसिडेंट उनकी इस प्रेरणा को आपने आज नई बुलंदियों तक पहुंचाया है आपकी उपलब्धियां केवल अमेरिका की ही नहीं भारत और पूरे विश्व की महिलाओं के लिए बहुत बड़ी प्रेरणा है बहुत प्रेरित करती है सेक्रेटरी ब्लिंकन जब मैंने प्रारंभ में सूर और गीतमाला जैसे शब्दों का प्रयोग किया तो मेरा एक इशारा आपकी तरफ भी था पूरा विश्व आपकी डिप्लोमेटिक स्किल्स को तो जानता ही है और मैं तो भली भांति जानने लगा हूं आपके म्यूजिकल टैलेंट के चर्चे भी बहुत है हजारों मीलों का सफर तय करते हुए गंभीर से गंभीर मसलों के बीच संगीत को आपने जगह दी है यह हम सभी के लिए बहुत प्रेरक है हमारी स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनरशिप को मजबूत करने में आपका बहुत महत्वपूर्ण योगदान है इसके लिए मैं आपको हृदय से बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देता हूं फ्रेंड्स 2014 में मेरी यात्रा के समय मेरे प्रिय मित्र राष्ट्रपति बाइडेन भी यहां स्टेट डिपार्टमेंट में मेरे साथ थे उस समय उन्होंने भारत और अमेरिका की साझेदारी को अब प्रॉमिस ओवर द होराइजन बताया था नौ वर्षों के इस अंतराल में हमने बहुत ही लंबी और खूबसूरत यात्रा की है हमने डिफेंस और स्ट्रेटेजिक क्षेत्रों में आपसी सहयोग के नए आयाम जोड़े हैं हम नई और उभरती टेक्नोलॉजी के क्षेत्र में नए विश्वास के साथ काम कर रहे हैं हम ट्रेड के लंबित और मुश्किल मुद्दों का समाधान कर रहे हैं क्वाड और आई टू यू टू जैसे नए फ्रेमवर्क के साथ हम मिलकर के बहुत कुछ प्रगति कर रहे हैं धरती हो या आकाश समुद्र की गहराइयां हो या अंतरिक्ष की ऊंचाइयां भारत अमेरिका एक साथ काम करते दिख रहे हैं सही महीने में प्रॉमिस ओवर द होराइजन आज द तो प्रॉमिस तक सीमित है और न ही होराइजन तक सीमित है आज हम जिस मुकाम पर पहुंचे हैं जिन उपलब्धियों पर हम गर्व कर रहे हैं आप सबके सपनों और अथक मेहनत का परिणाम है इसके लिए मैं आप सभी का हृदय से बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करता हूं फ्रेंड्स On this note, I would like to raise a toast
to your good health and well-being, to our friendship and to the peace and prosperity of all our citizens. Thank you. And I quickly now want to cut across uh, to Washington, D.C., to the State Department, where India Today's News Director Rahul Kamal now joins me for more on this. Rahul, three days now, first New York, then Washington, D.C., White House, and now the State Department. While the bells and whistles are all there, the optics are all great, this isn't just optics, this is truly as both India and the, and the American establishment uh, want us to believe, this is truly substantive. Some of the agreements that have been signed, as uh, the government says, uh, you know, from, from subsurface uh, to, to the space. Oh, absolutely, uh, Gaurav, because, you know, I think this whole initiative on critical and emerging technologies has been very significant uh, because the moment the national security advisors got on to uh, the conversation, there are a lot of things which would have otherwise got held up in the whole bureaucratic process, whether it is in commerce ministry uh, in either country or it is, say, in the finance ministries of either country uh, or industry uh, or trade, suddenly have started got, uh, getting expedited. I've been spending uh, the day talking to a lot of think tankers, uh, a lot of academics here in the United States, and they're saying, just imagine that you've now got a situation where a company like GE, a global MNC, is willing to give at less than commercial rates critical technology which you would sweat over just trying to build the IP around the technology to a country that isn't even an alliance partner. Although I do notice that in a lot of the papers, uh, uh, the mainstream American papers, the word ally is being used now uh, while referring to India. And that is important because India isn't an ally of the United States in a treaty sense of the word. Uh, and therefore for you know, people here in the US to constantly talk about India now being an ally it just shows how deeply entrenched this relationship has become. Uh, some of the senior officials we were speaking to uh, in uh, the Biden administration, some of these interviews we did, India being referred to a great power or an emerging great power, that again in some senses shows the bet that Washington DC is making on the India story for various reasons, the slowing down of the Chinese economy, the decline of the Chinese uh, workforce and because of the fact that India has a very young active workforce and more perpetuity while you're going into the future shows that this is a very significant bet uh, that, these, uh, that these countries have made on each other and now a visit like this has really forced things through the system. The question is once this visit ends, once the PM leaves for Egypt, can the rest of the system keep the level of momentum going? That I think Gaurav will then become the key uh, to, to actually see whether the hype that we've seen this time translates into actual execution on the ground. In fact, that was the question I was coming to Rahul. Uh, you know, while it's very heartening to hear that uh, GE414 uh, fighter jet engines would be uh, manufactured in India for Indian Air Force, is there a timeline from the MOU to the actual aircraft engine being manufactured in India? So I spoke to Ashwini Vaishnav about semiconductors and he said Micron will start manufacturing in six quarters from now. That's just about a year and a half. So that's uh, very impressive if it does happen. Uh, but that also, uh, while it's intricate and very complicated, is far less complicated than the jet engine deal. And remember here, there is also Hindustan Aeronautics which is in the picture and with all uh, respect to HAL, they're not really known as being the most uh, efficient in terms of getting things done on time. That's just their track record over the decades and that's the reality uh, that we're dealing with. So this is very uh, sensitive technology which will be transferred. There will be a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of weeds that you'll have to navigate. And remember the nuclear submarine deal with Australia, the AUKUS nuclear submarine deal? That's still held up in terms of its implementation, not because they don't see the value any longer, uh, but because it's just difficult to get these things done. So, yes, of course, uh, there is intent, there are announcements, the execution ultimately 
will be uh, the key and i think the prime minister has made quite a statement uh, you know in the manner in which he's come here uh, touching all the right buttons uh, saying the right things reaching out even to people like kamla harris who had very uncharitable things to say about uh, the government before she became vice president of course you know in the manner in which he looked back at her felicitated her at that uh, uh, at the us congress and then at the state department lunch and also shows that he realizes that you have to take the entire system along it's not just the one on one chemistry between the heads of state the whole uh, system needs to be carried along for this uh, intent and for these headlines to translate god of into real cogent tangible action you're absolutely right and the, and the conversations that were happening uh, whether with the, you know between president joe biden and prime minister narendra modi uh, or uh, you know prime minister narendra modi also referring to uh, to uh, anthony blinken us secretary of state uh, at this uh, you know state luncheon uh, saying that you've played a key role in taking this relationship forward and personal comments about his singing his singing talent and how uh, that too is very good so it just shows a new kind of bonhomie uh, or or a, or or a new bonhomie between india and the united states rahul yeah and that's interesting you know uh, i was at lunch at the india spora event uh, talking to some indian americans uh, massive clamor remember when the french president had come uh, the representation was much more diverse here there were a lot of indian americans and at some level it's also like a much ka sawal now let's imagine there's some big indian businessman who's otherwise flaunting his political connections and making it seem as if he's a really big guy and then he doesn't get invited to uh, the dinner and everybody around him is asking just that same question acha aap dinner mein nahi the and you know somehow whether you got invited or not becomes representative or reflective of that person standing in the scheme of things so people were just going crazy trying to and i think the american president also referred to it so apart from all the officials who are obviously more accessible and you can put more pressure on them even the american president referred to this uh, when he said that i really had a tough time people i didn't know existed were calling me putting pressure saying that they want to be any any point and he made this point to prime minister modi when they'd met uh, at the g7 summit in japan and prime minister modi you know he, uh, in the in the address that he did at the state dinner where we were last evening said that uh, i hope you've been able to accommodate you told me in japan that you were under a lot of pressure uh, for these passes uh, i hope you've been able to accommodate them and i hope everybody who wanted the pass you've got them here at the tent in the white house so he was being funny uh, and you know just cracking a joke i don't think just at that moment president biden fully understood the context or the joke because there's also translation involved but for the others who were there who understand both hindi and english uh, they had a hearty laugh and the president was kind of amused wondering what the joke was about but i think maybe he caught on to it a little later gorav oh absolutely and what, you know i was i was speaking to dr jitendra singh minister of state science and technology he said he is very excited about the space cooperation between india and america sending a man to the international space station by 2024 uh, signing this uh, artemis accords according to him this will truly be transformational uh, exploring moon mars outer space all of this takes the relationship to a new level to a new height he says even skies not the limit the prime minister said rahul Oh, absolutely space station technology uh, remember that tech handshake um, that happened this morning at the white house the kind of american and indian corporates that were represented over there because a lot of this is really stuff that the government can't do they can only create an enabling ecosystem and then the rest of the work is really down to businesses pushing each other making things happening make making things happen on the ground which is where the likes of an anand mahindra mukesh ambani satya nadella the ceos of ge uh, boeing all the big uh, all the big uh, companies that were represented over there that's where they need to get active and really bite into uh, the promise and the prospect that the india story holds at this time because the intensity that, that they show they can you know be uh, they can be spoken to 
but ultimately money decides on its own it's not going to happen just because biden wants or modi is asking them to come it has to make sense for them commercially and only then would they sink their money into actual investments in india so i think a lot of this is about just building a framework which would allow for uh, companies individuals uh, institutions now to take over and run with the baton that the politicians have got started with is that you've been able to gather so far uh, you know government to government yes both countries are investing heavily um, in each other and the nations but what about business to business is b to b excited about the india story and the america story let's look at it from the perspective of american businesses first right they've been hearing for more than two decades now that india is the next big thing uh, that india is opening up that india is a market they should go out and invest and they've been disappointed at times with the lack of ease of doing business in india uh, the procedural complexities the regulatory framework etc and frankly it isn't very easy or hasn't been very easy uh, doing business it's changed to some extent but not fully Uh, and india isn't the only story in town there's vietnam indonesia several other countries wanting to attract these investments the one big change though between earlier and now is a china is slowing down uh, their economy is uh, in distress uh, in the first quarter of this year chinese companies uh, revenue just went up by 1.5% uh, which is complicated because it shows that there are real signs of distress within the chinese economy and because of uh, geopolitical headwinds a lot of uh, and because of the pandemic a lot of mnc's now realize that you can't just depend on china as your as your uh, as uh, as the source of the bulk of the manufacturing that you do outside the united states so there is that factor as well so this could possibly be india's moment but then uh, as someone uh, told me recently that india is one country that disappoints both the pessimist and the optimist so i think the right way to do it is to look back 10 years from now and say was this indeed historic or was this just one of those moments where it seems exciting it seems historic but ultimately the delivery is less than the talk uh, hopefully it won't be like that but there are uh, reservations that have to be kept in mind as we stay engaged and see what's happening garo oh absolutely rahul stay with me um, in fact uh, we were just taking a look at that report that you'd filed about how the american media had covered prime minister narendra modi's visit rahul kawal my colleague uh, you know with me on this broadcast here he was sifting through some of the american dailies how are they looking at prime minister narendra modi's visit one aspect he did point to was they're calling india an ally but we are not an alliance partner uh, in fact as several analysts say an alliance partner is quite a 20th century word this is the 21st century and there are commonalities but then there are also independent you look at your areas of convergence let's take a look at this report what we're going to do now is take a look at how the mainstream american media has covered prime minister narendra modi's state visit to washington dc So we've got the New York Times, the Financial Times, the Washington Post, uh, the Wall Street Journal with me. So let's uh, take it one by one and show you what the different papers are saying. I'll start with uh, the New York Times, typically seen as a trenchant critic of uh, the Prime Minister. So if uh, my video journalist Kirpal Singh just comes across and we'll show you, so it's raining uh, quite non-stop here in DC. But this is the front page of uh, the New York Times. They're leading with. uh this image from the us uh, congress uh, joint address uh, which the prime minister had uh, kamla harris there all the senators and the congressmen there uh, their take is for modi's visit abundant pomp and no friction biden hopes to make india an ally military deals joint projects but india is no closure no closer on ukraine and that's the that's the take from the new york times Uh, let's now come across to the pink paper the financial times uh, pink paper the financial times has uh, this image of president biden and narendra modi on its cover this talks about stronger ties modi and uh, biden commit to a defining relationship uh, between the two democracies uh, this again on the front page of uh, the financial times and they're talking about how uh, prime minister modi uh, spoke of making this one of the defining relationship Uh, of the 21st century 
saying that the India-America partnership has built a mutual trust, candor and respect. Let's now come to the Washington Post. Uh, the Washington Post features the visit prominently on its uh, style section. This is the image, in fact, this is where we were uh, last evening at uh, the White House, where you've got uh, this welcome now. So you've got people from the military of the United States. Uh, you've got uh, Jill Biden, uh, the Prime Minister, all the pomp but light on the glee. Uh, Fed for India's Modi, a key U.S. ally, features business as the main course. And then it talks about the dinner. Despite dearth of celebrity wattage, event becomes an unlikely celebration of fashion and goes on to talk about what all happened at the state dinner, which featured really some of the biggest names in Indian and American business and members of the Indian American community. I come now to the Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street Journal has it on the bottom fold. Uh, warm welcome for Modi. This image is from uh, the White House earlier in the day where the Prime Minister met with the American President. And this, uh, let's go to page 8, which is where the full story is. Just give me a minute. Okay, so here it is. This talks about the toast from the state dinner in the evening. Biden, Modi hailed strong ties during the state visit. And it talks about uh, the relationship and, uh, you know, by and large, most sections of the American press have taken note of uh, this visit, brought out the significance of the India-America relationship and its changing contours as well. This is uh, from the Washington Post. Uh, Biden defends India's democracy as Modi visits. Again, uh, the Washington Post has been raising several uh, questions around the way the Modi government has been running India. So this one talks about Biden defending India's democracy, referring to the question that was posed in the press conference. And uh, one of the reasons that I believe the U.S.-China relationship is not in a space as it is with the U.S.-India relationship uh, is that there's an overwhelming respect for each other and also because we're both democracies. And it's a common character of our democracy. And, that's, uh, and, and, and it talks about how Biden... Uh, spoke about uh, the state of India's democracy and announcing agreements on technology defense. There's a full page coverage here in the Washington Post on uh, Prime Minister Modi's visits. They've given this space to all the agreements and then at the top uh, they highlight the Prime Minister's address to the U.S. Congress where Modi focused on growth. So always a good idea to look at what's being featured, what's not being featured, what's in, what's out uh, in the headlines of uh, the press in the country where the Prime Minister is visiting. What was it like at this state dinner? India Today's News Director Rahul Kamal also caught up with some of the guests at the White House dinner last night. For a sense of how members of the Indian American community are viewing Prime Minister Narendra Modi's state visit and the evolving ties between India and the United States, we are currently with members of the India Spora, uh, diaspora uh, body that looks at ties between these two countries and tries to foster uh, equations in different ways to take India-America ties into the future. So I want to introduce you to some people who are with us. Uh, I'll start with Sunil Wadwani, founder and chair of the Wadwani Institute for Artificial Intelligence. With us also is Grammy Award winner Ricky Kej, musician. He's here. Uh, we've had him on the show before he came here and it's good to have him back once again. Uh, I want to introduce uh, Vijay Rajwaidya, Managing Director of India Currents and we've got Nalini Saligram with us as well. So welcome. I want to start by asking uh, Sunil Wadwani about uh, the state dinner uh, last evening and what stood out uh, to you as being the highlight of the manner in which the whole uh, program was brought together. I tell you, the uh, dinner was very impressive, and as you probably know, President Biden in his entire three-year term so far, this is only his third state dinner. So I think that speaks to the fact that U.S.-India relations are getting elevated. They, they were strong to begin with. They are becoming stronger. Uh, and in listening to both uh, Prime Minister Modi yesterday as well as uh, President Biden, it's very clear that, A, they see... A, a great strategic partnership developing over here on a variety of fronts. Everything from defense cooperation to business cooperation to arts, culture, science, research, and so on. 
What was also striking was not just that the relationship between the countries is getting elevated to a higher level, but also what came out uh, was the personal rapport between the Prime Minister and President Biden is very strong and getting stronger, and that is, again, so important for relations between the, between the countries. The turnout and the quality of the audience at the state dinner was really striking. CEOs of all the top companies uh, in the U.S., Indian CEOs, American CEOs, uh, you know, like the CEO of Microsoft and Google and Boeing, uh, GE, and so on. And, and beyond the relationship between, again, the Prime Minister and the President, what was also striking was the camaraderie between all the people who were there at this dinner, at this uh, state dinner. All, again, very eminent people, but all talking about how to strengthen their relationships, how to do more work in India, and so on. Ricky Kedge, you uh, were at the United Nations earlier, and now you're at uh, Washington, D.C. You want to give us a sense of how you're seeing ties between India and the United States evolve and how this whole experience has been for you? Of course, this is a very important uh, two nations to come together. As it is mentioned so many times, one of the world's oldest democracies and uh, the world's, uh, by far, uh, the world's largest democracy. So I was there at the World Yoga Day event, which happened at the United Nations headquarters, and it is absolutely amazing to see that how Prime Minister Modi, you know, brought into effect this World Yoga Day in 2014 for June 21st and, you know, and pretty much popularized yoga all over the world, gave so much credibility to this amazing form and brought yoga as a very strong form of soft power from India to the world. And uh, also I was there at the White House lawns uh, for the welcoming of Prime Minister Modi and that was a spectacular event. It was quite uh, surprising for me and uh, actually not so surprising to see that on the White House lawns of the United States of America, everybody is shouting, you know, Modi, 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 and he's, uh, you know, with, with 1.4 billion people in India, I think what we need is a world leader, not just a leader for India, and that's what Modi represents. He's definitely leader of the global south for sure, and in addition to that, you know, he's he's pretty much a world leader that we all uh, really need. And there was lots of interesting peppy music playing as well, so it was in some senses a festival, a celebration of sorts in comparison to some of the events that we have at official events of this nature, which are far more serious and could do with a little bit of uh, revelry. Even the speeches also, if you look at the speeches, were not uh, super serious as you would imagine them to be, you know, and that showed the camaraderie, as Sunil said, you know, that showed the camaraderie between these two amazing presidents and how they were almost finishing off each other's sentences and, you know, and uh, and uh, both of them are agreeing on so many uh, important issues and important things. So it, it, it's a very, very good time for a collaboration between India and America, and I think it's a collaboration that has been happening for a while now, but right now it's going to go from strength to strength. Vijay, yes. sorry to interrupt, but speaking of you, music and collaboration. One of the interesting things that happened at the uh, state dinner yesterday was I happened to be at a table uh, with Mr. Anand Mahindra, you know, major industrialist from India. Uh, the U.S. Secretary of Commerce, Gina Raimondo, was sitting at the same table. Sundar Pechai of Google was there. So the U.S. Marine Corps band was playing yeah. and they were playing some Beatles songs. So Anand Mahindra happened to mention that I play this song. I play guitar and I sing to this song. I said, fascinating. I play the drums and uh, I play with two bands in Pittsburgh. And then Mrs. Raimondo, the U.S. Commerce Secretary, said, well, I play piano and keyboards. <laughs> so we said, let's form a let's band. Form a band. <laughs> so then President Biden comes up and I said, uh, Mr. President, we're forming a band over here for high-end government events. You may want to invite us. He said, absolutely. Then I said, we won't come cheap. I said, each time you call us, the U.S. budget deficit may go up another 10%. He said, not a problem. It's a good investment. So. <laughs> another way. I'm investing in ties between India right, and exactly. the United States. Exactly. That would be interesting. Some of the musicians, though, will feel, hey, we suddenly have competition. Yeah, uh, and then you can get Ricky Ketch to you know, bring <laughs> all the music together. And for Grammy, you know, Grammy you may award winning. You, uh, may, Ricky you may win a Grammy as well, given the run big shoes to fill over your behind Ricky. So. Okay, so let's ask uh, Vijay Rajwadi about the manner in which ties between India and the United States are evolving. Your sense of how the Indian American community here is looking at the heightened interest with which everything to do with India is being seen here in DC. So, I have lived here for 40 years. Uh, most of us are here for a long time. And I have a perspective on this. You know, we two democracies, last 70 years since India got independence, have been trying to get, get together because our foundation is same, the value system is same. But every time this effort was thwarted, because what happened is that this space to get into that space, the door, 
is always defined by the current alignment of interests. And that door was not materializing, call it a portal. And suddenly it has happened now that that portal has opened up mm -hmm. and we are able to walk in. What do you need now? You need a leader to see the door and be able to walk through that and take the massive humanity through it and then get those greatness that we can achieve by having two democracies work together. Indian Americans, there are four, over four million Indian Americans living here. They span the whole spectrum of population, right from the per person working, driving a truck to the CEO of major corporations over here. And they all want these two nations and democracies to come together somewhere and at least make a start. Yesterday was a magnificent start and I would credit both the leaders for that. How do you think things have changed in the way that you've seen Indians being perceived or the India story being perceived in the past several decades to now? What changes are you seeing? So with all the information around, there is a lack of information. So what I have seen is that particularly America, and people living in America have not been so much knowledgeable about the value that this ancient country brings to not just America, but the whole globe, the whole universe it brings. That. And that education, I think, was lacking all the time, which is being now exposed by the current leadership of the country in a very humane way. And I think that should further go down and we should have some chairs, study chairs, in the major universities, which should be funded properly and we should have people who come out and who study that where is the value of this ancient civilization coming from that we are surviving and we are still making our lives great, not for ourselves, for the whole world and pandemic. During the pandemic, that is the result you have seen. We have sent out the vaccine all over the world, not asking for money, sending it out. Nalini, how do you think uh, equations between India and the United States have changed over the years and brought us to the point where we are, uh, where the Prime Minister came for this big state visit yesterday? Yeah, so it has been for me so exciting. I. Um, I watched the uh, speech to U.S. Congress on uh, TV and it was really exciting for me to see the perception shift for the ordinary American. How do you think it's shifting? I think it's a lot more positive. The old picture of India has changed. This is a dynamic India ready to conquer the world stage and it showed that. You know, Prime Minister Modi really conveyed a sense of optimism and a sense of pride uh, and growth. And and hope and it was all there. I run a nonprofit called Arogya World. So for me, I'm really interested to see what this visit can do to advance the field of diabetes and its prevention. And, you know, it is one of the biggest scourges of our time. It's the biggest challenge. And we now there are 100 million diabetics living in India, 136 million with pre-diabetes. Hey, we've got to do something. So I would love to see, a, a, you know, a collaboration going between the United States. Prime, Prime Minister Modi and Joe Biden are very different personalities and despite their differences in personalities and style of functioning, they seem to have hit it off well and seem to be speeding up the pace of acceleration of ties between the two countries. Yes, you're absolutely right. Um, here's the thing, they both may seem like different personalities on the surface. I think what drives them on the inside is very similar. Mm -hmm. They see the potential within their countries uh, in terms of progress that can be made. They both respect each other's countries and like Nalini was just saying, the dynamism of India, the potential of India, etc. I think is now very visible, uh, much more so than in the past. And both of them want to get things done. They want the world to be more stable. They want the partnership between U.S. and India to grow from strength to strength. So there's a lot of commonality between the two. And I think that also helps to drive the personal rapport between them. Well, let me not hold you all back. There's lunch waiting inside uh, at this India Spora event. Really appreciate you taking time because initially the focus was on yoga, then on ties between India, India and the United States, the meetings in the White House. This morning is about tech business and the diaspora. Thank you all very much for joining us. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A quick break, but there's lots more coming up. Remember, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has more engagements, many more engagements lined up in the United States of America, including a community outreach and interaction with the diaspora. All that and much more here on India Today.
make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com. Why does this happen? Let me tell you the science behind it. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today News More. Introducing Apple Vision Pro. Apple unveiled its hotly anticipated augmented reality headset on Monday. It's riskiest and biggest bet since the iPhone debuted more than a decade ago. The Vision Pro poses a direct challenge to Meta's line of mixed and virtual reality devices. And with a price tag that will start at $3,499, the Vision Pro will cost more than three times Meta's priciest headset when it launches next year. Apple CEO Tim Cook. It's the first Apple product you look through and not at. Vision Pro feels familiar, yet it's entirely new. You can see, hear, and interact with digital content just like it's in your physical space. Apple said that users of the Vision Pro will be able to select content inside the goggles with their eyes, tap their fingers together to click, and gently flick to scroll while also using a three-dimensional camera and microphone system to capture videos and pictures that can be viewed in 3D later. In its most striking difference from Meta's headsets, the device also has an exterior display that shows the user's eyes to people in the outside world. So in the same way that Mac introduced us to personal computing and iPhone introduced us to mobile computing, Apple Vision Pro will introduce us to spatial computing. The exterior screen goes dark when a user is fully immersed in a virtual world. When a person approaches a user who is in a full virtual mode, the headset will show both the user and the outside person to each other. For work uses, Apple showed how the headset can be used with a trackpad and keyboard to work like a traditional computer with multiple displays. The Vision Pro has two hours of use with an external battery, similar to Meta's top-of-the-line Quest Pro mixed reality device. Besides the headset, Apple also displayed a raft of new products and features, including a 15-inch MacBook Air, a powerful chip called M2 Ultra, and improvements to its iOS software and autocorrect feature. Shares of the iPhone maker rose 2% to hit a record high ahead of the launch, but shares ended slightly lower after the announcement. Hello and welcome. We are broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. And I want to go across now to a very special guest, the president of the Eurasia Group, one of the world's top experts on political, geopolitical, strategic risks. Ian Bremer now joins us. He tracks the India-U.S. relationship very closely, but also can put this in a global context, given all the global factors that are currently at play. Ian Bremer, Welcome to India today and thank you for taking our time. Yeah. 
I want to start by asking you about your reflections on Prime Minister Modi's visit uh, to Washington DC, his first state visit, only the third uh, state visit uh, thrown by the Biden administration, and the manner in which uh, the Biden administration seems to have gone out of its way to roll out the red carpet for the Indian head of state at this moment in time. What do you think is at play and why? Well, first, I want to say that uh, this was probably the best bilateral meeting that Biden has had since he's become president. Uh, the trajectory of the U.S.-India relationship is warm and strong. Uh, some of that uh, is, of, of course, because of mutual concerns about the rise of China. But a lot of it is because of how well India is doing. Uh, India's own trajectory, Modi's popularity, India's growth, uh, its technological uh, growth and capabilities. Uh, five million Indians in the diaspora uh, in the United States in positions of uh, great uh, significance uh, and popularity. Uh, all of those things, I think, come together uh, at this point in time uh, to make this a great, a great opportunity uh, for uh, the relationship between these two countries. And I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention that it's very clear that Prime Minister Modi personally wants a much stronger relationship with the U.S. and sees that as part of his own legacy on the global stage. I think all of those things have really helped. You know, you're a top expert on risk. You advise companies, countries on risks that they should be mindful of. So if you were to look at this from a risk prison at this moment, what, according to you, are the key risks that India and the United States need to be watchful for at this moment? Well, one risk that they don't have to worry about uh, as much is the future of the U.S. political system. Uh, I mean, think about it. Modi is perhaps the only major strategic partner of the United States um, that doesn't really care if Biden or Trump wins the next election. They're comfortable either way. Not true for Japan, South Korea, UK, the Europeans, the Gulf states, even Israel. There's some strong preferences. Maybe Israel's in the closest position, much strong, much smaller than India. So that, that's less of a problem. I think the bigger question um, in the relationship has to do uh, with India's being a very poor country. It's structurally being a part of the global south at a time when uh, so much of the global south is being challenged, challenged uh, because of climate change and the transition uh, to a post-carbon energy environment challenge because of high inflation costs for food, for energy, made only worse because of the war in Russia. Uh, I think those are risks that make the largest population country in the world with a much smaller per capita income than the United States. Those interests are obviously, they see the world very differently. And, and that, that implies that the relationship can only get too close because there are going to be uh, some some real hard constraints in terms of the actual policy orientations of the two governments. Ch China is the unspoken of unspoken gorilla in the room whenever India and the United States meet. Uh, President Biden tried to play down the differences with China and play down him calling Xi Jinping a dictator. Uh, in the best way you understand it, what do you think uh, would be Beijing's decoding of uh, what we're seeing play out at Washington, D.C.? Well, uh, I think the fact that the United States and India both have democracies that they want to keep, even though they're democracies that are under challenge, and Xi Jinping is president for life. I mean, let's be clear, part of Modi's strength on the global stage is that he's not Putin. It's that he's not Xi. His strength comes from the fact that he wins elections. His strength comes from the fact that most of the people in India support him. And, and Biden's rule, of course, 
is reflected by that as well. Um, even though the U.S. political system is much more divided and the elections are coming up real soon. Um, the, the concern about China, I mean, some of that, of course, is China's military uh, uh, you know, growth in, in capabilities in Asia, the South China Sea, the Taiwan Straits, uh, its relationship with Pakistan. Uh, some of that uh, is about China's economic dominance and trade through Belt and Road with almost all the countries that are around India in strategic infrastructure investments over the long term, which potentially are seen as problematic. Um, but some of it uh, is because that China is promoting a very different model, a model of state capitalism and authoritarianism that turns out to be quite stable, um, but is not democracy. Um, and neither the Americans or the Indians are fundamentally comfortable with that. Uh, and so in that environment, uh, India doesn't want to have to choose between uh, the United States and China. It wants an independent foreign policy, of course. But India also knows um, that from a military and national security perspective, increasingly it is aligned with the United States. And there was nothing that showed that more clearly uh, than the announcements uh, being made on producing new advanced jet engines uh, with classified systems with American corporations. I mean, the military industrial complex is going to be much closer to India, and America's is the biggest in the world. How much of that is pure play transactional? The GE would ordinarily guard its uh, IPR very dearly. This is very high-end uh, military technology which isn't available commonly. Just a handful of countries have the capacity to make this. Uh, it's agreed to transfer of technology. It's agreed to selling at lesser than normal market prices. Uh, is that uh, something that you think could possibly be suggestive of a growing trend to try and wean India away from Russia's embrace when it comes to weapon purchases? I, I don't think uh, the Americans need to try very hard. I think that these um, alignments are quite strong. Uh, it's very clear that Russia is not going to be able to produce the kind of spare parts and military equipment for export going forward that they had historically. Um, and, you know, the Indians are going to have a problem with that. The Russians can barely produce the military equipment they need for themselves fighting and losing a war in Ukraine. Um, then beyond that, as India becomes wealthier, uh, they're going to want more capable and more sophisticated weapons that the Russians aren't going to have. So uh, I think for all of those reasons, never mind the sanctions, never mind the geopolitical challenges uh, of a Russian invasion and all the war crimes, which the Indians don't care as much about. Um, but the fact is uh, that the Indians have very good reasons to want to work more closely with the United States. They're not going to get their, their um, weapon systems with Chinese chips and Chinese surveillance. That's not a possibility. And the other alternatives are really small. I mean, I'm sure, you know, you can work with France, you can work with the UK, but th these are not replacements for Russia. So, I mean, actually, this is a really big strategic move. The U.S. spends more on defense than the next 10 countries in the world combined. India is the fifth largest economy in the world, but soon it's going to be the third. And its military complex is increasingly going to be aligned with the United States. It's going to be interoperable um, and it's going to be a lot of business. And, and when, when you combine that with semiconductors and technologies, artificial intelligence, 5G and new apps, you know, these have national security and dual use purposes too. So, I mean, the areas where you have the greatest level of new cooperation between the US and India really are on this national security front broadly defined. No, twice in recent official meetings, President, Bi uh, President Xi Jinping has spoken of exceptional circumstances, risk. You know, he makes it seem as if something terrible is going to happen, obviously not defining what that is, or basically suggesting that you need to brace for extreme eventualities. As a top expert in probability and risk, what do you think are the eventualities that he could be thinking of? How could this likely play out from here? 
Well, uh, I mean, in the near term, uh, the biggest risk is that uh, we end up in a war with Russia. Uh, the Russians were very close to uh, lo knocking down a British surveillance aircraft in international waters with 38 British airmen on board. If that had happened, they fired. They locked the missiles on. They fired because the pi fighter pilot misunderstood uh, the the um, order from his superior, his commanding officer. And fortunately, the missile didn't fire. It misfired. If it had fired, we're in a Cuban missile crisis. Um, I mean, you've got mining of um, the nuclear plant in Zaporizhia, the biggest in Europe, God forbid that blows. That could happen. Um, and, you know, the Russians are in a war with Ukraine that NATO is supporting as, as hard as they possibly can. The possibility of that becoming a hot war uh, with NATO is real. So I think Xi Jinping is clearly talking about that. He would like to see an end of that war. So far, he's not been able to have any impact. Maybe that'll change going forward. Um, he's also talking about uh, Taiwan, and he's talking about um, specifically the potential for a new Taiwanese government to move towards independence. He's also talking about TSMC, the semiconductor producer, and the export controls from the United States and its allies on uh, this Taiwanese critically important plant, which means that the Chinese have to build their own. And it also means Taiwan becomes less interdependent uh, from China and therefore uh, potential for risk goes up. Um, that's another one. But there are others. Uh, I mean, we are in an environment with artificial intelligence, with hundreds of billions of dollars being invested by the most powerful technology companies in the world and literally no regulatory oversight, almost no government officials that know anything about how the technology works, and no international architecture on governance of AI. Now, uh, there are a lot of people that are trying to fix that real soon, but for the next year or two, I mean, this is basically the Wild West. Um, and the potential for disinformation, for the proliferation of these dangerous technologies, um, to have geopolitical import to lead to crises suddenly, I think is very real. So, I mean, I actually agree with Xi Jinping. I've been a political scientist for 30 years now. I've never seen an environment that has had so many structural geopolitical risks as the one that we're facing right now. You track the war in Russia and Ukraine very closely. Ukraine just started a counter-offensive of sorts. It doesn't seem to have made very rapid uh, headway. Maybe uh, that could build or maybe not. And then uh, where do you see the war go from here? How long do you see, uh, Ian Bremer, this conflict continue from? Do you at all see any um, ways in which this could possibly end? And do you have any, any vague sense or any way of understanding how long it could be? Well, the counteroffensive is not going well so far. I mean, on a scale of one to 10, you'd probably give it about a two or a three. Uh, the Ukrainians are losing a lot of people. They're losing a lot of uh, material. They haven't taken much land. Uh, we'll see if that continues to be true in the next one, two months. I think it's still early days, but you're right. It's not going very well for the Ukrainians. What is going well for the Ukrainians, you've got 27 European Union states that voted unanimously for an 11th round of sanctions against Russia, including very clear statements on secondary sanctions. So the alliance, the coalition is holding together very well. The Americans, of course, are moving towards providing F-16s. Lockheed Martin saying that they'll prepare the training uh, that is necessary as well for Ukrainians to be able to use that. You've got long-range missiles that are coming from the UK. You've got advanced tanks that are coming from Germany and soon the United States, other countries. So, I mean, Ukraine is becoming the most advanced military and most capable military in Europe. They're going to get lots of money for reconstruction. They're going to get uh, lots of support to be a part of the European Union. So, I mean, even if the Ukrainians can't take much territory back uh, in the counteroffensive, in the next three, six months, the Ukrainian government will be in a better position to help ensure that Russia will not be able to take another bite at that apple that their defense will be much more secure, their government will be much more secure, their opportunities going forward will be much more bright. Now, none of that, of course, makes up for eight and a half million refugees and the tens of thousands of civilians killed and 
all of the war crimes they faced. I'm not trying to make light of that. But I am saying that the Ukrainian government may well be in a position by the end of this year that they would be willing to freeze the conflict for a period of time, especially once they get all those security guarantees from the West. Now, that means that the impact of the war on the world will go down. And obviously that means less inflation and that'll be good for you know c commodities consumers all over the world, including India. Um, but on the negative side, that's not leading Russia to feel like they're being reintegrated into the West. They're the big losers. And NATO has expanded and Ukraine's so powerful and the, the West is giving them all these weapons and the Russians don't, they can't send their gas anywhere. So they're gonna have to flare it. And they've got a million Russians that have fled the country, uh, capable young men that they need in the economy not to mention the devastation of Russia's military. I mean, that's a very dangerous thing. So, you know, if you ask me, can I see an end to the Ukraine war? Yes, but I can't really see an end to the conflict with Russia. Um, and, and this is enormously dangerous. Russia as a rogue state for the G7, for the U.S. and its allies. And, you know, they've got 6,000 nuclear weapons. Uh, I mean, I, I, just, I just don't know what that means for, for Putin. Uh, and for the future of Russia and, and, and the way they will engage with the rest of the world. I mean, they don't have any friends out there. Belarus, you know, Iran, that's about it. I mean, even China, it's not, China's not providing them any weapons, right? And, and they really need them. So China must not be that much of a friend, right? It's a real problem if you're Putin. Last question, Ian, before I let you go about the future of Indo-US ties from here. I saw in a couple of uh, mainstream newspapers this morning the word ally used in the context of India and the United States. India isn't a formal alliance partner of the US, unlikely to ever want to be a formal partner. And yet uh, sensitive defense technology is being made available to India to help muscle India out against China. Where do you see things go from here when it comes to Indo-US? Uh, look, I think that the relationship is is on a very strong trajectory. Uh, the Americans are the dominant military power, and they're the dominant technology power uh, in in the among democracies. Those two things are going to make India closer to the United States and the U.S. closer to India going forward. So I think this relationship will continue to grow. Um, but it was very interesting. Goldman Sachs put a piece out a few hours ago, the investment bank, projecting global economic growth to the year 2075. And there were three countries that dominated the global economy at that point. India, China, and the United States. They were all pretty close. And then there's this huge drop off for the next country. Uh, we're not heading into a world that is going to have a Chinese century. Uh, India is going to be a huge global economy. It's going to be a global power in its own right. And I don't think it's, ne it's going to need to have to make a firm decision about having an alliance with the United States and not doing business with other countries. That we're, I don't think India is going to have to make that decision. But I do think that in certain areas of national security, there's going to be more trust and integration between the two countries, and it may feel much more friendly than what we've had for the past generation. Well, always interesting to hear your perspective, Ian Bremer. Thank you very much for taking our time and joining us to talk about Prime Minister Modi's state visit to Washington, D.C., and what to expect next uh, on the India America counter. Thank you very much. Appreciate your Good time. See you. hmm? With this, I'm going to slip into a quick break and we'll have more for you when we come back on the other side. Stay with us. We're back in a moment.
weather forecast now. Delhi, maximum 42 and minimum 27 degrees. Mumbai, maximum 30 and minimum 28 degrees. Kolkata, maximum 35 and minimum 26 degrees. Bangalore, maximum 30 and minimum 21 degrees. Chennai, maximum 32 and minimum 27 degrees. Hyderabad, maximum 28 and minimum 24 degrees. Why does this happen? Let me tell you the science behind it. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today News Mo. All political parties traveling from different parts. Armed with facts. Looking at political facts. She takes the news by its horn. Fierce, bold, and direct, setting the tone for the biggest stories from every corner and every angle. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me, Nabila Jamal, on India Today. forecast now. Delhi, maximum 42 and minimum 27 degrees. Mumbai, maximum 30 and minimum 28 degrees. Kolkata, maximum 35 and minimum 26 degrees. Bangalore, maximum 30 and minimum 21 degrees. Chennai, maximum 32 and minimum 27 degrees. Hyderabad, maximum 28 and minimum 24 degrees. Make your media plans smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com. Why does this happen? Let me tell you the science behind it. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today News Mo. Hello and a very warm welcome. You're watching a special edition of the News Track. We are broadcasting this morning from Washington, D.C. This is day three of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit 
to the United States yesterday. The focus was on President Biden and the meetings at the White House. Today, it's business and diaspora day. And that's my top focus on the news track. A visit transforming India-US ties. A visit forging a partnership for future. The world's oldest and largest democracies. Great democracies. India and the United States. Prime Minister Modi and Biden toast to two great powers. Two great friends, two great nations, and two great powers. Cheers. Namaste America, live from Washington, D.C. One of the questions that Prime Minister Narendra Modi has been asked in the build-up to the state visit to Washington was questions around uh, human rights in India, democratic backsliding. Uh, this question was posed by Sabrina Siddiqui of the Wall Street Journal in the Prime Minister's press conference with the American President. The Prime Minister taking that question head on, uh, not just in the press conference, also later at the US Congress, reaffirming once again his commitment to constitutional values, his uh, commitment to human rights, his commitment to democracy and saying that every single time Every action of his is measured and compared and tries to live up to everything that's written in the Indian constitution. So there was no ducking and weaving in private conversations from what we're told when this issue came up and in public. The Prime Minister reaffirming once again, very emphatically, India's commitment to human rights and to democratic values. As you stand here in the East Room of the White House, where so many world leaders have made commitments to protecting democracy, what steps are you and your government willing to take to improve the rights of Muslims and other minorities in your country and to uphold free speech? Asked on India's democratic credentials and rights of Muslims, the Prime Minister made an emphatic answer at the joint briefing with President Joe Biden. Prime Minister Modi was answering to Wall Street journalist Sabrina Siddiqui. The Prime Minister's body language said it all. He removed his earpiece to make his point with full authority. What steps are you and your government willing to take to improve the rights of Muslims and other minorities in your country and to uphold free speech? Uh, सबका साथ सबका विकास सबका विश्वास सबका प्रयास उन मूलभूत सिद्धांतों को लेकर के और इसलिए हम चलते हैं Prime Minister Modi made it clear that his government will not let go of India's democratic credentials at any cost in a massive pushback to silence critics who have trained guns on India over the issue of minority rights President Biden also rubbished claims by former U.S. President Barack Obama on India's track record in safeguarding Muslims. Publicly defending India and the Modi government, Biden repeated Modi's claim that democracy is in India's DNA. And it is in America's DNA, and I believe in India's DNA, uh, that um, the whole world, uh, the whole world has a stake in our success, both of us, in maintaining our democracies, makes us appealing partners and enables us to uh, expand democratic institutions across around the world. And uh, I uh, believe this, and I still believe this. Modi, while speaking at the U.S. Congress, made it a point to underscore his government's Sabka Saath policy to uphold minority rights. Our vision is Sabka Saath. सबका विकास 
सबका विश्वास सबका प्रयास इट मीन्स टूगेदर फॉर एवरी वंस ग्रोथ विथ एवरी वंस ट्रस्ट एंड एवरी वंस एफर्ट This was Modi's biggest counter ever to a powerful voice which has been critical of his government. Jaisa Rashtrapati Biden ne kaha Bharat aur America dono ke DNA mein loktantra hai. Loktantra hamara spirit hai. Loktantra hamare ragon mein hai. Will Modi's forceful assertions silent his detractors with Rahul Kaval and Geeta Mohan in Washington DC Bureau Report India Today The most glitzy glamorous event of the Prime Minister's state visit was uh, the state dinner at the White House we were at that uh, state dinner you had the likes of Sundar Pichai uh, Satya Nadella Mukesh Ambani Anand Mahindra and several of the biggest names uh, from India and the United States in that tent at uh, the White House it was raining outside but a very high powered uh, gathering inside both the heads of state raising toasts interestingly neither of them uh, drink any wine uh, so both were raising their toasts with some water in their glasses but raising a toast into american friendship an evening full of great conversations uh, an evening full of warmth laughter and some entertainment as well it was all pomp and grand at the white house in honor of the indian prime minister narendra modi the usa reserves the special treatment for its closest allies the titans of business fashion entertainment and more with the likes of designer Ralph Lauren, filmmaker M Night Shyamalan, rubbing shoulders with tech leaders from Apple, Google and Microsoft in a state dinner hosted by the first couple of USA, where the who's who of American politics stood in attendance while India was celebrated and honored. Welcome to Prime Minister Modi's Washington home. <laughs> I've been doing it. Please have a seat. I've been doing this a long time, but I don't ever remember anybody getting a warmer welcome <laughs> than this you. man right Thank here. You. Good evening, everyone. Twenty years ago, as chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, I made clear that the United States and India grew to be the closest friends and partners in the world. The world would be a safer place. I believe that even more today. Now that I'm president, कल शाम आपने अपने घर के दरवाजे मेरे लिए खोले स्पेशल जस्टिस के लिए आपकी मित्रता और गर्म जोशी भरे आदर सत्कार के लिए भी मैं आपका हृदय से बहुत बहुत आभारी हूँ But before this grand dinner, Prime Minister Narendra Modi held high-level talks with U.S. President Joe Biden. at the oval office on not so comfortable issues like differences over human rights and india's stance on russia's war in ukraine at the dinner party bilateral ties and friendship were toasted to with no alcohol mr prime minister thank you for your partnership and your friendship and to all to all Please join me in a toast, Mr. Prime Minister. I had an Irish grandfather named Ambrose Finnegan, and he used to say that when you give a toast and you don't have any alcohol in your glass, you must do it with your left hand. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? I'm not. Prime Minister Modi quipped with his own rejoinder. मैंने देखा है. कि आपके मेहमान मेहमान नवाजी से प्रभावित होकर कई बार आपके मेहमान गाना भी गाने लगते हैं काश मुझ में भी गाने की कला होती तो मैं भी आपको कुछ सुनाता 
not particularly known for his humor, but the Indian Prime Minister's comment hit home. He was referring to South Korean President Yoon Suk Yeol, who surprised guests when he got up on stage during a White House state dinner, honoring him in April, and belted out a rendition of American Pie, one of his favorite songs, to raucous applause. Something touched me deep inside the day. Wow! The music died. On Thursday, the Honorable State guest on his second state dinner at the White House praised India and USA's deepening bond as the Bidens held an extravaganza, a historic state dinner. And may we always remember that it's our people, our people, to give our partnership strength from all the backgrounds and beliefs that inspire us, challenge us, tell us the truth, and push us forward. They're the reason our democracies endure, evolve, reflect, and renew generation after generation. Jaise jaise samay guzar raha hai, hamare logon mein aur ek dusre ke prati samaj aur badh rahi hai. एक दूसरे के नामों का सही उच्चारण कर पाते हैं एक दूसरे के एक्सेंट को समझ पाते हैं भारत में बच्चे हेलोविन पर स्पाइडरमैन बनते हैं और अमेरिका के युवा नाटू नाटू पर डांस करते हैं The 400 distinguished guests dined on a plant-based menu of millet and corn salad, portobello mushrooms and strawberry shortcake catering to the Indian Prime Minister's vegetarian taste. Toast to our partnership, to our people, to the possibilities that lie ahead, to two great friends, two great nations and two great powers. Cheers. It toast to our wonderful hosts. President Biden and Dr. Jill Biden, it toasts to good health, prosperity, and the pursuit of happiness, to liberty, equality, and fraternity, and to the everlasting bonds of friendship between India and the United States. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Indian national flower, the lotus, was visible throughout the pavilion, along with saffron-hued floral arrangements that differed from table to table at the south lawn of the White House, as the most powerful head of state of the world admired and showed respect to the growing most powerful head of state from Asia. It was an evening of dazzling brilliance of India on Uncle Sam's soil. Hello and a warm welcome. We are broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. And to get a sense of the historical context uh, in Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to D.C., his summit meetings with President Biden, we're joined at the World War I memorial by some very sharp think tankers, academic voices, people who study India-America relations very, very closely. So welcome to all my guests. I just want to start by introducing them. I'll start from the left. So Michael Kugelman joins us. Uh, he is the director of South Asia Institute at the Wilson Center. Uh, we've had you on many of our shows. So it's great to see you in person, Michael. Welcome. Uh, flanking him is Daniel Markey, senior advisor, South Asia, the U.S. Institute of Peace and senior fellow at the SESA Foreign Policy Institute. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, on my right is a man who is very actively involved with what's happening in India and many of the states. Richard Russo joins us, senior advisor, holds the chair in U.S.-India policy studies at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Thank you very much, sir. Welcome, Tanvi Madan, back with us. Tanvi, thank you so much for taking our time and joining us early in the morning. Uh, senior fellow at the Brookings Institute. Uh, she's tracked India, America, China very closely. And for a political perspective, we have Professor Irfan Nuruddin, Professor of Indian Politics at Georgetown University. Thank you all so much. It's a bit uh, windy and wet, uh, but I guess this is DC and you're all used to this weather. So a little cooler than we usually have this time of year. <laughs> but it's fantastic to have you with us. Richard Russo, I want to start by asking you about the historical significance of what we are seeing. Because a lot of people wondering, is this just hype? Is the media and the government just trying to blow this out of proportion because they've got an election coming up? Or are we truly seeing something which is historic, which will be spoken of many years from now? 
Well, you see it in an acceleration. Uh, India, of course, faces tremendous challenges from China across a range of domains. The United States looks at those challenges as well, and we find that as an area for cooperation. But also, India just surpassed China as the most populous nation, relatively high per capita economic uh, growth rate right now. So companies looking uh, at it excitedly as well. So things that were almost impossible a few years ago on technology transfer, defense cooperation, are happening a lot faster. And these summits help make sure that they move. It really uh, sharpens the mind and gets people active behind the scenes. Tanvi Madan, we saw at the White House and through this visit, the Biden administration seems to have really rolled out the red carpet. Uh, the Economist described it as the world's biggest transaction. Is this really seen as a transactional relationship or are you seeing something transformative in terms of the relationship between India and the U.S.? I think, you know, you do see that there's a, this is a strategic relationship. If you look at both the joint statement and the fact sheet, which I think people should, because you really get the details, there's definitely a strategic aspect driving this. Uh, and you see it in the sense that the focus is on security and prosperity as objectives, but doing that through building resilience through technology and talent development. So as I think President Biden put it well, where he said this is about unlocking a shared future, the prime minister used the term, a new dawn. Um, but I actually think people should stop making such a big fuss about transactionalism. It is good to have a certain amount of transactionalism. To me, that suggests both sides are getting something out of the relationship. It is mutually beneficial, which is the case. So I don't think you know people should say, oh, this is transactional. In every relationship, there's a certain amount of transactionalism. That's normal. That's good. That's actually natural. Professor Nuruddin, the Biden administration faced some uh, pushback from within the Democrat camp uh, on issues of human rights uh, in India. We, that we saw that question being raised uh, in the press conference yesterday. Uh, do you think that issue is adequately settled or do you think this is something which will keep festering in a way that it puts some pressure on the government to taper its uh, actions accordingly? I don't think it will taper the actions, but I don't, don't think the question is settled. And it's up to India to decide how that question gets asked and answered in the coming years. If there are unfortunate incidents at home, the question will continue to arise over here. You can't both be in the limelight, get the red carpet rolled out, and expect there not to be the attention even on the negative things. So the best case scenario over here is that India makes it a non-issue, that the election in 2024, as we would all expect, is free and fair, that the rhetoric that surrounds the election is civil and competitive, messy, <laughs> right? Uh, but nothing that crosses the lines. And then I think the issue goes away. For some people, of course, democracy and human rights, including for Mr. Biden, is supposed to be a defining issue of the foreign policy. As long as that rhetoric is key in Washington, D.C., India should expect for there to be scrutiny. But hopefully it will continue to pass that test with flying colors. No, but uh, the prime minister took those questions head on. And I think even in his address to the U.S. Congress and in that press conference, Tanvi, he basically kept referring to democracy being the answer, that this is a democratic government, we're answerable to the Constitution, uh, and suggesting that uh, there is no way in which anything that's written in the Constitution will be violated and reaffirming his commitment uh, publicly to trying to ensure that India uh, lives up to all constitutionally enshrined values. Well, in India has regularly invoked democracy. You saw this even in the Prime Minister's departure statement where he talked about shared values of diversity, democracy and freedom. But that's also why you are going to hear people then hold India to that standard because India holds itself to its, that standard. And so when the Prime Minister said at the press conference that, you know, where there is no human rights, there is no democracy, you will hear that being uh, invoked uh, by others. I think there's another aspect as well, right? This democracy isn't just a values thing here. It is about today, about the contrast, that it is about strategy. And, you know, it was, contra it was for some reason controversial, but President Obama's remarks yesterday, it's actually a bit of a no-brainer. Right? Both the U.S. and India should care that each country should not be so riven with internal differences that you focus in, you know, internally and aren't able to play that strategic role. Second, if the theory of the case on the economic and technological side is we can be trusted partners, hint, hint, China is not, what makes uh, uh, India different? It's open, it's transparent, it follows the rules of the road. So democracy in its various aspects is something that both countries have invoked and both countries uh, will be held up to in terms of that standard. Uh, let's spend a moment on President Barack Obama's comments yesterday in an interview to Christiana Manpo, Michael Kugelman. He talks about uh, 
wanting President Biden to do more in his conversations with uh, Prime Minister Modi. Is that something that, the, does the timing strike you as being slightly odd, given the fact that uh, Biden is a Democrat uh, president? He used to be Obama's vice president, and this is Biden's big jamboree. He's invited a guest over, and here pops out President Obama making the kind of comments he did. Well, let's keep in mind that uh, President Ob Ob Barack Obama, when he was president, speaking in New Delhi in 2015, had made some very similar comments. So one could argue that perhaps he's had these views before and that he didn't just decide to use the opportunity of President Biden meeting with Modi to, to invoke them. I think that's an important point to, uh, to put out there. Clearly, President Biden was not going to take his former boss's advice and bring up th the issues in that way. I mean, clearly... You know, the administration is is concerned about these issues in India, and I think that for the administration, one of the goals was simply to convey that concern in private conversations, but not to push it, uh, to broach it, but not to push it that hard. It's because at the end of the day, you know, that issue likely didn't figure very heavily in the various meetings between Biden and, and Modi and others. The strategic issues loom larger. So let's spend a moment on some of those strategic issues, particularly the transfer of technology on a deal as critical as jet engines, uh, Michael Kugelman, which wouldn't have been conceivable some time back. So A, you've got a private company agreeing to give these kind of uh, technology, make it available to another country, another company. How significant is this and what do you think is spurring this new move towards America agreeing to transfer technology, which wouldn't have been on the table earlier? Well, it's a combination of, of, of several factors. I think we have to remember that President Biden himself has long had a strong interest in a deeper U.S.-India partnership. Going back to his days as a senator, as a vice president, he's long been a strong advocate for partnerships. So his own personal desire to move things forward in a big way must have figured to some extent. Also, you have to look at ISET, you know, this major initiative that was concluded some months ago, which is overseen by the national security advisors. And so that suggests a particular strong desire to really push past the bureaucracy and do whatever is necessary to move things forward. Now, one of the critical questions is whether there will be any congressional delays on the technology uh, that America has agreed to transfer to India. We saw, for example, David Markey, with uh, the nuclear submarine deal as part of AUKUS, which uh, you know was to be given to Australia. That got held up about whether such technology should be transferred at all. Do you see adequate bipartisan congressional support even beyond what the administration is saying? Or do you think this is... At some level, there's a possibility that there may be some bureaucratic congressional delays. Look, there, there's always the possibility of various delays. Uh, they can certainly happen on the congressional side uh, to some degree. Uh, this is also a complicated deal, uh, and it requires a private company, uh, GE, uh, to go ahead with a major transfer of intellectual property to India. Um, this is something that, you know, the, the details matter. This won't happen overnight. You mentioned AUKUS. I don't think the problem so much on AUKUS is a political barrier or even a bureaucratic barrier. I think it's an incredibly complicated thing to transfer high-end, really cutting-edge technology to a partner uh, which may or may not be ready to implement it immediately. In both cases, I think it will take time. In the AUKUS deal, we're talking about years, possibly decades, before this comes to full fruition. But that's not a political or congressional problem. That's a, a practical problem of cooperation. This is getting into the weeds and the amount of time it takes to get past those weeds. Let's spend a moment on China, Richard Russo, because China uh, wasn't spoken of in any derogatory way at all. Far from. In fact, when the president was asked this question, he tried to calm things down by saying this has got nothing to do with China, but of course it's got a lot to do with China. And uh, Despite everything that's being said formally, wh what do you think is the message that Beijing would likely be drawing from uh, what's being witnessed here in D.C.? Well, you do see the United States and India finally finding areas to cooperate on strategic technology. Defense has been on there for quite some time, although fits and starts, but strategic technology in the last couple of years has become prime. It's not just in the bilateral, but also in the quad. So when we talk about China's ability to intimidate others and use commercial coercion in areas like um, we're talking about quantum, we're talking about AI, we're talking about semiconductor production, if two massive economies like the United States and India can find areas to cooperate and help to blunt China's ability to dominate these spaces in the future, that's going to be powerful, not just for commercial relations, but of course, many of the same technologies are going to have massive military application in the future as well. So important for today, important for tomorrow. Hopefully we can get it right, because getting commercial uh, entities to cooperate, it's not always easy for governments to, to spoke and to stir.
Oh, and in fact, what you're mentioning is true because one of the reasons why there was a problem with the Rafael deal in its original Aftar was because the French simply didn't trust Hindustan Aeronautics to be able to manufacture uh, cutting-edge aeroplane uh, fighter jets back home. And now it's the same ATL that now needs to deal with GE. So there are genuine complications, as you said, in just getting it done despite all the intent. Well, you know, I, I think a lot of the great technology talent that exists, you know, is there with companies like HCL and TCS and Wipro and others. They haven't always been to the first ones at the table because when we started talking about India really stoking defense companies, uh, delicensing and privatizing, you saw a lot of the big conglomerates setting up those operations first. Not the technology leaders, but manufacturing leaders. But the tech ability, if you really want to transfer a technology, you need the engineering firm to step in, the ones that are already doing back office work for a lot of these companies and help them produce high-end equipment there. So I think India's got to get that mixed together, but I also like what's happening with the startup uh, environment there as well. I mean, ultimately, uh, developing technology at the root is going to be a lot easier than transferring mature technology and hoping to upgrade it. So getting our startups and our, uh, our universities to work together in tech areas, that's going to be a great, but it's going to take a long time to gestate. Tanvi, let's spend a moment on China and what China is likely to see. I mean, India and the United States are seeing what they are. What do you think China is seeing from what's happening in D.C.? You know, I suspect they wouldn't like, and they do watch these rela these visits closely, I suspect they wouldn't have liked the fact that even if they're not, you know, mentioned uh, explicitly, you see again in the speech where the Prime Minister to Congress talked about the confrontation and coercion that is being seen in the Indo-Pacific, hint, hint, the sea he's talking about that wasn't mentioned was China. But he also talked about that very explicitly as the basis for cooperation between the two countries in the Indo-Pacific. China doesn't like to see a, a U.S.-India relationship that's closed. Uh, some in China have convinced themselves that India is, you know, so strategically autonomous, so interested in non-alignment that it would never, nothing they could do would push India closer to the U.S. Well, they're realizing that India, when they're concerned about China infringing on uh, India's strategic autonomy in a bigger way, um, suddenly thinks about the U.S. very differently. And I see, think you saw that. Other thing that you saw very interestingly, which they will read into it, even if it wasn't uh, mentioned explicitly, uh, is the statement in the joint statement about uh, tougher language on pushing back on unilateral actions using force that destabilize the region. They will see that as not just about the border, but Taiwan as well, even though the Taiwan Strait uh, wasn't mentioned. It was tougher language uh, than usual. But I think they'll also be seeing that this entire set of uh, uh, kind of initiatives that you see in the fact sheet, uh, this is essentially about enhancing deterrence, de-risking, and providing alternatives, uh, high-quality alternatives in the region. Uh, that is entirely uh, about competition with China for both sides. And so, you know, you see in the Chinese media and the state media as well, constant, you know, denigrating India will not be able to do this. You know, uh, it's not going to be able to uh, be that subject of or where the U.S. and where the West can diversify. Well, this is the U.S. saying, we think India, even if not now, we're going to build the ecosystems together. And I think that's been missed. This is not about one deal or another. Underlying almost every one of these things is the two countries investing in each other's ecosystems. And in the U.S. case, helping build uh, India build its ecosystem in certain places like advanced uh, technology. Which is very useful. Make no mistake about it. We've spoken so far about how the Biden administration is seeing the India relationship. But we also saw, uh, Michael Kukulman, that there was a lot of interest from top American corporates at the state dinner where we were last evening. We had you know, you had the likes of Satya Nadella, Sundar Pichai, which were also of Indian origin, so there's that. But General Atomic, General Dynamics, GE, all these big companies coming, Micron making an announcement of an $850 million investment. Do you see this could accelerate the prospects of India being the destination for the China plus one realignment of global supply chains? Well, absolutely. India wants to capitalize on this moment with this desire of so many companies to relocate production to uh, to India. It has a long way to go on that route. Let's keep in mind the broader context that every trip, pretty much, so far as I know, that Prime Minister Modi has made to the U.S. since he became Prime Minister has involved meetings with corporates. So this is not necessarily new, but certainly that, that engagement has been intensifying. But indeed, I think that a big part, one of, one of Modi's goals, one of the broader goals of the U.S.-India relationship is to position India to play a, better, a bigger role in the these diversifying global supply chains, particularly focused on critical and emerging technologies, to, to, to try to drive global reliance away from China to some extent. So I think that there's clearly a strategic dimension to this engagement that Modi is having with these corporate uh, CEOs. What's your sense about the mood in America? Because that's way outside. 
congressional control or even the Biden administration's nudges and pushes, they'll make their own minds if they think it would be profitable to invest in India. Is uh, our U.S. corporations this moment in a let's see how it goes, dip our feet in the Indian water and then build on it? Or do you think they're more and more convinced that India could be the one place, A, because of the domestic market, B, because of geopolitical factors at play, where they should really start uh, now building some roots? Look, I, I can't speak for American corporates, uh, but, my, but my broader sense is uh, sort of the, on the one hand, on the other hand. On the one hand, there's certainly an openness to India. There's an enthusiasm about India. This isn't a partisan issue. This isn't just a congressional issue. There's a broader openness and an interest in India that I think we'll see uh, in, the, in the private sector as well. On the other hand, uh, there's lots of other places that the United States is looking to invest, and it's really up to India to capitalize on this moment. You know, you opened this, uh, this conversation with a question about whether this is really a historic uh, meeting. And the answer will be if in a few years from now we can look back and say this was the moment that the United States said yes, and India then moved forward on a variety of cooperative measures and ventures, both state to state and private sector, uh, and really seized that opportunity, the opportunity provided by the conflict with China, and also the opportunity on the defense side provided by questions about Russia as a reliable supplier of Indian equipment um, and whether the United States could fill some of those gaps. Um, when we begin to see that, then we'll look back at this moment and say, yeah, yeah, that was, that was historic. But that's up to India. A lot of the action will be on the Indian side. Mm -hmm. Let's spend a moment on politics because there's a big election both in India and the U.S. up next year. And American politics are more fractious at this moment than Indian politics, which seems a bit more settled. But of course, things can change. And who knows? It's an uh, election and you know things happen in elections. But do you think that has any bearing at all? Because if you see President Biden, when he came in, uh, there were concerns that given that you know, Prime Minister Modi had been part of that howdy Trump uh, mega jamburi uh, and that Kamala Harris was on the vice presidential ticket that there may be concerns. He seems to have aced navigating this relationship and building on it despite being a very different public personality from Prime Minister Modi. Uh, I think, you know, we, we've seen in the United States, you, you can't find two candidates that are probably more different than President Trump and President Biden. And yet, you know, President Trump really recreated the quad. President Biden doubled down on it. The concept of Indo-Pacific has remained throughout. So if you see uh, continuity on policy towards India between, you know, successive presidents that are this, uh, this uh, different from each other, uh, I have high confidence that whoever is going to be next will maintain that uh, as well. Uh, in India, you know, you think of uh, the Modi government and expectations that they've got a pretty good chance at returning to power. If they don't, if they're brought in for a coalition, that's again where the United States needs to make sure that we're constantly engaging uh, a lot of these regional parties that we've seen in times past. I mean, those that have been on the India beat for just eight or nine years, they think single party majority is the norm in India. Uh, those of us that have been doing it a little bit longer realize coalitions are common and coalition moments have actually been the biggest obstacle sometimes to getting big things done. So even if a uh, Modi government comes back but loses a few seats, they're forced into a coalition, you know, it could be a lot of these regional parties that could be king and queen makers on, on big things happening. So engaging those is going to be important for us to keep in mind as well. The India-U.S. relationship, Tanvi, has been marching forward at different speeds, uh, regardless of who's in power in India or in Washington. Uh, do you think the election next year and the fact that you've got two personalities who seem to have hit a particular moment just at this uh, instance. Does that make any difference in terms of accelerating the speed of building on this relationship? Or do you think there's enough of an institutional framework where whoever it is in power, it doesn't really matter. It only is tangentially consequential. So I think it's uh, quite clear that both sides recognizing that after many years, you're going to have India and the U.S. go to election in the same year that they wanted to try to get as much done in this visit, in President Biden's visit for the G20, but potentially also for an, a quad summit that will be held in India, to try to get as much done before both sides start getting involved in their election years. And then momentum just slows from the government side. But I think the test of this relationship, when it will become truly natural, so to speak, is when you don't need the governments constantly facilitating, that they just create the enabling environment and the private sector takes on, the labs take on, the civil society universities. And so if you, again, if you go back and look at what they have, all these initiatives, it's about saying, look, we've done our work as much as possible. Our bureaucracies will continue to work. We've sent them the signal. But look, we are going to be involved in uh, other, uh, in, you know, our elections, our domestic politics. You guys now need to move uh, this, uh, move this, uh, move this forward. 
What's your sense uh, of uh, President Biden's re-election chances at this moment in the manner in which American politics is shaping up? If I get this right, you've got to buy me dinner at Bukhara in Delhi. <laughs> um, I think at this point, you'd have to say that Mr. Biden is in a good position. The economy has done much better than everyone expected. And the Republican Party is about to go through a nomination fight that's going to be extremely bruising. Uh, right. And so anytime an incumbent is running for election, the odds are in their favor in the American context. The 2020 election where Mr. Trump lost was the exception uh, that in some ways proved the rule. It was really unusual. So Biden has the advantage, but it's going to be a really ugly campaign, regardless of what happens. America, as you pointed out in your, in your lead into this conversation, is as fractious as it's been in a long time. And key to that is a real debate about what America's role in the world is. You can't both have America sort of go out, be a force for good in the world, and have America being made great again with a very internal isolationist bent. India could be collateral damage in that fight. And look, one of the reasons that you might see a side sense of not caution, a lot of enthusiasm for what's happened over the last 24 hours is because, well, some of us are older than others, but I mean, we remember 2007. You want to talk about two leaders putting a lot of personal political capital into getting the U.S.-India civil nuclear deal. That was the game changer. It was supposed to be the same announcements that we're talking about today, the same language. But 16 years later, we know that that just never came to fruition. And as my colleagues have pointed out, that's because governments can put us on the right strategic path but if you can't get private sector buy-in at every level, you don't deliver on the full potential. And we are going to have to see, I love the way Dan put it, we'll know whether this was a historic moment a decade from now, right, when we'll know whether or not many of these announcements really not only came to fruition, but generated even more investment, even more deep partnership, such that we're no longer wondering whether or not the two leaders have a personal rapport, because there's just so much else happening. So we're going to have to see. But right now, I'm betting on Biden coming back. Uh, that's a very important point you make because if you remember the amount of noise and hype there was around the U.S.-India nuclear deal, at the end of it, uh, there's very little tangible takeaway for either side from that deal, particularly here in the U.S. So in the last part of this conversation, I want to focus on where the relationship goes from here. Uh, Richard, we're seeing America and um, lots of American companies talking now about more de-risking than uh, decoupling from China. Uh, where do you see India and the United States go on the back of this deal? Well, you know, I think uh, when we talk about corporates, uh, there's a real tension in boardrooms, a uh, place I spend a lot of time in with large companies. You've got top executives that they look at the numbers, the population growth, the economic growth, and they know they need a massive presence in India in the future if they don't have it today. But the tension lies with the fact that it is still really tough to do business. And a lot of the challenges the companies face, including some of those that had big announcements yesterday, you know, getting reliable access to electric power, flexible labor regulations, these kind of basics that China and Vietnam and others provide in droves. And these are things controlled by state governments. It's not anything that the Prime Minister Modi can snap his fingers. Even states controlled by the BJP don't always follow suit. So I think getting those, uh, those engagements to, to be more subnational oriented, getting state governments to get a lot of this stuff right, to attract those investments. You know, once we start hitting $200 billion, $300 billion in annual trade, then the momentum behind this becomes pretty unstoppable. Daniel, what do you see as being the next step in this relationship between India and the United States? What would you be looking out for most closely? Well, look, I don't know if it's the next big step, but you asked the question about uh, whether the two sides are prepared to actually seize uh, this moment um, and what is going to happen in the coming political year. And that the question is whether the two bureaucracies can pick up on what's already been done um, and kind of keep the ball rolling while both uh, President Biden and Prime Minister Modi go back to the polls and have to contest elections. That's the thing I'm going to be watching, you know, um, because a, a lot of this, the, the tendency is you make huge announcements and then things kind of begin to fall apart when you leave it in other people's hands. To what extent do you need top level, you know, presidential level engagement to keep the momentum going. And if you need a lot of that, I'm afraid that the coming, you know, 2024 is going to be a tough year. Michael, you want to answer that? Because now beginning to rain quite heavily, so we'll just start winding down very quickly. Yes. I think that this, this relationship is one with multiple tracks right now. That's very clear. And for me, uh, the new partnerships in higher education, particularly those focused on STEM, are a really big deal. Going to, to what had been said earlier about how this relationship doesn't necessarily need or shouldn't need to be driven only by official-to-official -official relations. So I think that these higher education partnerships and all of that, that's something that I'll be watching. But absolutely, as was noted before, the momentum is key. There's a lot of momentum for the relationship. Um, you know, this, this, this state visit really puts it 
right at the top, so to speak. But yeah, with, with both governments soon going into election campaign mode, it's important that you have momentum taken on by those outside of government and outside of politics. Professor Nuruddin, I want to talk to you about the new education policy and whether you think American universities are seriously looking at coming and setting up campuses or collaborating, joint degrees. It's been spoken of a lot with hope. I spoke to the uh, American ambassador to India and others. They're talking about it. But will it actually happen in reality? It's going to be slow moving. There's a lot of enthusiasm. We all, anyone who teaches at an American universities knows the pool of talent that exists in India. Right, Indian Americans who are on the faculty, like myself, uh, and of course the incredible number of Indian students who come over here. There's a great interest uh, among American students to go study in India. But Rahul, it's hard. <laughs> Every part of that bureaucracy is still really complicated. The simple act of getting a student visa to go to India is complicated. We all know if you've ever stood in line at the U.S. consulate to get a visa here, what a difficult experience that can be. There's a lot of progress to be made over there, but we've talked a little bit about the human rights situation. It's not worth dwelling on over here, but don't underestimate the degree to which a lot of universities look at the situation there and say, how do we think about academic freedom in this context? How do we think about what a genuine partnership will look like? But I think you're going to see a lot more announcements, including hopefully from my university, about partnerships that are serious about joint uh, programs with credible Indian partners. Uh, the potential of the Indian higher education market is recognized by everyone in this space, and you're going to see that opportunity. And look, we, one thing we haven't talked about today is that the diaspora pushes this incredibly. Young people, young Indian Americans are keen to go home, they're keen to be more engaged, and education is a great pathway for that. Well, uh, we're fully committed to this equation and this relationship, as you can see, we're standing out in the rain with Tanvi. You know both India and the United States very closely. Given everything that we've seen, what scares you the most? What um, do you think can go wrong? Um, you know, lots of things can go wrong, but I would say you know, if you don't implement, if you focus on, you know, the strategic, that the words, the visit happens, and visits are called, these kind of visits are called action-forcing events. So they force the action where you get all the agreements, and then momentum uh, falls. You get, um, you get kind of involved in internal situations. You become more insular. That can happen because in either country that we, we start struggling with our democracies, that we are so, uh, so involved in fighting each other, uh, that we don't focus on the path ahead. And frankly, countries like China would take advantage of that and actually tell the rest of the world, look, these messy democracies can't get anything done. I will say, though, Rahul, and I do want to put this on the record, as the one historian around here, since we're calling, talking about historic moments, I do think the U.S.-India nuclear deal was historic. And it was because you would not see anything that happened today without what that represented, which was the first moment that the U.S. actually lifted export control restrictions. So yes, there might not be Westinghouse nuclear reactors, but that moment encapsulated kind of a lot more. So, you know, you say it's not about, it's not successful. I'll tell you as the historian, the 10 year uh, metric that Dan laid out. Uh, yes, as we look back, I'm the one who's going to write the history. I'm writing a book right now. That moment was historic. And if this moment is like that, you're definitely going to see a movement. And it paved the way for what followed. Uh, and that, in that sense, of course, it was massively consequential. I really want to thank uh, all of you for joining us, braving the inclement weather. I uh, really appreciate you taking our time. And thank you so much and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Why does this happen?
Let me tell you the science behind it. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today News Mo. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com. Jawa Zamana Hamara Ye Dilo Ke Din Kuch Hisabo Ke Din Kai Dil Jalo Ko Jawa Bo Ke Din Defense Pheel Me Ache Khabo Ke Din Hey Welcome America Me Ji Meherba Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com. One of the big moments for Prime Minister Narendra Modi during his state visit to Washington DC was the address at the joint sitting of the US Congress. The second time the Prime Minister was invited there. Interestingly, there were more than a dozen occasions where the Prime Minister received a standing ovation. Uh, in fact, there were a lot of Indian Americans in the visitors gallery right above where the congressmen and the senators were sitting and uh, they were chanting Modi, Modi and a lot of the American press that were there were quite shocked by the fact that you had these chants inside the US Congress, which obviously isn't a common uh, sighting over there. Uh, also, soon after the visit got over and before, the congressman greeted the Prime Minister very warmly, lots of autographs being taken, selfies as well, and many of those uh, congressmen, senators uh, told us later off camera, of course, that they seemed quite envious of the kind of popularity the Prime Minister enjoyed in a distant country. These aren't necessarily his voters, they're his supporters, but not his voters, and they seem to be uh, you know, treating him with a certain adulation, which was quite the envy of all the American politicians who were gathered at the US Congress. American lawmakers standing in a queue to meet Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the Capitol in Washington. As Modi becomes the first Prime Minister to address US Congress twice 
His 57-minute long speech received 79 applauses, 15 standing ovations from the members of the Congress and the Indian-American community in the galleries. During the address, Modi Modi chants were also heard from the galleries by the diaspora. What followed after showed India's rising power in international corridors. <laughs> Members of the US Congress rushed to click selfies with Prime Minister Modi. Some even waiting in a queue for an autograph from the Indian Prime Minister. While we were in the press gallery, when that uh, speech was going on, I saw a lot of the people who were there quite gobsmacked by the fact that in the visitors' gallery, in the visitors' gallery, there were chants of Modi Modi, which hadn't been heard typically. Typically, it doesn't happen, right? So you got all these people almost as if it's some kind of an arena or a political rally chanting Modi Modi in the U.S. Congress, and that also gave to the American politicians a sense of the deep popularity that the Prime Minister enjoys to this day. At the state dinner at the White House, hosted by the Bidens. Desi Musical Connect was on full display. Rendition of Shah Rukh Khan's star Achaya Chaya was performed by the Pen Masala group, while classical violin was also heard during the event. This was a significant meeting of world's largest and oldest modern democracies. In the high-profile guest list of 400 invited attendees, who's who from different industries were seen arriving for the dinner. Adorning gorgeous attire, many showcasing the Indian Connect. Business tycoons Neeta and Mukesh Ambani, who called this a historic visit. Industrialist Anand Mahindra, Google CEO Sundar Pichai, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, former chairperson of PepsiCo Indra Nui, film director M. Night Shyamalan and many more. Also present were members of the Biden administration. Pichai was also seen obliging attendees at the state dinner with photographs. The second day of Prime Minister Modi's visit to the United States of America was clearly a star-studded affair, where he raised a toast to India-US friendship and ensuring that India cannot be ignored anymore in world politics. With Rahul Kamal and Geeta Mohan in Washington, Bureau Report India Today. This is where we wrap up the news track tonight for your time and your trust. Thank you very much. We're in Washington, D.C., tracking different aspects of the Prime Minister's visit. So we'll continue our broadcast over the next uh, 24 hours from Washington, D.C. The Prime Minister doing the big diaspora event in a few hours from now uh, at the Kennedy Center. He'll be doing an address as well. He's meeting uh, U.S. businessmen right now, several of the tech titans meeting the Prime Minister. So we're tracking his engagements and also also what emerges from each of these meetings. Thank you for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you at 8 p.m. tomorrow. Goodbye. Good night.
For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today News Mo. Armed with facts, she takes the news by its horns. Do you think the future of these students are not hampered? Fierce, bold, and direct, setting the tone for the bigger stories from every corner and every angle. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me Nabila Jamal on India Today. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com. Sorry. Nay, door me dostana hamara. Ab dekhega jawa zamana hamara. Ye di lo ke din kuch hisabon ke din. Defense field me ache welcome America me ji meherba mere jaisa friend bhi mile ka kaha mile ka kaha to grab go dil divana hamara ab de Well, a very good morning. Uh, we're on a rolling coverage. Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the United States. He's all set to meet with the Indian diaspora. I'm Nabila Jamal. I'm going to take you through every update at this moment with the Prime Minister in attendance uh, as he's just completed that very grand lunch with the Vice President Kamala Harris. And now the meeting with the Indian diaspora is really going to be the top focus. A lot of uh, celebratory images that are already coming in. I'm going to take you through that. The headlines first. 
Prime Minister Modi attends the state luncheon hosted by American Vice President Kamala Harris. The Indian-American uh, partnership or the friendship itself, uh, Prime Minister raises a toast to all eyes now on Prime Minister's big diaspora address. Prime Minister meets top ponchos and CEOs at the India-US high-tech handshake event. Prime Minister says coming together of te talent technology guarantees a bright future. After a five-day intensive hunt in the Atlantic Ocean, all five civilians on board Ocean Gate's Titanic submersible have been declared dead. Search on at this point to see if they can find the bodies of those who succumb. All right, now Prime Minister Narendra Modi attends the state lunch hosted by United States Vice President Kamala Harris. U.S. Vice President uh, Kamala Harris, Secretary of State Antony Blinken, on Friday hosted this lunch for the Prime Minister. Just a little while ago, Narendra Modi was invited to uh, by the State Department and quite a grand lunch that took place there where Modi gave uh, an address and in uh, our language, in Hindi, Modi spoke in that lunch at that lunch extensively in fact this was uh, an in invitation itself that was uh, sent out by president joe biden to prime minister modi for that very special lunch in a warm welcome for the prime minister we saw vice president kamala harris hailing india's global impact in this world in fact recalling her indian roots the vice president has further gone on to appreciate india's long-standing partnerships um, and, and how this country together, both countries together in this uh, alliance of sorts will only prosper. And security was also on top focus while uh, Vice President Kamala Harris addressed welcoming Prime Minister Modi. These are live images coming in as Prime Minister Narendra Modi's meeting with some business honchos has just begun. All right, this is the Boeing CEO. In fact, uh, the Prime Minister meeting with the Boeing CEO. Uh, this, is, this is very significant also on the sidelines uh, of Air India at this point, signing a deal with Boeing. Uh, we believe nearly 450 uh, aircrafts that have been a deal that's been signed uh, by the Tata Group with Boeing. Prime Minister Narendra Modi meeting with that CEO. Uh, if I could uh, introduce our guest here joining us in the studio. Major General A.K. Sahai. Thank you so much. A.K. Shivas, sir, thank you very much for uh, staying with us through this rolling coverage here on India Today. We see that Prime Minister Modi is meeting with the Boeing CEO. I'm taking you through this. Yeah, these are the live images that are coming in. Uh, uh, give us the significance of this as we see a huge opportunity for many of these uh, big brands. Uh, Boeing looking to expand in India, in, in every sense looking to associate with India. We believe 450 aircrafts are all uh, yeah. set to be sent to join the Air India fleet. Absolutely. See, the point is today is that aviation industry in India is now opening up and doing extremely well. And as on today, Air India has gone uh, and signed a deal with Boeing for 450 aircraft. And now recently, India... Indigo has signed a deal for another 500 aircraft. So we are going to get almost about 950 wow. aircraft in future. And this will be a, a milestone for uh, aviation industry. You will find it that the number of aircraft in another 10 to 15 years are going to be almost double than what we have. So aviation industry is going to do extremely well in India. And that, that is the future of this. And you will find it now what has happened, especially in um, last 10 years. The number of uh, airports which have increased or the destination which were of smaller towns have now been cities also connected with, with the airports. That has been considerable and now almost 180 more going to be open in another about five years. So therefore, as far as India is concerned, the Indian skies are going to open up and you'll find it that the aviation industry is going to do extremely well. And therefore, there was a need of having the state-of-art uh, aircraft. And initially, the, uh, basically, Tata Air India went 
yeah. and consulted and thereafter signed a package with Boeing of 450 aircraft and now recently the Indigo has gone and signed a deal for find. So this is a milestone uh, and I'm sure that's why Prime Minister Modi is meeting the, the CEO of the Boeing that the association which India will have with Boeing will, will be uh, very considerably important. You know, uh, at this point, many of these top uh, CEOs uh, who are now hobnobbing with Prime Minister Narendra Modi, this is, of course, uh, uh, viewed as the India moment. Prime Minister is representing India, India's prospects, uh, and really bolstering ties uh, with not just America as a country, but also with these companies uh, th th who are really looking at this point to find a way into India. And we believe that this meeting has really opened those doors. Absolutely. See, uh, we have to understand one thing that as far as the U.S. is concerned, there are the private companies which play a major role. And same in the defense uh, industry, if you see it, uh, whether it is uh, basically, uh, you can say that we have signed a deal now with General Electric Aerospace, and that the deal has been signed between General Electric Aerospace and the HR for manufacture of uh, almost 350 uh, the engine which are G414. And now these are going to be a milestone because what is happening is that uh, this will not only be that manufacturing jointly transfer of technology make in India and in future that uh, we will not only able to make it for India, but able to export. Now, uh, remember that as far as the jet engines are concerned, there are only four countries in the world which were uh, have that technology to manufacture uh, basically the jet. That is basically US, UK, France and uh, Russia. Uh, China also do not have. Uh, our Kaveri project, which uh, is uh, progressing uh, you know, work in progress is still not able to succeed. So this G414 engine, which will be taking uh, basically for our uh, Tejas Mark II, which will be manufactured subsequently, will be a fifth generation aircraft. It will be a game changer, force multiplier, and we are going to make 350 aircraft. And also what we are going to do, AMCA, that is basically advanced medium combat aircraft. Th these are also going to be put as far as these engines are concerned. So overall, a very important deal uh, of the uh, jet engine. And the second very important deal is MQ-9 drones, which are called sea drone and predator. These drones are also very important for India because we have taken two of these uh, surveillance uh, drones uh, on lease from US and we found that they, they were extremely uh, powerful, very uh, helpful and that's why we have gone right. for another 31, 15 for Navy and 8 each for Air Force and Army. Now what will they do? You know this will change the whole landscape as far as Indo-Pacific concerned. There the surveillance can be carried out and you know it the submarines as well as the aircraft carrier and the frigate of not only US but also China are there in Indian Ocean, they will be able to keep a surveillance on that, also on a line of actual control and line of control, because they have endurance for 27 uh, hours and they can go up to a range of almost about 2,000 to 3,000 and they have also hellfire, um, you know, missile and also they, they have an anti-submarine weapon system. Remember that as far as Al-Jawari who was killed in, in uh, Afghanistan, was killed by, by the hell-fired missile which was uh, basically fired from the drone. And same way, General Suleimani. So these, again, uh, drones, MQ-9 drone, drones are going to be game changer. You know, what we are trying to now do it, unlike G414 engine, where the transfer of technology taking place, here there are still, you know, a lot of things to be done. Here, what they are trying to convey is the... Uh, basically, the spare parts can be manufactured by India and the servicing can be done. So, it is not complete transfer of technology as far as, far as MQ-9B uh, drones are concerned. But overall, uh, drones which are going to be a game changer and force multiplier in future. And the third deal which was there was M777 light ultra light houser. You know, remember these are the uh, ultra light houser which India is already having. And in India, these are being manufactured by Mahindra Defense. And now they have become old, they required a servicing. And this is again a deal signed 
as far as India and uh, US is concerned. So these three uh, defense deals are yeah. got a very, very important for us. In addition to that, what we have done is that semiconductor chips, Micron will be also making it in India. Then what we have done is that uh, basically cyber space, uh, more coordination, more cooperation, the supply. State dinner, he was at the tech handshake this morning. He was at the State Department luncheon. So he's really moving and shaking just the right places. Nikhil Kama, thank you very much. And uh, it's great to be here. It's a bit rainy, but it's fantastic to catch up with you. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you. So you must have been the youngest person who in, got invited because of what he's done, not because of any other association at the State Department. So there's Mukesh Ambani, Anand Mahindra, and you. A lot of people watching would be very jealous and saying, what's Nikhil doing? How's he getting these fancy tickets? Well, I think uh, they were very kind and I have to say uh, I was surprised too, but uh, uh, I don't know, maybe this is testament to show that the government wants to support youngsters, uh, a newer, younger breed of entrepreneurs. Uh, so I think it's something to kind of like be excited by and I really cherish the experience. I learned so much from so many people that I met. I'm exhausted because like you know, it's been a tough two three days and i've been working nights because the indian markets open like at midnight and uh, yeah looking forward to getting back and sleeping <laughs> well, that's interesting that you said because modi ji is not tired he's at it bang bang right and nikhil like the youngest guy in the room is saying i'm tired mera ho gaya mujhe neend chahiye i don't know how he's not tired like i'll give you an example of this morning we had a meeting uh, which began at 9:30 a.m. and uh, it finished at 12 something where he spoke for a reasonable amount of time and then from there we went to another meeting where he spoke again for a reasonable amount of time. Mm -hmm. Now at 4 p.m. he has gone to the Kennedy Center where he's making another speech and his team was telling me they're going to go to Egypt later today and then they're going to do the same thing all over again. Uh, I think I don't know where the energy comes from. Uh, sure. <laughs> do you want to talk a bit about the tech handshake? Uh, Sam Altman, Sundar Pichai, uh, Satya Nadella, all the movers and shakers there in that room, you were there too. How do you see this tech collaboration between India and the United States shape up uh, from here? Yeah, I think many possibilities, many opportunities. Uh, there is a friendship which has kind of uh, formed between our Prime Minister and the US President, which was evident for all of us in the room to see. Uh, they were really pally with each other and you know like joking and stuff like that uh, You got to see Biden's funny bone. Yeah, and and he is quite funny and uh, and I think Even from like when I was in the room when they asked me to speak I was talking about the India stack <clears throat> and all the opportunities of exporting uh, the uh, exporting our India stack and many things in our banking ecosystem per se to the West uh, because banking in India I must say is more efficient cheaper and faster than Western countries and I think we're trying uh, that experiment with Singapore a little bit but uh, India stack abroad I think will be a very valuable product it doesn't even have to be implemented in a manner where India has any of the data. The data can be localized in their geography. But I think that's a huge opportunity for us to work with them, wherein we not only transport services or we not only transfer services, but IP of some sort, which has been organically created in India. So you met up with uh, Satya Nadella, Sundar Pichai, Sam, Sam Altman. You want to talk a bit about uh, how it was meeting with them and your big takeaways from those meetings? Well, each one of them uh, had a different viewpoint and uh, so it was interesting talking to them about stuff I don't understand too well maybe, like uh, generative AI, but each one of them, like be it Microsoft, Google or uh, Sam Altman, they seem to be on the forefront of it. Uh, so, you know, Keynes once said the biggest problem, uh, if we didn't have work, what would we do? Mm -hmm. uh, the problem of not knowing what to do is a problem in itself and it feels like when productivity is 
going to be taken away by whatever whatever AI transforms to into the future, and a large section of society necessarily need not, need not work in the manner that they work today. Uh, it's a very interesting use case, and one has to ponder about how the world, the socio economics, even the geopolitics of the world, uh, change by virtue of something like that. Do we shift to some form of uh, socialism with UBI and a bunch of benefits at the bottom and optional capitalism for the people who opt into it on top? Uh, how do the incumbent winners of capitalism transition? Because I'm guessing the transition will be most painful for them. And if there is a transition, how long is the transition? And uh, how painful is the transition? So there are many, many questions uh, for the day when generative AI in a manner can truly think. But uh, I guess nobody knows. Everybody had a different viewpoint and I think nobody agreed with the other. But these are very interesting questions for even us to ponder, people who don't know. Sure. One of the things the US is trying to help India with is developing a innovation ecosystem in India. And one of the realities is, and we're seeing that with generative AI, which you just spoke about, a lot of the cutting edge innovation continues to happen in the United States. What is it that you're going back with in terms of what can India, this government and young startups like you do to try and foster an innovation ecosystem which isn't just pandering to the Indian market in terms of e-commerce and social commerce, but actually at the very cutting edge of technological change? Again, interesting question. I asked this to a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. Why is so much innovation happening in the US? Why do you think that's the case? Well, what people told me was things like culture, the rebellious attitude, the, the American dream which has been sold for a long, long time. Uh, see, Rahul, innovation is happening in India, mm -hmm. albeit in different forms. Uh, for innovation which needs uh, a certain number of building blocks to align before which people can truly innovate for innovations of that sort. Uh, I think India will get there organically. I think a lot is being done to improve education, the infra around education uh, by the incumbent government in India. But I feel like uh, maybe a good idea to kind of like, you know, also also not in my own personal view, right? I might totally be wrong, but I think education systems should not have to be as conformist as they were. Uh, in my own life, like, I've hated school growing up because, uh, partly because I was not very smart and a good student, but also, <laughs> also because... So is India's youngest self-made billionaire. Also because uh, uh, I think you're not given the option to figure out what your passion is and pursue it as much as you're told what you should learn. Uh, historically, I don't think evolution worked like that. I think uh, uh, back in the day, I'm talking many hundreds of years ago, kids were brought up by societies at large and their parents did not indoctrinate their belief systems upon their kids. And the kids had the option to learn from every member of the community. Uh, that allowed for people to be more philosophical, more creative. And I think going back to our roots, not our immediate roots, but our historical roots, in a manner might take us back to a point where education is not as conformist as, as the kids might see in school today. Mm -hmm. It also seems interesting that, uh, you know, you've been involved with the whole GIFT project, trying to get a lot of uh, investment bankers to come to India, uh, set up base in uh, Ahmedabad, Gandhinagar. Do you see that working out well? I mean, the project has been in the works for a long time. Is it now finally achieving some level where it can take off? So, Rahul, when I went to GIFT first, we were the first fund to set up there, I think like a couple of years ago. There were maybe a uh, couple of hundred people, five cows and a uh, few like cycles on the street. When I went to GIFT the last time around, which was a month and a half ago, GIFT has transformed. Uh, I think it's hard to today get real estate in GIFT. Uh, there are like big companies like Bank of America with thousands of employees and, uh, and structurally the ease of business, 
I think Gift has taken it very seriously that they're not competing with India anymore, but they're competing with a DIFC in Dubai or Singapore. Uh, and the regulators sitting in the same premise, and uh, I happen to know the regulators there quite well, uh, and they're doing an incredible job at engaging with people who want to set up at Gift uh, and helping them in any manner that they can. And uh, I think the Prime Minister has kind of like conceived of creating this uh, offshore location onshore in a manner, but uh, I think in a couple of years, Gift, in my, if I were to be a betting man and if I were to bet, I would say we'll do better than DIFC in Singapore. Well, you need some alcohol there. <laughs> I know we're on TV, but no banker is coming and working in Gandhinagar, Ahmedabad. If at the end of a long day when he's off his screen, he can't go to a nice pub, okay? So you need to uh, keep that in mind. I think it'll happen. I, I think uh, uh, people there are really forward-looking and uh, I think, like, if you look at the changes that have happened in GIF, right, there, there have been a lot. And I know it's funny talking about alcohol, but... Uh, I think it'll happen. I think everything that you need will happen. No, so you're also developing the reputation of being an investor who thinks, right? And a young investor who thinks. What are the, and I'm not just saying this in the context of India and the United States right now, but what are the uh, pets that you think uh, you're thinking about very deeply, which if people thought about as well, they could potentially benefit from? Yeah, so there are two or three themes like, I ask myself this question, what do I want to spend the next decade of my life doing or the next two decades of my life doing? Uh, the sectors that I really like, if I'll, I'll narrow it down to two, I think on top of my list is senior living. Uh, for the population of the planet to kind of, or population of a country to remain flat, uh, the replenishment rate is about 2.1. So Rahul and his wife have to give birth to 2.1 kids. Uh, India used to be significantly higher than that, right? Like, I would say four, three and a half, four, not many years ago. If you look at states like Karnataka or Maharashtra today, they are under 2.1. Uh, so what happened in Japan for a long time when fertility rates or birth rates dropped drastically is you have that 30, 40, 50 year old period, 50 year period where you're, uh, you kind of have like an aging older population. I think uh, that will happen not just in India but across the world. Like I was reading somewhere that in Hungary they're waiving off 25% federal taxes if a woman has one child and they're waiving off 100% if the woman has four, four kids. In China they tried forcing the three child policy because the one child policy created this demographical problem in China but people don't seem to be buying it and I think the challenge of tomorrow will be how to incentivize people to have more children. Uh, notwithstanding the challenges, the world will have a significantly older population soon. So betting on anything that caters to that audience, it could be anything in geriatric care, it could be senior assisted living, it could be a hospital focused only on the old, it could be a whole host of services that the elderly need. Uh, both from a charitable lens and a non-charitable capitalistic lens. Both avenues, uh, this is something I will probably spend a lot of time exploring and investing in and hopefully operating as well in the next decade. Okay. Yeah. And the second one? And the second theme is, uh, so this is a little hard for me to say because I have uh, voiced my critique of real estate for such a long time like anytime anybody you don't like houses you don't want people to buy houses I, I still live in a rented house and I've the only house I have ever owned is the house my parents live in and stuff like that but uh, so the evolution of a house is very interesting I remember reading this book by Bill Bryson uh, if, if I remember it right it's called house it talks about how a dining table came into being, what a, why a bathroom or a toilet came into being. The very early version of a toilet, before there was plumbing and flushing and all of that, was generally a cabinet where you could, you know, make, do your makeup and, you know, probably have some water and perfumes and stuff like that. People of back in the day did not bathe every day, but they did it like once in a week or a fortnight, right? So 
every element of your home has evolved in a certain manner because of some kind of innovation like the toilet changed so many things same goes for your dining table your bedroom your living room your kitchen all of that uh as far as i can see today uh i feel innovation on the housing side has kind of stalled for the last many many years we had the apartments and stuff like that but nothing has changed drastically in the last 30 40 years if i want to buy a new home tomorrow i'm going to think how many bedrooms how many bathrooms how big is the living room i think that could change in the future i think people will become uh more open minded and as i i also feel personally i feel like when families are becoming smaller and smaller and more fragmented per se i feel like there is a huge opportunity in community living which people are not taking so seriously right now but prop tech is a big theme for us we have a company called grow house uh, along with a partner of ours called abhijit pai where we are investing into a lot of companies in prop tech which also uh a negate the effect of carbon in construction construction is the largest uh proponent of this with about 30% of emissions coming from them so things like smart water meters uh brick companies made from fly ash and plastic so this has become a parallel theme uh, it hasn't tro- totally played out yet i don't know how the house will change but i think people will be willing to change the way they look upon that dwelling in a manner that they haven't in the recent past okay, and finally what to you was the highlight of the state dinner yesterday what stood out as the most interesting thing well so the state dinner had what 300 400 people it was a big event like you know it was uh, it it looks a lot more exclusive when there is a video of one person walking in somewhere and somebody shoots it but it was a big event with many many people uh whoever planned the event whoever organized the seating it looked like there were some indians and some americans on every table there was a mix it wasn't like this section is that and that section is this uh so i was sitting next to somebody who was one of the economic advisors at the white house and uh, you know that's like my jammer right? like those those are the people i love sitting next to uh, like i was sitting next to the secretary of uh, housing right now so the economic advisor was talking to me about you know what he thought of the debt and the fiscal deficit and what he thinks will happen to interest rates going forward uh, all the narratives about uh, will there be a contest upon dollar supremacy and is the share of uh dollar trade and world trade coming down so many varied interesting topics like that most of these questions do not have a yes or no answer that's why talking to people in person becomes so interesting because from their lens you get a different answer and i think if you have two different answers you can weigh and figure out which one you want to lean towards and which one you do not fascinating thank you so much and all the best and more power to what you're doing and enjoy the coffee thanks nikhil thanks cheers Thank you, Rahul. All right, that's quite a long conversation there with uh, Nikhil Kamath, the CEO of Zeroda. He's been invited as part of the Indian Diaspora meeting with uh, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the United States. Well, these, this is visual coming in that uh, we India today has accessed from the White House, where there was this grand luncheon that was organized by Kamala Harris, the Vice President of the United States. Uh, this uh, very lunch had a nice orchestra, a band, uh, really lightening the atmosphere. With Prime Minister Modi enjoying a nice good meal uh, that uh, that was laid out specially for him. This is uh, the kind of warmth that's been extended to the Prime Minister of India in many levels. Uh, is is diplomacy to the next level? Let's listen in to that music, that song, and all the color. on this note i would like to raise a toast
to your good health and well-being, to our friendship and to the peace and prosperity of all our citizens. Thank you. पिछले तीन दिनों में मैंने अनेक बैठकों में हिस्सा लिया कई विषयों पर चर्चा की इन सभी बैठकों में एक चीज कॉमन थी सब एक मत थे कि भारत और अमेरिका के लोगों के बीच मित्रता एवं सहयोग or gehra hona chahiye. So Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for your role of leadership to help India emerge as a global power in the 21st century. You have helped to reinvigorate the Quad. Your leadership of the G20 is making new strides on climate finance. And you have been a proponent of international institutions and global solutions to global challenges. And as a point of personal privilege, as chair of the National Space Council, I thank you for your leadership in space and for our joint work on an Earth science satellite which will help us address the climate crisis. Throughout history, India has inspired millions of people around the world, whether through philosophy and theology, the power of civil disobedience, or the commitment to democracy. Indeed, as I travel the world as Vice President, I have seen India's global impact firsthand. In Southeast Asia, Indian-made vaccines have saved lives and livelihoods. On the continent of Africa, India's long-standing partnerships support prosperity and security. And throughout the Indo-Pacific, India helps promote a free and open region. I also know of India's extraordinary impact with regard to innovation, medicine, and science. Here in the United States, India is part of our daily lives. We enjoy uh, Drupal Ahiri's novels over samosas. <laughs> we laugh at the comedies of Mindy Kaling. We dance to the beats of Diljit at Coachella. And yes, Mr. Prime Minister, and I can say this from personal experience, we keep ourselves more or less fit and healthy doing yoga. <laughs> In your address to our Congress yesterday, you highlighted the boldness of India's own ambitions, the remarkable advances that your country has made in recent years, expanding free medical care, empowering women, harnessing clean energy. The positive impact in the lives of the Indian people is immeasurable and it will be lasting. And it underscores that these aspirations for a better future are ones that we share and ones that we depend upon each other to help realize. That's why when President Eisenhower became the first American president to visit India, he told your parliament that the welfare of America is bound up with the welfare of India. Over the past several decades, the United States and India have been advancing the vision of greater interdependence, brought closer by administrations of different parties in both of our countries. All right, that was a little earlier today. Anthony Blinken, as he speaks, well, welcoming Prime Minister Modi into that very grand lunch that was organized for him. In fact, the Prime Minister now is going to be meeting with the Indian diaspora. There are two meetings, one in about one hour's time and the next in about three hours' time. He has, a, of course, a packed schedule, but a lot of the cards as India Today on top of that coverage. A short break, we'll be right back. Exfoliators, chemical peels, 
Hydra facials. The internet is abuzz with skincare treatments that celebrities like Jennifer Aniston, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Courtney Cox swear by and Dermat's advice. But what are these interesting ways to lift your skin and ensure the return of that glow? Chemical peels is one. These summers, doctors say chemical exfoliation is the best thing to do for your skin. Your skincare products work because they contain one kind of acid or another, which is why they produce effects. If you're into skincare and reading labels, you already know what AHAs and BHAs are and what they do for your skin. These are the two most popular kinds of skincare acids. Basically, exfoliation is a process in which we remove the superficial uh, dead skin layer. Now, this can be done by physical means such as microdermabrasion or dermaplaning or it can be done by chemical means like uh, various acids. These are alpha hydroxy acids or beta hydroxy acids. So alpha hydroxy acids like glycolic acid or lactic acid or mandelic acid, these basically work for things like pigmentation to give you a refreshed youthful glow. Beta hydroxy acids like salicylic acid, they are more preferred in uh, patients who have oily skin, acne prone skin because they reduce the oil production in the skin and thereby give a clearer complexion. So what is new about this skincare acid you ask? Chemically, AHA stands for alpha hydroxy acid and BHA stands for beta hydroxy acid. Now because of the difference in their chemical structure, I want to start by asking you about your reflections on Prime Minister Modi's visit uh, to Washington DC, his first state visit, only the third uh, state visit uh, thrown by the Biden administration and the manner in which uh, the Biden administration seems to have gone out of its way to roll out the red carpet for the Indian head of state at this moment in time. What do you think is at play and why? Well, first I want to say that uh, this was probably the best bilateral meeting that Biden has had since he's become president. Uh, the trajectory of the U.S.-India relationship is warm and strong. Uh, some of that uh, is, of, of course, because of mutual concerns about the rise of China. But a lot of it is because of how well India is doing. Uh, India's own trajectory, Modi's popularity, India's growth, uh, its technological uh, growth and capabilities, uh, 5 million Indians in the diaspora uh, in the United States in positions of uh, great uh, significance uh, and popularity. Uh, all of those things, I think, come together uh, at this point in time uh, to make this a great a great opportunity uh, for uh, the relationship between these two countries. And I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention that it's very clear that Prime Minister Modi personally wants a much stronger relationship with the U.S. and sees that as part of his own legacy on the global stage. I think all of those things have really helped. You know, you're a top expert on risk. Your advice companies, countries on risks that they should be mindful of. So if you were to look at this from a risk prison at this moment, what, according to you, are the key risks that India and the United States need to be watchful for at this moment? Well, one risk that they don't have to worry about uh, as much is the future of the U.S. political system. Uh, I mean, think about it. Modi is perhaps the only major strategic partner of the United States um, that doesn't really care if Biden or Trump wins the next election. They're comfortable either way. Not true for Japan, South Korea, UK, the Europeans, the Gulf states, even Israel, there's some strong preferences. Maybe Israel's in the closest position, much, strong, much smaller than India. So that, that's less of a problem. I think the bigger question um, in the relationship has to do uh, with India's being a very poor country. It's structurally being a part of the global south at a time when uh, so much 
of the global south is being challenged, challenged uh, because of climate change and the transition uh, to a post-carbon energy environment, challenged because of high inflation costs for food, for energy, made only worse because of the war in Russia. Uh, I think those are risks that make the largest population country in the world with a much smaller per capita income than the United States, those interests are obviously, they see the world very differently. And, and that, that implies that the relationship can only get too close because there are going to be uh, some, some real hard constraints in terms of the actual policy orientations of the two governments. China is the unspoken of unspoken gorilla in the room whenever India and the United States meet. Uh, President Biden tried to play down the differences with China and play down him calling Xi Jinping a dictator. Uh, in the best way you understand it, what do you think uh, would be Beijing's decoding of uh, what we are seeing play out at Washington D.C.? Well. Uh, I, I think the fact that the United States and India both have democracies that they want to keep, even though they're democracies that are under challenge, and Xi Jinping is president for life. I mean, let's be clear, part of Modi's strength on the global stage is that he's not Putin. It's that he's not Xi. His strength comes from the fact that he wins elections. His strength comes from the fact that most of the people in India support him. And, and Biden's rule, of course, is reflected by that as well, um, even though the U.S. political system is much more divided and the elections are coming up real soon. Um, the, the concern about China, I mean, some of that, of course, is China's military, uh, uh, you know, growth in, in capabilities in Asia, the South China Sea, the Taiwan Straits, uh, its relationship with Pakistan. Uh, some of that uh, is about China's economic dominance and trade through Belt and Road with almost all the countries that are around India in strategic infrastructure investments over the long term, which potentially are seen as problematic. Um, but some of it uh, is because that China is promoting a very different model, a model of state capitalism and authoritarianism that turns out to be quite stable, um, but is not democracy. Um, and neither the Americans or the Indians are fundamentally comfortable with that. Uh, and so in that environment, uh, India doesn't want to have to choose between uh, the United States and China. It wants an independent foreign policy, of course. But India also knows um, that from a military and national security perspective, increasingly, it is aligned with the United States. And there was nothing that showed that more clearly uh, than the announcements uh, being made on producing new advanced jet engines uh, with classified systems with American corporations. I mean, the military industrial complex is gonna be much closer to India and America's is the biggest in the world. How much of that is pure play transactional? The GE would ordinarily guard its uh, IPR very dearly. This is very high-end uh, military technology, which isn't available commonly. Just a handful of countries have the capacity to make this. Uh, it's agreed to transfer of technology. It's agreed to selling at lesser than normal market prices. Uh, is that uh, something that you think could possibly be suggestive of a growing trend to try and wean India away from Russia's embrace when it comes to weapon purchases? I, I don't think uh, the Americans need to try very hard. I think that these um, alignments are quite strong. Uh, it's very clear that Russia is not going to be able to produce the kind of spare parts and military equipment for export going forward that they had historically. Um, and, you know, the Indians are going to have a problem with that. The Russians can barely produce the military equipment they need for themselves fighting and losing a war in Ukraine. Um, then beyond that, as India becomes wealthier, uh, they're going to want more capable and more sophisticated weapons that the Russians aren't going to have. 
So uh, I think for all of those reasons, never mind the sanctions, never mind the geopolitical challenges uh, of a Russian invasion and all the war crimes, which the Indians don't care as much about, um, but the fact is uh, that the Indians have very good reasons to want to work more closely with the United States. They're not going to get their, their um, weapon systems with Chinese chips and Chinese surveillance. That's not a possibility. And the other alternatives are really small. I mean, I'm sure, you know, you can work with France, you can work with the UK, but th these are not replacements for Russia. So, I mean, actually, this is a really big strategic move. The U.S. spends more on defense than the next 10 countries in the world combined. India is the fifth largest economy in the world, but soon it's going to be the third. And its military complex is increasingly going to be aligned with the United States. It's going to be interoperable um, and it's going to be a lot of business. And, and when, when you combine that with semiconductors and technologies, artificial intelligence, 5G and new apps, you know, these have national security and dual use purposes too. So, I mean, the areas where you have the greatest level of new cooperation between the U.S. and India really are on this national security front broadly defined. No, twice in recent official meetings, President, Bi uh, President Xi Jinping has spoken of exceptional circumstances, risk. You know, he makes it seem as if something terrible is going to happen, obviously not defining what that is, or basically suggesting that you need to brace for extreme eventualities. As a top expert in probability and risk, what do you think are the eventualities that he could be thinking of? How could this likely play out from here? Well, uh, I mean, in the near term, uh, the biggest risk is that uh, we end up in a war with Russia. Uh, the Russians were very close to uh, lo knocking down a British surveillance aircraft in international waters with 38 British airmen on board. If that had happened, they fired. They locked the missiles on. They fired because the hi fighter pilot misunderstood uh, the, the um, order from his superior, his commanding officer. And fortunately, the missile didn't fire. It misfired. If it had fired, we're in a Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, I mean, you've got mining of um, the nuclear plant in Zaporizhia, the biggest in Europe. God forbid that blows. That could happen. Um, and, you know, the Russians are in a war with Ukraine that NATO is supporting as, as hard as they possibly can. The possibility of that becoming a hot war uh, with NATO is real. So I think Xi Jinping is clearly talking about that. He would like to see an end of that war. So far, he's not been able to have any impact. Maybe that'll change going forward. Um, he's also talking about uh, Taiwan, and he's talking about um, specifically the potential for a new Taiwanese government to move towards independence. He's also talking about TSMC, the semiconductor producer, and the export controls from the United States and its allies on uh, this Taiwanese critically important plant, which means that the Chinese have to build their own. And it also means Taiwan becomes less interdependent uh, from China and therefore uh, potential for risk goes up. Um, that's another one. But there are others. Uh, I mean, we are in an environment with artificial intelligence, with hundreds of billions of dollars being invested by the most powerful technology companies in the world and literally no regulatory oversight, almost no government officials that know anything about how the technology works, and no international architecture on governance of AI. Now, uh, there are a lot of people that are trying to fix that real soon, but for the next year or two, I mean, this is basically the Wild West, um, and the potential for disinformation for the proliferation of these dangerous technologies um, to have geopolitical import to lead to crises suddenly, I think is very real. So, I mean, I actually agree with Xi Jinping. I've been a political scientist for 30 years now. I've never seen an environment that has had so many structural geopolitical risks as the one that we're facing right now.
You tracked the war in Russia and Ukraine very closely. Ukraine just started a counter-offensive of sorts. It doesn't seem to have made very rapid uh, headway. Maybe uh, that could build or maybe not. And then uh, where do you see the war go from here? How long do you see, uh, Ian Bremer, this conflict continue from? Do you at all see any um, ways in which this could possibly end? And do you have any any vague sense, any way of understanding how long it could be? Well, the counteroffensive is not going well so far. I mean, on a scale of 1 to 10, you'd probably give it about a 2 or a 3. Uh, the Ukrainians are losing a lot of people. They're losing a lot of uh, material. They haven't taken much land. Uh, we'll see if that continues to be true in the next one, two months. I think it's still early days, but you're right. It's not going very well for the Ukrainians. What is going well for the Ukrainians? You've got 27 European Union states that voted unanimously for an 11th round of sanctions against Russia, including very clear statements on secondary sanctions. So the alliance, the coalition is holding together very well. The Americans, of course, are moving towards providing F-16s. Lockheed Martin saying that they'll prepare the training. Uh, that is necessary as well for Ukrainians to be able to use that. You've got long-range missiles that are coming from the UK. You've got advanced tanks that are coming from Germany and soon the United States, other countries. So, I mean, Ukraine is becoming the most advanced military and most capable military in Europe. They're going to get lots of money for reconstruction. They're going to get uh, lots of support to be a part of the European Union. So, I mean, even if the Ukrainians can't take much territory back, uh, in the counteroffensive, in the next three, six months, the Ukrainian government will be in a better position to help ensure that Russia will not be able to take another bite at that apple, that their defense will be much more secure, their government will be much more secure, their opportunities going forward will be much more bright. Now, none of that, of course, makes up for eight and a half million refugees and the tens of thousands of civilians killed and all of the war crimes they faced. I'm not trying to make light of that. But I am saying that the Ukrainian government may well be in a position by the end of this year that they would be willing to freeze the conflict for a period of time, especially once they get all those security guarantees from the West. Now, that means that the impact of the war on the world will go down. And obviously that means less inflation and that'll be good for you know c commodities consumers all over the world, including India. Um, but on the negative side, that's not leading Russia to feel like they're being reintegrated into the West. They're the big losers. And NATO has expanded and Ukraine's so powerful and the, the West is giving them all these weapons and the Russians don't, they can't send their gas anywhere. So they're going to have to flare it. And they've got a million Russians that have fled the country, uh, capable young men that they need in the economy not to mention the devastation of Russia's military. I mean, that's a very dangerous thing. So, you know, if you ask me, can I see an end to the Ukraine war? Yes, but I can't really see an end to the conflict with Russia. Um, and, and this is enormously dangerous. Russia as a rogue state for the G7, for the US and its allies, and you know, they've got 6,000 nuclear weapons. Uh, I mean, I, I, just, I just don't know what that means for, for Putin. Uh, and for the future of Russia and, and, and the way they will engage with the rest of the world. I mean, they don't have any friends out there. Belarus, you know, Iran, that's about it. I mean, even China, it's not, China's not providing them any weapons, right? And, and they really need them. So China must not be that much of a friend, right? It's a real problem if you're Putin. Last question, Ian, before I let you go about the future of Indo-US ties from here. I saw in a couple of uh, mainstream newspapers this morning the word ally used in the context of India and the United States. India isn't a formal alliance partner of the US, unlikely to ever want to be a formal partner. And yet uh, sensitive defense technology is being made available to India to help muscle India out against China. Where do you see things go from here when it comes to Indo-US? Uh, look, I think that the relationship is, is on a very strong trajectory. Uh, the Americans are the dominant military power and they're the dominant technology power uh, in, in the, among democracies. Those two things are going to make India closer to the United States and the U.S. closer to India. 
going forward. So I think this relationship will continue to grow. Um, but it was very interesting. Goldman Sachs put a piece out a few hours ago, the investment bank, projecting global economic growth to the year 2075. And there were three countries that dominated the global economy at that point. India, China, and the United States. They were all pretty close. And then there's this huge drop off for the next country. Uh, we're not heading into a world that is going to have a Chinese century. Uh, India is going to be a huge global economy. It's going to be a global power in its own right. And I don't think it's, ne it's going to need to have to make a firm decision about having an alliance with the United States and not doing business with other countries. That we're, I don't think India is going to have to make that decision. But I do think that in certain areas of national security, there's going to be more trust and integration between the two countries. And it may feel much more friendly than what we've had for the past generation. Well, always interesting to hear your perspective, Ian Brema. Thank you very much for taking our time and joining us to talk about Prime Minister Modi's state visit to Washington, D.C., and what to expect next uh, on the India-America counter. Thank you very much. Appreciate your Good time. Prime Minister Narendra Modi chose traditional Hindu culture of Das Danam for an octogenarian who has witnessed 1,000 full moons as his gift concept for the US President Joe Biden. In a sandalwood box handcrafted by a master craftsman from Jaipur, 10 different objects of Das Danam were aesthetically placed. The sandalwood for the box was sourced from Mysore and had intricately carved flora and fauna patterns. For the Das Danam, Bhu Danam or land donation is an important gift. Sandalwood was offered in place of Bhutan. In fact, each item of this gift box is handcrafted from different parts of India. There was a silver idol of Ganesha, the Hindu deity considered as the destroyer of obstacles and the one who is worshipped first among all gods. It's handcrafted by a family of fifth generation silversmiths of Kolkata. A diya or oil lamp occupies a sacred space in every Hindu household. The silver diya in the box has also been handcrafted by artisans from the family of fifth generation silversmiths in Kolkata. A delicately handcrafted silver coconut by the skilled artisans of West Bengal was offered in place of a cow for Godan. Til or white sesame seeds sourced from Tamil Nadu offered for Tildan. Handcrafted in Rajasthan, this 24 karat pure and hallmarked gold coin is offered as Hiranyadan or donation of gold. Ghee or clarified butter sourced from Punjab is offered for Achyadan. A handwoven textured Tushar silk cloth sourced from Jharkhand symbolized Vastradan. Long grained rice sourced from Uttarakhand are offered for Dhanyadan or donation of food grains. As Gurdan, jaggery sourced from Maharashtra was offered. A 99.5% pure and hallmarked silver coin, aesthetically crafted by Rajasthan artisans, was offered as Ropyadan or donation of silver. Lavan or salt from Gujarat made for Lavandan or donation of salt. All these gift items were placed on the copper plate or the Tamrapatra sourced from Uttar Pradesh. A shloka has been inscribed on it. In ancient times, Tamrapatra was widely used as a medium for writing and record keeping. 
Other than this, the Prime Minister also gifted President Biden a copy of the first edition print of the 10 principal Upanishads published by Faber and Faber Limited of London and printed at the University Press Glasgow. It was one of the final works of W.B. Yeats. Welcome back. You're watching India Today. Our continued coverage on Prime Minister Modi's state visit to the United States. I'm Nabila Jamal. Let me take you through the headlines first. Prime Minister Modi attends the state luncheon that was hosted by the American Vice President Kamala Harris. India and America raise a toast to friendship. All eyes on Prime Minister's big diaspora address. Prime Minister meets top on chosen CEOs at the India-US high-tech handshake event. Prime Minister says coming together is a, uh, of talent and technology really guarantees a bright future for both countries. Prime Minister's business course continues in America. Boeing and Amazon CEOs meeting with the Prime Minister in Washington. These are images that surfaced from just moments ago. All right, we saw those images there of Prime Minister Narendra Modi meeting with the CEOs on his last day of his U.S. tour, his state visit, his last leg in the United States. Prime Minister Modi has, has already met with several Indian uh, Indians who are part of the Indian diaspora. In fact, uh, he's also met with U.S. business leaders and CEOs in the presence of President Joe Biden. And those are the images that came up from a little earlier of uh, those uh, with the Prime Minister, with the Boeing CEO as well as Amazon CEO. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, as we believe, has hobnobbed with a bunch of these businessmen who are looking for an inroad into India. The meeting has come right after, in fact, this very meeting with uh, the Boeing CEO has come right after Air India's historic ag agreement with Boeing to acquire over 200 American Boeing aircrafts. In fact, more than 200, over yeah. 400 and, uh, 450 yeah. odd Boeing aircrafts uh, that have been, uh, a deal has been signed between India. Uh, in fact, Tata Group has signed it with Boeing. Prime Minister Modi has also met with Google CEO Sundar Pichai as well as Amazon CEO Andrew Jassy. Earlier CEOs of top brands, including renowned names like Mukesh Ambani of Reliance Industries, astronaut Sunita Williams, Sundar Pichai, CEO of Google, Apple and Microsoft CEO Tim Cook, Satya Nadella, uh, along with Anand Mahindra and Nikhil Kamath of Zeroda, were all present during the India-US high-tech handshake event that was held at the White House. Earlier speaking at the event, US President Joe Biden has said that cooperation of Indian and the United States uh, firms is certainly important for the world. Expressing his gratitude towards President Biden, the Prime Minister has highlighted that coming together of talent and technology guarantees a bright future for this world. This is uh, Biden's words. Of course, Prime Minister Modi being uh, welcomed into the country with the kind of reception that he's received that's been really awarded to very few. These are the images of just moments earlier. Sundar Pichai uh, of Google that Prime Minister Modi has met, multiple CEOs who have come as part of the diaspora event. Uh, many of the Indian Americans and, and uh, Americans themselves, people who have different origins, in fact, who have business set up in the United States, who are keen to get an inroad into India, uh, have have really taken a beeline to meet with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This was all, of course, prior appointments, uh, or rather a prior uh, uh, understanding that they will be meeting him at this very time, just a few minutes given to each one of them to meet with the Prime Minister. Prime Minister Modi at the state luncheon just a few uh, moments, few, a few hours earlier. This is what he said. Let's have a listen. <laughs> और भारत का युवा विशेष करके टैलेंट के कारण आज विश्व में अपनी पहचान बना रहा है तो टैलेंट और टेक्नोलॉजी का ये मिलन मैं समझता हूँ कि अपने आप में एक उज्जवल भविष्य के लिए गारंटी लेके जाए ये सुबह कुछ ही मित्रों के बीच की है लेकिन ये सुबह उज्जवल भविष्य की गारंटी लेकर 
एक उज्ज्वल भविष्य की आशा अपेक्षा के संकल्प के साथ हम सब लोग राष्ट्रपति बाइडन का जो विजन है भारत के जो एस्पिरेशन है राष्ट्रपति बाइडन के पास जो ताकत है और भारत के पास जो संभावना है उन सब को लेकर के आगे चलने का एक मक्कम निर्धार का ये अवसर है और इसके लिए मैं सचमुच में मेरे मित्र रहमान लोग को बहुत अभिनंदन करता हूँ क्योंकि उन्होंने भारत की यात्रा की काफी समय निकाला और उन्होंने खुद ने जो अनुभव किया और उन्होंने आकर के यहाँ इसको आगे बढ़ाया मैं आपका भी आभारी हूँ राष्ट्रपति बारे जी का जितना आभार करो उतना कम है मैं फिर एक बार आप सबका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करता हूँ We're sticking up for our values and the vision of our the vision of the world, and so our partnership between India and the United States will go a long way, in my view, to define what the 21st century looks like. And our technology technological cooperation will be a big part of defining our partnership, our partnership. So, so look forward to continuing working with all of you and on our voyage of discovery, as was referenced, and uh, to building a better future. Most important uh, takeaway is uh, the Prime Minister's passion for India's development, the the welcome mat to business and investment and opportunity is, I think, obvious not just to me but to pretty much everybody who has interacted uh, with him. He does have a specific interest in aviation and aerospace. Um, it's a big vision. I would like for India to play a significant role, not just for India, but for the region uh, broadly. And uh, you know, at Boeing, we support that 100%. I, I think it's it's great when technologies and opportunities align with the vision that a leader has for a country, and that's where we are. I had a very good and productive conversation with Prime Minister Modi. I think we share a number of goals together in India. Um, very interested in helping create more jobs, helping digitize more small, medium-sized businesses, and then helping more Indian companies and products be able to be exported all around the world. All right, as, even as uh, a bunch of those uh, business leaders who are meeting with Prime Minister Modi at this, uh, during the state visit, there's a lot of questions uh, being asked in India if uh, India is now going to be that destination uh, where businesses of such kind will be opening up. Tesla has already co committed. Elon Musk is committed to open up its factory in uh, India. They're also wanting to start off Starlink. Uh, the internet service in India as well. So the huge boost as Prime Minister meets with many of those business honchos. Uh, Major General, General Sevach, who's joining me right here in the studio, how would you really look at this, uh, this diaspora diplomacy, sir? No, very encouraging. See, the point is what we have to know is that as far as the supply chains are there from China, they are moving. And there is no uncertainty as far as China is concerned. Because after COVID-19 and after Russia, Ukraine war, you find a lot of companies moving out uh, from China. They are going to Indonesia, going to Vietnam, also few of them coming mm. to India also. Now, what has happened is that after Prime Minister Modi has taken over, there is a complete change as far as India is concerned. The environment is very conducive for new companies to come and invest in India. It's a huge market. India is a huge market uh, there, and I suppose this is what it is being exploited by the the U.S. Uh, top uh, notches and and also the top industry owners. They want to now coordinate and cooperate with India because uh, not only that India is a huge market, it is a cheap labor, there is a qualification of IT, there is also the complete environment, and you can say ecosystem which has changed. Now as you know, not only one that the Boeing, which is now likely to uh, got a contract of almost mm -hmm. 950 aircraft, 450 from uh, Tata Air India and 500 from Indigo. So this is itself a, a very encouraging news. The other issue which are coming is that ki all these companies which were earlier hesitant to come in India are now lining up to come in India. The reason is simple that the complete environment has changed 
the ease is of that, doing business. Is that, sir, because it, it, is that because China's economy right now is seeing a slump? Uh, China's uh, relationship with the United States is now seeing a strain post-COVID. Is that the reason? Or was India anyway on a path to uh, glory? It, India was booming and we, we, we were uh, in, to, uh, heading towards that direction. And right now we're at that cusp. Uh, whether China, uh, China's economy is hit or not, India was anyway reaching that point. Would you believe so? No, it is. Uh, I, I suppose that it's a combination of both the things. One is that there is a slowdown as far as China is concerned, and especially uncertainty prevail after COVID-19, and people have seen it. The way uh, the uh, you can see supply chains have become very vulnerable in China. So this is a realization in the world today that China is not a stable country, and they need to shift from there. And that's why the most of the con, you know companies are shifting. One, but at the same time they they may be shifting to indonesia vetra many other country why to india because india is now giving them that uh, sort of space india is now a destination for all these people who want to invest in in asia because one is that there is a cheap labor there is a government which is pro for investment the ecosystem is also conducive for the investment to come in and also the main thing which is coming is we are a hub cent center of IT. Right. We have a soft power and therefore combination of all these things makes our India an attractive destination for the new industry to come and invest. Tachela now want to start their car manufacture in India. But as far as India is concerned, India has done two, three things very right. One is they have made an environment which is conducive. Second thing, as far as defense industries are concerned, we have made it very clear. And especially when government to government, yeah. now G414 will be manufactured by, by General Electronics uh, Aerospace in collaboration with that chair. You have to transfer the technology. It can't be a business as usual. Correct. And that is what is, is, is a crunch point. So uh, basically, General Electricals, Aerospace will be transferring technology to HL and joint production make in India. As far as MQ-9 drones are concerned, uh, there, uh, there is a doubt. They are not shifting everything. They are only giving you permission right. for servicing as well as spare parts. In, in, in every sense, but it, it's uh, whether it's part make in India or full make in India, we still, uh, we, we're still stepping up towards looking at manufacturing uh, in our country. Yeah, very correct. You see, a very important point is that, that before COVID-19, we were fastest growing economy. Right. And after COVID-19 also, uh, we are fastest growing economy. It means we have done something very right during COVID days also, that the environment which was not sure conducive enough. in the world is conducive for India. The people are coming, the companies are coming, they are having confidence right. we're, and faith. We're delighted and I think this is, uh, this is the road set. Uh, Prime Minister Modi has really paved that path at this point during this very official state visit and this diaspora diplomacy we see in full swing as that big diaspora event is going to take place in just an hour odd from now. India today is really tracking every uh, image coming in from the United States, that very event in Washington, D.C. Thank you very much, General uh, Sevaj, for joining us on that. Now, India Today has spoken uh, to CEO of Zeroda, Nikhil Kamath. In fact, he was part of that Indian diaspora event that was organized with uh, President of the United States, Joe Biden. Uh, let's listen in. Do you want to talk a bit about the tech handshake? Uh, Sam Altman, Sundar Pichai, uh, Satya Nadella, all the movers and shakers there in that room, you were there too. How do you see this tech collaboration between India and the United States shape up uh, from here? Yeah, I think many possibilities, many opportunities. Uh, there is a friendship which has kind of uh, formed between our Prime Minister and the US President, which was evident for all of us in the room to see. Uh, they were really pally with each other and, you know, like joking and stuff like that. Uh, you got to see Biden's funny bone? Yeah, and, <laughs> and he is quite funny. And, uh, and I think even from, like, when I was in the room, when they asked me to speak, I was talking about the India stack. <clears throat> and all the opportunities of exporting... Uh, the um, exporting our India stack and many things in our banking ecosystem per se to the West 
uh, because banking in India, I must say, is more efficient, cheaper, and faster than Western countries. And I think we're trying uh, that experiment with Singapore a little bit, but uh, India stack abroad, I think, will be a very valuable product. It doesn't even have to be implemented in a manner where India has any of the data. The data can be localized in their geography. But I think that's a huge opportunity for us to work with them, wherein we not only transport services or we not only transfer services, but IP of some sort, which has been organically created in India. So you met up with uh, Satya Nadella, Sundar Pichai, Sam, Sam Altman. You want to talk a bit about uh, how it was meeting with them and your big takeaways from those meetings? Well, each one of them uh, had a different viewpoint and uh, so it was interesting talking to them about stuff I don't understand too well maybe, like uh, generative AI, but each one of them, like be it Microsoft, Google or uh, Sam Altman, they seem to be on the forefront of it. Uh, so, you know, Keynes once said the biggest problem, uh, if we didn't have work, what would we do? Mm -hmm. uh, the problem of not knowing what to do is a problem in itself and it feels like when productivity is going to be taken away by whatever, whatever AI transforms to into the future and a large section of society necessarily need not, need not work in the manner that they work today, uh, it's a very interesting use case and one has to ponder about how the world the social economics, even the geopolitics of the world uh, change by virtue of something like that. Do we shift to some form of uh, socialism with UBI and a bunch of benefits at the bottom and optional capitalism for the people who opt into it on top? Uh, how do the incumbent winners of capitalism transition because I'm guessing the transition will be most painful for them and if there is a transition how long is the transition and uh, how painful is the transition so there are many many questions uh, for the day when generative AI in a manner can truly think but uh, I guess nobody knows everybody had a different viewpoint and I think Nobody agreed with the other but these are very interesting questions for even us to ponder people who don't know sure. All right. Now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi attends the state lunch. A few hours ago, it was hosted by United States Vice President Kamala Harris and Secretary of State Antony Blinken on, as they hosted this luncheon for Prime Minister at the State Department. The luncheon took place during Modi's state visit to Washington, which was extended by an invitation from President Joe Biden. Now, in a warm welcome for the Prime Minister, Vice President Kamala Harris hailed India's global impact in the world. Recalling her Indian roots, the Vice President further went on to appreciate India's long-standing partnerships and the support prosperity, uh, to in fact support prosperity as well as security in the country. State Secretary Antony Blinken too has said that whether we, ke whether we call it American dream or Indian dream, our people believe profoundly in opportunity. Prime Minister Modi, in his reply, has expressed gratitude for the honour and the grand welcome. He's further gone on to say that after se attending several meetings in the last three days, just everyone agreed that friendship and cooperation should further deepen between India and the United States. Friends, on this note, I would like to raise a toast to your good health and well-being, to our friendship and to the peace and prosperity of all our citizens. Thank you. पिछले तीन दिनों में मैंने अनेक बैठकों में हिस्सा लिया, कई विषयों पर चर्चा की। इन सभी बैठकों में एक चीज कॉमन थी, सब एक मत थे 
कि भारत और अमेरिका के लोगों के बीच मित्रता एवं सहयोग और गहरा होना चाहिए सो मिस्टर प्राइम मिनिस्टर थैंक यू फॉर योर रोल ऑफ लीडरशिप टू हेल्प इंडिया इमर्ज एज ए ग्लोबल पावर इन द ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी यू हैव हेल्प टू री इन्वेगरेट द क्वाड योर लीडरशिप ऑफ द जी ट्वेंटी is making new strides on climate finance and you have been a proponent of international institutions and global solutions to global challenges and as a point of personal privilege as chair of the National Space Council I thank you for your leadership in space and for our joint work on an earth science satellite which will help us address the climate crisis throughout history India has inspired millions of people around the world whether through philosophy and theology the power of civil disobedience or the commitment to democracy indeed as i travel the world as vice president i have seen india's global impact firsthand in southeast asia indian made vaccines have saved lives and livelihoods on the continent of africa india's long standing partnerships support prosperity and security and throughout the indo-pacific india helps promote a free and open region i also know of india's extraordinary impact with regard to innovation medicine and science here in the united states india is part of our daily lives we enjoy uh, tupala hiri's novels over samosas <laughs> we laugh at the comedies of mindy kaling We dance to the beats of Diljit at Coachella. <laughs> and yes, Mr. Prime Minister, and I can say this from personal experience, we keep ourselves more or less fit and healthy doing yoga. <laughs> In your address to our Congress yesterday, you highlighted the boldness of India's own ambitions, the remarkable advances that your country has made in recent years, expanding free medical care. empowering women harnessing clean energy the positive impact in the lives of the indian people is immeasurable and it will be lasting and it underscores that these aspirations for a better future are ones that we share and ones that we depend upon each other to help realize that's why when president eisenhower became the first american president to visit india he told your parliament that the welfare of america is bound up with the welfare of india over the past several decades the united states and india have been advancing the vision of greater interdependence brought closer by administrations of different parties in both of our countries all right i'm cutting across to all the exclusive images that have just come in of that state luncheon at the white house where prime minister modi kamala harris indra noe all of them seen enjoying this rendition of mountain game a classic let's uh, take a listen as we see this nice grand lunch that's been rolled out by the vice president kamala harris herself with this choir playing out How is the United States media now covering Prime Minister Modi's visit? Rahul Kaval really sifts through all the American dailies and newspapers to try and understand what exactly are the references of Prime Minister's visit in the United States. How does the U.S. look at this? What we're going to do now is take a look at how the mainstream American media has covered Prime Minister Narendra Modi's state visit to Washington D.C. So we've got the New York Times, the Financial Times, the Washington Post, uh, the Wall Street Journal with me. So let's uh, take it one by one and show you what the different papers are saying. I'll start with uh, the New York Times, typically seen as a trenchant critic of uh, the Prime Minister. So if uh, 
my video journalist Kirpal Singh just comes across and we'll show you. So it's raining uh, quite non-stop here in DC, but this is the front page of uh, the New York Times. They're leading with uh, this image from the US uh, Congress uh, joint address, uh, which the Prime Minister had uh, Kamala Harris there, all the senators and the congressmen there. Uh, their take is for Modi's visit, abundant pomp and no friction. Biden hopes to make India an ally. Military deals, joint projects, but India is no closure, no closer on Ukraine, and that's the that's the take from the New York Times. Uh, let's now come across to the pink paper, the Financial Times. Uh, pink paper, the Financial Times has uh, this image of President Biden and Narendra Modi on its cover. This talks about stronger ties. Modi and uh, Biden commit to a defining relationship. Uh, between the two democracies, uh, this again on the front page of uh, the Financial Times, and they're talking about how uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, spoke of making this one of the defining relationship uh, of the 21st century, saying that the India-America partnership is built on mutual trust, candor, and respect. Let's now come to the Washington Post. Uh, the Washington Post features the visit prominently on its uh, style section. This is the image, in fact, this is where we were uh, last evening at uh, the White House, where you've got uh, this welcome now. So you've got people from the military of the United States. Uh, you've got uh, Jill Biden, uh, the Prime Minister, all the pomp but light on the glee. Uh, Fed for India's Modi, a key U.S. ally, features business as the main course. And then it talks about the dinner. Despite dearth of celebrity wattage, event becomes an unlikely celebration of fashion and goes on to talk about what all happened at the state dinner, which featured really some of the biggest names in Indian and American business and members of the Indian American community. I come now to the Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street Journal has it on the bottom fold. Uh, warm welcome for Modi. This image is from uh, the White House earlier in the day where the Prime Minister met with the American President. And this, uh, let's go to page 8, which is where the full story is. Just give me a minute. Okay, so here it is. This talks about the toast from the state dinner in the evening. Biden, Modi hailed strong ties during the state visit. And it talks about uh, the relationship and, uh, you know, by and large, most sections of the American press have taken note of uh, this visit, brought out the significance of the India-America relationship and its changing contours as well. This is uh, from the Washington Post. Uh, Biden defends India's democracy as Modi visits. Again, uh, the Washington Post has been raising several uh, questions around the way the Modi government has been running India. Conversation, and we shared, uh, Google is investing $10 billion in the India Digitization Fund, and we are continuing to invest through that, including in companies working on AI. As part of that, uh, we have a 100 language initiative. We are bringing BAR to more Indian languages uh, very soon. And we are also excited today uh, that we are uh, announcing the opening of our global fintech operations center in Gift City, Gujarat. And uh, it will cement India's fintech leadership thanks to UPI and RR. And we are going to build on that foundation and, and take it uh, globally. So we are very excited at the progress. And uh, with, with the advent of AI, I think the opportunity for India to make more progress uh, is definitely exciting and we're going to support the Prime Minister's vision there. His vision for digital India uh, you know, was ahead of its time. Uh, I now see it as a blueprint other countries are looking to do and uh, you know, the, the, fo the follow through on the scaling up of India's digital stack uh, you know, is a model other countries are thinking about. And I think it's something which will be important in, in G20 as well, which is uh, obviously happening in India. So it's a real exciting to see the progress, his commitment towards the economic growth for India, and uh, we are glad to be partners in the journey.
All right, that was uh, Sundar Pichai of Google there who says that uh, India's vision of a digital India was far ahead of time. And that's the blueprint that many other countries wanting to adopt. Uh, who, who other than Sundar Pichai himself to say something like this? He's just met with the Prime Minister as the Indian diaspora meeting has begun. India Today on top of that story. A short break, we'll be right back. These lethal long-endurance medium-altitude drones may soon be the new weapons in the arsenal of the Indian Armed Forces. The Defence Acquisition Council gave its nod for the acquisition of the Sea Guardian drones. The Army, the Navy and the Air Force are looking at 10 drones each. The Indian Navy has already leased two MQ-9 Sea Guardians, the naval version of the drones, for intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance operations since 2020. This surveillance The MQ-9A Reaper drones were used for the precision targeting of Al-Qaeda chief Ayman al-Zawahiri in Kabul. These unmanned combat aerial vehicles, apart from a number of sensors, cameras and radars, are also capable of carrying four Hellfire missiles for precision targeting of high-value targets. Both the Army and the Air Force are looking at these drones for high-risk operations to destroy strategic assets of the adversary without risking the lives of pilots. These hunter-killer drones can carry four Hellfire missiles. They're also capable of carrying two laser-guided bombs and two joint-action JDAMs. These drones can fly at an altitude of 40,000 feet and remain airborne for over 36 hours. They're also capable of loitering in the sky, scanning the ground below for the enemy. The MQ-9BC Guardian drones come with both maritime surveillance, reconnaissance and anti-submarine warfare capabilities. The drones are capable of providing over-the-horizon surveillance and... Welcome back. You're watching India Today, our continued coverage on Prime Minister Modi's state visit to the United States. I'm Nabila Jamal. Let me take you through the headlines first. Prime Minister Modi attends the state luncheon that was hosted by the American Vice President Kamala Harris. India and America raise a toast to friendship. All eyes on Prime Minister's big diaspora address. Prime Minister meets top honchos and CEOs at the India-US high-tech handshake event. Prime Minister says coming together is a, uh, of talent and technology really guarantees a bright future for both countries. Prime Minister's business course continues in America. Boeing and Amazon CEOs meeting with the Prime Minister in Washington. These are images that surfaced from just moments ago. All right, we saw those images there of Prime Minister Narendra Modi meeting with the CEOs on his last day of his U.S. tour, his state visit, his last leg in the United States. Prime Minister Modi has, has already met with several Indian uh, Indians who are part of the Indian diaspora. In fact, uh, he's also met with U.S. business leaders and CEOs in the presence of President Joe Biden. And those are the images that came up from a little earlier of uh, those 
uh, with the Prime Minister, with the Boeing CEO as well as Amazon CEO. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, as we believe, has hobnobbed with a bunch of these businessmen who are looking for an inroad into India. The meeting has come right after, in fact, this very meeting with uh, the Boeing CEO has come right after Air India's historic ag agreement with Boeing to acquire over 200 American Boeing aircrafts. In fact, more than 200, over yeah. 400 and, uh, 450 yeah. odd Boeing aircrafts uh, that have been, uh, a deal has been signed between India. Uh, in fact, Tata Group has signed it with Boeing. Prime Minister Modi has also met with Google CEO Sundar Pichai as well as Amazon CEO Andrew Jassy. Earlier CEOs of top brands, including renowned names like Mukesh Ambani of Reliance Industries, astronaut Sunita Williams, Sundar Pichai, CEO of Google, Apple and Microsoft CEO Tim Cook, Satya Nadella, uh, along with Anand Mahindra and Nikhil Kamath of Zeroda, were all present during the India-US high-tech handshake event that was held at the White House. Earlier speaking at the event, US President Joe Biden has said that cooperation of Indian and the United States uh, firms is certainly important for the world, expressing his gratitude towards President Biden. The Prime Minister has highlighted that coming together of talent and technology guarantees a bright future for this world. This is uh, Biden's words. Of course, Prime Minister Modi being uh, welcomed into the country with the kind of reception that he's received that's been really awarded to very few. These are the images of just moments earlier. Sundar Pichai uh, of Google that Prime Minister Modi has met, multiple CEOs who have come as part of the diaspora event. Uh, many of the Indian Americans and, and uh, Americans themselves, people who have different origins, in fact, who have business set up in the United States, who are keen to get an inroad into India, uh, have, have really taken a beeline to meet with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This was all, of course, prior appointments, uh, or rather a prior uh, uh, understanding that they will be meeting him at this very time, just a few minutes given to each one of them to meet with the Prime Minister. Prime Minister Modi at the state luncheon just a few uh, moments, few, a few hours earlier. This is what he said. Let's have a listen. गारंटी लेके जाए। ये सुबह कुछ ही मित्रों के बीच की है, लेकिन ये सुबह उज्जवल भविष्य की गारंटी लेके जाए। ये उज्जवल भविष्य की आशा, परीक्षा के संकल्प के साथ हम सब लोग राष्ट्रपति बाइडेन का जो विजन है, भारत के जो एस्पिरेशंस हैं, राष्ट्रपति बाइडेन के पास जो ताकत है। और भारत के बाद जो संभावना है, उन सब को लेकर के आगे चलने का एक मक्कम निर्धार का ये अवसर है, और इसके लिए मैं सचमुच में मेरे मित्र रहमान को बहुत अभिनंदन करता हूँ, क्योंकि उन्होंने भारत की यात्रा की काफी समय निकाला, और उन्होंने खुद ने जो अनुभव किया, और उन्होंने आकर के यहाँ इसको आगे बढ़ाया we're sticking up for our values and the vision of our the vision of the world. And so our partnership between India and the United States will go a long way, in my view, to define what the 21st century looks like. And our technology and technological cooperation will be a big part of defining our partnership, our partnership. So, so look forward to continuing working with all of you and on our voyage of discovery, as was referenced, and uh, to building a better future. Most important uh, takeaway is uh, the Prime Minister's passion for India's development, the, the welcome mat to business and investment and opportunity is, I think, obvious not just to me, but to pretty much everybody who has interacted uh, with him. He does have a specific interest in aviation and aerospace. Um, it's a big vision. I uh, would like for India to play a significant role, not just for India, but for the region uh, broadly. And, uh, you know, at Boeing, we support that 100%. I, I think it's, it's great 
when technologies and opportunities align with the vision that a leader has for a country, and that's where we are. I had a very good and productive conversation with Prime Minister Modi. I think we share a number of goals together in India. Um, very interested in helping create more jobs, helping digitize more small, medium-sized businesses, and then helping more Indian companies and products be able to be exported all around the world. All right, even as uh, a bunch of those uh, business leaders who are meeting with Prime Minister Modi at this, uh, during the state visit, there's a lot of questions uh, being asked in India if uh, India is now going to be that destination uh, where businesses of such kind will be opening up. Tesla has already co committed. Elon Musk is committed to open up its factory in uh, India. They're also wanting to start off Starlink. Uh, the internet service in India as well. So the huge boost as Prime Minister meets with many of those business honchos. Uh, Major General, General Sevach, who's joining me right here in the studio, how would you really look at this, uh, this diaspora diplomacy, sir? No, very encouraging. See, the point is what we have to know is that as far as the supply chains are there from China, they are moving. And there is no uncertainty as far as China is concerned. Because after COVID-19 and after Russia, Ukraine war, you find a lot of companies moving out uh, from China. They are going to Indonesia, going to Vietnam, also few of them coming mm. to India also. Now, what has happened is that after Prime Minister Modi has taken over, there is a complete change as far as India is concerned. The environment is very conducive for new companies to come and invest in India. It's a huge market. India is a huge market uh, there, and I suppose this is what it is being exploited by the, the U.S. Uh, top uh, notches and, and also the top industry owners. They want to now coordinate and cooperate with India because uh, not only that India is a huge market, it is a cheap labor, there is a qualification of IT, there is also the complete environment, and you can say ecosystem which has changed. Now, as you know, not only one, that the Boeing, which is now likely to uh, got a contract of almost mm -hmm. 950 aircraft, 450 from uh, Tata Air India and 500 from Indigo. So this is itself a, a very encouraging news. The other issue which are coming is that ki all these companies which were earlier hesitant to come in India are now lining up to come in India. The reason is simple that the complete environment has changed the ease is of that is there. that sir because it, it, is that because china's economy right now is seeing a slump and uh, china's uh, relationship with the united states is now seeing a strain post covid is that the reason or was india anyway on a path to uh, glory it india was booming and we we, we were uh, in to uh, heading towards that direction and right now we're at that cusp uh, whether China, uh, China's economy is hit or not, India was anyway reaching that point. Would you believe so? No, it is. Uh, I, I suppose that it's a combination of both the things. One is that there is a slowdown as far as China is concerned, and especially uncertainty prevail after COVID-19, and people have seen it. The way uh, the uh, you can see supply chains have become very vulnerable in China. So this is a realization in the world today that China is not a stable country, and they need to shift from there. And that's why the most of the con you know companies are shifting. One, but at the same time they they may be shifting to Indonesia, Vetra, many other countries. Why to India? Because India is now giving them that uh, sort of space. India is now a destination for all these people who want to invest in, in Asia. Because one is that there is a cheap labor, there is a government which is pro for investment. The ecosystem is also conducive for the investment to come in. And also the main thing which is coming is we are a hub cent center of IT. Right. We have a soft power. And therefore combination of all these things makes our India an attractive destination for the new industry to come and invest. Tachela now want to start their car manufacturing in India. But as far as India is concerned, India has done two, three things very right. One is they have made an environment which is conducive. Second thing, as far as defense industries are concerned, we have made it very clear. And especially when government to government yeah. now uh, G41 will be manufactured by, by General Electronics, uh, Aerospace, 
in collaboration with their chair ki you have to transfer the technology it can't be a business as usual Correct. and that is what is 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 the crunch point so uh, basically general electricals aerospace will be transferring technology to hcl and joint production make in india as far as mq9 drones are concerned uh, there uh, there is a doubt they are not shifting everything they are only giving you permission right. for servicing as well as spare parts in in every sense but it it's uh, whether it's part make in india or full make in india we still uh, we, we're still stepping up towards looking at manufacturing uh, in our country yeah very correct you see a very important point is that that before covid 19 we were fastest growing economy right and after covid 9 also uh, we are fastest growing economy it means we have done something very right during covid days also that the environment which was not sure conducive enough. in the world is conducive for india the people are coming the companies are coming they are having confidence right. we're, we're delighted and i think this is uh, this is the road set uh, prime minister modi has really paved that path at this point during this very official state visit and this diaspora diplomacy we see in full swing as that big diaspora event is going to take place in just an hour odd from now india today is really tracking every uh, image coming in from the united states that very event in washington dc thank you very much general uh, sevaj for joining us on that now india today has spoken uh, to ceo of zeroda nikhil kamath in fact he was a part of that indian diaspora event that was organized with uh, president of the united states joe biden uh, let's listen in you want to talk a bit about the tech handshake uh Sam Altman Sundar Pichai uh Satya Nadella all the movers and shakers there in that room you were there too how do you see this tech collaboration between India and the United States shape up uh, from here yeah i think many possibilities many opportunities uh there is a friendship which has kind of uh formed between our prime minister and the US president which was evident for all of us in the room to see uh they were really pally with each other and you know like joking and stuff like that uh you got to see biden's funny bone yeah and <laughs> and he is quite funny and uh and i think even from like when i was in the room when they asked me to speak i was talking about the india stack <clears throat> and all the opportunities of exporting uh the uh, exporting our india stack and many things in our banking ecosystem per se to the west uh because banking in india i must say is more efficient cheaper and faster than western countries and i think we're trying uh, that experiment with singapore a little bit but uh india stack abroad i think will be a very valuable product it doesn't even have to be implemented in a manner where india has any of the data the data can be localized in their geography but i think that's a huge opportunity for us to work with them wherein we not only transport services or we not only transfer services but ip of some sort which has been organically created in india so you met up with uh, satya nadella sundar pichai sam sam altman you want to talk a bit about uh, how it was meeting with them and your big takeaways from those meetings well each one of them uh, had a different viewpoint and uh, so it was interesting talking to them about stuff i don't understand too well maybe like uh, generative ai but each one of them like be it microsoft google or uh, sam altman they seem to be on the forefront of it uh so you know keynes once said the biggest problem uh, if we didn't have work what would we do mm-hmm. uh, the problem of not knowing what to do is a problem in itself and it feels like when productivity is going to be taken away by whatever whatever ai transforms to into the future and a large section of society necessarily not, need not work in the manner that they work today uh, it's a very interesting use case and one has to ponder about how the world the socio economics even the geopolitics of the world uh change by virtue of something like that do we shift to some form of uh socialism with ubi and a bunch of benefits at the bottom and optional capitalism for the people who opt into it on top uh 
how do the incumbent winners of capitalism transition because i'm guessing the transition will be most painful for them and if there is a transition how long is the transition and uh, how painful is the transition so there are many many questions uh, for the day when generative ai in a manner can truly think but uh, i guess nobody knows everybody had a different viewpoint and i think nobody agreed with the other but these are very interesting questions for even us to ponder people who don't know sure. All right. Now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi attends the state lunch. A few hours ago, it was hosted by United States Vice President Kamala Harris and Secretary of State Antony Blinken on, as they hosted this luncheon for Prime Minister at the State Department. The luncheon took place during Modi's state visit to Washington, which was extended by an invitation from President Joe Biden. Now, in a warm welcome for the Prime Minister, Vice President Kamala Harris hailed India's global impact in the world, recalling her Indian roots. The Vice President further went on to appreciate India's long-standing partnerships and the support prosperity, uh, to in fact support prosperity as well as security in the country. State Secretary Anthony Blinken too has said that whether we, ke whether we call it American dream or Indian dream, our people believe profoundly in opportunity. Prime Minister Modi, in his reply, has expressed gratitude for the honour and the grand welcome. He's further gone on to say that after se attending several meetings in the last three days, just everyone agreed that friendship and cooperation should further deepen between India and the United States. Friends, on this note, I would like to raise a toast to your good health and well-being, to our friendship and to the peace and prosperity of all our citizens. Thank you. पिछले तीन दिनों में मैंने अनेक बैठकों में हिस्सा लिया कई विषयों पर चर्चा की इन सभी बैठकों में एक चीज कॉमन थी सब एक मत थे कि भारत और अमेरिका के लोगों के बीच मित्रता एवं सहयोग or gehra hona chahiye. So Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for your role of leadership to help India emerge as a global power in the 21st century. You have helped to reinvigorate the Quad. Your leadership of the G20 is making new strides on climate finance. And you have been a proponent of international institutions and global solutions to global challenges. And as a point of personal privilege, as chair of the National Space Council, I thank you for your leadership in space and for our joint work on an Earth science satellite which will help us address the climate crisis. Throughout history, India has inspired millions of people around the world, whether through philosophy and theology, the power of civil disobedience, or the commitment to democracy. Indeed, as I travel the world as Vice President, I have seen India's global impact firsthand. In Southeast Asia, Indian-made vaccines have saved lives and livelihoods. On the continent of Africa, India's long-standing partnerships support prosperity and security. And throughout the Indo-Pacific, India helps promote a free and open region. I also know of India's extraordinary impact with regard to innovation, medicine, and science. Here in the United States, India is part of our daily lives. We enjoy uh, Drupalahiri's novels over samosas. We laugh at the comedies of Mindy Kaling. We dance to the beats of Diljit at Coachella. And yes, Mr. Prime Minister, and I can say this from personal experience, we keep ourselves more or less fit 
and healthy doing yoga. <laughs> In your address to our Congress yesterday, you highlighted the boldness of India's own ambitions, the remarkable advances that your country has made in recent years, expanding free medical care, empowering women, harnessing clean energy. The positive impact in the lives of the Indian people is immeasurable, and it will be lasting. And it underscores that these aspirations for a better future are ones that we share and ones that we depend upon each other to help realize. That's why when President Eisenhower became the first American president to visit India, he told your parliament that the welfare of America is bound up with the welfare of India. Over the past several decades, the United States and India have been advancing the vision of greater interdependence, brought closer by administrations of different parties in both of our countries. All right, I'm cutting across to all the exclusive images that have just come in of that state luncheon at the White House where Prime Minister Modi, Kamala Harris, Indra Nui, all of them seen enjoying this rendition of Mountain Game, a classic. Let's uh, take a listen as we see this nice grand lunch that's been rolled out by the Vice President Kamala Harris herself with this choir playing out. How is the United States media now covering Prime Minister Modi's visit? Rahul Kawal really sifts through all the American dailies in newspapers to try and understand what exactly are the references of Prime Minister's visit in the United States. How does the U.S. look at this? What we're going to do now is take a look at how the mainstream American media has covered Prime Minister Narendra Modi's state visit to Washington, D.C. So we've got the New York Times, the Financial Times, the Washington Post, uh, the Wall Street Journal with me. So let's uh, take it one by one and show you what the different papers are saying. I'll start with uh, the New York Times, typically seen as a trenchant critic of uh, the Prime Minister. So if uh, my video journalist Kirpal Singh just comes across and we'll show you. So it's raining uh, quite non-stop here in D.C. But this is the front page of uh, the New York Times. They're leading with... Uh, this image from the U.S. Uh, Congress uh, joint address, uh, which the Prime Minister had uh, Kamala Harris there, all the senators and the congressmen there. Uh, their take is for Modi's visit, abundant pomp and no friction. Biden hopes to make India an ally. Military deals, joint projects, but India is no closure, no closer on Ukraine. And that's the that's the take from the New York Times. Uh, let's now come across to the pink paper, the Financial Times. Uh, pink paper, the Financial Times has uh, this image of President Biden and Narendra Modi on its cover. This talks about stronger ties. Modi and uh, Biden commit to a defining relationship uh, between the two democracies. Uh, this again on the front page of uh, the Financial Times. And they're talking about how uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, spoke of making this one of the defining relationship uh, of the 21st century, saying that the India-America partnership is built on mutual trust, candor, and respect. Let's now come to the Washington Post. Uh, the Washington Post features the visit prominently on its uh, style section. This is the image. In fact, this is where we were uh, last evening at uh, the White House, where you've got uh, this welcome now. So you've got people from the military of the United States, uh, you've got uh, Jill Biden, uh, the Prime Minister, all the pomp but light on the glee. Uh, Fed for India is Modi, a key U.S. ally, features business as the main course. And then it talks about the dinner. Despite dearth of celebrity wattage, event becomes an unlikely celebration of fashion and goes on to talk about what all happened at the state dinner, which featured really some of the biggest names in Indian and 
American business and members of the Indian American community. I come now to the Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street Journal has it on the bottom fold. Uh, warm welcome for Modi. This image is from uh, the White House earlier in the day where the Prime Minister met with the American President. And this, uh, let's go to page 8, which is where the full story is. Just give me a minute. Okay, so here it is. This talks about the toast from the state dinner in the evening. Biden, Modi hailed strong ties during the state visit. And it talks about uh, the relationship and, uh, you know, by and large, most sections of the American press have taken note of uh, this visit, brought out the significance of the India-America relationship and its changing contours as well. This is uh, from the Washington Post. Uh, Biden defends India's democracy as Modi visits. Again, uh, the Washington Post has been raising several uh, questions around the way the Modi government has been running India. Conversation. And we shared uh, Google is investing $10 billion in the India Digitization Fund. And we are continuing to invest through that, including in companies working on AI. As part of that, uh, we have a 100 language initiative. We are bringing BART to more Indian languages uh, very soon. And we are also excited today uh, that we are uh, announcing the opening of our global fintech operations center in Gift City, Gujarat. And uh, it'll cement India's fintech leadership, thanks to UPI and RR. And we're going to build on that foundation and, and take it uh, globally. So we are very excited at the progress. and. Uh, with, with the advent of AI, I think the opportunity for India to make more progress uh, is definitely exciting, and we're going to support the Prime Minister's vision there. His vision for digital India uh, you know, was ahead of its time. Uh, I now see it as a blueprint other countries are looking to do. And uh, you know, the, the, fo the follow-through on the scaling up of India's digital stack uh, you know, is a model other countries are thinking about. I think it's something which will be important in, in G20 as well, which is uh, obviously happening in India. So it's a real exciting to see the progress, his commitment towards the economic growth for India, and uh, we are glad to be partners in the journey. All right, that was uh, Sundar Pichai of Google there, who says that uh, India's vision of a digital India was far ahead of time, and that's the blueprint that many other countries wanting to adopt. Uh, who, who, other than Sundar Pichai himself, to say something like this, he's just met with the Prime Minister as the Indian diaspora meeting has begun. India Today on top of that story. A short break, we'll be right back. Prime Minister Narendra Modi attends the state luncheon hosted by American Vice President Kamala Harris. India and America raise a toast to friendship. All eyes on Prime Minister's big diaspora address. Prime Minister meets top ponchos and CEOs at the India-US high-tech handshake event. The Prime Minister says coming together of talent and technology guarantees a bright future. Prime Minister's business push continues in America. Boeing and Amazon CEOs meet with the Prime Minister in Washington, D.C. All right, I'm cutting across to the first images coming in from the Kennedy Center as Prime Minister Narendra Modi is... Uh, meeting with a bunch, in fact, a strategic dialogue is due to set, is due to take place right there at the Kennedy Center. Those are the first images that we bring to you. This is Prime Minister Narendra Modi's uh, fourth day. It's uh, his final day where uh, it's going to be filled with meetings with the business community. A strategic dialogue at the Kennedy Center is what we're told. In fact, India today. Uh, India Today's uh, Shweta Singh has chatted with the Indian diaspora who are eagerly waiting for Prime Minister's address. 
She's also spoken to George Marley, a Modi fan who's composed a song dedicated to Prime Minister Modi. Let's have a listen as the stage now set for that event to begin. प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जब भी भारतीय समुदाय के बीच भारत वंशियों के बीच विदेश में जाते हैं तो वो समा अद्भुत होता है लेकिन यहाँ पर कुछ और ज्यादा अद्भुत चीज हम आपको दिखाने वाले हैं आपको भारतवंशी दिखेंगे लेकिन साथ में एक अमेरिकी भी दिखेंगे और यहाँ पर क्या होने वाला है यहाँ पर हम लोग मोदी जी को वेलकम कर रहे हैं और जहाँ मोर देन थाउजेंड पीपल यहाँ पर हैं जो कि मोदी जी को वेलकम करेंगे हम हमारा एजेंडा बताएंगे मोदी जी को क्या है स्पेशली वो हमारे लिए मिलने आ रहे हैं और यहाँ पर हमने एक स्पेशल इनका नाम है जॉर्ज मॉरलिन जिन्होंने मोदी जी के ऊपर एक गाना बनाया बहुत मोदी जी के ऊपर मोदी जी के ऊपर गाना बनाया और ये यहाँ परफॉर्म करेंगे आज ये सिंग करेंगे इज अ गुड वेरी गुड सिंगर और आप इनसे ही मुलाकात करिए और इनसे ही बातें करिए Trust my word I'll take the death from stone to stone from heart to heart I'll give my last even if I die I'll do all I can I'll take on the world with my bare hands I'll do all I can I'll take on the world with my bare hands Moody G Moody G Have you heard of him what are the things you like about him I love that he has a, a big heart, and, and, he, and he loves his country, and he loves everybody around the world, and, he, and he's always going to do his best to fight for everybody, you know, and just and to and just keep people inspired and keep people just moving forward. Just just his presence alone gives us gives us hope. So. Excellent. ये चीजें सुनकर यहाँ पर प्रधानमंत्री को देखकर मन में कैसा इंतजार है? हम लोगों को बहुत ही अच्छा लग रहा है कल हम लोगों ने उनकी वेलकम सेरेमनी अटेंड की जिसमें उनको 19 गन्स का सैल्यूट दिया गया. उस टाइम राष्ट्रगान बज रहा था हिंदुस्तान का तो हमारे रोंगटे खड़े हो गए कूज बम जिसको बोलते हैं वो हुआ एक और चीज जो उन्होंने की जब वो लोग जब मोदी जी स्पीच दे रहे थे उन्होंने एक बहुत अच्छी बात बोली जिसको कांग्रेसमैन सारे कांग्रेसमैन ने अप्रिसिएट किया इंडिया हैज सो मेनी लैंग्वेजेस सो मेनी डायलैक्ट्स बट स्पीक्स वन वॉइस सारे कांग्रेसमैन को ये बहुत पसंद आया और आई एम बी आर प्राउड ऑफ मोदी वो हमारा अभिमान है आप लोगों को भी जी मैं बॉस्टन में हूँ अट्ठाईस साल से लेकिन अगर आप यहाँ देखेंगे तो हम लोग हिंदुस्तान को अपने दिल में लेके आए हैं और मोदी जी ने उस हिंदुस्तान को अभी पूरी दुनिया के ऊपर सीट पे पहुँचाया हुआ है तो जब उनको सम्मान मिल रहा था और वहाँ पर हमारा तिरंगा व्हाइट हाउस की सीढ़ियों पे और सभी जगह जब था तो हमारे 140 हिंदु करोड़ हिंदुस्तानियों को और यहाँ जो चार लाख हिंदुस्तानी रहते हैं चालीस लाख तो इनके सबकी प्राउड मोमेंट है और एक एक लीडर के लिए यही सबसे बड़ी बात है कि बाकी लोगों में एनर्जी भर सके काम करते लोग करते हैं लेकिन एनर्जी जो है वो एक लीडर डायरेक्शन देता है साफ पकड़ नमस्ते मेरा नाम संजीव गुप्ता है मैं अटलांटा से आया हूँ और मोदी जी का ये तीसरा इवेंट है जो मैं अटेंड कर रहा हूँ तो बहुत ही खुशी हो रही है खासतौर से जिस हिसाब से हमारे प्राइम मिनिस्टर का व्हाइट हाउस के अंदर स्वागत किया गया और इंडिया अमेरिका के जो रिलेशन इतनी ऊँचाइयों पर जा रहे हैं उसको देख के काफ़ी अच्छा लगता है उसमें कहीं ना कहीं हमारी इंडियन कम्युनिटी का भी हाथ है और प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी ने जिस हिसाब से आ, अपने इन फॉरेन पॉलिसी को आगे बढ़ाया है वो कमेंडेबल है उसके अलावा जिस हिसाब के डेवलपमेंट्स इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट्स और इंडिया में फायदा कर रही है जी डॉक्टर वासुदेव पटेल आई एम जनरल सेक्रेटरी फॉर ओवरसीज बीजेपी a uh, national general secretary and my work is to establish more and more new chapter for the bjp and making that and if you see whatever he said in the hindi mein karte hain to kal jo wo lawn mein bole white house ki lawn mein khade ke 30 baras pehle maine bahar se dekha tha aaj main mere 5000 bhaiyo behno ke sath hu that makes people people ko aisa kar diya mantra mukt ki bhai hamara koi bhai bol raha hai hamare liye that same thing 
आप जॉइंट सेशन की मीटिंग में भी उन्होंने इसी तरह से लोगों संस्कृत के श्लोक हिंदी की कविता सुना सुना के लोग और वन इट इज डन आप देखो तो पहले हमारे प्रधान बड़ा प्रधान आते थे टाइम हियर है लास्ट फोर्टी टू ईयर्स इन दिस कंट्री तो तब कैसे पीछे पीछे घूमते थे कल सारे सेनेटर कांग्रेसमैन उनकी सिग्नेचर लेने के लिए उनके पीछे घूमते थे दैट इज ए बिग अप अपसाइड डाउन फॉर इंडिया एंड वी आर रियली प्राउड ऑफ मोदी जी एंड फॉर इंडिया थैंक यू हेलो भारतीयता में आप भी तैयार बिल्कुल जी बिल्कुल जी क्यों नहीं आज का आज का दिन बनता है ये तो दिन बनता है इसका तो इंतजार कर रहे थे हम लोग यहाँ पर इतने दिनों से इंतजार करते हैं त्योहार त्योहार की तरह एकदम जितना भी बोलूँ उतना कम है स्पेशली इंडिया के फ्लैग लगे हुए है वो एक प्राउड मोमेंट फील होता है अमेरिकन स्ट्रीट पे सो जितना भी बोलूँ उतना कम है यहाँ प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी आने वाले हैं और हर जगह जो उनका भारतीय समुदाय के बीच जो इवेंट होता है वहाँ पर तो आप दीवानगी प्रधानमंत्री की देख ही लेते हैं यहाँ पर जितने भी लोग आपको यहाँ नजर आ रहे हैं मुझे लगता है कि बड़ी बड़ी मुश्किल से सबको यहाँ पर निमंत्रण मिल पाया होगा कितने कितने लोग यहाँ पर अप्लाई किया था कि वो आना चाहते सेवन हंड्रेड सेवन हंड्रेड यहाँ पर सेवन हंड्रेड आ रहे पर आना कितना देट इज ओनली फॉर द वॉलेंटरिंग अच्छा बट रियल पीपल वर्थ मोर देन सिक्स थाउजेंड पीपल जो आना चाहते थे अब यहाँ पर देखिए यहाँ पर लोग सुन सकते हैं जरूर प्रधानमंत्री को लेकिन जो अलग अलग हॉल्स में ये होगा कहाँ से आई है मैम आप यहीं से हैं वॉशिंगटन से नहीं रिचमंड वर्जीनिया रिचमंड वर्जीनिया हाँ अच्छा, कितना टाइम लगता है वहाँ से दो घंटे हाँ यहाँ आई है पीएम को देखना है ओ, मुझे तो दर्शन करना है वो तो भगवान ही है हमारे लिए गुजरात के इंडिया के लिए गुजरात के लिए स्पेशली <laughs> आप कहाँ से सेम रिचमंड वर्जीनिया यस यस वर्जीनिया प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी दरअसल एक प्रवासी भारतीय के लिए क्या मायने रखते हैं वो समझना लोगों की जुबानी ही जरूरी हो जाता है कितने साल से आप हैं मैं 22 साल से इधर रहता हूं रिचमंड वर्जीनिया में बदलाव दिखता है मुझे बहुत बदलाव दिख रहा है मैं मोदी साहब का बहुत बड़ा फैन हूं मैं कल भी व्हाइट हाउस में भी गया था उसके आगे संडे को यूनिटी मार्च में भी गया था उनके लिए तो मोदी है तो मुमकिन है वो स्लोगन मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगता है और सबका विकास सबका साथ वो भी मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगता है मुझे बहुत बड़ा बदलाव की अभी भी अपेक्षा है कि आगे के इलेक्शन नेक्स्ट ईयर में वो फिर से आए और फिर से देश के लिए करे क्योंकि अभी हम वो जब 2014 में आए थे तब हम इंडिया दसवीं बिग इकोनॉमी थी पूरे वर्ल्ड में अभी वो पांचवी आ गई है तो अभी हमारा है आगे का टारगेट तीसरी वर्ल्ड में सबसे बड़ी इकोनॉमी होनी है तो मोदी है तो अभी ये वो मुमकिन है तो इसीलिए मोदी का आना बहुत जरूरी है रिचमंड वर्जीनिया यस सुनने के लिए यस 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 मैं आपको मैसेज मोदी जी के को देना चाहता हूँ आपका थ्रू कि आप वो मोदी साहब अपनी टेक केयर करें क्योंकि हम उसको लूज करने के लिए एफर्ट नहीं कर सकते हैं इंडिया कैन नॉट एफर्ट टू लूज मोदी कैन नॉट अदरवाइज मोदी इंडिया विल बी टू मच इन बिकॉज ही हैज लॉट ऑफ एनिमीज सो ही हैव टू हैव लॉट ऑफ सिक्योरिटी सो इंडिया कैन नॉट लूज हिम आई एम डॉक्टर सुधीर परी पद्मश्री I own the ITV channel here. Yeah. Hi, I'm Dr. Sudhir Parikh. Uh, 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 really, this is a very historical and. Huh? Hindi. अच्छा, ये ये बहुत historical visit है. ये visit में oldest democracy and uh, uh, largest democracy दोनों बातें कर रहे हैं Prime Minister Modi ji as well as. Uh, 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 President Biden and they are talking about U.S. India relation. How to make India more powerful? अच्छा रहा ये दौरा? ये दौरा बहुत अच्छा रहा. यार बहुत अच्छा रहा. हम यार we were in White House also and attended the ceremony and it was fabulous. हिंदी में बोलो. हाँ वो बहुत ही अच्छा था White House White लोन में जो फंक्शन था बहुत ही अच्छा था अगर दौरा अच्छा रहा है ऐतिहासिक या एक तरह से कहीं मित्रता बढ़ाने वाला बिल्कुल एकदम वी आर ऑल एक्साइटेड टू गेट मोदी जी ओवर हियर एंड वी आर ऑल लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू दिस दिस इंडिया डायस्पोरा मीटिंग वी होप दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर स्पिरिट वी विल बी एबल टू सेंड दिस स्पिरिट फ्रॉम हियर टू इंडिया इन द कमिंग डेज थैंक यू प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी का जो पूरा दौरा स्टेट विजिट एक रहा
Minister Narendra Modi, who just arrived at the Kennedy Center. This is going to be a big affair, as he's uh, going to be uh, possibly speaking. That's Anthony Blinken right beside Thank him. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to welcome Secretary of State Blinken to make some remarks on this uh, historic occasion. Scratch that uh, back again, but that's, those are live images uh, we bring to you from Kennedy Center. Prime Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to welcome Secretary of State Blinken to make some remarks on this uh, historic occasion. But as a longtime friend of India, Secretary Blinken really needs no introduction to the people in this room. When President Biden nominated Secretary Blinken to serve as the 71st Secretary of State, a role first occupied by Thomas Jefferson himself, it was clear he had chosen someone of deep knowledge, experience, and skills. As a career diplomat, in the Clinton and Obama administration and senior foreign policy advisor to Senator and then Vice President Biden, Secretary Blinken developed the extensive strategic vision and political acumen to guide our nation through diplomatic challenges around the globe. Over the past two years, Secretary Blinken has focused these significant skills on navigating all New right. Challenges. Uh, while the introductions are being done, I'm going to quickly cut across to Geeta Mohan, who's right there outside the Kennedy Center as Prime Minister Modi has arrived at that event. Uh, Geeta, tell us more. We see Prime Minister Modi's arrival. What's really on the agenda this hour? Uh, we, uh, lots of people there who are waiting for him to speak. Uh, what exactly do you think he might be addressing today? Uh, the, we, uh, the Kennedy Center is where the business meeting is going to take place. Uh, I'm here at the Ronald Reagan Center uh, where uh, the uh, Indian Diaspora event is uh, to take place. Uh, waiting for uh, uh, the Prime Minister over here are... I have to say, uh, Mukesh, it's a little bit intimidating to be in the same sentence with Thomas Jefferson, but I appreciate it. <laughs> and I also have to say, as a one-time aspiring musician, I especially appreciate being able to take the stage here at the Kennedy Center. It's probably the closest I'll get to actually performing on it. <laughs> Mr. Prime Minister, this has truly been a historic visit to Washington. <laughs> to Dr. Bukeshagi, to the uh, U.S.-India Strategic Partnership Forum, to the members of the Indian American diaspora. And we've noticed that you're here this week. <laughs> to all the friends of the U.S.-India cooperation here with us, thank you. Thank you for your work to bring our countries and our citizens ever closer together. You are, you are, as Prime Minister Modi put it, the real engine powering our relationship. Over the last several decades, we have seen a transformation in U.S.-India ties, driven by private sector and civil society leaders like you, by governments of different parties in both of our countries. Today, guided by the vision of President Biden and Prime Minister Modi, the U.S.-India partnership is closer, it's broader, it is more dynamic than it has ever been. And as President Biden said yesterday, we are two great nations, two great friends, two great powers that can define the course of the 21st century. The, the many deals, the agreements, the exchanges that are coming out of this state visit illustrate just how comprehensive our partnership has become. It reaches quite literally from the seas to the stars, from promoting public health to bolstering peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific. And at its heart is our economic engagement between entrepreneurs, investors, researchers, and others that is expanding opportunity 
for both of our countries and beyond. Together, we are facilitating greater trade and investment, building on what is already a record $191 billion in bilateral trade. Uh, we see the mutual benefits of this relationship when Air India purchases 200 Boeing aircraft, supporting over a million American jobs in 44 states. And we see it when Boeing, in turn, commits to training Indian pilots and building regional hubs in India. This partnership is also defined increasingly by efforts to advance technology and innovation, 5G, quantum, artificial intelligence, and to ensure that they are shaped by our values. Building on the initiative on critical and emerging technologies that was launched in January, we announced an innovation handshake yesterday to further connect our startup ecosystems. And the landmark agreement to jointly manufacture advanced GE fighter jet engines in India will facilitate greater tech transfer while strengthening our shared security. We're also de-risking and diversifying our supply chains, from Micron investing $800 million to assemble semiconductors in Gujarat, to India joining the Mineral Security Partnership. And that partnership is helping to develop and ensure trusted sources for vital energy minerals. India's Epsilon Carbon is investing $650 million and creating more than 500 good-paying jobs to build electric vehicle batteries here in the United States, the largest ever Indian investment in the U.S. EV battery industry. And of course, we're investing in our people. Our country's education systems have collectively trained the leaders of trailblazing companies in both the United States and India, Infosys, IBM, FedEx, and we're committed to continuing to create new success stories, streamlining visa processes, opening new consulates to facilitate travel, expanding student exchanges, research collaborations, addressing skills gaps, promoting economic empowerment of women, ensuring that all our people have access to opportunity. You know, if we were gathered together 50, 75, 100 years ago, and we were asking ourselves the question, what constitutes the wealth of a nation? Probably the, the answer you'd get back then is maybe the, the size of its landmass, its population, the strength of its military, its abundance of raw materials. And all of those things remain important. But I think what the United States and India recognize powerfully together is that in this 21st century, the true wealth of our nation is our people. And our ability to maximize their potential is what sets us apart. President Biden often likes to say that America can be defined by a single word, possibilities. These past few days have underscored how that spirit, that spirit of possibility, defines now the U.S.-India relationship. Our governments will continue to do our part. But I'm asking all of you in this room to continue to do yours. Forge new ventures and partnerships. Invent game-changing products and services. Create unimagined opportunities. Visit friends and family in India. I'll host them here in the United States. Maybe even right here at the Kennedy Center. Continue to be that engine powering our progress. If we do all that, if we do all that, I truly believe that the U.S. and India will shape together a more peaceful, a more prosperous, a more connected future. Thank you all so very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome USISPF Chairman, Chairman Emeritus of Cisco Systems, and CEO of JC2 Ventures, Mr. John Chambers. Thank you, my fans. It is one of the biggest honors of my life today to introduce a leader that I think grasps where the future is and is able to enable a country partner with other countries, and change the world. I have met 
probably 40 of the top leaders around the world over 35 years in leadership. And the very first time I met the Prime Minister, he was different. He had an energy that was amazing. He had an understanding of technology and how technology was going to enable a country. And then he did something that is really unusual. He connected a vision to a strategy, to what are the priorities to get it done, to outcomes. And when he outlined his digital India strategy to me and asked for feedback, it was perfect for the future. He based his economy, inclusion of all the people in India, 1.4 billion today, <laughs> on the ability to bring the power of technology to them, to change their lives, to enable them to participate in what would be the largest economic growth of any company, country over the next decade. I want to be very upfront. As most of you know, I have been the biggest optimist, the biggest bull on India's future, not in one or two years, but for the last decade since he came into the leadership. I am the Prime Minister's biggest supporter, and I always have been. Honored to be his friend but also watch a man who has the ability to outline a strategy and then make it happen. People often ask, what was so unique? What is so unique about this person that changes countries and I believe will change the world over time? He has an ability to inspire hope, to make us believe on what's possible. He then has the ability to build confidence on what the future can be then he is amazingly good on execution and getting his team and other teams to port to our common goal. And then most important, he gets results. Many in America have a very positive view of India and the Prime Minister, but they really don't understand how far this country's come in the last decade. The country has moved from a very slow follower where the government was very bureaucratic and very, very slow moving and rigid and not a dreamer to the most innovative country in the world. It shows up in the economic results where the country has moved from number 10 in the world to number 5, and as the Prime Minister said, in the next couple of years, number 3. However, I'm usually pretty good at getting market transitions and being accurate on connecting the dots for the future. India will become the number one economy in the world. And it will do so under the plans and programs the Prime Minister is putting in place. When you look at really leadership, leadership is made up of three component parts in my opinion. It's your currency. It's first about your track record. And the track record of the Prime Minister in India over the last decade is an envy of the entire world, an example and a model for all of us to follow. Secondly, it's the ability to form relationships. This leader can form relationships with leaders around the world, with Democrats and Republicans. A little bit of Southern humor there. But also, he instills trust. And often, when people come together and say, here's what we can do together in the future, it is all about trust. Do you trust me? Do you trust the other side that both of us will deliver? When people ask me that question, I have one simple answer. I would trust this leader with my life. So today you're going to hear one of the great visionaries of the future who also knows how to execute. You're going to hear he'll be very humble. He's a very kind person. But you also hear a vision for what I believe will make India the number one economy. You're going to hear a vision of how two countries can partner together in a way that no two countries ever have in history to work toward a common goal that will be to the benefit of every one of our citizens in India and in the United States, but also the benefit to the world. It is my pleasure to introduce one of the great leaders in the world, Prime Minister Modi. Please come and address us. Sir.
मेरे मित्र सेक्रेटरी ब्लिंकन गवर्नर ऑफ डेलावेर कांग्रेसमैन अधर इलेक्टेड रिप्रेजेंटेटिव माई ओल्ड फ्रेंड जॉन चैम्बर्स माई ऑलवेज ग्रेट कंपेनियन आई कैन से मुकेश आगे जी इंडस्ट्री कैंपेन लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग अपनी अमेरिका विजिट के दौरान इस कार्यक्रम का मैं बहुत बेसब्री से इंतजार कर रहा था आप सभी अमेरिका की विकास यात्रा के मजबूत स्तंभ है मजबूत पिलर्स है और इसलिए मैं आपसे मिलना भी चाहता था आपसे बातें भी करना चाहता था कांग्रेस मैन हो बिजनेस लीडर्स हो डॉक्टर्स हो इंजीनियर्स हो साइंटिस्ट हो दूसरे प्रोफेशनल्स हो आप सभी अपनी मेहनत से अमेरिका को इस ऊंचाई पर लाए हैं आप सभी अमेरिकन ड्रीम का हिस्सा है आपने अमेरिकन ड्रीम को जिया है आपने दिखाया है कि संकल्प लेकर उसे सिद्धि कैसे तक कैसे पहुंचाया जाता है मैं आप सभी का अभिनंदन करता हूं इस कार्यक्रम में मुझे निमंत्रित करने के लिए मैं आगे जी का जॉन का आप सबका हृदय से आभार व्यक्त करता हूं फ्रेंड्स मुझे अमेरिका आए चार दिन हो गए हैं इन चार दिनों में मैं प्रेसिडेंट बाइडेन समेत बहुत से लोगों से मिला हूं मेरी कितने ही सीईओ के साथ यहां के दिग्गजों के साथ मुलाकात हुई है जिस एक बात ने मुझे सबसे ज्यादा आत्मविश्वास दिया वो है भारत और अमेरिका की पार्टनरशिप और मैं बहुत विश्वास से कह रहा हूं दावे से कह रहा हूं ये पार्टनरशिप सिर्फ कन्वीनियंस की पार्टनरशिप नहीं है ये पार्टनरशिप है कन्विक्शन की ये पार्टनरशिप है कंपेशन की और ये पार्टनरशिप है एक बेहतर विश्व के लिए शेयर कमिटमेंट की और इस पार्टनरशिप की बुनियाद इसकी नींव आप है अमेरिका के और भारत के नागरिक है इस पार्टनरशिप की एक और खास बात है अक्रॉस द पार्टी लाइन अमेरिका में भारत के लिए जबरदस्त समर्थन है कल अमेरिकी कांग्रेस में जिस तरह बायपार्टिजन सपोर्ट भारत को मिला है वो वाकई अभूतपूर्व है इसलिए मेरा ये विश्वास और गहरा हो गया है कि हमारी पार्टनरशिप 21वीं सदी की दुनिया का भाग्य बदल सकती है
फ्रेंड्स हर देश की विकास यात्रा में एक ऐसा टाइम पीरियड आता है जब एक नई ऊर्जा के साथ एक नया लक्ष्य तय करता है आज भारत भी एक ऐसे ही टाइम पीरियड से गुजर रहा है कुछ समय पहले ही हमने अपनी आजादी के 75 साल पूरे किए हैं और हमने संकल्प लिया है मोदी ने नहीं 140 करोड़ हिंदुस्तानियों ने संकल्प लिया है और ये संकल्प है विकसित भारत का डेवलप इंडिया का हम भारत में दशकों से चली आ रही समस्याओं का स्थायी समाधान कर रहे हैं और हम चुनौती को भी चुनौती देते हैं हम भारत के गरीबों को सशक्त कर रहे हैं उनके ईज ऑफ लिविंग बढ़ा रहे हैं दस साल में भारत जैसा अभी जॉन ने कहा दुनिया की दसवें नंबर की इकोनॉमी से पांचवें नंबर की इकोनॉमी बन गया है कोरोना काल में जिस तरह भारत ने इस महामारी का मुकाबला किया वो भारत के सामर्थ्य को दिखाता है आप जानते हैं कि आज पोस्ट पैंडेमिक वर्ल्ड में इकोनॉमी इन्फ्लेशन और सप्लाई चेन क्या हालत है इन सब के बीच भारत आज सेवन परसेंट से अधिक से भी ग्रोथ लेकर आगे बढ़ रहा है और ये ऐसे ही नहीं हुआ है दोस्तों आज भारत में रिफॉर्म्स का एक अभूतपूर्व दौर चल रहा है इकोनॉमिक वर्ल्ड के आप लोग जानते हैं कि हाई ग्रोथ लो इन्फ्लेशन का कॉम्बिनेशन आसान नहीं है लेकिन आज भारत ये भी करके दिखा रहा है हम फिजिकल डेफिसिट को नियंत्रित रखते हुए कैपेक्स में लगातार वृद्धि कर रहे हैं हमारा एक्सपोर्ट बढ़ रहा है फॉरेस्ट बढ़ रहा है और एफडीआई का नया रिकॉर्ड बनता चला जा रहा है पिछले दो ढाई साल में ही अमेरिकी कंपनियों ने 16 बिलियन डॉलर से ज्यादा भारत में निवेश किए हैं फ्रेंड्स भारत की सफलता का आधार भारत के विकास की सबसे बड़ी ड्राइविंग फोर्स भारत के लोगों का एस्पिरेशन है ये अमेरिकन ड्रीम से बहुत अलग नहीं है आज भारत की जीडीपी में प्राइवेट कंजम्पशन का शेयर डेढ़ दशक में सबसे अधिक हो गया है और जिस बात को लेकर हम सबको समाधान होगा वो है भारत में एक्सट्रीम पॉवर्टी तेजी से खत्म होती चली जा रही है भारत में 
नियो मिडिल क्लास मिडिल क्लास एक ऐसा ब्लॉक है जिसका लगातार विस्तार हो रहा है भारत के लोगों की यही एस्पिरेशन भारत और अमेरिका की पार्टनरशिप की सबसे अहम दूरी बनने जा रहा है इस बहुत बड़े वर्ग की आकांक्षा पूरी करने के लिए भारत जो कर रहा है उसने अमेरिका के लिए भी नई संभावनाओं के द्वार खोल दिए हैं अब जैसे भारत में एविएशन सेक्टर में डिमांड लगातार बढ़ रही है भारत का डोमेस्टिक एयर ट्रैफिक हमारा पैसेंजर्स ग्रोथ नया रिकॉर्ड बना रही है इस डिमांड की पूर्ति के लिए भारत के एयरलाइंस कंपनियां सैकड़ों एयरक्राफ्ट का ऑर्डर दे रही है और इसका लाभ जैसे सेक्रेटरी ब्लिंकर ने भी कहा इसका लाभ यहां अमेरिका की कंपनियों को हो रहा है यहां भी जॉब्स क्रिएट हो रही है साथियों डिफेंस सेक्टर में भारत और अमेरिका के पार्टनरशिप को मेरी इस विजिट में एक नई ऊंचाई मिली है कल जब मैंने कांग्रेस में इस बारे में बात की थी तो पूरे सदन में तालियों की गड़गड़ाहट रुकने का नाम नहीं ले रही थी ये स्वागत हो रहा है राष्ट्रपति बाइडेन की दीर्घ दृष्टि फोरसाइटनेस पूरा सदन उछल उछल करके बधाई दे रहा था कल भारत अमेरिका डिफेंस पार्टनरशिप अमेरिका के करीब करीब हर स्टेट के लोगों के साथ एक विशिष्ट प्रकार का नाता बना रहा है एक मदद का नया एक आयाम खुल रहा है एरिजोना में बनने वाले अपाचे हेलीकॉप्टर जॉर्जिया के सी वन के सुपर हर्कुलिस अलाबामा के एम एच सिक्सटी आर हेलीकॉप्टर्स वॉशिंगटन और साउथ कोरोना के सिविलियन बोइंग एयरक्राफ्ट पेंसिल्वेनिया के चिनुक हेलीकॉप्टर ये भारत के साथ ही अमेरिका के डिफेंस और एरोस्पेस सेक्टर को भी मजबूती दे रहे हैं टैक्सेस न्यू मैक्सिको नॉर्थ डकोटा और अलास्का को भी भारत की तेजी से बढ़ती इकोनॉमी से मदद मिल रही है टेक्सटाइल हो फूड हो या फिर टूरिज्म करीब करीब हर सेक्टर में भारत के एस्पिरेशंस अमेरिकी अर्थव्यवस्था को ताकत दे रही है और मुझे एक बात की और खुशी है भारत की कंपनियां भी अमेरिका में बिलियंस ऑफ डॉलर्स का इन्वेस्टमेंट कर रही हैं भारत की कंपनियां ग्लोबल बन रही हैं न्यू जर्सी टेक्सस न्यूयॉर्क कैलिफोर्निया जॉर्जिया एलिनोय मिशिगन यहां बड़ी संख्या में भारतीय कंपनियां ऑपरेट कर रही हैं उसमें से कुछ महानुभव यहां मौजूद भी है इन सब का फायदा कि यहां की मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इंडस्ट्री अमेरिका के युवाओं को हो रहा है अमेरिका के किसानों को हो रहा है साथियों भारत और अमेरिका की ये पार्टनरशिप दोनों देशों के हित में है दोनों देशों के लोगों के हित में भी है और इसलिए इसको मजबूत करना भी उतना ही आवश्यक है प्रेसिडेंट बाइडेन के नेतृत्व में यहां की सरकार 
इस दिशा में बहुत बेहतर काम कर रही है आप देख रहे हैं कि कैसे बीते तीन दिनों में इस पार्टनरशिप को मजबूती देने के लिए कई ऐतिहासिक कदम उठाए हैं डिफेंस से लेकर एविएशन सेक्टर तक एप्लाइड मटेरियल से लेकर के मैन्युफैक्चरिंग तक आईटी सेक्टर से लेकर स्पेस सेक्टर तक भारत अमेरिका अब मोस्ट रिलायबल पार्टनर की तरह आगे बढ़ रहे हैं अब आप सभी साथियों को बिजनेस कम्युनिटी को आगे बढ़कर इस अपॉर्चुनिटी का ज्यादा से ज्यादा लाभ उठाना है साथियों भारत के हर डेवलपमेंट प्रोजेक्ट में अमेरिकी ड्रीम को और मजबूती देने की क्षमता है आप कल्पना कर सकते हैं आज भारत इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पर रिकॉर्ड 125 बिलियन डॉलर से ज्यादा का इन्वेस्टमेंट कर रहा है भारत की इस ग्रोथ स्टोरी में अमेरिका के लिए आप लोगों के लिए असीम संभावनाएं हैं आपके लिए ये फर्स्ट एंड फास्ट मूवर एडवांटेज लेने का ये समय है साथियों बीते तीन दिनों में मेरी प्रेसिडेंट बाइडेन से यानी एक प्रकार से तीन दिन हमें साथ बिताने का अवसर मिला है बहुत ही ऐतिहासिक मसलों पर बातचीत हुई है इन मुलाकातों में भारत अमेरिका के भविष्य को लेकर ठोस बातें हुई हैं हमने एक स्पष्ट रणनीति पर चलना तय किया है आज व्हाइट हाउस में हुआ टेक्नोलॉजी हैंड चेक भी दोनों देशों की कंपनियों को बिजनेस को मैन्युफैक्चरर्स को इनोवेटर्स को सीधा संदेश है This is the moment. Thank you. This is the moment. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Bharat America ki sarkaron ne आपके लिए ग्राउंड वर्क कर दिया है खेत जोतने का काम हमने कर दिया है इसमें जो जरूरी होगा वो हम आगे भी करते रहेंगे लेकिन अब इस ग्राउंड पर खुलकर खुलकर खेलने और खिलने की जिम्मेदारी आपकी है और जो खेलेगा वो ही खिलेगा मुझे विश्वास है आप कोई मौका नहीं छोड़ेंगे इस अवसर का पूरा लाभ उठाएंगे और मैं आपको इस बात का भरोसा देता हूं कि आपको भारत में एक बेहतर माहौल मिलेगा बेहतर अवसर मिलेगा ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस हमारी सरकार का कमिटमेंट है साथियों इतिहास साक्षी है कि जब जब भारत मजबूत हुआ है तब तब पूरी दुनिया का लाभ हुआ है सौ साल के सबसे बड़े संकट काल में इस पैंडेमिक में भी हमने यही देखा है जब दुनिया को दवाइयों की जरूरत थी भारत ने अपना प्रोडक्शन बढ़ाकर 150 से ज्यादा देशों को दवाइयां भेजी 
और वो समय याद कीजिए घर ने घर से बाहर निकलने के लिए भी दुनिया डरती थी तब दुनिया के 150 देशों को दवाइयां भेजी थी जब दुनिया को कोरोना वैक्सीन की जरूरत थी भारत ने अपना प्रोडक्शन बढ़ाकर 100 से ज्यादा देशों को वैक्सीन पहुंचाई थी हमारा दिल बड़ा है विश्व शांति के प्रति हमारा कमिटमेंट उससे भी बड़ा है साथियों अब इस बात के भी साक्षी हैं कि कोरोना वैश्विक महामारी ने ग्लोबल साइकोलॉजी को कितना नुकसान पहुंचाया है हर कोई एक दूसरे पर शंक कर रहा है हर देश सोच रहा है कि मुझे जब जरूरत होगी तो कौन सा देश मेरा साथ देगा यानी कोरोना ने शरीर के साथ ही मन पर भी गहरा आघात किया है और हमें इस बात को कम नहीं आंकना चाहिए शंका आशंका के इस दौर में भारत भारत अपने हजारों वर्ष के डेमोक्रेटिक वैल्यूज के साथ आगे बढ़ा है दुनिया के साथ खड़ा है साथियों भारत के पास आने वाले समय की एक और चुनौती का सबसे बड़ा समाधान है ये चुनौती है एजिंग की हम इससे इनकार नहीं कर सकते कि एजिंग और एजिंग से सिर्फ मैन पावर ही प्रभावित नहीं होती बल्कि ये कंजम्पशन प्रोडक्शन और इनोवेशन को भी प्रभावित करती है आज भारत दुनिया का सबसे युवा देश है दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा युवे युवा टैलेंट पूल भारत के पास है दुनिया की सबसे बड़ी स्किल और प्रोफेशनल फोर्स भारत के पास है इसलिए जो भी देश इस समय भारत से जुड़ेगा उसका उतना ही फायदा होगा साथियों आप जानकर के खुशी होगी भारत कितनी तेज गति से आगे बढ़ रहा है स्पीड स्केल आज भारत में हर सप्ताह एक नई यूनिवर्सिटी बन रही है आज भारत में हर तीसरे दिन एक अटल टिंकरिंग लैब खोली जा रही है आज भारत में हर दो दिन दो, दि, दो दिन में एक नए कॉलेज बन रहा है आज भारत में हर दिन एक नई आईटीआई की स्थापना हो रही है आज भारत में हर साल एक नया आईआईटी और एक नया आईआईएम बन रहा है इन संस्थानों से निकला टैलेंट आज पूरी मानवता की भलाई के लिए काम कर रहा है आज दुनिया की सबसे बड़ी कंपनियों में फोर्चून 500 कंपनियों में भारतीय हमें अहम भूमिका में नजर आते हैं और इस हॉल में भी बहुत से ऐसे महानुभाव मौजूद हैं मुझे विश्वास है भारत अमेरिकी साझा ड्रीम भारत अमेरिकी साझा डिटर्मिनेशन 21वीं सदी में दुनिया की डेस्टिनी बदलने का सामर्थ्य रखता है मैं आपको भारत की इस विकास यात्रा में एक साथ आगे बढ़ने के लिए 
फिर एक बार आमंत्रित करता हूं लेटेस्ट कम टूगेदर फॉर अ बेटर वर्ल्ड बेटर फ्यूचर लेटेस्ट ग्रो विथ इंडिया और मैंने एक बार लाल के लिए से कहा था मेरे भाषण में और मैंने कहा था यही समय है सही समय है बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद साथियों All right, that was Prime Minister Narendra Modi's very uh, powerful, a power-packed speech that he gave at that Kennedy Hall uh, for the Indian diaspora. This was uh, certainly a big booster for the Indian diaspora as they've come from far and wide to witness Prime Minister Modi's speech yet again, nine years after that first um, grand Indian diaspora event that took place. In fact, in 2014, his visit, uh, we saw we saw the kind of Modi euphoria that happened back in 2014 and now yet again in 2023 Prime Minister receiving this kind of roaring welcome by the Indian diaspora and he's given quite a spirited speech there speaking of India's growth, its success story, the fact that India, the youngest country in the world today, uh, is, is all set to achieve great feats. He's spoken about the Indian diaspora's uh, efforts to build the American, uh, to build America itself, about the uh, the work that the Indians have put in uh, to to escalate the success story of the United States, uh, and of course he's mentioned uh, on the kind of values that these Indians bring to America, almost crediting uh, India for for throwing up such intelligent, successful, hardworking uh, people who are now all across the globe. This is the Indian diaspora in the United States who have come by to have this very, um, to witness this euphoria around Prime Minister Narendra Modi and of course his speech now, a very spirited one as he, as he speaks on India's growth story and the kind of success that India is due to see. Let's take you through the speech yet again at the Kennedy Hall, Prime Minister Modi, the Kennedy Center. He speaks with the business leaders, the Indian diaspora at large. I'm going to play that out for you once more. Hum Bharat ke gariboon ko sasakta kar rahe hai. Unke ease of living badha rahe hai. Das saal mein Bharat, jaysa abhi John ne kaha, dunia ki dasve number ki economy se पांचवें नंबर की इकोनॉमी बन गया है कोरोना काल में जिस तरह भारत ने इस महामारी का मुकाबला किया वो भारत के सामर्थ्य को दिखाता है आप जानते हैं कि आज पोस्ट पैंडेमिक वर्ल्ड में economy, inflation or supply chain kya halat hai? In sab ke beech Bharat aaj 7% se adhik se bhi growth lekar aage bad raha hai. Aaj Bharat mein reforms ka ek abhut parva daur chal raha hai. इकोनॉमिक वर्ल्ड के आप लोग जानते हैं कि हाई ग्रोथ लो इन्फ्लेशन का कॉम्बिनेशन आसान नहीं है लेकिन आज भारत ये भी करके दिखा रहा है हम फिजिकल डेफिसिट को नियंत्रित रखते हुए कैपेक्स में लगातार वृद्धि कर रहे हैं हमारा एक्सपोर्ट बढ़ रहा है फॉरेस्ट बढ़ रहा है और एफडीआई का नया रिकॉर्ड बनता चला जा रहा है 
पिछले दो ढाई साल में ही अमेरिकी कंपनियों ने 16 बिलियन डॉलर से ज्यादा भारत में निवेश किए हैं भारत की सफलता का आधार भारत के विकास की सबसे बड़ी ड्राइविंग फोर्स भारत के लोगों का एस्पिरेशन है ये अमेरिकन ड्रीम से बहुत अलग नहीं है आज भारत की जीडीपी में प्राइवेट कंजम्पशन का शेयर डेढ़ दशक में सबसे अधिक हो गया है और जिस बात को लेकर हम सबको समाधान होगा वो है भारत में एक्सट्रीम पॉवर्टी तेजी से खत्म होती चली जा रही है भारत में नियो मिडिल क्लास मिडिल क्लास एक ऐसा ब्लॉक है जिसका लगातार विस्तार हो रहा है भारत के लोगों की यही एस्पिरेशन भारत और अमेरिका की पार्टनरशिप की सबसे अहम दूरी बनने जा रहा है इस बहुत बड़े वर्ग की आकांक्षा पूरी करने के लिए भारत जो कर रहा है उसने अमेरिका के लिए भी नई संभावनाओं के द्वार खोल दिए हैं All right, that was Prime Minister's uh, spirited speech there at the Kennedy Center. I'm going to cut across to Geeta Mohan, who's joining us right outside the Kennedy Center. Geeta, uh, another round of speech that Prime Minister has given. This time, really listing out India's achievements so far, the roadmap, India's success story, uh, where the country is due to reach in uh, in no time, and also credited the Indian community all over the globe uh, for really. you know building this image of india that it is today um, worldwide tell us more on the kind of euphoria that that surrounds modi's visit and the, uh, at this indian diaspora event i want to say thank you to the us indian community foundation well uh, the people over here are quite excited uh, they they stood in a long queue to come in uh, went through security uh, this is an area nabila we are at the ronald reagan center an area that has been uh, made because the auditorium is not large enough to accommodate everybody but are you guys excited even being outside and waiting for prime minister modi to listen to him on the screen are you excited yes we are so excited i'm coming all the way from doha you know from uh, from doha Doha, from you know to, towards Europe, then London, then US, okay. and I was desperate to be in this program. So All right. thank God I made what, it. What about you? How excited are you? What do you expect the Prime Minister to say when it comes to the Indian community? Yeah, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're expecting Prime Minister Modi to pro provide some details of the conversation with President Biden and the, and the changes that are going to All happen right. in the next. few years and strengthen our relationship between india and Gita, america if you could it. hold on Modi for a moment uh, stay with us for just a moment i'm going to quickly cut across to rahul kawal who's also at the kennedy center joining us rahul uh, this very spirited speech prime minister modi really crediting the indian uh, community uh, for Modi. for bringing this kind of name and success for india on that global uh, platform he speaks of india's road map the success story that india is charting out for itself the youngest country and a long way to go for us No, absolutely, and in fact, that so many members of the like Indian American community uh, who've done very well for themselves here in the United States were present at the Kennedy Center for this meeting, and these uh, Indian Americans are really uh, in the propellers of uh, the relationship between India and the U.S. That's phenomenally successful. Most people who are here uh, at the Kennedy Center uh, this evening, and they are beneficiaries of the American dream. And what they see in the prime minister is someone who they believe can help set up an equivalent Indian dream, and that I think is significant because it gives them, it gives the India-America relationship more fuel. As we see, American politicians, and they were talking about how uh, there's so much pressure or conversation around India that comes from these four million uh, plus Indian Americans who are all politically active. Uh, you know, they could be divided. 
amongst Republicans and Democrats in terms of their political support, but in terms of uh, their fondness or fascination for Prime Minister Modi, it's overwhelming. And I think that is the community that the Prime Minister was speaking to uh, this evening here at the Kennedy Center, telling them uh, to come and be part of uh, the India story, saying that this is India's moment, that this is when, sorry, some people uh, just also wanted a selfie while we do this. I'm actually live on TV, yes, if you don't mind. Uh, so basically making the point, Nabila, that uh, this is your moment. Don't let, don't let the moment go and come and invest in uh, India as quickly as you possibly can. I think there's a uh, rousing reception of the Prime Minister. had lots of people standing up, applauding a lot of what he was saying. And the other thing that's really interesting, Nabila, is the fact that you know, even youngsters like Nikhil Kamak, he was in five meetings with the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister was the one doing most of the talk. And he said, dude, I'm tired. I need to sleep. I need a break. I want to go to London. I need to just, you know, relax after what's happened on the past 48 hours. And the Prime Minister, you know, the moment somebody says this, it seems like, oh, this is some kind of unbhakti or just unnecessary uh, fandom towards the Prime Minister. But this is a real aspect of the Prime Minister's being, his ability to maintain the schedule. Just after the Kennedy Centre reception has just gone over, He's, he came out, met uh, people who were here at the back. This is the Kennedy Center for Performing That's a stunning venue. Uh, he'll now be going to the next diaspora event where he'll be meeting members of the Indian American community. And from there, right away, that same night to Egypt, where he has a whole yeah. different uh, schedule packed up. If somebody thinks this is just common or this is not something which is, uh, you know, something that should be highlighted, I think that is very unfair because this is quite remarkable what we're seeing. It's not common. It's quite uncommon and it's quite remarkable. You know, I don't think there's a concept of jet lag for the Prime Minister. All of us could get tired. We're, we're working through the night, Rahul, to uh, to get to cover this very euphoria that we see there in the United States over Prime Minister Modi's visit. Uh, it's tiring as it is, but Prime Minister seems as spirited, energetic and on point with his speech, even while he spoke, uh, uh, crediting the Indian diaspora, the, the kind of roadmap that India is charting out for itself. And this really is such a moral booster for the Indian community in the United States as of now. They've come from far and wide. We heard Geeta speaking to some of them. They've really come, uh, driven hours to just be part of this event and get one look and, and, and listen to Modi live. And it's, I mean, the, the, the nasty or negative way to describe it is that most of these are upper caste Hindus and therefore very naturally the constituency of the BJP, they're the ones who in larger numbers have migrated abroad and therefore if we poll upper caste Hindus in any state there's a chance that this proposed move will support a Prime Minister Modi. That's the negative way of looking at it. But the positive way is that these are also beneficiaries of the American dream. They've come here, they've worked hard, they made a name for themselves, and they like that in their home country, uh, there be an ecosystem that enables similar success, which is why they believe in the men, which is why they're making the effort that they are, uh, and which is why they've come the distance that they have from uh, California, from Texas, from all over, from the distances to be a part of this moment and to give back in some way. Uh, you know, to give back in some way. You think of this also, in part, as being their mission. They want to give back to the India story and they believe he's the man who can deliver. You know, uh, you know tell us... This stuff, so, you know, we heard from uh, John Chambers, former head of uh, Cisco. He's one of the organizers of uh, this function. Uh, was quite, he was interviewed from the Prime Minister. He said that in years to come, uh, he thinks of India as becoming the number one economy in the world and that is still some distance away. But that's the confidence which is being exuded and is often the case here for the stars will possibly hit the tree top and then uh, another thing the Prime Minister highlighted was that when he started out, India was number 10 in a couple of years, by 2027 to 8, India could potentially be number 3. And number 3, the PM said, yeah, we have SAE in anyone. He's taking a lot of effort to make this happen and the next few years he thinks that some of the effort that's being made in a structural way will start seeing results. Uh, you know? You know, uh, Rahul, absolutely, uh, India is uh, right now on its way up and uh, possibly even taking China's place entirely. This is this is India's moment, no doubt, and Prime Minister Modi asserting that on that stage. But who uh, the, the, uh, the place you're at, uh, what exactly does the audience comprise of? Who are these people who've been given this very special invite? We believe that this is a much sought-after event. Uh, a bunch of them who've really waited for hours or, or days to to, to manage a ticket and travelled, uh, Geeta brings us people who've travelled all the way from London, Europe to come for this very diaspora event. Oh, absolutely. 
uh, these are pretty successful businessmen, CEOs, are procured to listen to the Prime Minister. And you're right, it is a very sought after ticket. It's a very tough to come by ticket. Uh, and these are also people who, you know, I mean, for example, this afternoon I was at uh, the Indian Diaspora event. Uh, these are members of the Indian Diaspora who set up their own organization and talking to them. Uh, you know, these are people who've done really well for themselves in the US and talking to them, I got the sense that they want to contribute that in some way. They think that, you know, India could do and should do much more than it has done in the past and they're really trying to make a difference. They're very, very charged up. You know, these people were uh, the voters of India. I mean, obviously, they're not. If they were, Prime Minister Modi would win by a landslide majority next year. But that's not the only India. I mean, this is not, you know, it's not just rich, it's not just affluent, it's not just being American. There's a real election out there. Uh, but this would give the Prime Minister uh, some confidence as he goes back. You know, we are speaking to Ian Zemmer at the Eurasia Group, uh, top uh, risk, uh, uh, this risk expert, top American political scientist. He said this is the most successful bilateral meeting uh, that President Biden has had. And these are people who track American politics. Uh, here, when uh, Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State, is speaking, and even the Prime Minister, the Government of India and America, being the defining uh, relationship of the 21st century, now, those are early words. And of all the countries that America has relationship with, if they think that the one with India is special and they're investing their equities, they're investing their capital, that is uh, a very significant achievement that the Prime Minister will be leading with when he takes off you know, uh, Rahul, sure there is an election in India that is independent of all this frenzy outside, uh, but, but at the end of it, this kind of craze that we see all the way from 2014, uh, when, when uh, Modi addressed the diaspora, Indian diaspora, with nearly 20,000 people in New York's Madis Madison Square Garden, all the way to 2023, something like this cannot be staged managed. It, you know, this, this kind of love and craze for him is... Um, Authentic. No, apart from the stage planet, uh, the, the fact is that these are people who come by spending their own hard-earned money, they've taken time off, some of them were here for a couple of days. You don't just do that, uh, you know, many of them are businessmen, you don't just do that for no reason. They uh, obviously believe in the man, they believe in what he saying, and uh, they think that by being here, they're showing their support to the Prime Minister. And more importantly, their support to the India story, which is why these are things we cannot, as we said, uh, stage manage. We get a couple of hundred people, sure, uh, that can be organized. But given the distances that these people have traveled, given the kind of people that these are, uh, that's not easy to pull off. And also remember, each one of them, in some way, oftentimes is influential in their own local community. So they have American politicians uh, who, you know, they, they vote as far and stuff, they raise funds for some of these American politicians. And a lot of what uh, they're telling here, what they're telling us here, is also what they tell those American senators and uh, congressmen, which is also one of the reasons why in the joint session of the US Congress yesterday, we saw the kind of applause and the kind of idolation that we did, not from members of the Indian American community. I mean, that was they, they were in the gallery up, up above uh, the Congress, but amongst the senators and the congressmen, and some of whom are speaking to uh, some of the Washington. Uh, embassy officials, and they were pointing out images of senators in Congress who have been very critical of some of the past actions of the Prime Minister and of the Modi government, who have seemed very enthused uh, to come out and take selfies, get an autograph, etc. So maybe he's won some friends and influenced some people while, while he's been here in D.C. You know, uh, Rahul, at this point, we're seeing uh, the United States, of course, wanting to ink many deals uh, with India, and those talks have already happened, uh, defense, uh, bilateral talks and whatnot. Uh, but the business community at large, uh, uh, some of them who you've spoke to as well, uh, post this event, post Prime Minister Modi's state visit to the United States and his uh, chat with a bunch of uh, business leaders, uh, do you think or do you see doors opening up to a stream of companies now flowing into India? But it doesn't work like that, Nabila, as you know well. Uh, this is all tough. Ultimately, any company that wants to invest will do a full evaluation of whether the investment will have the right kind of return on capital employed. All the businesses um, that they need to be looking at if they're taking the fall will be evaluated. You know, money doesn't move and talk. Money moves when there is belief that uh, 
the rate of return is justified the investment. And I think which is why one of the things that's being attempted is to create an enabling framework, create an ecosystem which allows these American companies to come in, have a good experience, invest in the industry and actually benefit because then one becomes bellwether for the other and others jump in and it will be the same and be part of the same bandwagon, which is why the micron investment in semiconductors in Gujarat is so significant because if that investment is successful, then it kind of encourages other companies to do it. Governments can't move money. Uh, for private uh, companies, those companies can, which is which is also why so many CEOs have been met. Just before he came here, he met with the CEO of Alphabet, from the Vichai, he met with the Amazon CEO, uh, he met with the Boeing CEO. So he's really, apart from meetings, uh, the congressmen and senators really trying to convince America into this is the moment, this is when you must invest in the India story. There is a global tailwind on account of the fact that companies are looking beyond China. Uh, but just that factor itself is not enough because there are other countries trying to get this money as well. The countries like uh, Indonesia, countries like Vietnam, they're trying to uh, get companies to come to them. So it's a global contest. And the Prime Minister is doing what he does best, be uh, the best salesman for the India story, which is kind of what he's trying to do over the past three days, uh, first in New York and now in D.C. Absolutely, but India's uh, sheer scale, the numbers, uh, I, I think we're, we're certainly hoping for the best. Uh, final word, uh, Prime Minister Modi is going to be having another meeting with the Indian diaspora. Uh, Rahul, if you could tell us the final event as he ends this US tour today. Well, that's true. You know, and just imagine, you just wrapped up this uh, long address uh, and you have another one to go to. I mean, this is uh, quite, it, 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 it'll be different. You know, there'll be more Nach Gana, Tamasha over there. This is very proper. They've got their suits on, I mean, their Dutch movies. So this is a very different kind of event. I mean, this is the Kennedy Center for performing arts. Let me just turn the camera around while you edit and show you what's happening. This is, the, this is where some of the greatest musicians, uh, greatest uh, operas uh, perform. So this is a very different kind of event from the one that you're about to see, which is where my colleagues Geeta Mohan and Shweta Singha and they take you through the, you know, the, that, that, that's a different kind of one. So I suppose that will be a different kind of speech. This was more about uh, trying to attract investment, trying to get all these uh, CEOs charged up about investing in India, so moving from top to action. That's what the Prime Minister focused on. That'll have a different vibe, that'll have a different energy. It's not going to be Madison Square Garden, but it's, it's going to be on similar lines, but at a much smaller scale. All right, Rahul, thank you very much. I'm going to let you go and enjoy uh, some time out uh, in um, your time in the United States on the final day of Prime Minister Modi's visit. Thank you very much. Well, uh, those are the images that came in from a little earlier with Prime Minister addressing that huge crowd, the Indian diaspora who've come in from far and wide just to hear Prime Minister Modi speak, a huge moral booster for that Indian community who Prime Minister, like he says, have, has worked really hard to achieve that American dream, which the Prime Minister called, in fact, an Indian dream. This is nothing short of an Indian dream of the Indian community moving uh, dif to different parts of the globe and making the country so proud. Well, we, we hear the Prime Minister is now going to be meeting with uh, the Indian diaspora at another event. This is also going to be uh, an event where you have invite-only guests who will be arriving and all the top business leaders and honchos will be meeting with Prime Minister Modi. Is he expected to speak or not? Geeta Mohan is joining us to give us a little more on that. Geeta, would you tell us uh, Prime Minister Modi's event just took place here? We heard him speak at that uh, Kennedy Center where he addressed the Indian diaspora. We believe there's another event now to follow where he's going to be meeting with more people of the Indian diaspora. Is he going to be speaking there as well? How is this? Uh, g give us the uh, plan of this last leg of his event, uh, of his tour. Well, uh, well, uh, the fact that he's meeting Indian diaspora in every meeting that he that he's going to, where the themes are different, Nabila, goes to show the kind of contribution uh, the Indian community has made in America and American society, American economy. Over here, uh, we are looking at the Indian diaspora event where the theme is uh, Indian diaspora's contribution uh, to. Uh, America and to Indian uh, Indian American relations. Sir, if I could come to you, uh, you've been waiting over here. We know that it's going to take a while for Prime Minister to come, and everybody's waiting patiently. Are you excited? Yes, yes. Uh, it, 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 
it is actually a, a, a truly unique event and we are very excited to uh, welcome uh, have a modi uh, to the united states yes okay um, a lot of others over here but not it's not absolutely crowded because this is not the auditorium uh, where the event is taking place uh, the auditorium where the event is taking place is uh, is behind the wall over there uh, but let me go across to the ladies who were waiting a, a long time to speak to us uh, and uh, we did not go to them so i'm just walking across to the ladies who waited a while ladies can you just get up now and now start talking as to how excited are you uh, for being over here and uh, you waited long for prime minister modi so uh, how excited are you we are very excited we were here yesterday we've been here since last two days we're from illinois chicago oh you're not from dc no we're from chicago just to came to see the modi okay so you travel every time prime minister modi comes or is this the first time this is the first time for us to come to see modi okay. so we were so exciting to done that and what about you where are you from we from chicago all of you are from chicago so the ladies are here from chicago waiting for the for the indian premier what do you want prime minister modi to say in terms of the connect between india and us through the diaspora we would like to make him connect and just make more uh, more connecting to more merge to the india and us what about you same thing and technology wise and everything for the new generations we want him to move he as as what he's doing he's doing a very good job for everyone we want him to be out in 2024 okay uh, so they 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 not only are talking about the contribution of the indian diaspora when it comes to india america ties that has been there so far uh, now the conversation also has moved to the next generation speaking of the ne next generation let's talk to a few people over here um, you uh, are you from dc Oh uh, no we are from uh, Fairfax Virginia okay from Virginia yeah. not so far away uh, but uh Are you excited? Is yeah. this the first time that you've come to an event uh, uh, of Prime Minister Modi? Yeah, yeah. I mean, actually, we've seen him uh, day before yesterday near the hotel. Uh huh. And but yeah. Oh, it's... you were there. Yeah. So we all got drenched together outside yeah, the hotel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, it's been an honourable experience altogether, meeting him, uh, seeing him, and everything. Uh, did you get to shake hands with him yeah. uh, outside the hotel? I got to shake hands with the Prime Minister after a full drenching in the rain. Uh huh. So we were excited at the time. So. After meeting, we were all like, so like excited and like we got videos of the prime minister, and now like we are lucky to got the passes here. Like okay, but you're not going to the main auditorium because that would be full. Okay. Is that disappointing, or you're still happy that you're here? You're going to see him on the big screen. Uh, really happy, like uh, at least like we got here. Okay. So. So all right, happy that they, at least they're here. Uh, the room is not completely packed, uh, but the auditorium we are, we are told is completely was registered, and uh, there was overwhelming registration, which is why uh, there is a spillover. Although this auditorium is also not a very big one, uh, it's a smaller one, smaller capacity, uh, but uh, nonetheless, you're seeing a lot of people travel from various parts of United States of America just to come over here. So. How excited are you that Prime Minister Modi is going to be here? Any expectations uh, from the Indian Premier when it comes to what he's going to say and his address? Uh, I think we're just all very excited about the visit, the budding and growing and strengthening of the relationship between India and the U.S. and where that relationship can go, both in the defense and technology and people-to-people -people exchanges. Okay. And what about you, sir? Yeah, this is quite historic. I mean, he's been here before, but I think. the relationship is at a new frontier and i think we can do much with it with okay much more to achieve uh, he, uh, the relationship has hit a new frontier uh, and we are seeing kids over here say no they don't want to come on tv uh, but uh, certainly they waited long enough uh, you don't see them patiently wait this long but over here they are waiting what about you uh, ex are you excited are you from dc we are from california so you You flew from West Coast to East Coast. Yes. Just for this event. Yes. Why? Yeah, because we are excited about how uh, Modi and Biden are meeting together, and this is something not happens every day, and uh, we are proud of our country. The proud of our country meaning India or our country meaning America? India, from where we are belong, and this country as well, where we are now citizen. Yeah. Okay.
And what about you? So we are from the Bay Area, California, and this is a, a very amazing moment because the state dinner is happening for the second time for an Indian Prime Minister. Uh, this pulls everybody into this uh, great city of Washington. Um, where we have been for the first time uh, in several years. We've been in U.S. since over 20 years now. Were you there in the so on the South Lawns when the ceremony? You were there as well? Yeah, we were there. there. So you actually traveled for the state visit? Correct, correct. And you've covered the state visit like us? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, it's not just us uh, who have traveled all the way uh, to the United States of America to cover Prime Minister Modi's visit. There are people over here who have traveled far and wide uh, to just come to uh, Washington DC or for that matter New York uh, only to attend and be a part of the celebrations. So that's a very different new. Uh, we have seen in the past as well uh, people traveling from within but this time around when I talk to people there are quite a few who have traveled from outside of the United States of America. One gentleman said Doha, there was another one who said London, uh, a, a group of... So alright, why, why are you here? Um, I'm honored to be here to see Modi. I mean, he's such an inspirational leader, especially compared to the leadership we have today. I mean, it's, it's amazing to hear him speak, and it's more importantly, it's, it's amazing to hear others speak about him, um, because they do so with extreme reverence, and that is very rare in America these days. Okay. Thank you. And did you, do you have friends, Indian friends, who told you that there's an event happening? How did you... Nanda. Okay. And he, you informed him about the event. Yes. And so course. he turned up. See, he wanted to meet Modi. I told him you have two choices. Either you go to India and meet him. I can take him to his house or office. Have one-on-one. -on -one, or you try here. There's a 50-50 mm -hmm. chance because there are 10,000 people ahead of you. You either get in a line here or let's go to India and we will make sure. Okay, there are a lot of people who say that one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one with Prime Minister Modi uh, might not always be uh, 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 actualized, uh, but the fact is that this talks about accessibility as well, that Prime Minister Narendra Modi does meet a lot of the people from the Indian diaspora. In fact, when he's meeting, he actually sometimes, uh, the people he knows, he inquires about them, or if the spouse is not present, he'd inquire why the spouse is not present. So another group of people over here. Let's just go across to. Um, so uh, you're here from DC or are you also traveling from someplace else? We're here from DC. We are We're from locals. DC. Okay. And uh, you wanted to be part of the event. Why so? What is it that you want uh, Prime Minister Modi to speak about? We want to speak about his vision. He already has done so much, but I'm sure he's thought of the next 10 years or 20 years hence, and it would be so nice to see what else he has in mind okay. to take everyone with I him. suppose the music has become very loud. If you could just push a little, uh, go, move a little away from the, from the uh, speakers, that should help. Now, so yeah, what were you saying? Uh, we being a scientist, and we see the progress the science and technology, how Modi ji is really envisioning the future of India, because science and technology is a very essential for the progress and economy. So Modi ji is doing fantastic things, and we wish he can do further. And looks like he's already having all this uh, signed up and uh, kind of a cooperation with the USA in science and technology that can bring uh, okay. the. Right. Uh, so it's not just the Indians over here. We've had a very important and a special guest uh, we spoke to a while ago, uh, Mary Milliband, a singer who ha who has been a part of a lot of state visits uh, with the White House. And today, this evening, she will be singing the Indian National Anthem uh, over here in the presence of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, a rare honor again. Uh, but it's not just the National Anthem. She sang for us. Listen in to this lovely aarti that she sang. Here is one of the chief guests uh, at the Indian Diaspora event, singer uh, Mary Miliband. Uh, thank you so much for joining thank us here on Namaste. India Today. Uh, what you are going to do is special. She is going to sing the national anthem, uh, the Indian national yes. anthem, in front of the entire audience. How excited are you uh, for being here? Well, first let me say hello to all the India Today audience. Namaste. I'm so excited to be here. It's such a great honor to uh, be a part of the Prime Minister's historic 
historic state arrival visit. I've had the great pleasure to sing our national anthem, the American anthem, for four consecutive U.S. presidents. But this is probably, I'll tell you, this is, this is icing on the cake to be here tonight to celebrate the prime minister and to raise the Indian national anthem. A, an anthem and a song that I personally have come to love and certainly that is very meaningful to, to all of your audience and so many. So, so Mary, I've, uh, I've learned from somebody that you really practice your Hindi. How did that come about? Well, I give a lot of credit to my great uh, Hindi coach, Dr. Moksraj, uh, who is based in Rajasthan. We met uh, during 2020 a year when we were preparing for some performances. And he's really, I tell you, my, my love for the language, my love for the culture, I give Dr. Moksraj a lot of credit. All yes. right. And what do you make of the buzz, the, the Indian community? Uh, have you ever seen a world leader come to the United States of America and get this kind of a welcome? Well, I've been fortunate to be involved in a lot of state arrival visits for multiple administrations, but I have to say this particular week for the Prime Minister has been truly uh, just beautiful and remarkable to see all of the love for the Prime Minister, certainly what he is, is doing in India, but certainly his leadership as it relates to the U.S.-India relation, uh, relationship. And so uh, I have certainly been honored to be a part of this week, and it's going to be a beautiful night in celebration of the Prime Minister and certainly of a country and of people that I love. All right. And you also performed yoga right beside the Prime Minister. Yes. yes. How was that? I, well, I was a little intimidated. I said, the Prime Minister is quite fit. And he so is. I, I need to go take a few more classes to probably keep up with the Prime Minister. But we had a wonderful time. It was such a historic day, certainly, for International Yoga Day. I want to thank the Ambassador for her wonderful invitation. And uh, it was a joy to share that moment with the Prime Minister. So you have traveled to India. I have. Tell your American friends, why should they be traveling to India, which is what Prime Minister Modi always asks. I tell you, India is such a special place. And I, I hope that every person watching that lives in the United States or across the world, go visit India. It, there's so much, uh, so much of who we all are in the context of humanity has origins in India. And so uh, my experience in India was just truly memorable. It was remarkable uh, to finally experience the culture, the people, the wonderful cuisine. Uh, and I tell you, and, and the patriotism. I loved being in India during the time of the anniversary because you saw uh, love of country and, and, and love for freedom fighters and the patriotism at its highest. And so I really enjoyed being there during that time. But you're also learning Indian music. Yes. So before I let you go, you will have to do a little bit for us and the audience watching back home. Okay, just a little bit. You're going to sing it with me, right? Uh, no, oh, I'm, I'm, no, not at all. I, so if you have Mary Milbant over here, it's, it's not possible for anyone no, else to really no, could, well, uh, sing along. Well, this song that you grew up learning as Learning child, and singing, so, but yeah. I'd suggest you sing okay, and, and let the world see how... Uh, Americans and people across the world are now taking to Indian classical or Indian bhajans for that matter. So, Om Jaya Jagadish Hare Swami Jaya Jagadish Hare Bhakta Jano Ke Sankata Dase Jano Ke Sankata Shana Me Dura Kare Om Jaya Jagadish Hare Om Jaya Jagadish Hare Beautiful. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you. All right, that was so lovely. Uh, Milben was going to be singing uh, right at this very uh, Ronald Reagan Center, the business center where Prime Minister Modi will be arriving. Uh, in fact, this is going to be the last and final uh, event, the last leg of the Prime Minister's state visit to the United States. Geeta Mohan is still with us. Geeta, uh, what a lovely uh, you know, voice that lady has, Milben, who's going to be singing. Tell us a little more about uh, this kind of honor uh, that, that Prime Minister Modi gets uh, with uh, performers. They're performing every day for, for all of the state events that have been organized. He has one performance to greet him. Uh, how, many of, how many world leaders really are awarded this kind of reception? Really? Well, well uh, the fact that she sang so beautifully, she insisted that I sing and I, I, I knew that that's not going to happen. Uh, but the fact that she sang that beautifully and is so inspired by India, uh, not new, uh, Nabila, it's not a new feature. Uh, there are many people who've been inspired for years.
for decades and have been learning Indian classical. Uh, but to see Mary Miliband sing, sing so nicely and so beautifully, I look forward to the national anthem that will be sung in the auditorium inside. Uh, but people over here, if you see, if I could ask Kirpal to show, uh, now this entire hall is filling up. Uh, there are a lot of people over here who uh, you can see have, have now joined in uh, over here. Let's, let's talk to a few youngsters. If you could get up and just uh, join me uh, in, in a conversation. How excited are you? Are you here with your parents? Come, come, on, come on in. You here with your parents? Yeah, here with my parents. Um, we're super, super excited. Just such a momentous occasion and we're here to commemorate it and be here in person for it. Are you from DC? I'm from Baltimore, originally from Boston. Okay, and not so far away. Uh, but uh, did you insist that you wanted to come over here? Did you ask your parents that I want to go and attend the event myself? Absolutely. They said they were going and I was like, Ma, you have to take me to this. And after a while they relented. So yeah, I'm here. My friend is here. Okay. Uh, where are you from? Um, I'm from Buffalo. Okay. And uh, are you, did you also insist? Did you tell him that uh, if you guys are going, that I also should be a part of the... Well, it was just kind of an invite. So I was like, yeah, sure, I'd love to go. Okay. And, yeah. and is this the first time uh, that you're looking at and seeing uh, the diaspora, the Indian community like this come together? Yeah, um, for me, yes, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's really nice to see everyone together here. And do you think do you think that this really helps this uh, a diaspora event the way it's done when Prime Minister Modi comes to show the India connect that you connect it to a land far far away? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because right now we're going from just India to like a global stage, so it's nice to see that everyone's connected at like such a big level, you know. I, uh, and do you do is is are there more conversations now with your friends in college and school about India? Are they more curious? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, we're not shy about it. We hype India up. We talk about how it's coming up globally. We talk about the economy, how India is doing so much for the environment, for climate change, how Modi's pushing that forward at the United Nations, at the G20 summit. So yeah, we we have conversations all the time at, at this point, and it's amazing to see India's come up and how the United States. Is is finally recognizing that. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Let's go forward and see there's a group of uh, people over here as well. Uh, you guys weren't here when we were talking to uh, to others over here, but uh, is, it a, is it a very important moment for all of you who are here? Absolutely. It is an, uh, like, you know, once in a lifetime event and a great moment and Modi Ji Ko Milna, it's a okay. great opportunity. Sure. Then why why aren't we showing some enthusiasm? Why is why is the spirit so low? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Modi, 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 Modi. Where are you from? I am from Virginia. Okay. And we are the one of the culture. This is a. So you're all traveling down to DC. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The four people is volunteers. Since two months, we are doing lot of work, and I mean the cultural, and she's also cultural. We are in main group also. We are, you know, doing, you uh, know, estimated how many uh, people the oh, band. So part of the organizers, yeah. the team and all, and organizing. And also, because that one side, one side is Bharat and the other side is American. Show the camera, show the camera. Okay, okay. 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 so they're all uh, making a lot of these little souvenirs and mementos that I'm sure a lot of people will carry home. Yeah. Uh, flags of India and America, uh, we've seen. Uh, through and through this state visit, not just from the street lining of flags, which is an honor accorded only to leaders who are given a state visit. Uh, from there on, I've seen India and America, the Indian Amer and American flags fly high together uh, on various, various occasions. Uh, how excited are you? Uh, you look quite uh, uh, well turned out for the event. So uh, is, is, is this a very important day for the Indian community? He does this very often, but is this a very significant, important day this time around? Absolutely. I don't think we have ever seen such kind of turnout from an Indian American community. I flew from Boston at 3 a.m. in the morning, leaving my kids. So it is definitely a, a big moment for all of us, for me, my, my family back in India, back here. So I think uh, we have never seen such a good turnout. We are dressed up like, you know, it's a wedding. And that just shows that how excited we are. I think we're just waiting for him to speak and share his heart with us. And I think we're all waiting for all that moment. But is there also a, the importance, the theme this time around is the contribution of Indian community to America, uh, to American society? 
society. Is that something that's very significant in terms of how uh, America is looking at the Indian community and how the Indian community has become a big part of the American society? Uh, so what, what I think is uh, Modi's visit uh, gives more uh, like opportunities for uh, Indian investors over here uh, that ties the bond more stronger. Uh, that is where I think people come together. Uh, we all are from different places. We may not know them before, but this is an opportunity for us to come together, discuss, talk. We may not even know other other, other person in the table, but this gives them a good opportunity, and uh, that gives more uh, importance for our community to grow in the okay. US. Um, again, a very important. Sir, do you have something to say? Sure, sure. As people migrated, so you'll have to start over. Oh, the movement started about 30 to 40 years ago, where all the bright Indians came to US. Now you see Microsoft, you see uh, uh, Alphabet, all these are being headed by Indians. So the stage has been set and it's kind of culminating with Modi coming on to take us to the next level. Okay. It, it's going to be a, a leapfrogging into the next century with Modi at the head. See, what they are saying, Nabila, is exactly what has happened over here. The tech handshake, uh, the CEO uh, roundtable or meetings that Prime Minister Modi held in itself uh, go uh, goes to show uh, the significance uh, the two administrations attached to how business communities, how the tech community has really brought India and the United States of America very, very close. Now, it is very important to see over here and note that uh, there are a lot of Indians in the Silicon Valley, in the technology and software sector. In fact, the leading uh, faces of uh, the tech industry in America are actually uh, Indian or software and uh, technology sector are actually of Indian origin. And that certainly uh, plays very well uh, into what India wants to achieve with America uh, on, the, on the tech front, on the software front. So this emphasis over here that people are talking about business community coming together in itself is uh, quite significant. Yet another table over here. Uh, we see uh, th this time around we're also seeing a lot of youngsters who have turned out. Um, you've, uh, are you from D.C.? Uh, no, I'm from New York. From New York. So you traveled all the way to D.C. for the event? Uh, yes, I did. Why? Um, I'm here with family, actually. <laughs> okay. And uh, any expectations from the event from Prime Minister Modi? Because the theme is and the thrust is Indian community. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, both countries, the United States and India, are positioned in a, in a global stage where a strategic partnership would be very beneficial for both countries. So I'm really glad that this is happening and everyone in both countries is very, they're very excited. Okay. So out here at the Reagan Center, uh, we have a lot of people who have come and are waiting patiently for the that event very due to start. Address. But the main address is going to happen in the auditorium, and there are going to be performances as well, Nabila. All right. What time is the event due to start, uh, Geeta? And is is this another round of talk that Prime Minister will be delivering? Well, uh, he will certainly be addressing uh, the gathering over here. It is uh, it is to start around. It was to start around 7 p.m., uh, but uh, it has, it is yet to begin. Uh, we know that the SPG officials had gone in, and there was a security drill, and they had exactly told. There you go. You get energized. He is such a great personality that he has changed my life personally because after he getting elected for the Prime Minister, I entered into the uh, social service. And I am getting a chance to serve my Matrubhumi and Karmabhumi. So I have been doing a lot of volunteers. I am grateful to my wife. She takes care of kids and I do a lot of volunteering. Danyawad Modi ji, you are Karma Yogi. We are proud of you. Long live for 100 years. We are always there for you, Modi ji. We, are, we, want, we want you again to be our Motherlands PM in 2024. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> See, a lot of 
Right. A lot of people have been saying yeah, that. We yes. came all the way from California. California. We are supporters of Modi. I, we are both from Assam. Yeah. yeah. We are from Assam. Yeah. yeah. From yeah. Das, Maria, and it's a pride for us to be here right and hearing Modi like, speak. Like, yeah. He has taken this India American. Uh, Nabila, that's also very interesting. The moment they hear that the prime minister is coming or the event is going to begin, you'll see uh, 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 the people over here, some of them start chanting uh, Modi, Modi, or whatever in terms of uh, him. Indo-US ties. So, uh, an interesting moment, uh, a historic moment only for the fact that this was a state visit and Prime Minister right. Narendra Modi uh, had a very important engagement apart from the fact that yes, he reserves the, last, the, the best for the last which is the Indian diaspora. That is something very close to his heart and something that he has made a part of every foreign tour that he, uh, that he embarks upon, yeah. especially where there are Indian community involved. So, well, uh, Prime Minister has just uh, addressed another round of the Indian diaspora a little earlier to this uh, at the Kennedy Center where uh, there were a good bunch of people to hear him speak and this is exactly what his talk was all about, a very spirited one uh, speaking on India's roadmap and its journey to success. We are ease of living. दस साल में भारत जैसा भी जॉन ने कहा दुनिया की दसवें नंबर की इकोनॉमी से पांचवें नंबर की इकोनॉमी बन गया है कोरोना काल में जिस तरह भारत ने इस महामारी का मुकाबला किया वो भारत के सामर्थ्य को दिखाता है आप जानते हैं कि आज पोस्ट पैंडेमिक वर्ल्ड में इकोनॉमी इन्फ्लेशन और सप्लाई चेन क्या हालत है इन सब के बीच भारत आज सेवन परसेंट से अधिक से भी ग्रोथ लेकर आगे बढ़ रहा है आज भारत में रिफॉर्म्स का एक अभूतपूर्व दौर चल रहा है इकोनॉमिक वर्ल्ड के आप लोग जानते हैं कि हाई ग्रोथ लो इन्फ्लेशन का कॉम्बिनेशन आसान नहीं है लेकिन आज भारत ये भी करके दिखा रहा है हम फिजिकल डेफिसिट को नियंत्रित रखते हुए कैपेक्स में लगातार वृद्धि कर रहे हैं हमारा एक्सपोर्ट बढ़ रहा है फॉरेस्ट बढ़ रहा है और एफडीआई का नया रिकॉर्ड बनता चला जा रहा है पिछले दो ढाई साल में ही अमेरिकी कंपनियों ने 16 बिलियन डॉलर से ज्यादा भारत में निवेश किए हैं भारत की सफल All right, that's uh, Prime Minister Modi as uh, as he spoke at the Kennedy Center. But this is uh, Ronald Reagan Center that's all readied for Prime Minister Modi to arrive. This is a, a, a sought-after event, invite-only, a good bunch of Indian Indians, Indian Americans who've landed up at that event inside that hall. There are a lot more people who are waiting outside the auditorium. Not everyone gets an entry here. Uh, Geeta Mohan joins us right from that venue. Geeta, uh, give us give us a sense of what's going to be uh, on schedule today at this very centre, the Ronald Reagan Centre. What is expected? Prime Minister is going to have another speech. He's going to be delivering another talk uh, right at the fag end of his tour. Well, uh, Nabila, it is a very uh, important moment. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has indeed arrived. And, uh, and uh, Prime Minister Modi has arrived. Uh, he is inside the auditorium, we are being told. And uh, 
there are photographs that are being taken with the volunteers. So in a very systematic way, what is happening is uh, they are lining up, queuing up and taking photographs with the Prime Minister. That's happening inside the auditorium. So we are being told that the Prime Minister has arrived uh, and the security drill is over. Uh, there was an, uh, the, they were told exactly where to stand, when to stand and how to. So all that was, uh, is taking place right now. Uh, the screen over here shows nothing is because there were lovely performances taking place ahead of Prime Minister Modi's visit, uh, 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 his, his entry into the uh, auditorium. And as soon as Prime Minister Modi uh, entered the centre, the Ronald Reagan centre, uh, the live feed from uh, inside the auditorium has stopped. If I could ask your pal to just show, that's the screen uh, where these people over here who have been uh, who have been now uh, made to sit in the atrium area. Area, uh, are, are, are going to watch Prime Minister Modi uh, from. So uh, the Indian Premier is at the Ronald Reagan Centre and he is now interacting with the Indian diaspora inside, particularly those who are involved in organising of this event. Now uh, volunteers, he always does that, takes uh, photographs. So that photograph uh, uh, session is taking place right now. It's underway. And in some time from now, you'll see uh, the yeah. entire event begin. Uh, get, give us some voices, bring us uh, a sense of what's expected, uh, Geeta. You know, uh, this is... Th this very visit of the Prime Minister is a state visit, it's an official one. So all his other visits to the United States, so far we've seen him addressing the diaspora events which was independently organized by the Indian community there. Uh, but, uh, but this comes as a state visit and that attaches a lot more significance when it comes to both uh, the ties between the, both, uh, the two nations. Also given a level up for the Indian community there, isn't it? Uh, we heard the voices, we'd like to hear more on how they feel uh, Modi's visit this time, a state visit, a formal visit here, really uh, pushes their image or how does it really build their image as an Indian community in the United States? Well, that's right, uh, uh, Nabila. Like we, we have been speaking to um, various people behind me uh, and interacting with them. In some time from now, we will go back to them. But the fact is that uh, uh, it is an important and a very significant uh, evening uh, for the diaspora. They also not only uh, uh, there was a lot of planning involved, there always is. Uh, but uh, the fact that there are so many people who volunteered to, uh, to work on the event from various parts of the country and then the fact that they actually traveled and have stayed on for the past three days uh, most of them will be going back over the weekend in itself goes to show the dedication that you see now of the Indian community towards uh, a, a, a diaspora event uh, we do know that the uh, previous prime ministers also uh, have interacted with the diaspora and the community but they always used to be very small in number uh, 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 very important interaction and, ex uh, and exchanges but nonetheless very small uh, the scale and the magnitude of uh, of events that are held now uh, certainly has changed the way uh, the Indian community particularly the younger generation you know Nabila the second and third generation of Indian Americans uh, were not this connected as connected as you see some of the young over here are. Uh, they're very connected. They, uh, they want to talk about India, like one of the youngsters was saying. Uh, they uh, hype up India. They talk about the contribution India makes. And that change you're seeing in uh, the younger lot. So you've been uh, waiting patiently to listen to the Prime Minister. How long have you been here? And did you have to wait, a lo uh, wait uh, in the queue a long time? Yes, I've been here since 2 o'clock. Oh, since 2 p.m. you've been yes. uh, outside and then uh, to come here to be the first one to come in? Yes, and I was here yesterday helping them, you know, putting all the flyers and all that. So uh, it's been three, four days uh, I've been coming here and being a volunteer. And are you from uh, D.C.? No, no, I'm from Dallas, Texas. So you've, you've also traveled all the way from Texas only for the diaspora event? Only, only for this, only to support Mr. Modi. Okay, and uh, did you also get to go take a photograph, so on and so forth, with the yes, Indian Premier? I just did. Okay, then to explain. Will you please stand up, sir? Explain to us what happened inside, because we have no visuals, and we don't have any. Please come on in, sir. Uh, we have no ex uh, visuals, and uh, we don't know exactly what happened. So, what is happening inside right now? Well, there are. They have uh, eight booths for mm -hmm. for the pictures, 
and uh, there are like 30 people uh, in one group and Modi ji would go there, he would stand there for a few seconds, no phones allowed, nothing, and then people, uh, I mean... So no selfies, no phones, the photographs will be shared yes. later. So basically I was the part of volunteer team, so we had set up, we had different photo booths, and we had group of 30 people on each booth. So as uh, PMK... So for security reasons, the people who have been selected to have a photo, to get themselves photographed with the Prime Minister were already placed before. and then the, before the Prime Minister yeah. arrived. So there was a lot of um, things that we done on the background, you know, we got people out in timely manner, they were stand, like standard at the backdrop and then PM came in, he stopped by, he took the picture, he didn't shake anybody's hand, no selfies allowed, no cell phone allowed, so it was, it was very nice and he was very kind, he was talking to people. Even he said Jai Shri Krishna. To whom? To me. Oh, wow. I don't know, he probably figured it out. I'm a Gujarati, so okay. it was fun. And uh, he, did he speak uh, to all of them? or he, the... he was saying at least hello, kaise ho, Jai Hind. Matlab, you know, he was he was conversing with every every single namaste person. Like namaste like that. Everybody, namaste. That, that's the pose he gave. Okay, so the, there you go, Dabila. The Prime Minister is here and uh, the live streaming is, has been cut off for now, which means that the photo sessions are taking place. This is, uh, this is a private and a personal moment for the people inside, uh, n not for anybody to see how it is done, what is happening, uh, how, were, how were the photographs taken, uh, because it is in a very systematic manner it is, uh, that it is done. If you look at 30 people standing in, uh, in eight, booths separately waiting for the premier it might look odd but imagine if uh, if you were to call them all on a stage every now and again uh, after a, a one batch and then the next it would have wasted a lot of time it would be time consuming so this is a more efficient way of doing it because people who volunteer also want to remember it with a photograph or with the prime minister uh, so this is prime minister modi taking that time out to ensure and this is him uh, in all probability thanking the volunteers with a photograph uh, with him so uh, so so the enthusiasm continues and remains uh, and now you see the 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 the, the atrium over here filled uh, almost uh, filled up and uh, the media contingent also not allowed into the auditorium so you can see the entire media contingent right here uh, waiting to listen to the prime minister and uh, uh, the expectation is that he is going to talk about the contribution the Indian community makes. So very interesting uh, to see how uh, people have turned up from various parts of America uh, just to listen to Prime Minister Modi. And not just that, the fact that he, uh, Prime Minister Modi, the fact that Prime Minister Modi uh, does inspire so many people to uh, uh, to to come over here and. Uh, and uh, help volunteer uh, and uh, I'll, I'll just ask a few people to come across and uh, join me uh, to talk about uh, the importance and the significance uh, thank you so much for joining me if you could just tell me uh, how uh, how important is it uh, for Prime Minister Narendra Modi, for any Indian Prime Minister to actually come and engage the Indian diaspora and the Indian community please allow the lady also to join us Yeah. It's very important. Uh, I, I think this speaks about the contributions and importance of Indian American community. And the Prime Minister has talked about it, and Indian uh, U.S. President has talked about it. Uh, I think it's really a tribute. You see, today is a celebration of event for Indian Americans. They have really earned it. The contributions they have made in almost every field within mm -hmm. U.S. society is really wonderful. Mm -hmm. And we are here to celebrate mm -hmm. Prime Minister's visit and really mm -hmm. contribute to contributions of Indian Americans to, to the to the country, we are okay. really proud. And you, ma'am, you've come all beautifully turned out uh, for for the event. Yes. Uh, how excited are you? Very excited. This shows we came at the, uh, for this event. We had been to uh, PM's uh, White House event yesterday. We spent the whole day there. We are very excited, and I'm very excited. He's laying a lot of emphasis on science and technology. Uh, cutting-edge technology which will uh, put uh, India on a global scale. Okay. And you, sir? Uh, I came from Houston, Texas, and we came here yesterday, and we were at the historical official visit of Prem Modi, and you can see the energy, the vibe. Yes, I you can, can see, can see, see the energy and the vibe. Right. So this has given this Indian diaspora, Mr. PM Modi has given us a face, I will say. 
the Indian diaspora was always there, but we never had that visibility. So I'll say PM Modi has given us that face, that strength, and the way that India has grown its stature for the past decade, that's commendable. So. Well, India, the Indian community is a huge uh, community in America, but like this gentleman just said, uh, the, the, the Indian diaspora events and the way uh, the Indian community is projected by the Indian Premier has given the Indian community a face. Uh, we are seeing a lot of them enjoy with a lot of music and we'll try getting them on over here as well. Uh, we'll get the gentleman over there who actually, I'll ask Kirpal to stay on over here and see if I can get uh, some of them, some of the gentlemen over there uh, to come uh, and join us. If you could join us with the with the song, आप वहाँ पे आ जाइए हमारे पास और थोड़ा दो सारे और लोगों को बुला लीजिए। उनको भी बुला लीजिए। चलिए, there's a center table over here and. موسیقی جس کا مجھے تھا انتظار جس کے لیے ہے دل بے قرار وہ گھڑی آگئی آگئی موڈی جی اب پدارے آپ پر موڈی جی آپ کا انتظار ہے دانس بھی کرو دانس بھی کرو بلکل ہاں جگہ دیجئے ہاں ٹیبل اس طرف کریے اور دانس کریے چلے چلے یس اس بھی مہمہ جو ہمارا ہوتا ہے وہ جان سے پیارا ہوتا ہے زیادہ کی نہیں لالچ ہم کو تھوڑے میں گزارا ہوتا ہے تھوڑے میں گزارا ہوتا ہے بچوں کے لیے جو دھرتی ماں صدیوں سے سبھی کچھ کہتی ہے ہم اس دیش کے واسی ہیں جس دیش میں I have a message. Yes. So, <clears throat> yeah, so Prime Minister Modi ji from NRI community, we are requesting you to consider dual citizenship for NRIs. So that way, oh yeah, I spoke to him 20 minutes on this topic. Yes. Where inside? Yeah. Okay. We are encouraging. Yeah, yeah. So because... See, what's happening is now a lot of people are coming from India to America, right? Hindi chahiye or English? No, no, no. So, jada log bharat se yaan pe aare hai na? So, and we are settling down. Now, Prime Minister Modi ji ne bata hai ki more than 4 million people are American citizens. So, once you got age, so you have to go and settle down back bharat. Where are the ladies who were there outside Hotel Villard? Are they not there? Hi! Oh, wow. You're from Manipur? Yes. I'm Rashri Kaisham. I'm from Manipur. I'm from the Maitai community in Manipur. Uh, first of all, uh, I welcome our Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji in the United States. So happy, excited. But at the same time, Manipur is burning and we have lots of conflicts going on. I understand the Prime Minister Ji is helping, but I would request for more help so that he can accelerate the peace. That's all. Thank you so much. That's, that's a very important message and appeal that uh, Manipur is burning and that Prime Minister Modi is doing a lot, but he needs to do more. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Oh, you're outstanding. I think you're a, you're a good bridge of, of uh, projecting what's really going on over here. What network are you from? Thank you. India. Oh, good, good luck. Good luck. Good luck.
So here there's a, a round table of people trying to get all the music in and I suppose now what we're looking at all these uh, uh, journalists also have turned out to this table because everybody's having fun over here uh, and uh, the music and entertainment continues only why is because the screen is shut all the entertainment that was to take place is not taking place where are the ladies I'm still waiting for them call them so so let's just go across to a few more people and see so we've almost spoken to uh, everybody over here uh, but there are some new faces were you inside were you volunteering did you get a photograph with the Prime Minister we get a chance to get a photograph with the Prime Minister okay all right and uh, you volunteered over here for how many days uh, for just for today just for today what about you uh, I mean, uh, you have volunteered. Yes, I know. I know. I I'm did, a... and I was just working behind the scene last three, four days. Okay, and you? Yes, I also volunteered, and uh, I came from Boston. My wife, uh, she came from Pittsburgh, and we are enjoying volunteering a lot. Seva. Okay, and did you get a photograph as well? Yes, of course, we got a photograph, and we are we are extremely excited about that. What do you make of it? Is it a thank you gesture by the Prime Minister for all of the people uh, who actually came out and volunteered? Yes, of course, and uh, actually he is so grateful that, you know, it, it is not an easy task to take photograph with about 900 people today, and you can see he is, like, taking the photograph now. And I often wonder what is the source of his energy, because he, uh, since he came in the United States, continuously program. And my wife and I were talking, probably he is sleeping, like, only 3-4 hours a day, and that's why we, had a, we have a great respect for our PM. Okay. Um, uh, somebody who with a lot of energy, uh, uh, tirelessly working uh, and ensuring that, uh, that he delivers on the India-US front. There have been a lot of deliverables on the India-US front when it comes to real key outcomes. But when it comes to the other aspect of uh, the culture, art and diaspora that connects the two, uh, the two worlds, it is very important. It is significant to, in, to know that they are an important factor in the Indo-US ties. They have done a lot and today you see a lot from the Indian community. See, we have the Indian media everywhere. Um, all of them interested in uh, is this table going to sing again because uh, I've been waiting to hear from you guys as well so are you going to do some nice number for us also for India Today and Archita Sure Why the good you feel like Modi Ji to inspire Kare One day One day Vande Mataram 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 Vande So, Nabila, you see the excitement over here. Uh, it continues and it will continue till Prime Minister Narendra Modi starts speaking within, in the auditorium.
Here is one of the chief guests uh, at the Indian Diaspora event, singer uh, Mary Miliband. Uh, thank you so much for joining thank us here on Namaste. India Today. Uh, what you are going to do is special. She is going to sing the national anthem, uh, the Indian national yes. anthem, in front of the entire audience. How excited are you uh, for being here? Well, first let me say hello to all the India Today audience. Namaste. I'm so excited to be here. It's such a great honor to uh, be a part of the Prime Minister's historic state arrival visit. I've had the great pleasure to sing our national anthem, the American anthem, for four consecutive U.S. presidents. But this is probably, I'll tell you, this is, this is icing on the cake to be here tonight to celebrate the Prime Minister and to raise the Indian national anthem. A, an anthem and a song that I personally have come to love and certainly that is very meaningful to, to all of your audience and so many. So, so Mary, I've, uh, I've learned from somebody that you really practiced your Hindi. How did that come about? Well, I give a lot of credit to my great uh, Hindi coach, Dr. Mok who is based in Rajasthan. We met uh, during 2020 a year when we were preparing for some performances and he's really, I tell you, my, my love for the language, my love for the culture, I give Dr. Moksharaj a lot of credit. Yes. All right. And what do you make of the buzz, the, the Indian community? Uh, have you ever seen a world leader come to the United States of America and get this kind of a welcome? Well, I've been fortunate to be involved in a lot of state arrival visits for multiple administrations, but I have to say this particular week for the partnership with the U.S. that can change the world, uh, that can also change the citizens' lives in India and in the U.S. And he did that with President Biden. I think they had seven different meetings in the last three or four days. The other takeaway was he hasn't changed in terms of his enthusiasm, his ability to use technology to change the world, and he always does it with a focus on inclusiveness. I believe he's one of the top three leaders I've ever met in my life. You already know this. I'm the biggest bull on India, the biggest optimist, and I believe firmly in Prime Minister uh, Modi's vision. So you just look at this and you realize the energy that's going on in terms of how America thinks about the Prime Minister and how he has an ability to gain people's trust based on the track record and forming relationships that probably are his strongest strength is people trust him and they are comfortable in agreeing at times and occasionally disagreeing. Uh, what should be the focus areas for um, India and U.S. because they are gaining strength, to strength? Yes. Uh, what should be the future course of action according to you? How do you... Ah, uh -huh. well, first of all, there are a number of people that are spending a huge amount of time looking at areas that India and the U.S. should work together on. And that's really a sign of strength because when President Biden and uh, Prime Minister Modi assigned their teams, which they've been working on this for a year, and then they say, here are all the areas that we can work together on. They talked at this session about defense. They talked about technology, uh, both uh, critical technology and emerging technology. They talked about how do we change the world together, but also how do we build the benefit to every citizen in India and in the U.S. Now, in terms of what's possible, you haven't seen anything yet. And you really think about what we could do together. Between the U.S. and India, we could innovate at a speed no other countries in the world can. Not just for the benefit of our countries, but for the benefit of the world as well. We can combine uh, a Silicon Valley capability with literally a Bangalore capability with startups. All right, that's a former CEO of Cisco Systems. Uh, the business leaders in the United States who have flocked to meet Prime Minister Modi, a lot of them speaking on Prime Minister Modi's vision on basically India's uh, potential to boom in the years to come. The United States Vice President a little earlier today had hosted this luncheon for Prime Minister Narendra Modi where they raised a toast uh, to India and the United States, the ties and the friendship. Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi was accompanied by Anthony Blinken as well as Kamala Harris. They spoke about their love for yoga, for samosa, democratic values. In attendance were also Indra Nui and Jampa Lahiri, among many others. Let's take a look. Make those hopes a reality. Cheers. King of glasses, more than a simple gesture. Uh, whether we call it the American dream, whether we call it the Indian dream, our people believe profoundly in opportunity. That no matter who we are or where we come from, we can make something more of ourselves. Their toast embodied the diplomatic triumph of unity and progress. 
Indian American author Jhumpa Nehru, American actress Mindy Kaling of Indian descent, Indian singer Diljit Dosanjh debuting at the Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival this year. The hall embraced the Indianness flourishing across the United States. Here in the United States, India is part of our daily lives. We enjoy uh, Jhumpa Lahiri's novels over samosas. <laughs> we laugh at the comedies of Mindy Kaling. We dance to the beats of Diljit at Coachella. And yes, Mr. Prime Minister, and I can say this from personal experience, we keep ourselves more or less fit and healthy doing yoga. <laughs> hosted by the US State Department in honor of Prime Minister Narendra Modi made a profound affirmation of interconnectedness. The historic number of members of the United States Congress with Indian heritage. Representatives Ami Bera, if you're here please stand. Pramila <laughs> Jayapal. And Sri The words of US Vice President Kamala Harris carry the essence of her cherished childhood memories of southern India, invoking her ancestral roots with passion and pride. Every morning consisted of taking long walks on the beach with his retired buddies. I remember them talking about the importance of fighting corruption and fighting for equality. Throughout these walks, I recall my grandfather teaching me lessons about not just what it means to have a democracy, but to keep a democracy. The Prime Minister thanked the hosts for their gracious reception. Uprashpati Kamala Harris और सेक्रेटरी ब्लिंकन का इस भव्य स्वागत के लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करता हूं पिछले तीन दिनों में मैंने अनेक बैठकों में हिस्सा लिया कई विषयों पर चर्चा की इन सभी बैठकों में एक चीज कॉमन थी सब एक मत थे कि भारत और अमेरिका के लोगों के बीच मित्रता एवं सहयोग और गहरा होना चाहिए टैलेंट टेक्नोलॉजी एंड डिप्लोमेसी केम टुगेदर अर्लियर इन द डे द प्राइम मिनिस्टर एंड प्रेसिडेंट जो बाइडेन मेट टॉप सीईओ ऑफ द यूएस एंड इंडिया एट द व्हाइट हाउस It was an honor to meet Prime Minister Modi during a historic visit uh, to the U.S. Uh, the excitement here, uh, you know, in terms of seeing the progress India has made, particularly around the vision of digital India and the economic opportunity. I had a very good and productive conversation with Prime Minister Modi. I think we share a number of goals together in India. Um, very interested in helping create more jobs. <laughs> the Prime Minister's passion for India's development, the, the welcome mat to business and investment and opportunity is, I think, obvious not just to me, but to pretty much everybody who has interacted uh, with him. Microsoft's Satya Nadella, Google's Sundar Pichai, NASA astronaut Sunita Williams, Mahindra Group Chairman Anand Mahindra, Reliance Industries, Mukesh Ambani and several others present. हम नई और उभरती टेक्नोलॉजी के क्षेत्र में नए विश्वास के साथ काम कर रहे हैं प्रेसिडेंट बाइडेन Just coming in from Washington D.C.'s Ronald Reagan Center, Prime Minister Modi will be addressing uh, the crowds here. This is his last, final leg of this state visit to the United States. It's been quite a special one. 
This is the last Indian diaspora event. And Prime Minister Modi somehow manages to engage the crowd and how the Indian community abroad, the kind of craze that they've, they've displayed for Prime Minister, we've captured that on cameras through the hours of our coverage here. We've shown you Geeta Mohan has been bringing to you the kind of craze and love, admiration um, that, that they have for the Prime Minister. And of course, uh, for the country, for the Prime Minister, for them, this is the India moment a way to bind um, Indians with the United States, basically to uh, to credit all that work that they've put in, which they went in uh, to, to make an, uh, an American dream. Prime Minister Modi spins it around to say that this is in fact an Indian dream of, of people uh, in India sharing values and hard work in countries that they finally decide to settle in. So this is basically the India's dream to take India's knowledge and ethics and ethos and work and build uh, wherever they go. Geeta Mohan is in fact right there, Ronald Regan Center. She's right outside speaking with a bunch of the Indian community members who uh, managed to arrive. Geeta, could I ask you what's really the way uh, to get to this uh, event, to get to be part of this sought after Indian diaspora meet? How many people are allowed inside? Is it a ticketed event, uh, invite only event? Give us some clarity because we know people all have right, driven, have flown down from far and wide. Uh, just a yeah. few moments. Geeta, if you can hear me. All right, we seem to have lost a connection. We're going to try and patch her. Uh, but we heard how Geeta speaking to a bunch of people there who came in from Chicago, from Virginia. Uh, uh, some of them, in fact, one of them I heard came in from London, all the way flew down uh, to attend this event. All right, Modi on stage there. I'm going to get you that, that background audio. So you hear the cheers and the warmth he receives. to sing the Indian American Nas Indian National Anthem. Prime Minister Modi, what an honor it is to be here this evening to sing the Indian National Anthem for your official state arrival visit. An honor to be here. Yeah.
We would now like to welcome young Ria Bavar. She's 16 years old and crowned Miss India Teen New Jersey, and she will be performing the American National Anthem. Please remain standing. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars Namaste. आप लोगों ने इस हॉल में एक प्रकार से भारत का फुल मैप बना दिया है हिंदुस्तान के हर कोने के लोग यहां नजर आ रहे हैं आप यहां दूर दूर से आए हैं ऐसा लग रहा है जैसे मिनी इंडिया उमड़ा है अमेरिका में एक भारत श्रेष्ठ भारत की इतनी सुंदर तस्वीर दिखाने के लिए मैं आप सबको हृदय से बहुत बहुत बधाई देता हूं अभिनंदन करता हूं साथियों यहां अमेरिका में मुझे जितना प्यार जितना स्नेह मिल रहा है वाकई अद्भुत है और इसका श्रेय यहां अमेरिका में आपकी मेहनत आपके व्यवहार अमेरिका के विकास में आपके योगदान को जाता है मैं अमेरिका में रहने वाली मां भारती की हर संतान का अभिनंदन करता हूं मैं प्रेसिडेंट बाइडेन का भी आभारी हूं बीते तीन दिनों में लगातार हम साथ रहे बहुत सारे विषयों पर हमारी खुलकर के बातचीत हुई 
और मैं अनुभव से कहता हूं वे सुलझे हुए अनुभवी नेता है भारत अमेरिका पार्टनरशिप को एक नई ऊंचाई पर ले जाने वाले व्यक्तिगत रूप से उनका बहुत प्रयास रहा है और मैं सार्वजनिक रूप से उनके इस प्रयासों की सराहना करता हूं साथियों इन तीन दिनों में भारत और अमेरिका के पारस्परिक रिश्तों की एक नई और गौरवशाली यात्रा प्रारंभ हुई है ये नई यात्रा ग्लोबल स्ट्रेटेजिक इश्यूज पर हमारे कन्वर्जेंस की है ये नई यात्रा मेक इन इंडिया मेक फॉर द वर्ल्ड उसको लेकर हमारे को ऑपरेशन की है टेक्नोलॉजी ट्रांसफर और मैन्युफैक्चरिंग में हमारा आपसी सहयोग हो या फिर इंडस्ट्रियल सप्लाई चेन में बढ़ता तालमेल दोनों देश एक बेहतर भविष्य की ओर मजबूत कदम उठा रहे हैं जनरल इलेक्ट्रिक कंपनी का भारत में फाइटर प्लेन के इंजन बनाने का फैसला भारत के डिफेंस सेक्टर के लिए ये मिल का पत्थर साबित होगा ये समझौता करके अमेरिका सिर्फ टेक्नोलॉजी ही शेयर नहीं करेगा बल्कि म्यूचुअल ट्रस्ट को भी शेयर करेगा डिफेंस इंडस्ट्रियल कोऑपरेशन रोडमैप से दोनों देशों के बीच पार्टनरशिप और गहरी होने वाली है मैं इस यात्रा के दौरान माइक्रोन गूगल एप्लाइड मटेरियल जैसी दिग्गज कंपनियों ने भी भारत में बड़े इन्वेस्टमेंट की घोषणा की है माइक्रोन द्वारा सेमीकंडक्टर सेक्टर में 2.5 बिलियन डॉलर्स का इन्वेस्टमेंट भारत को वर्ल्ड सेमीकंडक्टर चेन से जोड़ने वाला है एप्लाइड मटेरियल्स द्वारा भारत में सेमीकंडक्टर इक्विपमेंट के लिए 400 मिलियन डॉलर्स का निवेश भारत में सेमीकंडक्टर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग का इकोसिस्टम बनाने में मदद करेगा और गूगल भी अब भारत में अपना ग्लोबल फिनटेक सेंटर खोलने जा रहा है बोइंग 
ने भी भारत में हंड्रेड बिलियन डॉलर्स के निवेश का ऐलान किया है एमआरओ फैसिलिटी हो पायलट्स की ट्रेनिंग का प्रोग्राम हो बोइंग कंपनी इस दिशा में भी अपना सहयोग बढ़ाएगी ये सारे समझौते ये सारी घोषणाएं भारत में इन्वेस्टमेंट के साथ साथ जॉब क्रिएशन रोजगार हाई टेक्नोलॉजी मैन्युफैक्चरिंग और इनोवेशन को बढ़ावा देगी साथियों भारत अमेरिका ने जो आर्टिमिस अकॉर्ड साइन किया है वो अंतरिक्ष में बहुत सारी संभावनाओं के द्वार खोलने जा रहा है नासा का आर्टिमिस प्रोग्राम मून से लेकर मंगल तक के मिशन के लिए अपने आप में बहुत बड़ा है इस प्रोग्राम से भारत जुड़ेगा तो दोनों ही देशों को फायदा होगा नासा के साथ मिलकर स्पेस में भारतीय एस्ट्रोनॉट भेजने को लेकर भी बात आगे बढ़ी है इंटरनेशनल स्पेस स्टेशन में भेजने के लिए नासा द्वारा भारतीय एस्ट्रोनेट्स को एडवांस ट्रेनिंग भी दी जाएगी अब इसलिए मैंने कल कहा स्काई इज नॉट द लिमिट साथियों ये सारे समझौते ये एग्रीमेंट्स सिर्फ कुछ नीतियों को आगे बढ़ाना मात्र नहीं है ये भारत अमेरिका के करोड़ों लोगों के भाग्य को नई ऊंचाई देने का काम हुआ है टुगेदर वी आर नॉट जस्ट फॉर्मिंग पॉलिसीज एंड एग्रीमेंट्स वी आर शेपिंग लाइव्स ड्रीम्स एंड डेस्टिनीज साथियों आप में से बहुत सारे लोग यहां बरसों से अमेरिका में रह रहे हैं यहां आप अपने जीवन में अपनी दिनचर्या में व्यस्त रहते हैं लेकिन मैं ये भी जानता हूं कि आपका मन आपका दिल भारत में भी लगा रहता है और इसलिए आपकी सहूलियत ये भी भारत की प्राथमिकता है आपकी जरूरतों को देखते हुए भारत इस साल सीएटल में एक नया कॉन्सुलेट खोलने जा रहा है इतना ही नहीं इसके अलावा भी अमेरिका के दो और शहरों में भारतीय कॉन्सुलेट खोले जाएंगे अब मैं जानता हूं आपकी चिट्ठियां शुरू हो जाएगी हमारे यहां हो हमारे यहां हो <laughs> देखिए शुरू हो गया <laughs> आप लोग पक्का कर लीजिए <laughs> और और एक बात 
अच्छा ये भी है कि अब अहमदाबाद और बेंगलुरु में भी अमेरिका के नए कॉन्सुलेट खुलने जा रहे हैं साथियों आप में से बहुत से लोगों की एच वन बी वीजा के रिन्यू को लेकर भी लंबे अरसे से एक डिमांड थी अब ये निर्णय लिया गया है कि एच वन बी वीजा को रिन्यू करने के लिए आपको अमेरिका से बाहर नहीं जाना पड़ेगा अमेरिका में रहते हुए ही अब ये वीजा रिन्यू हो जाएगा इसके लिए इस साल एक पायलट प्रोजेक्ट शुरू किया जाएगा इसका बहुत बड़ा फायदा हमारे आईटी प्रोफेशनल्स को भी होने वाला है इस फैसले के जो भी अनुभव होंगे उसे देखते हुए यही व्यवस्था भविष्य में एल कैटेगरी वीजा के लिए भी हो सकती है साथियों आप भारत की हर उपलब्धि से खुश होते हैं उसे सेलिब्रेट करते हैं आप गर्व करते हैं जब दुनिया के इतने सारे देश यूएन हेडक्वार्टर पर योग दिवस के लिए जुटते हैं आप गर्व करते हैं जब यहां के सुपरमार्केट में मेड इन इंडिया प्रोडक्ट दिखता है आप गर्व करते हैं जब भारत के टैलेंट को दुनिया की बड़ी बड़ी कंपनियों को नेतृत्व देते देखते हैं और आप गर्व करते हैं जब नाटू नाटू की धुन पर पूरी दुनिया थिरकने लगती है और आज आप ये भी देखकर गर्व से भरे हुए हैं कैसे भारत का सामर्थ्य आज पूरे विश्व के विकास को दिशा दे रहा है आज भारत दुनिया के उन देशों में से एक है जहां अर्थव्यवस्था इतनी तेजी से आगे बढ़ रही है पूरी दुनिया की नजर आपके भारत पर है आप भी सोच रहे होंगे आखिर ये कैसे हो रहा है किसने किया है साथियों ये मैंने नहीं किया है ये मोदी ने नहीं किया है 
भारत में हो रही इस प्रगति का सबसे बड़ा कारण है भारत का आत्मविश्वास एक सौ चालीस करोड़ भारतवासियों का आत्मविश्वास सैकड़ों वर्षों की गुलामी ने ये आत्मविश्वास हमसे छीन लिया था जो नया भारत हमारे सामने है उसमें वो आत्मविश्वास लौट आया है ये वो भारत है जिसे अपना रास्ता पता है दिशा पता है ये वो भारत है जिसे अपने निर्णयों अपने संकल्पों पर कोई कंफ्यूजन नहीं है ये वो भारत है जो अपने पोटेंशियल को परफॉर्मेंस में बदल रहा है साथियों आज नए भारत की नई ग्रोथ स्टोरी हमारे सैकड़ों टीयर टू टीयर थ्री शहरों में लिखी जा रही है छोटे छोटे शहरों में संभव है कि आप भी कई साथी शायद ऐसे ही छोटे स्थान से ऐसे ही छोटे शहर से यहां आए होंगे वहां का बदलता हुआ रूप आपको पता चलता होगा आज जब आप अपने परिजनों को फोन करते हैं तो उनके पास बदलाव का कोई ना कोई उदाहरण बताने के लिए वो बड़े उत्सुक होते हैं नए नए बन रहे एक्सप्रेसवे, नई सेमी हाई स्पीड ट्रेन एक से बढ़कर एक एयरपोर्ट भारत आज अपने इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पर जितना इन्वेस्ट कर रहा है उतना पहले कभी नहीं हुआ साथियों भारत में पिछले वर्षों में जिस तरह डिजिटल क्रांति आई है वो तो अभूतपूर्व है हो सकता है अब आप अपने गांव की किसी दुकान में जाए और वहां के आपके सामने बारकोड का बोर्ड हो हो सकता है आप कैश दें लेकिन दुकानदार कहे कि भैया मोबाइल फोन पर कोई डिजिटल पेमेंट ऐप नहीं है क्या ये बदला हुआ भारत आपको हैरान कर देगा आज भारत में कोई भी व्यक्ति कहीं से भी कभी भी ट्वेंटी फोर बाय सेवन बैंकिंग कर सकता है संडे हो या मंडे बैंकिंग लेन देन पर इससे कोई फर्क नहीं होता भारत में आ रहे ऐसे बदलावों को मैं इसके कितने उदाहरण आपको दे सकता हूं समय कम पड़ जाएगा लेकिन भारत की उपलब्धियां 
कम नहीं पड़ेगी साथियों भारत मदर ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी है और अमेरिका आधुनिक लोकतंत्र का चैंपियन है आज दुनिया इन दो महान लोकतंत्रों की साझेदारी को और सशक्त हुए देख रही है अमेरिका हमारा सबसे बड़ा ट्रेडिंग पार्टनर है और एक्सपोर्ट डेस्टिनेशन है लेकिन अभी हमारी पार्टनरशिप का असली पोटेंशियल सामने आना बाकी है इस पोटेंशियल को आगे बढ़ाने में आप सबकी बहुत बड़ी भूमिका है आप सभी ने यहां नाम बहुत नाम कमाया है आपने अमेरिका के विकास में बहुत बड़ा योगदान दिया है अब जब भारत ने आजादी के अमृत काल में विकसित भारत के निर्माण का संकल्प लिया है तब आपसे अपेक्षा और अधिक बढ़ जाती है ये भारत में अधिक से अधिक निवेश का सही अवसर है मेरा आग्रह है कि आप भारत के एमएसएमईस और स्टार्टअप्स के साथ संभावनाओं को आगे बढ़ाएं। हमारे यंग एंटरप्रेन्योर्स को प्रोत्साहित करें भारत की ग्रोथ में आपकी स्किल आपकी टेक्नोलॉजी और आपके एक्सपर्टाइज बहुत काम आएगी आपको पता है भारत में एक नई आधुनिक नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी लागू की गई है आप में से अनेक साथी अमेरिकन यूनिवर्सिटीज में महत्वपूर्ण पदों पर है रिसर्चर्स और एकेडमिशियंस हैं आप अपने अल्मा मेटर्स और दूसरे भारतीय एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन के साथ जुड़ेंगे तो उसका बहुत अच्छा प्रभाव होगा वैसे आपके प्रयासों के बीच मैं आपको दो और बातें बताना भी चाहता हूं और जिनको सुनकर के आपको जरूर अच्छा लगेगा पहली तो ये कि भारत में गूगल्स का एआई रिसर्च सेंटर 100 से ज्यादा भारतीय भाषाओं पर काम करेगा इससे भारत में ऐसे बच्चों को पढ़ने में काम करने में आसानी होगी जिनकी मातृभाषा अंग्रेजी नहीं है और दूसरी ये कि भारत सरकार की मदद से यहां यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ ह्यूस्टन में तमिल स्टडीज चेयर की स्थापना की जाएगी इस चेयर से तमिल संस्कृति और दुनिया की सबसे प्राचीन तमिल भाषा का प्रभाव बढ़ाने में और मदद मिलेगी और मेरी आप सबसे रिक्वेस्ट है जब कभी भाषा की चर्चा निकले तो सीना तान करके दुनिया को कहना कि दुनिया की मानव जात की सबसे पुरानी भाषा सबसे पुरानी भाषा तमिल भाषा है और वह हमारी भाषा है
ये गर्व से कहना चाहिए दुनिया की सबसे पहली पुरानी भाषा होने का गर्व हमारे पास है साथियों मुझे इस बात की कोई खुशी है कि अमेरिकी सरकार ने भारत की सौ से ज्यादा एंटीक्विटीज पुरानी मूर्तियां चीजें जो हमारे यहां से चोरी हुई थी ना सौ से अधिक उसे लौटाने का फैसला लिया है ये पुरातन वस्तुएं बरसों पहले कुछ सही रास्ते से आई होगी कुछ गलत रास्ते से आई होगी अलग अलग तरीकों से अंतर्राष्ट्रीय बाजार पर पहुंच गई थी इन ऐतिहासिक वस्तुओं को लौटाने के लिए मैं अमेरिकी सरकार का विशेष रूप से आभार व्यक्त करता हूं किसी दूसरे देश की भावनाओं का इस सम्मान उसके लोगों की भावनाओं का इस सम्मान दोनों ही देशों के रिश्तों को और मजबूती देते हैं मैं जब पिछली बार अमेरिका आया था तब भी भारत को बहुत सी पुरानी ऐतिहासिक वस्तुएं लौटाई गई थी और आजकल दुनिया में मैं जहां भी जाता हूं ना तो उनको लगता है ये सही व्यक्ति है इसको सुप्रत करो सही जगह पे पहुंचेगी ये दिखाता है कि भारत अमेरिका के बीच रिश्ता सिर्फ व्यापारिक ही नहीं बल्कि भावनात्मक रूप से भी मजबूत हो रहा है साथियों भारत और अमेरिका की पार्टनरशिप 21वीं सदी की दुनिया को फिर से बेहतर बनाने के लिए है इस पार्टनरशिप में आप सभी की भूमिका बहुत बड़ी है और मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि इस भूमिका को निभाने में आप कोई कोर कसर नहीं छोड़ेंगे आपका ये भरोसा आपका विश्वास मेरे दिल में पहले भी था आज भी है कल भी रहने वाला है आप सब दूर दूर से आए आप सबको मिलने का मुझे अवसर मिला और यहीं से सीधा एयरपोर्ट जा रहा हूं तो जैसा भोजन के बाद आखिर में मिट्टी डिश होती है ऐसी स्वीट डिश को खा करके मैं निकल रहा हूं <laughs> आप सब स्वस्थ रहे समृद्ध रहे इसी भावना के साथ आप सबका बहुत बहुत आभार बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद भारत माता की भारत माता की भारत माता की बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद
All right, that was Prime Minister Modi's yet another spirited speech as he addresses the Indian diaspora in every way, crediting them for the kind of efforts they've put to build the country uh, and, and, of course, the love and affection that they have for their home country. Uh, he he thanks them uh, for, for so much while also listing out the kind of potential that India has, uh, what India has done so far, uh, on just how the kind of progress that India has seen over the years. Uh, specifically addressing the visa issue. He spoke about the H-1B visa, uh, H-1B visa, uh, the skilled workers visa. They do not have to anymore leave America to renew it. They can do it while staying in America itself. That's a huge move that would benefit uh, a whole load of the population, nearly 3 lakhs. Um, 3 lakh H-1B holders usually go from India every year. So that's that's a huge population there. Apart from that, he spoke about the consulates, a number of them that will be opened up, one in Bengaluru and Ahmedabad. That's also what he addressed. Uh, uh, speaking of the relations uh, between, the India, between India and the United States to improve significantly. He's uh, spoken about uh, the kind of ties between the two nations and uh, Indian, Indian culture and ethos, the people of the Indian diaspora, bringing that, taking that globally. Uh, he has credited them for for building in India's image outside of the country. So the, the mutual admiration that it was the Indian diaspora, of course, crazy crazy affection that they have shown for Prime Minister Modi, uh, with with cheers and chants for him, and the Prime Minister fittingly giving that affection back, returning uh, the same love. Uh, in the sense of praising them for all that they've done to achieve their American dream. That's Prime Minister Modi's last address and, and final one uh, as he now takes off to Egypt where he's going to be meeting with the head of state in Egypt and, and touring. He will be visiting a mosque uh, that's been uh, refurbished by the Bora community from Gujarat. So a lot, lot on the agenda still. But Prime Minister Modi's energy levels top notch. One really must uh, notice how, for the last four days, there's really nothing like a jet lag that that's hit him at all. Uh, despite the 12-hour uh, time difference from India to the United States, Modi has been super um, energetic, enthusiastic, spirited in every talk and meeting that he's carried for the last four days. Geeta Mohan joining us live uh, right there at the Ronald Reagan Center. Geeta, tell us more, Prime Minister Modi, yet another spirited talk. Well, you know, it, it's just hard uh, for me to fathom the kind of energy that he has. We've been pulling off an all-nighter, uh, been live the whole, uh, through the night, and that energy levels are dipping. But that man, he just manages to, you know, uh, surprise us every time. The kind of energy he has while addressing the crowds as well. He said that they, in fact, uh, says that he's catching a flight now, and this was really the best goodbye he could have possibly got. Well, that's right. Like we were saying, Nabila, he saves the best for last. And that's what he said when he said that after a meal, one has a dessert. And this event was a dessert for him. So that's the Indian community over here. It's very interesting, uh, Nabila. Uh, they, they were not inside the auditorium, but every time he said something very significant, they all got up and were chanting Modi Modi and were saying Modi had the mumkin hai. Uh, Modi magic? Yes ma'am, Modi magic, absolutely. You can see it, what he had done. Okay, and what do you make of his speech? He made some very important points. There are a few points that are very important, belongs to us too, and we are happy because of that point. He, he spoke about visas, and that certainly, that certainly hit home. Uh, visas, the immigration policy, uh, the fact that they can get uh, the visa stamped uh, here and don't have to travel back. Uh, a lot of important policy decisions that he actually spoke about. You know what, you know, I waited eight years to go back home because of the same stamping issues. You know, this is a big thing, you know, I don't have issues now, but then, you know, that's a big thing for us to know that our people, you know, down there who are following the H-1B pattern are going to be, um, you know, stamping here. You know? Absolutely. That certainly is a huge thing. Not many people uh, would understand uh, who do not deal with or have not uh, had to travel to, India, to America or work in America uh, or 
eight years just to get a get their uh, green card, green card processed, processed. You know, or 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 the visa stamped if you're working over here with the work permits. So significant statement, significant development when it comes to the working uh, uh, the the p working community, the people who are working over here, Indians who come to work over here. Uh, huge development, but I see some excited faces, uh, the younger ones. How did you like Prime Minister's speech? Uh, it was very good. So uh, the exact name yeah. of the app in the app I like this the What about you? A lot of important statements about India, about America, and about people who are working over here. Yeah, so the best thing we heard was the consulate in Ahmedabad. See, that's where we are from. All right. And the new consulate opening in Seattle. So it will help a lot of people. Plus the changes in the H-1B rules, that is a big, big welcome for the... So a change in H-1B rules, see, these are things that hit home for them. They, they, these are significant uh, announcements that he's made, uh, but not just H-1B visa. Uh, increasing number of consulates uh, in India and in America will certainly help them because right now they actually have to travel to the city where a consulate or the embassy really is uh, to get their interviews done. Uh, nothing happens without that uh, in-person interview. And that will change for many who will now be able to do it in Seattle and for Indians who can now do it in Ahmedabad. So uh, for, for, for a Gujarati or, or, or somebody hailing from Gujarat, it's a huge development. I'm from, yeah. I'm from Gujarat. Okay. Uh, I would like to add one more point regarding AI, artificial intelligence. Modi has given a, a very different like definition of AI, American, Indian, right? In context of that, I would like to add one more symbol or slogan. Sastriji had given Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan. Modi ji has given Jai Vigyan. Aaj ka jamana hai. After AI definition, I would I would like to add one more slogan. Okay. Jai Sangyan. Okay. Jai Sangyan is a like is a is a is a time of knowledge. Okay. We have All to right. say, spread the knowledge and thank you. Time time to spread knowledge. But Prime Minister Narendra Modi is okay. We'll just come to a few more people over here. Uh, how, what did you make of the speech? I mean, he's doing everything for our country, good and well. I mean, he's the best Prime Minister. Okay. And that's what I can say. I mean, right. uh, a lot of them have moved, sir. Yes. What you say? What, what, do you, what did you make of Prime Minister's speech? The Prime Minister's speech is not only motivation for us, but it's also motivation for the Indo-American relationship. That's what it stands for. Okay. And that's what we are here for. Okay. Uh, they were quite enthusiastic. Uh, we saw you all cheer. Uh, now the room has quietened. But I'd want you to show the enthusiasm that you were showing when Prime Minister Modi made some important statements. What was the level of excitement and why were you that excited? What was the biggest takeaway for you? Biggest takeaway was that even if he's being far from us, he feels all our pain point. And all the things he says, it looks like he's touching us. Everything he sees, it feels like he's so close to us. Okay. And you, sir? Um, so one of the unique things about Mr. Modi is like, um, you know, the way he connects with people. Um, the simple things that he talks about, uh, those are our every day-to-day, -day, you know, uh, pain points. Um, so that's one of the things that actually enables everybody to connect with him at a personal level. Um, so that's very unique about him. And I think that's a very important quality that helps him lead the world. Um, the other thing that he mentioned was, uh, you know, the, the mindset about the, the, the slave mindset, right? Um, we have been under that for like several um, couple of centuries and we have just started to come out of it. And the way we are actually going to lead, um, that's actually true. You know, we are going to lead uh, as Indians wherever we stay. Um, there's a very strong, um, you know, cohesion about how we're going to lead the world. Right. Also, stolen artifacts. The fact that they're all coming back, uh, uh, quite, a, uh, quite a few of the stolen artifacts have come back. Uh, in itself is a significant uh, move by various countries, ensuring that what is India's goes back to India. Yeah, so this is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I've never heard anybody doing that, uh, returning artifacts, hundreds of them. Uh, it's only possible because Modi can do it. Uh, and it is not only that, as Modiji said, it is uh, the relationship. It's because of the trust that America, uh, right, the warm relationship between America and India, uh, it's going to grow more and more. This is a new chapter in, in our history, uh, at least from a business perspective, from a relationship point of view. So we are going to see something new. Uh, I wish um, the Western media, the American media was here. Unfortunately, they are not there, but it is a message to them that they should cover this because it's not only for India, it's combined for America because 
uh, things are changing now. So, right. yeah. what do you have to say, ma'am? I'm here from Silicon Valley, and I'm a venture capitalist in life sciences, biotech, medtech. It was phenomenal to see how Modi ji said there's a new disruption of AI, and the AI is America, India, not only just artificial intelligence. And he summed it up by including women, including innovation, including uh, immigration, economic entrepreneurship. and making sure that from tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 everybody is impacted the best part is that he really cares it comes through in spades he cares about every indian whether they are living in india or myself as an american citizen we love the fact that there's a home always in india for us because he cares wherever he is he also said he almost said that he saved the best for last and that this I was a that. dessert this was the dessert i mean i mean just those little things they, they really changed the whole complexion rather than feeling we were the last so i did it in several i went to the joint session i went to the white house all of the um, the different aspects that i um, could attend and it was phenomenal i was also did yoga with uh, modi ji in uh, new york you actually traveled what about what about you sir uh, anything that was a big takeaway for you i attended uh, yesterday's the joint congress session as well and you could see that the receptiveness of modi ji not just as a world leader but he was very well welcomed in usa as well by both sides democrats and republicans that's a big phenomena it's hardly they get together with the bipartisan support but you could see that modi ji has that kind of uh, out of charisma and groundwork as a true world leader he believes in peace and and he has worked and he has been accepted by everyone he also does a very important thing uh, in these diaspora events uh, nabila which is sums up what transpired in the country that he's traveling over here in his speech he spoke about the very important deals whether it's the jet engine deal whether it's the technology and defense cooperation for that matter the most important aspect in space collaboration he spoke about was the artemis accord so he mentions all those achievements uh, that uh, he could uh, uh, sum up uh, for the the audience uh, when it comes to india us uh, relations and his visit particularly this time around so that's something that he does but he also gives a world view of how uh, india is perceived now by america and how america is perceived by india and the indian administration so a lot of positivity when it comes to the ties and uh, he uh, there was a lot of humor also that he added but like most of them were saying and if i could ask kripal to join me uh, along uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the human human aspects for uh, people over here the pain points that they keep talking about was the visa issue uh, here dinner has been served so yes a lot of people are have started having they have started having the dinner but uh, Uh, the pain points have been visas if i could come to you ma'am how did you like prime minister modi's speech what was the most important thing according to you i i enjoyed his speech even though i don't speak hindi as fluently as uh, any speak gujarati telugu telugu oh you from andhra yep but i could get the you know message the intensity and the commitment he has for the growth of india it's unparalleled okay. i am so impressed and i've become i've always been a modi fan but this has just strengthened my you know all my affection and love and he, support he for him he also adds a lot of humor to the to the conversation he makes it conversational which is why every now and again uh, when he adds something that makes light uh, ma- ma- makes a light comment about something you see the audience inside were certainly uh, standing up and chanting uh, modi modi but the audience outside also was doing it although they all knew that prime minister modi were not was not actually seeing them or could see them uh, but is there any important takeaway from the speech so i've been following him for a quite some time i was at kennedy center before this event as well mm-hmm. so a lot of takeaways especially he focused a lot on aviation and defense industry mm-hmm. and one thing that uh, kind of struck my chord is where he said for indian americans like us and my, for my children because i'm very focused on my gener- my not only my generation my the children's next. generation next generation as well he's like he said he's he said 
the ground right for all of us. Now if it is, it is up to us to kind of reap the benefits and also continue to sow. Mm -hmm. And I think that is something that I'll take it back to my children and say, hey, you have like somebody like a father figure or grandfather figure that has set everything right for you. We couldn't say that to 20 years back when we came to United States. Mm -hmm. So you really have to move this forward. There is, there is a forward move, movement and momentum that uh, that we've seen of uh, the, the Indo-US ties for a while now. Uh, it's not new, but there, the trajectory certainly has become, uh, has, has taken a different leap altogether when it comes to uh, the pace and the speed in which uh, we're seeing the growth in ties. Uh, how did you find the speech? Uh, what was your biggest takeaway? So the biggest takeaway is he has instilled a new level of confidence in Indian businessmen, the Indian academicians, the Indian students, the Indian engineering people here, that they all need to now connect with a different motivation and inspiration back to the motherland. And this new ins new kind of aura that he has created of Indo-America partnership that has to be leveraged by all of us to strengthen not only the ties, but for the economic development, for the social development, and for the educational development on both sides. Well, uh, that's, that's again, Nabila, quite true. The fact that Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, engaged a whole lot of people from various sectors, various fields, uh, and various expert uh, uh, expertise when it comes to uh, focusing on in a, a particular area. He met with academicians, he met with scientists, Nobel laureates, uh, astrophysicists uh, in New York, over here with business uh, honchos, business tycoons. Uh, the business roundtable that he had included Indian uh, businessmen uh, like Mukesh Ambani. Uh, and the conversation, again, like the gentleman over here said, was clearly to ensure that there is a boost in confidence uh, for uh, the businessmen to look at and look to India even if they're considering investing in India. So a very important aspect uh, when it comes to uh, confidence building. What about you? Yeah, madam, see we have some of the problems for centuries. For example, Ram Mandir, it's solved. And the major problem in U.S. being H-1B, it's been pending for over, I would say, 30 years. See, the greatest quality of any leader is he has done everything and every Indian is thankful for him rest of our life but he has given back that credit to each American Indian that is a quality and and a true trait of a leader when it is a successful venture he has given back that credit to all Indians all 1.4 billion Indians and all 4 million Indians and when something is going wrong or bad he takes the responsibility. That, that was the theme over here. Uh, the overriding theme uh, over here was the contribution of Indian Americans uh, to uh, in, in building America and uh, the American society. While uh, we they talk about shared values, both the countries, the leaders, and shared culture, uh, the values and culture have been very, very different. But because of the growing Indian community's presence in America, there is a, a shared aspect of how Indian culture and Indian uh, values have become a part of the American society as well. So a lot of people over here who, uh, who uh, got up to hail Prime Minister Modi, what was your, what was your biggest takeaway from uh, the speech? Well, it's a new era for uh, the relationship between India and the United States now, right? So we've had prime ministers come and go, but what Modi ji has done in the last nine years, it's a, it's a strategic partnership. It's a completely different type of relationship where U.S. respects India as an equal partner and wants to collaborate, wants to partner with the two largest democracies. It's a big shift in U.S. thinking about India as well. So, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has given also a world view, broadened it, zoomed out, and spoke about how uh, India on the global map now looks different, and how people, uh, countries view it uh, also is very different. Uh, from this very stage, he said goodbye, and he left for Egypt. It's not, uh, it's not like he's going home directly. Uh, there is another very important visit 
visit, and that is to Egypt. Uh, that also will carry a lot of weight and importance. India engaging North Africa, uh, the the Muslim world, and ensuring that Egypt, uh, also inviting Egypt as a special guest at the G20, uh, ensuring that Egypt, uh, which is a very important country in that part in that region, also is engaged with. Uh, President Sisi was the chief guest at the Republic Day uh, function, and uh, uh, and now we will be seeing the second leg of the two-nation tour of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. But coming back to uh, America and the major deliver deliverables over here, uh, looking at people, looking at how uh, uh, the entire visit has been viewed, it is indeed historic. A state visit, a very important visit at that when it comes to uh, India and, uh, uh, and America. This is uh, in the last year of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's second tenure and the last year of President uh, Biden's first tenure. Uh, both will be looking at elections and this is, they're all prepared. Uh, looking at their own constituency, they would have wanted success, a successful visit of Prime Minister Modi and it really happened because uh, this was a visit that, sh that had a lot of deliverables, uh, especially in the defense cooperation sector. Uh, the thrust was not just technology sharing and the fact that there's going to be complete trust when it comes to technology transfer. It's also about how uh, India has pushed for and uh, asked America to ensure that if they're buying from India or if they're looking at it, if they're selling to India, I'm sorry, then uh, when they're manufacturing, they should source from India. If they're manufacturing out of uh, America and uh, they're looking to sell stuff to India, then they should look at manufacturing in India. Uh, and that joint cooperation comes about with the GE uh, F414 jet engine deal uh, with HAL. Uh, so the B2B, B2Gs continue, uh, but the G2G level has certainly gone uh, really up when it comes to uh, n not just the deals, not just the strategic and the economic aspect, but also the personal aspect. Uh, we've not seen a uh, president of the United States of America uh, always go out of the way to meet an Indian premier on every occasion. In the past few occasions, outside of the state visit, where uh, President Biden did go out of the way with a private dinner, uh, the Indian community in throngs on the South Lawns of White House, and not like it has not happened in the past, uh, Manmo during Manmohan Singh's time also, there was an Indian community event, but certainly uh, not in the scale, the mass and the mass and scale of the event uh, was unmatched. And um, of course, then uh, the finer touches. Uh, First Lady looking into what the, uh, what the spread is going to be, taking into account uh, 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 the fact that International Military uh, Year was announced by India, that that is part of the menu. Uh, the performances at uh, White House included Indian-American students from Pennsylvania University. Uh, they, they, they call themselves pa Pen Masala, uh, taking from Pan Masala. So uh, those were nuances in terms of personal ties. And that really reflects and translates into how people over here react. Let's go across, uh, before I toss back, let's go across. Um, just before you leave, I know you're uh, uh, almost done and you're calling it a night. Come on. Um, what was your biggest takeaway from the, the, the speech that you heard? Uh, no, it was very inspirational. I think this is kind of a pivotal moment for U.S.-India relations. And being both uh, it being an Indian-American, it makes us very proud, you know, just to see the two countries coming together and India coming so forward. I think India has a potential to be a superpower, just like the U.S. or any other country. So I think, uh, yeah, I totally agree with her. But uh, being second generation from our parents from India, and giving uh, a lot of uh, opportunity, uh, just seeing that continued alliance and, and the commitment of that happening as well, like supporting women and how much uh, like they're doing for uh, in India now, like in and uh, supporting like technology and uh, just really the infrastructure to create uh, more financial uh, strength. So I'm very happy with whatever I heard. Thank you. Right. Um uh, just one more uh, question. Prime Minister Modi, when he uh, came last time around, and when he's traveled abroad, he's always asked the Indian community outside, uh, Indian Americans outside, uh, to 
convince your own friends over here to travel to India, explore India, see India. Have you done that with your friends since you're second generation here? So my wife and I, last time we went was just, just about a few six months, months ago. ago. Yeah. Four months ago. Right, right. We, yeah. we, saw, we went to Ajanta, Laura. Every time we go, we see something new. And it it's actually, such a beautiful Do you take country. American friends along? So you also sometimes. are part of... Yeah, I mean, sometimes uh, many of our American friends have been, you know, if there's a wedding, sometimes American friends will come along too. So Maybe for the new, the, uh, the summit, the G20 summit is going to be there. That right. We'll try to go back. So that will be exciting. But we go all the time and we try to encourage our, our friends as well because there's a lot to see there. Okay, so do you want to say something? Yes, I'm, I'm a chairman of the Pari Worldwide Media. And what, is the, what is it that you, uh, what was the biggest takeaway from the uh, speech of the Prime Minister? I think the speech of the Prime Minister says that there is a lot of uh, uh, understanding between the, uh, President Biden or US administration and Indian administration. And uh, out of that, two uh, uh, highlights are, one is a uh, GE is going to start uh, manufacturing the uh, engines, GE engine, right. fighter pad engine into the India. And that will give us India not only uh, manufacturing uh, uh, facility, jobs, but in case of the war with the China, uh, then uh, we can use that uh, fighter uh, plane See, uh, without... I get it, I get it. Everybody over here are now has started understanding the nuances uh, of, of strategic uh, uh, importance of manufacturing in India. And that's why they say if ever China does something, then we should be prepared. And this is working towards that preparedness. All right. Uh what a fantastic four-day state visit it's been. Uh, thank you very much, Geeta. Of course, India Today has been really bringing our viewers every aspect of this very important uh, strategic state visit of Prime Minister Modi to the United States. This is uh, the first that he's been invited to. Uh, in every way, this was iconic, unprecedented, and has now established a greater ties with the United States. Uh, when it comes to trade, bilateral uh, talks in every sense, this was one of the most important meets in recent times. I'm going to cut across finally as I leave you here with Prime Minister Modi's very spirited speech that he gave right towards the end uh, to the Indian diaspora, where he spoke about India's growth journey and where we could see it in the years to come. Namaste. आप लोगों ने इस हॉल में एक प्रकार से भारत का फुल मैप बना दिया है <laughs> हिंदुस्तान के हर कोने के लोग यहां नजर आ रहे हैं <laughs> आप यहां दूर दूर से आए हैं ऐसा लग रहा है जैसे मिनी इंडिया उमड़ा है अमेरिका में एक भारत श्रेष्ठ भारत की इतनी सुंदर तस्वीर दिखाने के लिए मैं आप सबको हृदय से बहुत बहुत बधाई देता हूं अभिनंदन करता हूं साथियों यहां अमेरिका में मुझे जितना प्यार जितना स्नेह मिल रहा है वो वाकई अद्भुत है और इसका श्रेय यहां अमेरिका में आपकी मेहनत आपके व्यवहार अमेरिका के विकास में आपके योगदान को जाता है मैं अमेरिका में रहने वाली मां भारती की हर संतान का अभिनंदन करता हूं मैं प्रेसिडेंट बाइडेन का भी आभारी हूं 
बीते तीन दिनों में लगातार हम साथ रहे बहुत सारे विषयों पर हमारी खुल करके बातचीत हुई और मैं अनुभव से कहता हूं वे सुलझे हुए अनुभवी नेता है भारत अमेरिका पार्टनरशिप को एक नई ऊंचाई पर ले जाने वाले व्यक्तिगत रूप से उनका बहुत प्रयास रहा है और मैं सार्वजनिक रूप से उनके इस प्रयासों की सराहना करता हूं साथियों इन तीन दिनों में भारत और अमेरिका के पारस्परिक रिश्तों की एक नई और गौरवशाली यात्रा प्रारंभ हुई है ये नई यात्रा ग्लोबल स्ट्रेटेजिक इश्यूज पर हमारे कन्वर्जेंस की है ये नई यात्रा मेक इन इंडिया मेक फॉर द वर्ल्ड उसको लेकर हमारे को ऑपरेशन की है टेक्नोलॉजी ट्रांसफर और मैन्युफैक्चरिंग में हमारा आपसी सहयोग हो या फिर इंडस्ट्रियल सप्लाई चेन में बढ़ता तालमेल दोनों देश एक बेहतर भविष्य की ओर मजबूत कदम उठा रहे हैं जनरल इलेक्ट्रिक कंपनी का भारत में फाइटर प्लेन के इंजन बनाने का फैसला भारत के डिफेंस सेक्टर के लिए ये मिल का पत्थर साबित होगा ये समझौता करके अमेरिका सिर्फ टेक्नोलॉजी ही शेयर नहीं करेगा बल्कि म्यूचुअल ट्रस्ट को भी शेयर करेगा डिफेंस इंडस्ट्रियल कोऑपरेशन रोडमैप से दोनों देशों के बीच पार्टनरशिप और गहरी होने वाली है मैं इस यात्रा के दौरान माइक्रोन गूगल एप्लाइड मटेरियल जैसी दिग्गज कंपनियों ने भी भारत में बड़े इन्वेस्टमेंट की घोषणा की है माइक्रोन द्वारा सेमीकंडक्टर सेक्टर में 2.5 बिलियन डॉलर्स का इन्वेस्टमेंट भारत को वर्ल्ड सेमीकंडक्टर चेन से जोड़ने वाला है एप्लाइड मटेरियल्स द्वारा भारत में सेमीकंडक्टर इक्विपमेंट के लिए 400 मिलियन डॉलर्स का निवेश अब भारत में अपना ग्लोबल फिनटेक सेंटर खोलने जा रहा है बोइंग ने 
भी भारत में हंड्रेड बिलियन डॉलर्स के निवेश का ऐलान किया है एमआरओ फैसिलिटी हो पायलट्स की ट्रेनिंग का प्रोग्राम हो बोइंग कंपनी इस दिशा में भी अपना सहयोग बढ़ाएगी ये सारे समझौते ये सारी घोषणाएं भारत में इन्वेस्टमेंट के साथ साथ जॉब क्रिएशन रोजगार हाई टेक्नोलॉजी मैन्युफैक्चरिंग और इनोवेशन को बढ़ावा देगी साथियों भारत अमेरिका ने जो आर्टिमिस अकॉर्ड साइन किया है वो अंतरिक्ष में बहुत सारी संभावनाओं के द्वार खोलने जा रहा है नासा का आर्टिमिस प्रोग्राम मून से लेकर मंगल तक के मिशन के लिए अपने आप में बहुत बड़ा है इस प्रोग्राम से भारत जुड़ेगा तो दोनों ही देशों को फायदा होगा नासा के साथ मिलकर स्पेस में भारतीय एस्ट्रोनॉट भेजने को लेकर भी बात आगे बढ़ी है इंटरनेशनल स्पेस स्टेशन में भेजने के लिए नासा द्वारा भारतीय एस्ट्रोनेट्स को एडवांस ट्रेनिंग भी दी जाएगी अब इसलिए ही मैंने कल कहा स्काई इज नॉट द लिमिट साथियों ये सारे समझौते ये एग्रीमेंट्स सिर्फ कुछ नीतियों को आगे बढ़ाना मात्र नहीं है ये भारत अमेरिका के करोड़ों लोगों के भाग्य को नई ऊंचाई देने का काम हुआ है टुगेदर वी आर नॉट जस्ट फॉर्मिंग पॉलिसीज एंड एग्रीमेंट्स वी आर शेपिंग लाइव्स ड्रीम्स एंड डेस्टिनीज साथियों आप में से बहुत सारे लोग यहां बरसों से अमेरिका में रह रहे हैं यहां आप अपने जीवन में अपनी दिनचर्या में व्यस्त रहते हैं लेकिन मैं ये भी जानता हूं कि आपका मन आपका दिल भारत में भी लगा रहता है और इसलिए आपकी सहूलियत ये भी भारत की प्राथमिकता है आपकी जरूरतों को देखते हुए भारत इस साल सीएटल में एक नया कॉन्सुलेट खोलने जा रहा है इतना ही नहीं इसके अलावा भी अमेरिका के दो और शहरों में भारतीय कॉन्सुलेट खोले जाएंगे अब मैं जानता हूं आपकी चिट्ठियां शुरू हो जाएगी हमारे यहां हो हमारे यहां हो <laughs> देखिए शुरू हो गया <laughs> आप लोग पक्का कर लीजिए <laughs> और और एक बात 
अच्छा ये भी है कि अब अहमदाबाद और बेंगलुरु में भी अमेरिका के नए कॉन्सुलेट खुलने जा रहे हैं साथियों आप में से बहुत से लोगों की एच वन बी वीजा के रिन्यू को लेकर भी लंबे अरसे से एक डिमांड थी अब ये निर्णय लिया गया है कि एच वन बी वीजा को रिन्यू करने के लिए आपको अमेरिका से बाहर नहीं जाना पड़ेगा अमेरिका में रहते हुए ही अब ये वीजा रिन्यू हो जाएगा इसके लिए इस साल एक पायलट प्रोजेक्ट शुरू किया जाएगा इसका बहुत बड़ा फायदा हमारे आईटी प्रोफेशनल्स को भी होने वाला है इस फैसले के जो भी अनुभव होंगे उसे देखते हुए यही व्यवस्था भविष्य में एल कैटेगरी वीजा के लिए भी हो सकती है साथियों आप भारत की हर उपलब्धि से खुश होते हैं उसे सेलिब्रेट करते हैं आप गर्व करते हैं जब दुनिया के इतने सारे देश यूएन हेडक्वार्टर पर योग दिवस के लिए जुटते हैं आप गर्व करते हैं जब यहां के सुपरमार्केट्स में मेड इन इंडिया प्रोडक्ट दिखता है आप गर्व करते हैं जब भारत के टैलेंट को दुनिया की बड़ी बड़ी कंपनियों को नेतृत्व देते देखते हैं और आप गर्व करते हैं जब नाटू नाटू की धुन पर पूरी दुनिया थिरकने लगती है और आज आप ये भी देखकर गर्व से भरे हुए हैं कैसे भारत का सामर्थ्य आज पूरे विश्व के विकास को दिशा दे रहा है आज भारत दुनिया के उन देशों में से एक है जहां अर्थव्यवस्था इतनी तेजी से आगे बढ़ रही है पूरी दुनिया की नजर आपके भारत पर है आप भी सोच रहे होंगे आखिर ये कैसे हो रहा है किसने किया है साथियों ये मैंने नहीं किया है ये मोदी ने नहीं किया है 
भारत में हो रही इस प्रगति का सबसे बड़ा कारण है भारत का आत्मविश्वास एक सौ चालीस करोड़ भारतवासियों का आत्मविश्वास सैकड़ों वर्षों की गुलामी ने ये आत्मविश्वास हमसे छीन लिया था जो नया भारत हमारे सामने है उसमें वो आत्मविश्वास लौट आया है ये वो भारत है जिसे अपना रास्ता पता है दिशा पता है ये वो भारत है जिसे अपने निर्णयों अपने संकल्पों पर कोई कंफ्यूजन नहीं है ये वो भारत है जो अपने पोटेंशियल को परफॉर्मेंस में बदल रहा है साथियों आज नए भारत की नई ग्रोथ स्टोरी हमारे सैकड़ों टीयर टू टीयर थ्री शहरों में लिखी जा रही है छोटे छोटे शहरों में संभव है कि आप भी कई साथी शायद ऐसे ही छोटे स्थान से ऐसे ही छोटे शहर से यहां आए होंगे वहां का बदलता हुआ रूप आपको पता चलता होगा आज जब आप अपने परिजनों को फोन करते हैं तो उनके पास बदलाव का कोई ना कोई उदाहरण बताने के लिए वो बड़े उत्सुक होते हैं नए नए बन रहे एक्सप्रेसवे नई सेमी हाई स्पीड ट्रेन एक से बढ़कर एक एयरपोर्ट भारत आज अपने इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पर जितना इन्वेस्ट कर रहा है उतना पहले कभी नहीं हुआ साथियों भारत में पिछले वर्षों में जिस तरह डिजिटल क्रांति आई है वो तो अभूतपूर्व है हो सकता है अब आप अपने गांव की किसी दुकान में जाए और वहां के आपके सामने बारकोड का बोर्ड हो हो सकता है आप कैश दें लेकिन दुकानदार कहे कि भैया मोबाइल फोन पर कोई डिजिटल पेमेंट ऐप नहीं है क्या ये बदला हुआ भारत आपको हैरान कर देगा आज भारत में कोई भी व्यक्ति कहीं से भी कभी भी 24 फोर बाय सेवन बैंकिंग कर सकता है संडे हो या मंडे बैंकिंग लेन देन पर इससे कोई फर्क नहीं होता भारत में आ रहे ऐसे बदलावों को मैं इसके कितने उदाहरण आपको दे सकता हूं समय कम पड़ जाएगा लेकिन भारत की उपलब्धियां 
कम नहीं पड़ेगी साथियों भारत मदर ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी है और अमेरिका आधुनिक लोकतंत्र का चैंपियन है आज दुनिया इन दो महान लोकतंत्रों की साझेदारी को और सशक्त हुए देख रही है अमेरिका हमारा सबसे बड़ा ट्रेडिंग पार्टनर है और एक्सपोर्ट डेस्टिनेशन है लेकिन अभी हमारी पार्टनरशिप का असली पोटेंशियल सामने आना बाकी है इस पोटेंशियल को आगे बढ़ाने में आप सबकी बहुत बड़ी भूमिका है आप सभी ने यहां नाम बहुत नाम कमाया है आपने अमेरिका के विकास में बहुत बड़ा योगदान दिया है अब जब भारत ने आजादी के अमृत काल में विकसित भारत के निर्माण का संकल्प लिया है तब आपसे अपेक्षा और अधिक बढ़ जाती है ये भारत में अधिक से अधिक निवेश का सही अवसर है मेरा आग्रह है कि आप भारत के एमएसएमईस और स्टार्टअप्स के साथ संभावनाओं को आगे बढ़ाएं हमारे यंग एंटरप्रेन्योर्स को प्रोत्साहित करें भारत की ग्रोथ में आपकी स्किल आपकी टेक्नोलॉजी और आपके एक्सपर्टाइज बहुत काम आएगी आपको पता है भारत में एक नई आधुनिक नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी लागू की गई है आप में से अनेक साथी अमेरिकन यूनिवर्सिटीज में महत्वपूर्ण पदों पर है रिसर्चर्स और एकेडमिशियंस हैं आप अपने अल्मा मेटर्स और दूसरे भारतीय एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशन के साथ जुड़ेंगे तो उसका बहुत अच्छा प्रभाव होगा वैसे आपके प्रयासों के बीच मैं आपको दो और बातें बताना भी चाहता हूं और जिनको सुनकर के आपको जरूर अच्छा लगेगा पहली तो ये कि भारत में गूगल्स का एआई रिसर्च सेंटर 100 से ज्यादा भारतीय भाषाओं पर काम करेगा इससे भारत में ऐसे बच्चों को पढ़ने में काम करने में आसानी होगी जिनकी मातृभाषा अंग्रेजी नहीं है और दूसरी ये कि भारत सरकार की मदद से यहां यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ ह्यूस्टन में तमिल स्टडीज चेयर की स्थापना की जाएगी इस चेयर से तमिल संस्कृति और दुनिया की सबसे प्राचीन तमिल भाषा का प्रभाव बढ़ाने में और मदद मिलेगी और मेरी आप सबसे रिक्वेस्ट है जब कभी भाषा की चर्चा निकले तो सीना तान करके दुनिया को कहना कि दुनिया की मानव जात की सबसे पुरानी भाषा सबसे पुरानी भाषा तमिल भाषा है और वो हमारी भाषा है
ये गर्व से कहना चाहिए दुनिया की सबसे पहली पुरानी भाषा होने का गर्व हमारे पास है साथियों मुझे इस बात की कोई खुशी है कि अमेरिकी सरकार ने भारत की सौ से ज्यादा एंटीक्विटीज पुरानी मूर्तियां चीजें जो हमारे यहां से चोरी हुई थी ना सौ से अधिक उसे लौटाने का फैसला लिया है ये पुरातन वस्तुएं बरसों पहले कुछ सही रास्ते से आई होगी कुछ गलत रास्ते से आई होगी अलग अलग तरीकों से अंतर्राष्ट्रीय बाजार में पहुंच गई थी इन ऐतिहासिक वस्तुओं को लौटाने के लिए मैं अमेरिकी सरकार का विशेष रूप से आभार व्यक्त करता हूं किसी दूसरे देश की भावनाओं का सम्मान उसके लोगों की भावनाओं का सम्मान दोनों ही देशों के रिश्तों को और मजबूती देते हैं मैं जब पिछली बार अमेरिका आया था तब भी भारत को बहुत सी पुरानी ऐतिहासिक वस्तुएं लौटाई गई थी और आजकल दुनिया में मैं जहां भी जाता हूं ना तो उनको लगता है ये सही व्यक्ति है इसको सुप्रत करो सही जगह पे पहुंचेगी ये दिखाता है कि भारत अमेरिका के बीच रिश्ता सिर्फ व्यापारिक ही नहीं बल्कि भावनात्मक रूप से भी मजबूत हो रहा है साथियों भारत और अमेरिका की पार्टनरशिप 21वीं सदी की दुनिया को फिर से बेहतर बनाने के लिए है इस पार्टनरशिप में आप सभी की भूमिका बहुत बड़ी है और मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि इस भूमिका को निभाने में आप कोई कोर कसर नहीं छोड़ेंगे आपका ये भरोसा आपका विश्वास मेरे दिल में पहले भी था आज भी है कल भी रहने वाला है आप सब दूर दूर से आए आप सबको मिलने का मुझे अवसर मिला और यहीं से सीधा एयरपोर्ट जा रहा हूं तो जैसा भोजन के बाद आखिर में मिट्टी डिश होती है ऐसी स्वीट डिश को खा करके मैं निकल रहा हूं <laughs> आप सब स्वस्थ रहे समृद्ध रहे इसी भावना के साथ आप सबका बहुत बहुत आभार
Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com. Why does this happen? Let me tell you the science behind it. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today Newsmo. Why does this happen? Let me tell you the science behind it. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today Newsmo. You are watching India Today. morning you're watching India Today TV I'm Seha Murdani let's get started with the headlines in this edition first this early Saturday morning Prime Minister Modi's mega diaspora connect in Washington DC says India is shaping world's Vikas here's India US Times Bharat Mata Ki Bharat Mata Ki Bharat Mata Ki. U.S. President Biden's special gift for Modi, a T-shirt with his quotes on AI. The print reads, future is AI, America and India. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris, State Secretary Antony Blinken, host state lunch on for Prime Minister Modi this after Biden's hosted a dinner for the Prime Minister. <laughs> Prime Minister Modi meets CEOs on final day of the US visit. The meeting marked by pledges of deeper US-India cooperation on areas including space, artificial intelligence and quantum computing. Hi. We have some news just coming in this morning after action-packed visit to the U.S. The Prime Minister is now leaving for Egypt. He's going to Cairo. 
The Prime Minister is all set to visit the 11th century Al Hakim Mosque here during his two day visit to Egypt. Beginning on Saturday, the Prime Minister's visit to the mosque is scheduled as the first event of the last year of his two day program in Egypt's sprawling capital of Cairo. The Prime Minister will spend nearly half an hour at the Al Hakim Mosque, a historic and prominent mosque in Cairo, named after Al Hakim Al B. Amra Allah, the 16th Fatimid Caliph. The Prime Minister is going to be in Egypt for two days now. He in fact has uh, departed for Egypt. These are pictures uh, coming in right now of the Prime Minister leaving for Cairo in these visuals. Well, after an action-packed visit to America, the Prime Minister is leaving for Egypt. He's all set to visit the 11th century Al Hakim Mosque here during his two-day visit. In fact, Egypt has also spoken about the fact that the Prime Minister's visit is indeed going to be a game-changer for bilateral ties. Besides the co-production of military equipment, this is what really is on the agenda. The two sides to discuss Egypt's offer of a dedicated slot for India within the Suez Canal economic zone. Also, the Prime Minister's visit to Egypt is really being seen as a game-changer for bilateral ties with the two sides expected to put in place arrangements to ramp up cooperation in areas ranging from security to trade and investment. This is what the Egyptian ambassador has said. Besides the co-production of military equipment, the two sides will discuss Egypt's offer of a dedicated slot for India within the Suez Canal economic zone. Indian investments in green hydrogen and tourism are other areas with great potential is what has been said by Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> some, of, some of our favorite photos. Well, <laughs> so it's, uh, the Prime Minister's mosque uh, visit in Egypt also sending a message to Indians, Indian Muslims there, particularly Dawoodi Bora Muslims, seem to be as supporters of the Prime Minister. And the Prime Minister, of course, has had a very warm relationship with the Dawoodi Boras for many years. He is visiting the Imam Al Hakim Biamra Allah Mosque, which is a nearly 1,000 year old structure in the heart of the Egyptian capital of Cairo. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on your screens right now, leaving for Egypt after his very, very eventful visit, two-day visit to the U.S. The Prime Minister is going to be in Egypt for two days. And this has been welcomed by authorities in Egypt talking about the fact that this is indeed is going to be a landmark step vis-a-vis -vis the bilateral ties that India shares with Egypt. Also speaking about the fact that greater Indian presence in the Swiss region is welcome. The Prime Minister is all set to reach Cairo today. He is now departed for Cairo. He is going to be in Egypt for the next two days. A series of engagements in New York and Washington that the Prime Minister just included and will have a series of engagements in Egypt as well. He is visiting Egypt upon the invitation of President Abdel Fattah El Sisi. The visit holds immense significance that it marks Modi's first trip to Egypt ever and serves as the first official bilateral visit by an Indian Prime Minister to Egypt since 1997. Well, there have been intimidated visits in the past as well, but this one is particularly important because this is a state official bilateral visit. Particularly the visits in the past were multilateral visits. The Prime Minister's visit to Egypt also follows President LCC's visit to India as a chief guest on Republic Day 
signifying only the strengthening of bilateral ties and the mutual desire to enhance cooperation between the two nations. First, there is going to be a ceremonial welcome at the airport today, after which a brief interaction with the Egyptian Prime Minister, a roundtable with the Egyptian Prime Minister, interaction with the Indian community, meeting with the Grand Mufti of Egypt, and interaction with Egyptian thought leaders. Tomorrow, which is a Sunday, there is going to be a visit to the Al Hakim Mosque, visit of the Heliopolis War Memorial, welcome of Prime Minister by the Egyptian President. And this is going to happen at the Presidential Palace. One-to-one -one meeting between the leaders. Extended level talks. Signing of strategic partnership documents or MOUs. Press statements. And then, of course, conferring of the Order of the Nile. A lunch is going to be hosted by the Egyptian President. Tomorrow, sometime in the evening, the Prime Minister returns back home. Action-packed visit to America. The Prime Minister is headed for Cairo right now. He's going to Egypt. Let's now take a look at the top highlights from the Prime Minister's last day in the Washington, D.C. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris and Secretary of State Antony Blinken hosted a luncheon for the Prime Minister at the State Department. Samosa, khichdi, mango halwa and masala chai were among the other delicacies at the White House. U.S. President Joe Biden gifted a special T-shirt to the Prime Minister with the Prime Minister's quote on AI. Early during his speech at the U.S. Congress, the Prime Minister quoted AI as momentous America-India ties. Prime Minister Narendra Modi met top business leaders including CEOs of Boeing, Amazon and Google. Also tech honcho Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google. Modi's meeting with Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun comes on the heels of Air India signing orders of over 200 jets early this week from Boeing. Prime Minister Narendra Modi in his address to young entrepreneurs at the Kennedy Center in Washington hailed his the technology handshake as a direct message to companies and businesses of both the countries. Award-winning international singer Mary Milvin performed the national anthem of India at the Ronald Reagan Building in Washington, D.C. final leg of the U.S. visit as a state guest, the Indian Prime Minister addressed the Indian community at the Ronald Reagan Building in Washington, D.C. His much-anticipated address began with international singer Mary Milvin rendering India's national anthem. The Prime Minister also announced that Indian origin members will not have to leave the U.S. for an NH-1B visa from now. He also announced that the United States will open new consulates in Bengaluru and Ahmedabad. Lauding the several deals in during his maiden state visit, the Prime Minister announced that India-US ties had embarked on a glorious new journey by converging on global strategic issues, technology transfer, manufacturing cooperation and much more. Chancellor Bharat Mata Ki Jai and Vande Mataram reverberated inside the building. Aap mein se bahut se logon ki H-1B वीजा के रिन्यू को लेकर भी लंबे अरसे से एक डिमांड थी अब ये निर्णय लिया गया है कि H-1B वीजा को रिन्यू करने के लिए आपको अमेरिका से बाहर नहीं जाना पड़ेगा
Thank you. अमेरिका में रहते हुए ही अब ये वीजा रिन्यू हो जाएगा इसके लिए इस साल एक पायलट प्रोजेक्ट शुरू किया जाएगा इसका बहुत बड़ा फायदा हमारे आईटी प्रोफेशनल्स को भी होने वाला है इस फैसले के जो भी अनुभव होंगे उसे देखते हुए यही व्यवस्था भविष्य में एल कैटेगरी वीजा के लिए भी हो सकती है आप में से बहुत सारे लोग यहां बरसों से अमेरिका में रह रहे हैं यहां आप अपने जीवन में अपनी दिनचर्या में व्यस्त रहते हैं लेकिन मैं ये भी जानता हूं कि आपका मन आपका दिल भारत में भी लगा रहता है और इसलिए आपकी सहूलियत ये भी भारत की प्राथमिकता है आपकी जरूरतों को देखते हुए भारत इस साल सीएटल में एक नया कॉन्सुलेट खोलने जा रहा है On the final day of his U.S. state visit, the Prime Minister and President Biden participated in an India-U.S. high-tech handshake event at the White House. Several leading Indian and American CEOs of tech companies and startups took part in the event aimed at deepening technological collaborations between the two countries. The Prime Minister met Google CEO Sundar Pichai, Amazon CEO Andrew Jassy, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, Apple CEO Tim Cook, among other business leaders. NASA astronaut Sunita Williams, Mahindra Group CEO Anand Mahindra, Zeroda co-founder Nikhil Kamath and Mukesh Ambani from Reliance Industries were also present in this event. He underlined the immense potential of harnessing Indian-US tech cooperation for social economic growth. President Biden gifted a special T-shirt to the Prime Minister with latter's quote on AI. Remember, the Prime Minister in his historic US Congress address had hailed the momentous development in AI, which is America and India. In Mujibal Bhavishi, Asha, Paisha, and Sankalpa, we all are Rastrati Biden, the vision of the vision of the Bharat, the aspiration of the Bharat, the vision 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 of the Bharat, एक मक्कम निर्धार का ये अवसर है और इसके लिए मैं सचमुच में मेरे मित्र रहमानों को बहुत अभिनंदन करता हूँ कि उन्होंने भारत की यात्रा की काफी समय निकाला और उन्होंने खुद ने जो अनुभव किया और उन्होंने आकर के यहाँ इसको आगे बढ़ाया मैं आपका भी आभारी हूँ राष्ट्रपति बारिंग जी का जितना आभार करो उतना कम है मैं फिर एक बार आप सबका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करता हूँ we're sticking up for our values and the vision of our the vision of the world. And so our partnership between India and the United States will go a long way, in my view, to define what the 21st century looks like. And our technology, technological cooperation, will be a big part of defining our partnership, our partnership. So, so I look forward to continuing working with all of you and on our voyage of discovery, as was referenced, and uh, to building a better future. I had a very good and productive conversation with Prime Minister Modi. I think we share a number of goals together in India. Um, very interesting, helping create more jobs, helping digitize more small and medium-sized businesses, and then helping more Indian companies and products be able to be exported all around the world. The most important uh, takeaway is uh, 
<laughs> the Prime Minister's passion for India's development, the, the welcome mat to business and investment and opportunity is, I think, obvious not just to me, but to pretty much everybody who has interacted uh, with him. He does have a specific interest in aviation and aerospace. Um, it's a big vision. I uh, would like for India to play a significant role, not just for India, but for the region uh, broadly. And, uh, you know, at Boeing, we support that 100%. I, I think it's, it's great when technologies and opportunities align with the vision that a leader has for a country, and that's where we are. India Today's Foreign Affairs Editor Geeta Mohan is in the U.S. tracking all of those details. Geeta is now joining me live. Uh, Geeta, good morning to you from India. Uh, give us an idea about what next for the Prime Minister. This has been an extremely eventful two-day visit to the U.S. And now, of course, he's headed to Egypt, the first state visit of an Indian Prime Minister since 1997. Well, uh, to begin with, uh, let's talk about the visit to the United States of America. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had a very fruitful and a successful uh, visit to uh, the United States of America. It's a state visit, a historic one where there have been many firsts uh, with a very warm, resounding welcome, not just from the Indian community, but from the Biden family also. The Bidens inviting him for a private dinner, uh, apart from the state banquet that they were anyway going to host. Uh, the private dinner was overlooked by uh, the First Lady herself in terms of the layout, in terms of the fact that a, a spectacular vegetarian meal was prepared for uh, the Indian Premier. We've had Indian Premiers in the past also who've been vegetarian, uh, but uh, the special nuance of having millets added to the menu. Uh, in terms of the deals and the announcements, there have been so many uh, when, it, when it comes to uh, substantive outcome. Uh, be the GE F4 one for deal uh, with uh, uh, with uh, with Hal uh, that is going to be a game changer manufacturing in India India has been pushing for not just complete technology transfer but also has been saying that if uh, if India is buying your product your complete product then source uh, the raw materials source from India whatever that they can source and if they're looking at manufacturing outside then look at India to manufacture outside the Artemis Accord another very very important uh, move forward in space col uh, collaboration where we could see Indians uh, in the International Space Station by 2024. Uh, there are so many uh, aspects when it comes to economy, trade, but one uh, pain point for all the Indian Americans was the visa issue. And I'm not talking about delays in visas, that's for the Indians. Uh, I'm talking about Indian Americans and the H-1B visa policy, or for that matter, those with work permits uh, now can stamp, get their visa stamped here. Uh, a huge, huge move forward for all these people. They were so happy when Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke about it. But also uh, in terms of visa delays, more consulates coming up in uh, India and uh, similarly more Indian consulates coming up in uh, America. So a lot of substantive talk, um, forward movement. There have been uh, certain areas where we looked at uh, countering China, certain other areas where uh, because of the Russia-Ukraine war there has been a uh, conversation with regards to how that is headed. India, again, the Indian Premier repeated that this is not an era of war. The congressional address, a historic one, second time uh, for an Indian Premier uh, uh, addressing the, uh, the, the, the congressional joint meeting of the Congress in itself was historic. Uh, it has never happened before that uh, uh, one Indian Premier addresses the U.S. Congress uh, on two occasions. Uh, that happened, but the messaging over there absolutely clear. For all the naysayers of democracy and Indian democracy, Prime Minister Narendra Modi pointed out that India indeed is a democracy, that there is a voice for dis dissent. And uh, uh, while there have been areas of concern, uh, we saw the, uh, the, the lunch at the State Department with Kamala Harris and Antony Blinken. So a forward movement there where Kamala Harris uh, is looking to engage India and Prime Minister Narendra Modi started off on the right foot by saying when he spoke about Indians coming and achieving in uh, America. He said, there's one standing right behind me and he was referring to the vice president. So uh, he is going a very, very successful man when it comes to achievements from the visit. Uh, moving forward, 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi's second leg of his two-nation tour is Egypt, a very important tour, a very important uh, country for India. Uh, President Sisi had come visiting India uh, for the Republic Day and then uh, now Prime Minister Narendra Modi, a long overdue visit, is going to be in Egypt for, uh, the, for, for an official visit to, uh, to the country where he is going to in engage the North African Islamic nation that holds a lot of sway in the region and is a powerful country. Uh, and uh, is going to engage them on very many quarters. Security is going to be very important and top of uh, uh, India's agenda. Economic and trade ties given Egypt's position, geostrategic position. Uh, but what he is going to do is, apart from the bilateral meeting, he's engaging uh, an India group that was con constituted by President Sisi after he went uh, from India, uh, when he had come for the Republic Day, he went and constituted this group. He's also going to meet thought leaders of Egypt. He's going to go to the Grand Mufti Mosque in Egypt and the Al-Hakim Mosque. So a lot of messaging, a lot of symbolism and a lot of substance. Uh, symbolism is, and substance has been uh, part of uh, Prime Minister Modi's uh, agenda in America. It will be so in Egypt as well. And then in Egypt, as he does in every country, he is going to engage the Indian community there as well. Geeta getting us all of those uh, details. Geeta, I'm going to thank you for the moment for joining us and sharing that perspective and all of those inputs uh, with us. Geeta Mohan there reporting from the Ronald Reagan Centre. That also brings us to the end of this edition. News continues on the other side. Thanks for watching. India Today. If you, uh, you know, travel towards uh, these Western countries, European countries, uh, it's crazy how people they are involved in yoga. Every third street will have a beautiful yoga center. It's not only that you're just you know, running outside and you got some place and practicing yoga. There are dedicated academies, institutes, studios to practice yoga. So what our experience is, you know, let it be the streets of Manhattan or in Japan. People they practice there, they spend a year or two years and then they are back to Himalayas. You will see them in Himachal Pradesh, in Rishikesh or in Nepal, these kind of you know, mountain ranges. They come and they spend their time. They try to go more deep in yogic practices. In my early educational days, I, um, I was a little boy and I was very lost. I didn't know where to turn, I didn't know what to do, I didn't know who to believe. So I, and I always wondered why I was here. Uh, I knew I was here for a specific reason. We implement the practice of yoga. So naturally, um, it changes your inner mechanism. Um, I gave up uh, my business in the UK and uh, I sold my house in the UK to come to India to learn the ancient teachings of uh, yoga and uh, pranayams, breathing techniques, mudras and meditation techniques. Um, and it's helped me so, uh, so much because obviously moving from England to India is such a big jump and it's, it's enabled uh, me to have a stronger mindset. Now that I realize that this is what I need to do in this lifetime, um, it's very passionate for me to bring these teachings back to the West, uh, back to England, and um, help humanity.
are traveling from different parts armed with facts looking at political facts she takes the news by its horn do you think the future of these students are not hampered fears bold and direct setting the tone for the biggest stories from every corner and every angle expect nothing but the unfiltered truth news first niceties later watch me nabila jamal on india today make your media plans smarter with india today live tv on your connected devices amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers to advertise mail us at sales@ajtag.com Hello welcome you're watching our special broadcast I'm Dipali Patel in the next 30 minutes we on India today are going to celebrate the life and times of superstar Talapati Vijay as he turns a year older To begin with let's first bring you how the makers of his next film Leo shared the first look from his much anticipated actioner in order to wish him Talapati bari bari Vijay an actor par excellence every single time he's on the screens he creates nothing but only magic and when this mass hero turns a year older fans turn on the celebration mode wishes poured in for Talapati from across the nation that's not all to mark the special occasion The makers of his most anticipated film Leo too shared this first look poster in which he can be seen bashing someone with a sledge hammer. Ever since the film was announced, it has grabbed eyeballs for all the right reasons. Bloody sweet The makers however have been smartly teasing this Tamil language action film with one element after the other. Held by Lokesh Kanagaraj, the Tamil actioner is currently in shooting phase and comprises of an ensemble cast including Trisha and Sanjay Dutt. As per reports, Sanjay Dutt, who is making his big Tamil debut with this film, will not only be playing the role of an antagonist, but his character has also been penned as Talapati's father in the film. Dura! 
Leo is special in ways more than one, as it also marks the second collaboration between the filmmaker and Vijay after Master. Moreover, Leo also marks the return of the hit pair of Trisha and Vijay after a really long time. Yeah, in that, you get better birthday trip, Anantya. Hmm, Adam, what are you? Sir, buying a romantic mood, learning a. So as the poster has left everyone intrigued, one cannot wait to witness Talapati take down the bad guys in Rio. Entertainment Bureau, India Today. Bloody sweet. Not just Leo, Vijay is also making headlines for his next venture, tentatively titled Talapati 68. The actor who was last seen in Barisu shared details of his next film on social media. Here's more on that. Talapati Vijay is undoubtedly one of the busiest actors of current times. The superstar is smoothly juggling between one big project to another and now Vijay took to social media to announce his next venture, tentatively titled as Talapati 68, which will be directed by Venkat Prabhu. Film will reportedly be made on a grand scale and is slated for 2024 release. Backed by AGS Entertainment, Talapati 68 will also mark the second collaboration with the production house and the actor after their blockbuster outing Bigil. Bigil, he's the pride of a nation. Hey, Meanwhile, Talapati Vijay also has Leo, which is one of the most anticipated films of 2023. With back-to-back -back films in the pipeline, Talapati Vijay has kept his fans on tenterhooks as they eagerly await to witness him on the big screens after he delivered a blockbuster with Varisu much recently. <laughs> Talapati Vijay has been ruling the showbiz as a mass entertainer from his first role as a trial artist in 1984 till present. He's one of the most loved superstars. Let's take a look at his star power. Mass entertainer Vijay has had a dream run on the professional front. Superstar Vijay began his journey in films as a child artist back in 1984. Vijay! <laughs> <laughs> and his first movie as a hero was Nalai Tirpa in 1992 when he was 18 year old. A 
However, it was Pue Onakaga in 1996 that got him recognition. It was a blockbuster movie starring legendary actors like M N Nambiar and Nagesh. The 1997 movie Kadalak Maryade was not only Vijay's career best but also regarded as one of the classic hits of Kollywood. Interestingly the female lead in the film was Shalini Tala Ajit's wife Konjam por kolu sori ketirade enne karaatta varuvalo The movie was a remake of Anyathi Prav a Malayalam super hit Vijay received Tamil Nadu State Award for best actor Illai ye maatram taru In 2001 Siddiq directed Friends was released. Surya was paired up with Vijay and it was the first blockbuster for Surya. The movie ran for more than 175 days in theaters and was one of the top grossers for the year. Asama porane, break priya na porane. Ama ninge yaar. Ayyo. Enna aachi ivanukku? Idhu yaar, unga wife. Post a few career flops. Vijay bounced back as an action hero with Tirumalai. Which went on to be a blockbuster in 2003. And then came Gilli, also an action thriller directed by Dharan in 2004. Vijay played the role of a kabaddi player and this was Vijay's first movie to collect 40 crores at the box office. Pokri released on Pongal 2007. It was a remake of Telugu film Pokri. but the tamil version was directed by prabhu deva ipdi irangudhu kanna mudichu asin was the actress in this action movie nalla vana ketta vana nu yosikirala kandipa nalla vanga kedaiyadhu the movie ran for more than 200 days in theaters ayyanaru vette katti ஆட்டி மோடிவ் பண்ணிட்டனா એમ பேச்ச நானே கேட்க மாட்டேன் லேட்டர் திஸ் விஜே ஃபிலிம் வாஸ் ரீமேட் இன் ஹிந்தி as wanted in 2009 which resurrected salman khan's career as an action star ek baar jo maine commitment kar di uske baad tumhe khud ki bhi nahi sunta The first movie of Vijay which entered the 100 crore club was Tupaki in 2012 directed by AR Murugathos Captain Arka adikena karam It was an action thriller in which Vijay played the role of an intelligence officer in the Indian army I'm waiting. This film too was remade in Hindi in 2014 with Akshay Kumar in the lead titled Holiday a soldier is never off duty. Main aa raha hu tere paas. Chaa mila. Khatam kar dunga. I'm waiting. Kati was another AR Murugathos movie in which Vijay acted in 2014. The film faced many controversies before its release but earned more than 100 crores. Arisi parup kai gari kottamalli karuvalla varaga gramathil undu varano. Ana or gramatha setta na 
Vijay played a double role and Samantha played the female lead. Like Tupaki, this Murugadas film is slated to have a Hindi remake with reports of Akshay Kumar headlining it. His 2017 film Marcel was a blockbuster. Despite the controversy it caused, the film became a huge hit. In the movie, Vijay as the magician addresses the media and highlights the need for better healthcare facilities in Tamil Nadu. The film did not go down well with the government. Like Marcel, his film Sarkar 2 had its share of controversies, but it did not dampen the ticket collection. Nah, ini kenapa nak? Election day. Nah, ini untuk vote untuk vote untuk kah kah untuk kah. The film had a blockbuster opening across Tamil Nadu, and despite mixed reviews, the fans have given a thumbs up to the political flick. Sarkar reportedly made 225.3 crore at the worldwide box office in just 14 days. And this even when the full HD copy of Sarkar which was leaked just hours after its release and people were given free access to download the copy illegally. Sarkar made headlines when the producers reportedly agreed to remove or mute controversial portions critical of Tamil Nadu's AIADMK government after two ministers leveled sedition charges against them. Unnilla ground la velaattom. Namma veli velaal namma chella. Vijay was then seen in a sports drama Bigil in 2019 and the film turned out to be a blockbuster. written and directed by atli the film followed the story of michael played by vijay a former footballer who decides to coach a women's football team nahi har ale raha padna le michael two years after bigil talapati vijay returned with master in 2021 The superstar played the role of a college professor John Dureraj in this Lokesh Kanagaraj directorial. The film also starred Vijay Sethupathi apart from Malvika Mohanan and marked the maiden collaboration of Vijay and the filmmaker. Despite the coronavirus pandemic, Master opened to a fantastic start at the box office. However, the film's collection dipped after the opening day. Master was not only subjected to some negative reviews, but social media was also flooded with memes criticizing the action film. In fact, Hashtags like Master Disaster, Flop, and Master Verdict Disaster also trended. But after receiving much flack from audience, the actor came back with a bang with the beast. Despite being panned by the critics, the film turned out to be a massive success and minted over 230 crores worldwide. Directed by Nelson Dilip Kumar, the action flick also featured Pooja Hegde and Selva Raghavan. This is a very interesting story. Beast narrated the story of an ex-raw agent who goes on a crusade to rescue people held hostage in a shopping mall by terrorists. Because I'm not a politician, I'm a soldier. Entertainment Bureau, India Today. It's time for a very short break now but there's lots more coming up on the other side so stay tuned to India today.
watching India Today. Why does this happen? Let me tell you the science behind it. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today News Mo. Kerala public health. All political parties traveling from different parts. Armed with facts. Looking at political facts. She takes the news by its horn. Do you think the future of these students are not hampered? Fierce, bold, and direct, setting the tone for the biggest stories from every corner and every angle. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me, Nabila Jamal, on India Today. You are watching. India Today. Talapati Vijay is one of the biggest superstars. He has a massive fan following across the globe, yet is humble to the core. The actor who started off his cinematic journey as a child has been in the movies for almost four decades now. So let's take a look at his net worth and what makes him the superstar that he is today. Joseph Vijay Chandrasekhar, a.k.a. Talapati Vijay. One of the biggest superstars of Indian cinema, perhaps the most bankable too. And his fan following is unmatchable just as his king-size life on and off screen. With no inherent show-off personality like one of those rare low-key celebrities, he surely and easily make it to the list of most grounded actors. But his name is also among those big shots who takes home a huge paycheck with every film, making his net worth something which often sweeps his fan base off their feet. That's right, while his acting prowess is enough to make his fans go berserk, What's also often talked about is his stature as the wealthiest actor in Indian cinema. According to reports, Talapati Vijay has a whopping net worth of $56 million, which is around 445 crore rupees and earns an annual income between 120 to 150 crore rupees. Not many know that he reportedly charged around 100 crore rupees for Nelson Dilip Kumar directorial rupees. One of the best and the most notorious spice we have ever had. Thereafter, he maintained his 100 crore club and took home a hefty pay of rupees 150 crore rupees in his next very soon, which was released in January 2023. Ground matta uvalenge rukla, ana audience laru vortra matta dam papa ge. Kelly butrigya, atta naayagan. 
clashing at the box office with Ajit Kumar's Thunivu. Not just films, in fact, owing to his popularity, Talapati Vijay also makes smart choices when it comes to his collaborations with brands. According to reports, the actor earns an estimate of Rs 10 crores per year for his several brand endorsements. What's more, Talapati Vijay even is an owner of several expensive assets. He lives with his wife Sangeeta Sonalingam and two children, Jason Sanjay and Divya Shasha, at a lavish seaside bungalow located at Kasuarina Drive Street in Chennai's Nilakarai neighborhood. This luxury abode is apparently inspired by Hollywood actor Tom Cruise's beach house, which he saw during his visit to the US. That's not all, he also owns multiple luxury wheels, including a Rolls Royce Ghost, which he got imported from England. Believe it or not, Talapati Vijay certainly has carved a lifestyle for himself and his family that one can only imagine, perhaps is also too good to be true. Entertainment Bureau, India Today. Well, that's all we pack in our special broadcast. Keep watching In The Club from Monday to Friday at 2.30 p.m. and 11.30 p.m. only on India Today to get your daily dose of entertainment. This is me, the Pari Paril, signing off for today. Till next time, thanks for watching and goodbye. watching India Today. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com. Cheers, Bon Homie and the biggest global bond. World's biggest and oldest democracies unite. Modi Biden, a new chapter in India's foreign policy. Watch all this and more on World Today, only on India Today.
आप वॉचिंग इंडिया टुडे A very good morning. You're watching India Today TV. I'm Sneha Murdani. Our top focus again continues to be the Prime Minister's visit. First to the US, which is wrapped up, and now to Egypt for two days. We're getting you up to speed with every single development on that front. First, the headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Modi's mega diaspora connect in Washington DC says India shaping the world's Vikas hails India US ties. माता की भारत माता की भारत माता की यूएस प्रेसिडेंट बाइडेन स्पेशल गिफ्ट फॉर मोदी ए टी शर्ट विद हिस्स कोट्स ऑन ए आई द प्रिंट रीड्स फ्यूचर इज ए आई अमेरिका एंड इंडिया यूएस वाइस प्रेसिडेंट कमला हैरिस स्टेट सेक्रेटरी एंटनी ब्लिंकन हो स्टेट Luncheon for Prime Minister Modi this after Biden's hosted a dinner for the Prime Minister. Cheer. Cheer. Prime Minister Narendra Modi meets CEOs and finally of the US visit the meeting marked by pledges of deeper US India cooperation on areas including space, artificial intelligence and quantum computing. The Prime Minister Modi wraps up the US visit on route state visit to Egypt India Egypt to formalize strategic partnership during the Prime Minister's key visit. Let's take a look at the top highlights on the Prime Minister's last day in the Washington DC. US Vice President Kamala Harris and Secretary of State Antony Blinken hosted a lunch for the Prime Minister at the State Department. Samosa, khichdi, mango halwa and masala chai were among other delicacies at the White House. President Joe Biden gifted a special T-shirt to the Prime Minister with the Prime Minister's quote on AI. Earlier during a speech at the U.S. Congress, the Prime Minister quoted AI as momentous America-India ties. Prime Minister Narendra Modi met top business leaders, including CEOs of Boeing, Amazon, and Google, and tech honcho Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google. The Prime Minister's meeting with Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun comes. On the heels of in Air India rather signing orders of over 200 jets early this week from Boeing. Prime Minister Narendra Modi in his address to young entrepreneurs at the Kennedy Center in Washington hailed technology handshake as a direct message to companies and businesses of both countries. Award-winning international singer Mary Milburn. perform the national anthem of india at the ronald reagan building in washington dc on the final leg of his us visit as a state guest indian prime minister narendra modi addressed the indian community at the ronald reagan building in washington dc his much anticipated address began with international singer mary milburn rendering india's national anthem The Prime Minister also announced that Indian origin members will not have to leave the US for an H1B visa from now onwards. He's also said that the United States will open new consulates in Bengaluru and Ahmedabad. Lauding the several deals in during the maiden visit, the Prime Minister announced India US ties had embarked on a glorious new journey by converging on global strategic issues, technology transfer, manufacturing cooperation and much more. Chance of Bharat Mata ki jai. and when they mat and i'm reverberated inside the building aap mein se bahut se logon ki h1b visa ke renew ko lekar bhi 
लंबे अरसे से एक डिमांड थी अब ये निर्णय लिया गया है कि एच वन बी वीजा को रिन्यू करने के लिए आपको अमेरिका से बाहर नहीं जाना पड़ेगा अमेरिका में रहते हुए ही अब ये वीजा रिन्यू हो जाएगा इसके लिए इस साल एक पायलट प्रोजेक्ट शुरू किया जाएगा इसका बहुत बड़ा फायदा हमारे आईटी प्रोफेशनल्स को भी होने वाला है इस फैसले के जो भी अनुभव होंगे उसे देखते हुए यही व्यवस्था भविष्य में एल कैटेगरी वीजा के लिए भी हो सकती है आप में से बहुत सारे लोग यहां बरसों से अमेरिका में रह रहे हैं यहां आप अपने जीवन में अपनी दिनचर्या में व्यस्त रहते हैं लेकिन मैं ये भी जानता हूं कि आपका मन आपका दिल भारत में भी लगा रहता है इसलिए आपकी सहूलियत ये भी भारत की प्राथमिकता है आपकी जरूरतों को देखते हुए भारत इस साल सीएटल में एक नया कॉन्सुलेट खोलने जा रहा है To begin with, let's talk about the visit to the United States of America. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had a very fruitful and a successful uh, visit to uh, the United States of America. It's a state visit, a historic one where there have been many firsts, uh, with a very warm, resounding welcome, not just from the Indian community but from the Biden family also. The Bidens inviting him for a private dinner uh, apart from the state banquet that they were anyway going to host. Uh, the private dinner was overlooked by uh, the first lady herself in terms of the layout in terms of the fact that a, a spectacular vegetarian meal was prepared for uh, the indian premier we've had indian premiers in the past also who've been vegetarian uh, but uh, the special nuance of having millets added to the menu uh, in terms of the deals and the announcements there have been so many uh, when it when it comes to a uh, substantive outcome uh, be the ge f414 d Uh, with uh, uh, with uh, with Hal, uh, that is going to be a game changer. Manufacturing in India, India has been pushing for not just complete technology transfer, but also has been saying that if uh, if India is buying your product, your complete product, then source uh, the raw materials, source from India whatever that they can source. And if they're looking at manufacturing outside, then look at India to manufacture outside. The Artemis Accord, another very important. to uh, move forward in space col uh, collaboration where we could see indians uh, in the international space station by 2024 uh, there are so many uh, aspects when it comes to economy trade but one uh, pain point for all the indian americans was the visa issue and i'm not talking about delays in visas that's for the indians uh, i'm talking about indian americans and the h1b visa policy or for that matter those with work permits uh, now can stamp get their visa stamped here uh, 
a huge, huge move forward for all these people. They were so happy when Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke about it. But also in terms of visa delays, more consulates coming up in uh, India and uh, similarly more Indian consulates coming up in uh, America. So a lot of substantive talk, um, forward movement. There have been uh, certain areas where we looked at uh, countering China, certain other areas where uh, because of the Russia-Ukraine war, there has been a conversation with regards to how that is headed. India, again, the Indian Premier repeated that this is not an era of war. The congressional address, a historic one, second time uh, for an Indian Premier uh, uh, addressing the, uh, the, the, the congressional joint meeting of the Congress in itself was historic. Uh, it has never happened before that uh, uh, one Indian Premier addresses the U.S. Congress uh, on two occasions. Uh, that happened, but the messaging over there absolutely clear. For all the naysayers of democracy and Indian democracy, Prime Minister Narendra Modi pointed out that India indeed is a democracy, that there is a voice for dis dissent. And uh, uh, while there have been areas of concern, uh, we saw the, uh, the, the lunch at the State Department with Kamala Harris and Antony Blinken. So a forward movement there where Kamala Harris uh, is looking to engage India and Prime Minister Narendra Modi started off on the right foot by saying when he spoke about Indians coming and achieving in uh, America, he said there's one standing right behind me and he was referring to the Vice President. So uh, he is going a very, very successful man when it comes to achievements from the visit. On final day of his U.S. state visit, the Prime Minister and President Biden participated in an India-U.S. high-tech handshake event at the White House. Several leading Indian and American CEOs of tech companies and startups took part in this event aimed at deepening technology collaborations between the two countries. The Prime Minister met Google CEO Sundar Pichai, Amazon CEO Andrew Jassy, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, Apple CEO Tim Cook, among other business leaders. NASA astronaut Sunita Williams, Mahindra Group CEO, Anil Mahindra, Zeroda co-founder Nikhil Kamath and Mukesh Ambani from Reliance Industries were also present at this event. The Prime Minister underlined the immense potential of harnessing Indian tech-US cooperation for socio-economic growth. President Biden gifted a special T-shirt to Prime Minister Modi with the latter's quote on AI. Remember the Prime Minister in his visit in the US Congress address had hailed the momentous development in AI, that is, America and India ties. In Mudival Pavisi, Asha, Pechande, Sankal Pukesha, Am Sablo, Rasputin Biden, the vision, Harat Kaju aspirations, Rasputin Biden, the Matu Taka, or Harat Kaju Samhana, Um Sapko Lekar, the Agate and Leka. एक मक्कम निर्धार का ये अवसर है और इसके लिए मैं सचमुच में मेरे मित्र रहमान लोगों को बहुत अभिनंदन करता हूं कि उन्होंने भारत की यात्रा की काफी समय निकाला और उन्होंने खुद ने जो अनुभव किया और उन्होंने आकर के यहां इसको आगे बढ़ाया मैं आपका भी आभारी हूं राष्ट्रपति बायरेंज जी का जितना आभार करूँ उतना कम है मैं फिर एक बार आप सबका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करता हूँ we're sticking up for our values and the vision of our the vision of the world. And so our partnership between India and the United States will go a long way, in my view, to define what the 21st century looks like. And our technology, technological cooperation, will be a big part of defining our partnership, our partnership. So, so look forward to continuing working with all of you and on our voyage of discovery, as was referenced, and uh, to building a better future. It was an honor to meet Prime Minister Modi during a historic visit uh, to the U.S. Uh, the excitement here, uh, you know, in terms of seeing the progress India has made, particularly around the vision of digital India and the economic opportunity. And I had met the Prime Minister in December, and we re continued our conversation. And we shared uh, Google is investing $10 billion in the India Digitization Fund. And we are continuing to invest through that, including in companies working on AI. I had a very good and productive conversation with Prime Minister Modi. I think we share a number of goals together in India. Um, very interested in helping create more jobs, 
helping digitize more small and medium-sized businesses, and then helping more Indian companies and products be able to be exported all around the world. The most important uh, takeaway is uh, the Prime Minister's passion for India's development, the, the welcome mat to business and investment and opportunity is, I think, obvious not just to me, but to pretty much everybody who has interacted uh, with him. He does have a specific interest in aviation and aerospace. Um, it's a big vision. I uh, would like for India to play a significant role, not just for India, but for the region uh, broadly. And, uh, you know, at Boeing, we support that 100%. I, I think it's, it's great when technologies and opportunities align with the vision that a leader has for a country, and that's where we are. The U.S. Vice President hosted a state lunch for Prime Minister Modi, where they raised a toast to India-U.S. ties. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Antony Blinken and Kamala Harris spoke about their shared love for yoga, samosa and democratic values. In attendance were Indra Nui and top diplomats, among others. We'll get you that report in a moment from now. We have some news just coming in first. Let's go to Jay. News just coming in. Russia's Wagner chief faces mutiny charges in an astonishing escalation of infighting. Russia accused Wagner mercenary chief has of calling an armed mutiny. Now he said that his call to action against the Russian military was not a mutiny but a march for justice. The Wagner chief says he will go to the end to remove Moscow's military leaders. Call him a military vehicles entering Russia's Rostov and Don. Wagner Group's chief Yevgeny Prigozhin claims his mercenary fighters downed a Russian military helicopter. Russian commander urges the Wagner fighters to obey will of the president and return to bases. Getting in details of Russia's Wagner chief facing charges of a mutiny. This is an astonishing escalation of infighting within Russia, where Russia has accused Wagner mercenary chief Yevgeny Prigozhin of calling for an armed mutiny. Prigozhin said that his call to action against the Russian military was not a mutiny but a march for justice. The Wagner chief says he will go to the end to remove Moscow's military leaders. A column of military vehicles entering Russia's Rostov and Don. Wagner Group's chief Yevgeny Prigozhin has claimed his mercenary fighters have already downed a Russian military helicopter. It appears to be an infighting that seems to have broken out among Russia's military chiefs, where the Wagner Group and Russian military are at odds. Alexander from Moscow is getting us up to speed with the very latest developments. Alexander, give us a sense really of what is going on. Is this some sort of an infighting that has broken out among Russia's military chiefs? Yeah, the situation is actually calm in Moscow where I am now. But uh, as we report, as we hear reports from Russian media, as the Wagner Group mercenaries have uh, sort of declared an armed mutiny against the, the against the political power of uh, President Vladimir Putin. Uh, the mercenaries, as they have said, uh, have pronounced different different ultimatums to the military, uh, including uh, Defense Minister Shoigu, and they have uh, they have uh, uh, entered the city of Rostov, according to the media reports uh, in news there are reports that the governor of Rost Rostov region uh, Mr. Gladkov has said to calm down and the situation is under under control however it's very difficult to say what's going on right now and uh, President Putin uh, uh, according to his press, press secretaries uh, has, uh, is, is aware of the situation is aware of the situation and uh, and the prosecutor's office in Russian Federation has uh, opened a case against Mr. 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 Prigozhin, uh, Mr. Uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin, who is a notorious, uh, notorious heavyweight and a military commander of the private 
Wagner Group. Uh, so uh, right now the situation is actually uh, might get tense in Rostov region. However, in Moscow, there have been reports on uh, military taking various buildings under control uh, for uh, to calm down the situation. And I am here in Moscow in a very quiet area where I live, so I don't see it's five o'clock in the morning almost, and I don't see any anything any any signs of uh, unrest or anything like that. So the situation is calm right now. All right. But what we see are pictures, in fact, of coming in of tanks being moved inside cities. Uh, you know, Alexander, I also want to ask you, this does appear really the beginning of a larger insurgency against the Putin regime, doesn't it? It's very difficult to say right now. Uh, and, you know, people in Moscow, and uh, uh, so the experts have said, if uh, Mr. Prigozhin is, has declared uh, this statement, this radical statement, uh, if there are some people behind him, some people within the political regime of uh, Vladimir Putin who might be backing him because a person alone could not actually do this uh, because, as we know from the past, uh, usually the military people or paramilitary people always have backers within the political system, uh, those who are might be against. Uh, 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 there are also critics of Mr. Prigozhin who are saying that uh, right now but Russia is fighting Ukraine, and uh, it's uh, that Mr. Prigozhin actually makes things worse for the Russian army, which is, uh, which is in a, in a, currently in a fighting, right? So it's open up, open up, open up some lines, and uh, it's, it's going to be difficult for, for, um, for the Russian soldiers. Undoubtedly, so, huge the ramifications for Ukraine. Give us a sense of how both Ukraine and also the U.S. are looking at the developments from uh, Russia? Well, uh, as, uh, I, I, just, I, I haven't heard any reaction from the uh, Ukrainian side, but uh, the, Ukrainian, uh, the Ukrainian political elite and Ukrainian military always valued Mr. Prigozhin as a serious, serious commander, despite, because he has used some of the former military men, some of the former prisoners, but his force was the most uh, advanced and actually they've been holding the city of Bakhmut. By the way, Mr. Prigozhin has also said positive things about Mr. Uh, Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, saying he's a strong man, serious man, and, uh, you know, he, you know, you have to find, you have to respect your enemy. Also, before starting his mutiny, Mr. Prigozhin has said very openly that the war in Ukraine has started because of the uh, corruption of several people within the political, he openly blamed. And when I heard this statement, he openly blamed several people within the political of, of Russia while actually avoiding criticizing Mr. Putin directly. And when I heard the statement, I thought this guy may be someone behind him because he's saying some open words. He's saying very critical, uh, critical words about serious people, about Mr. Shoigu, not only criticizing him, but openly calling, uh, openly calling to to uh, raise arms against the you know defense minister of Russia Federation. It is very interesting uh, also to, to to say that almost 30 years ago, Mr. Shoigu himself defended the Russian White House when President Yeltsin was president against the coup plotters who ousted President Gorbachev. That's the only recent history of Russian coup in uh, in. Uh, in the Russian history, when President Gorbachev was ousted while he was on Crimea on vacation, and the emergency committee, including several people from the political elite, took power. And uh, that, uh, that, that, that thing lasted only for three days, uh, but following the, following the collapse of the Soviet Union. Also, you know, Alexander, I, I want to ask you, uh, for our viewers, give us an idea about the Wagner Group. This, of course, is uh, the private military contractor, has been in news earlier in the past as well. Controversial in many which ways. Tell us a little about that group. The, the Wagner Group is actually called, uh, um, uh, it's, they, you, you bring the name and when you hear the Wagner Group, the composer, Richard Wagner. That's true because it was, it was started by a, 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 a paramilitary man called uh, Mr. Utkin, whose, uh, whose nickname was, Mr., was Wagner. That's why it was called Wagner. The group actually became, uh, gained notoriety in Africa, where he fought 
very forward as a paramilitary group against some of the insurgents on the on the on the side of African uh, African governments, for example, in uh, Central African Republic, where it held its stronghold. But Mr. Mr. Prigozhin himself is actually a very controversial figure. He was known as Mr. Putin's kook because he, uh, who um, spent some time in prison for hooliganism in the Soviet Union, almost yet eight years after Gorbachev perestroika started in the Soviet Union, he was freed. Then he became a restaurant owner, a very um, a very popular restaurant owner, where he hosted Mr. Putin and celebrities. That's how he he actually befriended Mr. Putin. It is very funny and very funny fact of Mr. Prigozhin's own life. Almost 30 years ago, he wrote a children's book. He has two children. Um, he has a wife and uh, two children. And uh, he is also, uh, as Mr. Navalny, Mr. Putin's critic, called him as a billionaire, having a lot of uh, wealth that he inherited and uh, he made over because of his connections. But Mr. Prigozhin also became very popular in a recent in a recent time, while he was fighting in Ukraine, and he became very uh, a notorious fighter. Also, uh, as Mr. Prigozhin has a, a private military company, the private military companies officially are banned under Russian law. So, Mr. Prigozhin is actually in the sort of a gray area of law. His uh, company, his uh, Wagner Group, officially does not even exist. Although it has a lot of people, some of them are former prisoners, but he actually was given the green light to get, to get people out of prison. Uh, some of them actually went to front instead of serving. And those people can be serious. It's not the people who just stole cars or maybe plotted small drugs. Those are people who committed several crimes, right? You know, even the heavy crimes, right? Some of the people, what he has uh, is uh, actually a former military band. Mr. Brigosian is also known for charisma. He speaks, he speaks very openly. He has sort of an appearance. And even some of the people from the liberal side are now praising Mr. Brigosian for starting, for breaking this uh, situation. So, you know, he's an, an interesting person to see. All right. Alexander, I'm going to thank you for the moment for joining us uh, with your information on that important story that we are tracking from Russia. Gaurav Savant, the managing editor, is also with us. Gaurav, it does clearly appear that at least in one part of Russia, if not Moscow, this is uh, uh, Rostov and Don, where military forces are on the move and there is some sort of an infighting that has broken out between Russia's military forces and the head of the mercenary group. Uh Gaurav, can you hear me? Gaurav, in fact, I was asking you that uh, there is, in fact, an infighting which we see that seems to have broken out among Russia's military chiefs here. You're absolutely right, and it's a huge setback. Uh, Okay, we'll try and connect that line with Gaurav Savant in a moment uh, from now, but we're getting you details of what seems to be an infighting among Putin's uh, lieutenants, the head of a mercenary force, appears to be now wanting to take over and uh, says that uh, they're not going to allow civilians to be killed in this fashion. It's time for a quick commercial break here. We're getting you much more news in just a bit. watching India Today. when the International Chess Federation released the rankings for the under-7 category, right on top was an Indian wonder kid. Anupriya Yadav from Prayagraj has secured the first position at the age of 6 years, leaving behind players from the rest of the world. First of all, my mother taught me 
क्योंकि मैं मम्मी को बहुत फॉलो करती थी तो इसलिए मैंने मम्मी से सीखा पापा फिर करने लगे मेरे साथ मैच खेलने लगे तो उसी फिर जब पापा से भी हाई लेवल पे हो गई तो दीदी ने सिखाने लगा Anupriya is inspired by her sister Priya Yadav who is a national level chess player. Her parents want to see both of them become grandmasters. Hamari vidho betiyan hi hain isliye hamare liye hum beto se badh ke aaye hain aur hamara yahi sapna hai ki ye inke naam se hum jab bhi jaane jate hain humko hamare agal bagal mein agar koi jaan पहुँचेगा तो अब कोई भी बोलेगा प्रिया यादव का घर बताइए अनुप्रिया यादव का घर बताइए तो सीधे हमारे घर पहुँच जाएंगे हमारा नाम तो बल बहुत कम ही लोग जानते होंगे वाइल अनुप्रिया एम्स टू बी अ ग्रैंड मास्टर हर इमीडिएट गोल इज डिफरेंट मैं पापा को हरा लेती हूँ बस मम्मी को भी हरा लेती हूँ दीदी को तो अब आगे सपना क्या है किसको हराना चाहिए दीदी को After the latest rankings were released school teachers felicitated Anupriya for her achievements Anupriya is now a hero at her school Your report India today watching India today Hello and welcome to the latest edition of It's Gone Viral I'm Sneha Mordani In the next half an hour we will be showing you some of the images and videos that have gone viral last week and created some buzz Recently released Adi Purush may be facing criticism from certain sections but the film is still a talking point an artificial intelligence artist recreated looks of lead actors from the film leaving netizens in awe actors such as Prabhas Kriti Sanan Sunny Singh and Saif Ali Khan are seen in modified looks and some commented look better than portrayed in the film Yoga is not limited to only land and this practitioner proves the same from Rameshwaram in Tamil Nadu these trained yoga experts perform water yoga to mark international yoga day they are seen floating on water with eyes closed and maintaining the asana many netizens were surprised that this was a possibility too in ancient yoga practice He is commonly known as the philanthropist and an actor. Sonu Sood recorded this video to share his conversation with a corn seller on route Manali. While chatting, when Sood realized the bhutta seller is not married, he quickly shared his revenue details and urged people to find him a suitable match to marry such a hardworking man. The man too supported Sonu Sood's offer. बाद में करेगा लड़की ढूंढ रहा है लेकिन मैं जो भी लड़की वाले मैं बता दूं शेष भाई हमारे जौनपुर के हैं पचास रुपए का भुट्टा बेचते कितने भुट्टे बेचता रोज रोज एक बोरा बेचता एक बोरे में कितने आते हैं सौ पीस सौ पीस जी सर वेरी गुड देख मेहनती है घर छोड़ के बैठा हुआ है लड़की वालो ये लड़का है हिमाचल में रहता है एक बोरा भुट्टा बेचता है सौ भुट्टे बोलता है लड़की वालों को लड़की की तलाश जा रही है ध्यान देना मेरे को जरा ध्यान देना भैया You do not need money to enjoy in life. This video shared on social media shows women participating in a fun competition by creating a jugadu bowling alley. Each woman throws an attempt and audience erupts in laughter with an animated supervisor reacting to the game. Eventually, one woman manages to score and receives a prize of an oil bottle. Netizens are loving the effort and cheered on the participants. Gali gali teri laaj jali 
This video shows a man doing push-ups on top of a road signboard while shocked drivers continue to drive past. The traffic turns slow, trying to notice the man's innovative workout regime. The video was reportedly taken in Patnagar, a town in the Bolangir district of Odisha and has led to mixed reactions. You decide whether this should be encouraged or is he proving to be danger to road safety. Everyone loves an ice cream, especially to beat summer heat. Curiosity and innovations, however, may not always yield best results. In this viral Instagram video, milk is processed and thickened to create the ice cream base. Mixture is then poured into molds, sticks are inserted and ice cream is demolded and collected. Step-by-step -step preparation shows where melted chocolate is blended with a surprisingly high amount of oil resulting in syrup-like liquid. The ice cream is dipped into the chocolate syrup and frozen again. While the video has over 6 lakh views, not everyone is impressed with this experiment. To go to the washroom is no easy task if you are travelling in such a train compartment. This video shows a man resorting to thousand moves resembling an adventure sport. There is clearly no room in the aisle for him to walk through as many passengers are sitting on the floor. Indians love to experiment new combinations with food dishes. But this time a street food seller is going viral for his distinctive serving techniques for Rajnikan style dosa. In this video, the owner makes the dosa in unusual fashion and then suddenly swirls it towards the customer who catches it just in time. The video has collected over 4 lakh views showing appreciation for the dosa maker and his delivery in Rajnikan style. A 17-year-old Philadelphia High School for Girls graduate chose to dance when her name was announced to accept the diploma. But the incident was reacted to in a surprising manner when the teacher refused to give her the diploma and asked her to return to the seat instead. Hafsa Abdul Rahman cried out of embarrassment of how a dance move led to denial of graduation certificate. Netizens reacted in support of the girl. This viral video reminds love can be playful at any age. This old man can be seen nudging his wife who is busy sorting leafy veggies. She looked irritated on disruption but the old man continues to poke her with the stick. The man wants clearly more attention from the wife and netizens too are showering the elderly Bengali couple with love. Meet world's fastest accountant, Eugene Amodadzi, who blazed through the track with an astonishing 9.93 seconds in the 100 meter run, becoming Europe's fastest this year. He has now joined the ranks of British sprinting legends. Number crunching in professional life, 30-year-old Dad Z picked up athletics four years ago and now can add another number to his track achievements. Dr. Robert Moore of California has loved dogs all his life and when he turned 100, he enjoyed the party of a lifetime. His daughter organized a surprise for his 100th birthday with a dog parade in his honor. Over 100 dogs showed up at this centenarian's party. The viral video of dog playing fetch with homeless children is winning hearts online. While the dog is on the other side of gate in a house, the kids throw the ball which he's happy to fetch and return, both enjoying a little break and possibly forging a new friendship. This video is winning hearts on the internet. The eyes are in. They are black. They are very black. I like it. 
Raj Vuchois has won the Guinness World Record for most body modifications by male. According to Guinness World Record, the 62-year-old has 560 piercings and the numbers are increasing over the years. A lot of people think I am successful, but I don't believe in success. Surat celebrated International Yoga Day on 21st June by bringing 1,5,000 people together for a collective yoga session. This drone video of a flyover in Surat captured the participants participating yoga asanas with enthusiasm to mark the special day. Prime Minister Modi also congratulated Surat for setting world record on yoga day. This Instagram user turned out to be super lucky as she found a perfectly round egg. The chances of discovering such an egg are one in a billion. The egg is estimated to be worth around $1400 because of its unique shape. As India is enjoying the mango season, locals in Bihar organized a mango festival. As a part of the festival, a mango eating competition was also organized. Locals enthusiastically participated in the festival. This bride's unique Sangeet performance left not only her groom but also the netizens astonished. She wanted to surprise the groom by giving a dance performance while wearing roller skates. The audience cheered on as she lifted her lehenga to reveal her skates underneath. Remember the Kacha Badam song sung by a humble peanut seller that went viral? Now a Pakistani mango seller has come up with his version of Shakira's Waka Waka song that is doing rounds on the internet. Various videos of people dancing in Delhi Metro went viral not very long ago, prompting DMRC to issue strict guidelines prohibiting such behaviours. Now a video of a girl straightening her hair in the metro is circulating on social media. This viral video from New York City shows a pizza unit and a worker looking out through a window. And suddenly this man flicks the box toward an adjacent building. Stationed on a platform, construction workers catch the box just in time, receiving in turn cheers and applause. Next image shows the workers relishing their pizza slice. The video has already gained over 2 lakh views and clearly could be the fastest delivery of a pizza. This video is incredible and scary. An orca bit off the rudders of this delivery boat in the middle of the sea at the Straits of Gibraltar. The video is fascinating, but netizens, however, are giving mixed reactions, with some wondering if this is again the issue of animal human conflict. This bloody video is going to blow your mind. At an altitude of 10,000 feet, an unexpected visitor entered into the cockpit midair. The crash of this bird led to blood being spilled on the Ecuadorian pilot who continued to maintain control of the aircraft throughout the ordeal. This is what possibly a bird hit aircraft looks like. This video is bound to break your heart. A grieving mother elephant is seen trying to revive her dead baby, even keeping the body in a moving stream. The elephant herd carried the baby for days, refusing to let go as is elephant behavior to not leave theirs behind. The video brought emotional reactions from Twitter users expressing empathy with the mother elephant. A terrifying video captured by a passenger shows a plane's cargo door opened midair in Brazil. Passengers are sitting inside the airplane while heavy wind is blowing. Brazilian singer and songwriter Thierry was on board the flight along with his teammates and strangely all passengers appeared calm, one even looking out through the window while the cargo door is still open. No injuries were reported so far.
this now viral video of a man named Sebastian Arias saving 25 dogs from a building under fire is winning hearts online. Sebastian can be seen climbing a building that has caught fire and rescuing 25 dogs who have been stuck inside. The incident happened in Peru. Before the flames engulfed the structure, the hero drops the dogs down safely, making the internet happy. what shape, size or age they belong to. Cats are such pets that will never let you be. Now there are several videos available on the internet that showcase how these felines are not only stubborn but prefer to establish their supremacy in the household. <laughs> A video shared on Instagram by Viral Hog shows a similar situation where a kitty establishes its position as the head of the family. The clip starts with a woman trying to practice her skills on a flute, but her cat had other plans. As the woman plays, a few notes, the stand set in front of her containing the notes suddenly shifts back. The woman brings back the stand close to her. <laughs> but after a few seconds, a small furry paw can be seen inching towards the stand. <laughs> As the internet is obsessed with Vicky Kaushal's recent dance video of the Punjabi song Obsessed, a man in US has now posted a video of himself dancing and recreating the same. Ricky Pond recreated the dance moves successfully and the internet is awestruck. A video of a lioness carrying her cub in her mouth amid traffic at Kruger National Park in South Africa has gone viral online. In the clip, a lioness can be seen carrying her cub in her mouth while tourists stop their cars to admire the beauty. The incident happened in Kruger National Park while the lioness was looking for a new den. Have you come across a video or an image that has shocked you but something doesn't feel right about it? And no need to worry. India Today's fact team has got you covered. In our next report, we have busted some lies that are doing rounds on social media. Take a look. The dramatic search of five people who boarded the submersible vessel Titan ended on June 22nd after pieces of the vessel were found on the ocean floor. According to the US Coast Guard, there seems to have been a catastrophic implosion. Soon after this news broke, the internet was flooded with the alleged photos of the Titan debris. Among these was a collage of four images. The first three showed the wreckage of the submersible lying underwater. The fourth featured a pair of shoes and a comb lying on the sandy ocean floor. 
However, India today found that none of these images showed the actual debris of the submersible Titan. The viral photos were AI generated. An ED video related to the Titan sub has been making the rounds on social media. Purportedly, the video showed the exact moment when the controller of the missing sub stopped working. The viral clip also showed the wreckage of what appeared to be the Titanic underwater. The clip contained the logo of Ocean Gate Expeditions. However, India today found that this video is old and shows a Titanic expedition from 2022. First station, we have just been beaten up while we were catching dogs. Uh, somebody came and spoke to our staff badly as usual. A disturbing video which recently went viral on social media shows a blood-covered woman narrating the ordeal of how she and her team were assaulted by people when they went to catch a stray dog. This video comes in the wake of the perceptible rise in dog attacks. However, India today found that this incident is nearly three years old. This is the state of our car. Does burning a copy of the Quran earn you the death penalty in Russia? A postcard featuring President Vladimir Putin and the text Anyone found guilty of burning the Quran in Russia will be given the death penalty as per the Sharia law has been making the rounds on social media. However, India today found that Putin has not given any such statement. Furthermore, there is a moratorium on capital punishment in Russia. A massive explosion in a building in Paris on June 21st left at least 50 people injured, some critically so. About 275 fighters contained the fire within two hours. Soon after the incident, a video purportedly showing the explosion started making the rounds on social media platforms. The video shows an enormous fireball shooting into the sky. However, India today found that this video is neither from Paris nor recent. It is from a 2020 explosion in Russia. You are watching India Today. Why does this happen? Let me tell you the science behind it. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today Newsmo. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at archthug.com